After the adoption of the law banning corporal punishment, it became very difficult for teachers to control students. Even if the children did something that contradicted the school rules, there was not enough money to support them. The students turned out to be more intelligent than adults assumed. They understood how to use the law to their advantage. There was one case where a teacher had to prove that he had never touched a certain student's hair in front of a judge. And according to a survey of 1,196 teachers from across the country, 98% of students said that learning had become more difficult than before. Among teachers, the figure reached 85%. One day when the undermining of teachers' authority and disorder in classrooms reached a peak, as a result of an attack by a student, one of the teachers collapsed and died. So it was decided to hold a national meeting at the Ministry of Education. It was a large, beautiful white building. It was surrounded by a large, well-kept lawn. Approaching the building, the protagonist began to feel the seriousness of what would happen to him during his work. Then... Walking along the sidewalk, passing by people, it turned out that a certain amendment to the law on the protection of teachers had been developed, which society had humbly accepted, stepping on black lacquered boots on the asphalt. The man added that they also targeted the issue that was the focus of media attention. It was a scandal involving a popular entertainment star. The gentleman in black stopped in front of a large building and stood there for a few minutes looking at it carefully. He had a serious expression on his face. His eyes were brown and tired. His hair was slightly curled and fell over his face, covering his forehead. He also had a thin beard and mustache. Two years later, the situation is unfolding in a residential area of the city, where there are several high-rise buildings nearby. But from one apartment, a student says that it's time to go to school. Then he came out of the entrance. He was wearing a school uniform. He wore black classic trousers, a white shirt, a black jacket, and a red tie. He was carrying a large green backpack. He was holding a phone in his hand and looking at something carefully. A girl followed him out of the building. Suddenly, a strange sound caught their attention. They both turned their faces to the right to see what had happened. And they saw a man falling down just a few meters away, screaming loudly, Ah! It was very surprising and frightening at the same time. So, in the morning during school hours, a second-year high school student committed suicide by jumping out of a window. His name was Park Tai Siok, and the boy who witnessed the fall never spoke to him. However, everyone in their school knew the young man, because he was nicknamed Chanta, which means school bullying, the main horse of the school. The boy was so surprised by what he saw that he made giant eyes and froze for a minute, and by this nickname... You can guess why he committed suicide so easily. The first person to witness the death of a student from his school. It was a first-year student, Kim came in. The moment he came across the corpse, the young man laughed, because what he saw was unusual for him, and he simply did not know how to react to it. What emotions should and should not be shown. And it made him wonder if he was crazy. Then the boy came to school and fell to the floor in the yard because something happened to him. It turned out to be a gang of teenagers, one of whom was filming everything. Another was standing next to the boy who was lying on the ground, and the other three were trying to look at something on their smartphones, namely, how many decibels. And the program showed only 67, and the audience didn't like it because it was a weak indicator. So another guy came up to Kim grabbed him by the vest and smilingly said that it was his turn and asked his friends to watch carefully. At this time, the victim was screaming loudly and asking them to stop abusing him. However, these words did not stop the attacker, and he pinched the young man's right limb. This caused a lot of pain and the young man began to scream loudly, closing his eyes. The rest of the gang started looking at their smartphones to see how many decibels it would be this time. And it turned out that the app showed more than a hundred. So the guys concluded that Kim K. Min had set a new world record. All this action took place in a dispute between two high school students. The second attacker, namely Hire Shik, won, and he demanded that the first one give him a thousand won. The student replied that the boy was not brazen because he had pinched him exactly where he had already been struck. Then he angrily asked him to do it again, but this time it had to be honorable. 
and he pushed Kim down to the ground. He put his foot on top of him, telling him to scream loudly and calling him dog shit. His friends said it was too quiet, so it was useless to do it now. And then they started laughing out loud. The victim concluded that if the second-year student who was bullied was the one who committed suicide, then he was among the first-year students. But he began to recall that at first he did not keep silent about the bullying. He went to his teachers and told them everything and asked them to help him. The first person he approached was his class teacher, who seemed kind-hearted at first. After listening to the whole story, he smiled and said that it was good that the student told him about it, so he would reprimand the bully. And with that, he promised to solve the problem. Of course, after that, the teacher turned his attention to them. He told them that they should get along well with their classmates and not bother anyone else. The teenagers listened with a touch of contempt. At the end, he added that this would be the first and last time. The teacher reprimanded the gang right in front of all his classmates. From that day on, Kim was bullied even during school assemblies. When the leader of the group was passing by the victim's desk, he heard the teacher say that if he heard something like that again, he would give them fines. The boy replied with a sly smile, Yes, teacher. After this incident, the young man was bullied even more. This made Kim wonder why the teacher said this in front of everyone, even though he knew it would only make things worse. However, after a while, the teenager realized why. Namely, when he took a drink in a tin can from a vending machine to quench his thirst. In the backyard of the school, he noticed a bunch of teachers talking to each other. One of them said that they shouldn't be too reckless and hide in the corners like this. The other added that these were accurate words, but asked when they would build a smoking room for teachers so that they could relax. After all, the smoking ban and the ban on corporal punishment seemed to be making teachers lose their positions. A few months ago, a new teacher came to the school. He raised his voice a little bit at a child, and the recording of this incident quickly spread on the internet, so the teacher had to be punished. After all this, I asked my colleagues where they could find decent workers in their time. One of them, who wore glasses, was surprised to ask if he thought it was wrong for him to work like this. After all, the ban on teachers physically punishing students is a good thing. Then he asked if there was no other alternative, only the carrot and stick method. But if the teachers did something wrong, the parents of the students would run to the school the same day and make a fuss. It would be like if the Ministry of Education said that teachers were not allowed to teach students. Then he asked a question that clarified, yes or no. However, without waiting for an answer, he said that the answer was simple. You don't need to teach children how to live. Let them teach each other. After all, if a school employee lays a finger on children who do not know the answer, he will become the dead teacher from the incident that happened two years ago. Kim was surprised by what he heard and said to himself, Letting children educate each other is something out of a fantasy. Looking at his reflection, he began to think that the morning assembly was a kind of performance. It was like a message that the teachers didn't care about the children's disagreements and it turns out that there is no one on his side, and the young man has two options, transfer to another school or endure the bullying for another three years. But after a while, everything changed dramatically when a car pulled into the schoolyard, and not just any car, but a police car. It surprised and frightened the high school students who were watching it from the window. One of them said that it was probably because of that second grader, Kim said that the police are seriously investigating the death of that student. Everyone at the school knows that his actions were not accidental. They also quickly learned about bullying and violence in this educational institution, and all the initiators were sent to prison. But in the end, he stressed that only when the culture of bullying disappears in this school will he be able to live in peace. Once again in the same backyard of the school, the boy overheard the gang talking about how the second grader now had a friend even though he had recently died. And another one said sarcastically, Oh, really? The leader was sitting on top of Kim, smoking a cigarette, and said that earlier, when he was afraid, he had asked the second graders about the incident. But no one told him about this dog. As it turned out, the teachers also asked the students to be quiet and not to tell anyone.
but only this bastard. But before he could finish speaking, the victim simply collapsed to the ground under him because he no longer had the strength to hold on. And the offender said, Fuck. At this time, Kim was seriously frightened and could not believe what he had just heard. Suddenly, his thoughts were interrupted by a strong kick to the ribs. This caused the boy to scream loudly throughout the school. The gang leader continued to beat him, saying that he could not resist while he was just smoking a cigarette. The police came back day after day, and he was able to gather strength for Kim. While the young man was covering his head, his friends were talking to each other about the fact that they had no food left after the training. So they began to order the victim to buy them some fried chicken, and he only had three minutes to run back and forth to do it. This bastard country is very lenient towards these freaks. This world of freaks is a sacred territory that no one can encroach on. And Kim started to think that he couldn't do it alone, so he held onto the railing and leaned over it to look down from the school building. He was dripping with sweat because he was very nervous, angry, and thought that this was the only way out, because nothing would change as long as this atmosphere prevailed in the school. But it was the only way to make this school a cancer and to reach out to someone. At this time on his way to freedom, and already standing on his toes to push off as hard as he could, behind him he heard Zacheka. Wait, wait. So the young man had to turn around to see who was speaking to him, because the voice was unfamiliar. A man dressed in all black was speaking to him. He had shoulder-length black hair. He sat quietly and smoked a cigarette, adding that Kim shouldn't die until there were witnesses. And then he asked what horrible dreams he must have had for the young man to take such a step. Kim got to his feet and asked who the man was. Was he a teacher? The man smilingly replied that it sounded very loud, but it was true. The next thing the student asked was what exactly was the teacher doing here? while he was taking another puff. After releasing the smoke, the man calmly replied that he had a good view of the entire school. On the one hand, a group of teenagers is sitting on a bench near the school, not being afraid of being seen. On the other, a bunch of high school students are beating up one of their classmates. He stressed that this institution was a sight to behold and that he would have to work hard here. The young man was very surprised by what he heard, and so he stood there for a few minutes thinking about it. Suddenly, the teacher jumped up from where he was sitting, causing him to take a step back in surprise. The man was amused. Holding a cigarette between his teeth, he said that tomorrow he would turn everything to hell. However, now he asked Kim to take him to the teacher's room. With a serious expression on his face, the young man began to show him the way, walking down the corridors of the school, while the gentleman, with his hands in his trouser pockets, walked slowly behind him, and looked at everything carefully. And at one point he decided to ask the student why he wanted to throw himself down, what had happened. This question stumped the young man. The teacher asked a clarifying question whether it was because of bullying or grades. Not getting an answer, he continued to ask that whatever it was, he could just wait for three years, and everything would be resolved by itself. And finally, he added that he would have to work hard with these children. Kim stopped and, without turning around, quietly said that he knew that this teacher knew. He continued to shout angrily that he just needed to hold out for three years, and he asked what to do, because he really couldn't stand another day here. This answer surprised the man so much that he even opened his mouth a little and made big eyes. He turned around and faced the teacher. It was obvious that he was very angry, so he shouted that no one would help him, so how could he stand it? At that time, the gang leader started running in front of him. He just jumped up high to deliver a strong knee strike right to the sternum, which is considered a very vulnerable spot. This made the student fall to the floor right in front of the teacher's feet. He began to cover his head with his hands. The teenager in charge said that because of Kim, he had to switch on the backup bell. He had been waiting for his chicken for so long, and this asshole was crawling around. Then he leaned over to the young man grabbed his vest and asked him if he was empty-handed. Where is his food? Kim looked the attacker in the eye, frightened, because he had completely forgotten what was being asked of him. The student then slapped him hard and angrily asked if he was tired of living. The teacher watched this for a few minutes and listened to the next questions from the attacker. Is our Kim Min out of his mind? Well, can't you answer? 
Maybe he should just finish him off? After all this, the leader felt that someone had grabbed his hair behind him. He turned his head and saw an unfamiliar man in front of him. So, in surprise, he said, What? Fuck? As he said this, the teacher raised his right hand high in the air, and he slapped the attacker hard so that he could feel the pleasure of it. He made him salivate in all directions. After that, he grabbed the guy by the bars and threw him against the corridor wall so that his legs flew up. The man smilingly told him that from now on he would speak only as he pleased and not dare to contradict him. Then hiding his hands in his trouser pockets, he added that the gang leader was really out of it. The young man rubbed his cheek where he had been struck and asked, What? Fuck? Not understanding what had just happened and how this gentleman dared to touch him, Kim, adjusting his round glasses, turned to the man in surprise and called him a teacher. The teenager leaned against the door of one of the classrooms and asked, Teacher? Scratching the back of his head, the man said that it sounded very loud, but it could be taken as true. The headmaster, smiling ominously, said, Then a teacher, right? Then he approached the gentleman and, looking him straight in the eye, added, A teacher beats students at school. At this time, a bunch of high school students had gathered in the corridor, watching and taking out their smartphones to film the incident. The student began to provoke the teacher to try to hit him again. So far, this had no effect on the man, as he stood there with a facial expression that showed no emotion. The teenager added that if he wanted it to go viral, he should hit him. The teacher smiled and said, Yeah, and without receiving an answer, he suddenly slapped the student again, telling him not to resist. As the teacher continued to slap the boy's face, he shouted that the man was playing a joke because he had a friend who would show his face on the internet. The teacher kept saying, oh, I'm going to be a star, and that's why I need to work hard enough to show off my best self. And he happily began to say words during each slap, namely, it's more beautiful than more graceful. That's refreshing. The rest of the students filmed this performance and discussed it. One said it was a decisive blow. Another said it looked like the gangster was right. The class teacher of the high school students stood behind the others and asked in amazement, who was this guy, and why was he behaving like this? The gang leader was already so tired of being beaten up that he shouted loudly, you bastard. He waved his hand in a fist and said that the man had crossed all the boundaries. And in the end, he asked what kind of teacher he was if he could just beat his students like that. And he added that he was the strongest first grader in this school. The teacher listened carefully and saw an angry student running at him. He tripped him up and the young man began to fall on his back, waving his arms rapidly as if trying to hold on. However, the headmaster fell right on the door and it opened to some office, and in doing so, he hurt himself a lot. As he was getting up, he noticed what was happening behind him, and it surprised him. Without restraining himself, he shouted loudly, Damn! And at that moment, his head was firmly wedged between the door and the wall. It turned out that the teacher was holding him like that. The teenager kept shouting for him to open the door and let him go. The man did not listen, so he took out a long stick, spread it out, and said that when he was young, he had been hit by a teacher. He thanked him afterwards, and he put the stick behind his back, swinging it, and he hit the student hard on the arse. It turned out to be quite convenient, because the boy was on his knees. And at that time, he started screaming loudly first from surprise and then from pain. Sweat began to appear on his face because he was screaming. The students, who were watching and filming everything with their smartphones, were seriously frightened by what they saw. The teacher began to put his cane back, and the gang leader continued to lie between the doors, screaming in pain, and from everything that had just happened. The teacher turned his face to the crowd and said that he was even very tired. After he said that, a gentleman approached, pushing everyone away, and asked the man who he was, and what was he doing at his school, and then he said that he was the deputy director of the school. Then he asked why this gentleman was beating their students. The man answered the question by asking, Is it his first day at school? The deputy asked again, The first day, what are you talking about? Then the unidentified man said that if he had told him earlier, he would not have been able to put this student in his place, and he began to take something out of his inside jacket pocket. 
he attached a badge directly to the substitute's forehead and said that he was this person. This act surprised the man because you have to look for such impudence. It said that it was the card of a servant, Na Hua Jin. The school employee asked if it was from the Ministry of Education, the Development Bureau. What the hell is this? The man, holding a stick on his shoulder and smiling, asked if the deputy director even watched the news. He also asked if he remembered the incident when a teacher was killed in class two years ago. Then the Ministry of Education adopted the Amendment on the Protection of Teachers' Rights. And at the end he added in short that he was from the Bureau of Education. Everything he said surprised the students of the school. They stood there in silence, mouths wide open and eyes giant. After a moment of silence, the gentleman in black said that more detailed information would be sent to the school tomorrow in an official letter. Then he put a folded stick to the deputy's forehead and said that this was a specially created department for such a disgusting school as this one, and they're burying a child alive. The older gentleman knocked the stick away and angrily asked, Barry, when it's them? However, the man did not allow him to finish simply interrupting him and saying that all he could say was that he would be investigating the school. He smiled and said that this was a very important fact. And pointing to the stick, he added that the employees of the Education Bureau have special power. And then he struck the deputy director with his weapon directly. This caused him to fall on his back, with frightened and surprised eyes at what had just happened. He had not expected such a development. The black-haired man angrily said that he had no restrictions and would do what he saw fit, because he was authorized by the authorities. Having said that, he carefully put the stick on his shoulder, and after that he started laughing loudly throughout the corridor, saying that he would teach at this school whether they wanted him to or not. Watching the video of the fight that happened a few hours ago, the school staff asked if Na Hua Jin really said that, and they added that they had misunderstood everything. Even though Park Tai Siok committed suicide because of his academic performance, there is no place for violence and bullying in their school. Three years ago, the scholarship fund recognized their school as one of the best. They were supported by Ryu Guan Pil, the third most important person in the ruling party. They also had many successful graduates from their school. In the end, they asked the man to bring this information to the Ministry of Education. When they received no response, the principal and his deputy began to smile nervously and asked him to get something out of his mouth. The man quickly began to pull out a small white envelope from his inside jacket pocket. He put it on the table in front of the ministry employee, saying that, although it was not much, they had to pay. Before the deputy could take his hand away from the envelope, the man's foot was already there. With a serious expression on his face, he looked at the director and said that he must have misunderstood him. After all, although he works for the Ministry of Education, he is not a teacher or a professor. He has no right or authority to evaluate this school, so he has nothing more to give. Then he got up and headed for the exit, saying that he was very pleased. However, old men like him should be ashamed of themselves. While the man could not see behind him, the men gave him the middle fingers, saying that it was a rogue speaking to them. Suddenly the man turned his head to the workers to ask them something but they did not expect him to turn around so suddenly, so they barely had time to hide their fingers. At that moment, the man took out a shaver. He took off the lid. He began shaving his not-so-growing beard with it, asking which class the student Park Taesilk was in, who leaned back, the principal smiling with embarrassment because he couldn't tell if the clerk had seen their gestures or not, said, Oh yes, that's... It turned out to be classroom number 2-5. There were various students sitting and talking to each other. One of them said to the other to open his jaw quickly. However, the young man did not want to do so, so his classmate forced him to do so by pouring water into his mouth from a bottle. He said that he was ordering him to drink it in one go. The young man bent down and began to cough loudly, because he did not have time to swallow the water that was entering his cavity. The offender stood in front of him and asked why he was spitting it out. When he received no answer, he punched the guy in the head and called him stupid. Then he asked him if he was deaf or something. A minute later, he added why he just couldn't drink it. 
The victim continued to leak water from his mouth directly onto his clothes. One of his classmates, who was wearing a red shirt, told them to end the fight, as the bell would soon ring. To which the attacker replied by asking if the faggot was not of his own free will. And with this question, he wanted to hurt the guy a little. And then he asked if he was still hungover. Because if the teachers smell it, they can blame it on this faggot. The young man in red put his head on the desk and asked what he was saying. He was the one who was still drunk, and he doesn't care about anything at all. The other one replied that what kind of sane teacher would get involved with the son of a high-ranking deputy. At this time, the girls were happily watching the video of the fight in the corridor and emphasized that it was a horror. And when they stopped the frame on the student's funny expression, the ladies started laughing out loud, saying that he had been beaten by the teacher. One of them said that the boys said that despite the fact that he was from the Ministry of Education, he could afford it. Then the black-haired one put her hand to her beard and asked if it was really posted on YouTube. But wasn't it their school? Doesn't it look like their school uniform? The boy in red continued to lie with his head on the desk and say that many schools have similar uniforms. Suddenly, the door to the classroom began to open slowly. A man in black, unknown to the students, entered the classroom. His hair was tied back in a ponytail, and he was carrying a blue magazine under his right arm. The children watched the man in silence. He approached the table, put the magazine on the surface, and put his arms wide so that he seemed to be leaning on the table. Smiling broadly, he said, Children? Hello? And in response, I heard only silence, because everyone still did not fully understand who he was and what was going on. A young man who had just insulted his classmate by forcing him to drink his water asked the man where this uncle had come from. The man laughed and said, Didn't their class teacher tell them? He added that he had contracted the flu yesterday and had to take a sick leave for several weeks. After that, he said that his name was Na Hua Jin and that he was their temporary teacher under the circumstances. He went on to say that he was ashamed to admit it, but it would be his first time teaching so he hopes that he will be able to get along with them. The main attacker of the class began to smile slyly. The classroom became a mess as all the students started talking to each other, solving their problems, ignoring the teacher, who stood silently for several minutes and watched everything. This made him very angry, so he tried to control himself, and a brilliant idea came to him, which made the man smile slightly. He grabbed the magazine and invited everyone to introduce themselves. After that, he would be able to mark them. He started walking between the rows and calling out names. Kang Sung Yan, Ko Gen Chuk, Kim Nare, Kim Dong Gyu. However, no one paid attention to him, and the noise in the classroom continued. Passing by the main rebel of the class, the man said, Kim Hak Che. Then he approached the young man in the red shirt, who was still lying with his head on the desk, and the teacher read out, Ryu Chun Hyun. Suddenly, the name Park tae Suk was called out to the whole class, after which everyone turned their faces straight to the teacher. None of them had expected to hear those three words. The man turned to the students and raised his hand to his head, as if looking for someone smiling, and asked if the children could see Park tae Suk. Or is he absent today? This even made the boy in the red shirt raise his head a little so that his eyes could be seen. And I heard the following clarification. Oh but there are no free desks. When the teacher approached the blackboard, he heard one of the students say that the bastard was dead because he was stupid and his report card was, in a word, it was a mess. As it turned out, this was said with a smile by a guy who insulted everyone in the class. The student stressed that the teacher should have known about this before coming here. The man looked at the young man with an oblique glance and began to wonder what the atmosphere was like here. Then he calmly replied, I see, and added that he would know from now on. Then he thanked me for the information, and he said he would hold the roll call again. The teacher went to one of the desks where a blonde boy was sitting and said, Park Ping Su? The boy was sitting very sad. His head was bent over the desk and sweat was slowly dripping down. The student was deep in thought, not even noticing what was happening around him. The man leaned over and asked him what was wrong with his face. Maybe something was bothering him, but suddenly he smelt a smell that hit his nose. After that, the teacher turned to everyone and angrily shouted, Who did this? 
The attacker laughed and said that he must have been stressed out all morning. And to be like Kok Chong, the great thief, he drank a bottle of soju. He just drank one bottle in one go. At that moment, the teacher approached him and started smelling him. He said that he also smelled like a drunk. He asked if they had been drinking together, and the guy said no, he was just sitting next to him. The teacher gritted his teeth and said that their smells were different, and then he explained that it was just his guess. He went on to say that he had been drinking last night, but hadn't gotten rid of his hangover. Finally, he asked him if he hadn't gotten him drunk on purpose to avoid being blamed. The student was so angry that he got to his feet, leaned on the desk, and shouted, You fucking idiot! What are you talking about? The teacher calmly said. So it was you? You killed Park Taeseok? Then the man took off his glasses to see the reaction better. The young man simply could not contain himself any longer. As he was bursting with anger, he repeated, Killed. Killed. And he started to move straight towards the teacher, shouting that he was talking nonsense. Who killed him? The teacher was not confused and grabbed the boy's lips with two fingers. He pulled him from the end of the classroom to the blackboard. Then he turned to the student and said, smiling, that today he had planned to just reconnoiter the situation at school. But this young man is causing a lot of trouble. And he squeezed his fingers, which were still on his lips, even harder. He slammed the boy so hard against the wall that he even lifted his legs up. The student began to slowly get to his feet. But he was screaming because his lips were hurting quite badly, and they were already quite swollen. The teacher loudly asked who was the headmaster. One of the students timidly stood up and said that he was. Turning to the young man, the teacher told him to take the victim to the first aid post and put him to bed. The young man replied briefly and clearly, Okay. As the headman took the victim under his arms and started to walk out, the teacher said that he needed to summarize the results of his two-day stay at the school. The first is that teachers kiss their arse, and the second, students who are forced to endure bullying. The third, before he could finish, the rebel interrupted him, saying, This dog is slouchy and wanted to attack the man from behind. However, the teacher reacted quickly and hit the young man directly on the head with the magazine. The student fell to the floor, and the teacher continued that even if their classmate died, they would continue to say the same thing. He said he would introduce himself again. He is a member of the Bureau at the Ministry of Education, and his name is Na Hua Jin. And then he emphasized that they were the first to be chosen for an experiment since the establishment of the Education Bureau. And if the students are wondering why this organization was created, they can watch it on YouTube. The teenagers took out their smartphones and opened the app to see that there were already 32,000 comments on the video. And it is among the trends. People wrote that such children should have been punished long ago and received what they deserved. The teacher said that, in short, every similar situation they do will be in the top stories. Then the teacher shouted loudly, saying that since he had cleared everything up, they should greet him with a bow. He went on to say why, when he was making the call, they kept talking and talking. He asked why they allowed themselves to behave like that when the teacher was speaking. When he received no answer, he continued to ask if they were taking an example from each other. And pointing to the rebel, who was still lying on the floor, he said that they had three seconds, or they would become like him. The confused students began to slowly rise to the count of one. For several minutes, they stood there looking at each other, not expecting anyone to talk to them like that. However, the young man in the red shirt continued to lie on the desk while everyone stood. He told his classmates to sit down. After all, the teacher's words do not matter. And he repeated once again that everyone who got up should sit down. The teacher asked if three seconds had passed, but the black-haired man continued to order his classmates to sit down. After he saw no movement, he shouted, he's telling them to sit down, and added, assholes and the students began to slowly return to their seats one by one. The teacher was still calmly watching what was happening in the classroom. And when the last girl sat down in her chair, the young man finally raised his head and asked the teacher what about him. The teacher sat down on the chair, put his hands in his pockets, and said with a sneering smile that the suckers thought he was scarier than the teacher. The man quickly opened the magazine he was holding and started looking for the young man on the list. 
and when he saw his photo, he read the name Ryu Jun Hyun. Then he looked at the children seriously, and putting the book on the table, he told them to come forward. The boy asked, smiling, what if he didn't want to? The teacher also smiled a little and asked if he would not shit himself if he came up to him. The boy said that if he wanted to, he could come over and see what would happen. For a few minutes, the classroom was silent. The classmates began to turn their faces towards the young man in the red shirt sitting at the back of the classroom. The man squinted his eyes and said that he would check it out. And then he began to move slowly towards the student, who was laughing and waiting for the teacher to approach him. As the teacher walked, he looked intently at the student. And the student, in turn, looked intently into the teacher's eyes. However, he passed by the young man who bowed his head because he was not feeling well. But when he came to the door, he opened it with his foot. It hit the wall and made a loud sound. Then the teacher found himself in the corridor and turned his head to the right and noticed the principal and his deputy spying on him through the windows. The man asked them what they were doing here. They were confused because they did not expect to be caught doing such a thing. They began to smile nervously and try to explain. The teacher rolled his eyes and asked why these sick old people were sitting there watching like mice. The principal began to scratch his head and smiled and said that they were not peeping. They just decided to watch him teach. Then the school employee began to approach the man in black cautiously, saying that there was something he had not told him. This surprised the old man and he stood with his hands in his trouser pockets, waiting for the sequel. So the old man leaned over and whispered in his ear that the student was Ru Chun Hyun, who was sitting in the last desk. To tell you the truth, he is the son of a high-ranking MP. The man from the ministry asked, really, the son of an MP? The principal continued that he should have heard, because he was in between the minister of education and the person responsible for school education. He advised him not to go against him, as there could be problems in the future. Suddenly, the principal turned his gaze and waved and asked how Yong Yun's father was doing, who had just left the classroom. The man in black angrily shouted at the headmaster that he had almost made a mistake a few minutes ago because he would have touched him. He continued that it would be difficult to keep this deputy in place, and he was sure that he would be able to drag him away and eat him. But the director told him about it in time, so he sarcastically thanked him for the information. He replied that he didn't need to be thanked, because a good leader had to do it. The student watched with a smile as the adults talked. Suddenly he felt a strong hand on his face, and this made him angry because he did not like this gesture. It turned out to be the limb of a man who asked the director if he knew what he was saying about the children, because they were completely mired in this shitty atmosphere. Because a high-ranking man like him, the principal, licks everyone's arse. And pointing to the student, he added that this kid sees him as a sixth grader. If this bastard sees him like that, then so do the rest of the students. This is how the unique culture of this educational institution was created. After saying these words, the man pushed the student in the red shirt to the floor. This scared the principal and the deputy principal. However, the man continued, saying that in order to establish the authority of the school, this culture had to be removed. And then he said angrily that if he got in his way again, he would experience his education firsthand. And he started walking calmly down the corridor, asking his deputy to gather all the teachers in the gym. The gentleman asked in surprise, all of them? The man replied that he would make an announcement. The young man angrily began to raise his head, and then the rest of his body. In front of the assembly, the man began to say that he was Nahua Jin, a member of the Education Bureau. He went on to say that he had been at the school for two days, but had already noticed a number of problems. So he asked them all to come together to work together, because it is difficult for him to manage all the students alone. However, before doing so, he wanted to let them know that they can behave on an equal footing with him during the school period. He would be responsible for any damage caused, but he promised that it would not affect them in any way. After saying that, he opened one of the lockers. What he saw surprised the teachers, so there was a moment of silence because of the surprise. Then the man said, well then, and invited everyone to choose what they liked. As it turned out, there was a whole bunch of different sticks bats and darts in the locker. One of the teachers put her hand to her mouth and asked if he meant that they could use corporal punishment. 
After all, no matter how badly the students behaved, there are still human rights after all. However, the next teacher was already standing right next to the objects, carefully examining them. He reached out to pick up one thing he really liked. It was a long wooden stick. Looking at it, the man said that it was simply super, and smiling, he added how long he had been waiting for it. He was overwhelmed with joy. After that, a few more teachers started looking at the tools and said that they had been dreaming about it for a long time. And looking at the sticks, they asked if they were made of oak. During the week since the new staff member, Nahua Jin, came to the school, some changes had taken place. A high school student watched a picture of a teacher loudly asking, Are you out of your minds or are you beggars? This was happening in the backyard, where a group of students were kneeling and one of the teachers was beating them on the backsides with a stick, telling them that if they wanted to drink Coke, they had to buy it with their own money. The students were screaming and crying in pain. The teacher continued to say that they should be punished because bullying is unacceptable, and finally asked if they understood. It turned out that the school staff, especially those over 40, did. They started a competition with each other. Some of them were forced to stand in a line for a long time, while he walked along their line saying what they were doing? Because they need to think about their behavior. Others were too abusive by ordering them to carry a large and heavy log. But not all students accepted the new situation. There was a case where a teacher tried to use a stick on a student. However, he managed to snatch it out of her hands and angrily asked what she was going to do. Hit him? Then he broke it in half, adding that he would clean up this shitty school. The door to the classroom opened, and a man from the Ministry of Education looked in, saying, No! 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 And smiling, he added that the boy was thinking wrong at such a young age. Then he came up to him. He put his hand on the student's shoulder and scared him a little. And walking, he said, Let's go to some quiet place where we can talk seriously about his future. And after a little walk along the corridor, they went through the door into one of the classrooms. The children who were rebelling against the new system were spoken to personally by the teacher, Na Hua Jin, who had a post-it note on his desk with the words, That Quiet Place. After the conversation, the student left the room as if he were numb, and the man smilingly put his hands on his shoulders and asked him if he had learnt everything. However, the young man turned his head sharply to the side and saw the teacher, who was startled by the suddenness, and the student began to cry so hard that tears flowed down his cheeks in two streams. He turned to the teacher he had offended an hour earlier. He fell on his knees in front of her, bowed his head, and asked her to punish him. After the conversation in the quiet town, the children came back as completely different people. In another classroom, a school employee grabbed a student by the hair, and he screamed in pain in front of the whole class. The teacher leaned over and shouted at him, asking him how many times she had asked him to stay awake in class. Then she ordered him to put his hands on the desk with the back of his hand. The main rebel of the school said how sick of it all. While on the roof of the school with his gang, he asked them if it was a school or a Samchean camp, or Samchean re-education camp, which was established in South Korea in 1918 for prisoners of war or critics of the new South Korean regime who were forced to do hard labor or were subjected to corporal punishment. One of my friends said that he couldn't even take a shit in peace. Every time he sits down, he starts crying. The chief angrily asked what was happening to Ryu Chun. Everyone turned their heads to the deputy's son, who was sitting against the wall smoking a cigarette. They asked him to tell his father about all this shit. The young man took out a cigarette and said that he should be worried about some man he didn't even know. He went on to say that his father's assistant had said that this was the first experiment led by the Ministry of Education. After that, I asked him if his classmates still wanted to ask for it, knowing that his father was not God and that he might get into trouble. He said that if it came to the news, he already had a plan to deal with the press. A representative of the ruling party passed this law, so the plan to use his father in this situation is ambiguous. There are opinions on the internet that people like them should be punished, but at the moment there is no such possibility. A classmate angrily asked if he wanted to be destroyed like that, to which he replied, Who said that? Suddenly footsteps were heard, as if someone was also climbing up to the roof. 
The gang turned their faces to see who wanted to join them. The deputy's son added with a twisted expression that he was just waiting. He added that they should watch carefully, because soon everything would be turned upside down. A minute later, it turned out that a young man had climbed to the roof and scratched his head and asked if Chun Hyun had called him. One day, from the front door of the school building, a guy with glasses came out holding a quickly cooked pasta. On the way, he met a new teacher who remembered seeing the boy on the roof and asked him if he was still being bullied. He replied smiling with joy that he was not. However, he asked again if he should. The man also smiled broadly, showing his white teeth. Then they came to the backyard. I sat down on a bench. The student began to eat his lunch and the teacher lit a cigarette and began to smoke. The teacher calmly asked if the boy was studying calmly now. The boy turned his head to listen attentively to the question with a mouthful of food. Then he replied that thanks to him he was no longer bullied. He asked if this was really their school. The man took another puff and said that it was just a moment. The student continued that the bullies came to him to apologize, but he thought they were not really sorry. And then he added that one of the teachers said that he was sent here and that the teacher would have to leave sooner or later. And when he leaves, the school will return to its previous state. Suddenly, the man slapped the young man on the back, and he spat out the contents of his mouth in surprise. The teacher said that he was still as pessimistic as ever, but he added that he was not a fool and understood it perfectly. He smiled and told him not to worry and to wait because he had a plan. Suddenly, their conversation was interrupted by one of the students who turned to the teacher. He nervously asked for help, and then he added that he could be killed, so he demanded to be saved. He did not look good. He was beaten up, had a black eye, his face was torn, his clothes were torn, and his hair was disheveled. After examining him carefully, the teacher slowly got up, threw away his cigarette. He started walking to school with his hands in his trouser pockets. He asked the student to follow him because they needed to talk. The information he received and what he saw made him very angry. But the student stood there for a few minutes wondering what would happen next. He started to cry because of the pain and what had happened to him. The deputy's son, with a cigarette in his mouth, said, If this doesn't work, what about that? That student who could not stand corporal punishment and stabbed the teacher. And at that very moment, the really injured boy took out his blades and tried to attack the teacher. And drops of blood began to drip on the pavement. And it turned out that the young man still managed to stab the man right in the lower back. The student who was watching all this began to shout loudly, Teacher! The attacker stood there waiting for what would happen next, and the teacher indifferently looked straight at him. Then he abruptly grabbed his arm. He broke it, saying that he was a mouse. The young man started screaming in pain, and the man added that since he had already taken up the knife, the stroke should be strong, because a one-centimeter wound would not kill him. He put his hand behind the boy's back and ordered him to follow him. When they had walked a few meters down the corridor, the man suddenly pushed the student so that he hit the wall. He went into his office and then started to close the door. The student was very scared. It turned out that they had arrived at his ominous classroom, where there was a sign that read, The Same Quiet Place. The teacher approached the lockers and began to take off his jacket and asked the boy to sit down. Then he started to take off the black blouse that was underneath. He took it off too. Under it, a wide, pumped-up back was revealed and on the side of his lower back was a wound that was bleeding. The student was surprised by what he saw, because he did not yet understand what was happening and what would happen next. The man walked over to his desk. He opened the top drawer. There was a mirror and a small first aid kit. It contained scissors, a needle, thread, plasters, and antiseptic. The teacher first took the mirror and threw it to the student, saying that he should take it. The young man barely managed to catch it. Then the teacher sat down on the surface of the table with the wound facing the student and asked him to hold the mirror so that he could patch the wound. The boy came a little closer and began to watch as the black-haired man began to stitch up his wound. The teacher calmly asked him who had ordered him to do this. The student was surprised by the question. Without answering, the man continued to say that he had stuck the tip of the knife in so he was not trying to kill him. He quickly added that he should tell him who had ordered it. After saying that, the teacher cut off the end of the thread with which he had been patching up his wound. The young man became angry, got to his feet, 
leaned his hands on the table and shouted that no one had ordered him. He had decided to do it himself. Suddenly, the man stuck a knife between the student's fingers, which frightened the young man. The teacher leaned over to him and added that he would spend several years rotting in prison with mice because of the attempted murder. Whoever that bastard is, you're going to be behind bars instead, so I said I could show you who you really need to be afraid of. I waited for a few minutes to give the young man a chance to think it over and give me at least some information. When he received no response, he turned his back on the student and said that he was done so he could just forget about it. Then he began to put on a new, clean black shirt near his locker, saying that he was wasting his time. After all, people like him never change. He added that the boy would regret it for the rest of his life. The teacher was just about to leave the classroom, but the student leaned on the table and shouted that he had indeed been threatened. Then he fell to the floor, grabbed his hair, and continued to say that Tai Seok couldn't resist Chun Hyun so. So, unlike a guy like him, Tai Seok was good at his studies and had a lot of friends. As soon as he arrived at the school, Chun Hyun immediately became friends with the upperclassmen and ran the school. They didn't really pay attention to each other, and there was no reason for conflict until something happened. One day, a situation occurred in the classroom where the teacher shouted that she had repeated several times that you can't put your feet on the desk during class. Then she asked the insolent boy if he realized he was in school. If he continued in this way, he should be expelled. She said she would tell his father everything. While she was saying this, the boy's friend was filming everything on his smartphone. The boy got angry and abruptly stood up with his hands on the table. This scared the teacher. He called the woman a bitch and ordered her to shut up. After all, she had spoken very harshly about his father, a deputy. Then he asked if she didn't know and added that she could call his father's assistant and then she could pack her things. He waved his hand and told her to think before she said anything next time. However, he did not have time to hit the teacher because someone punched him right in the right cheek. After that, the young man fell to the floor, hitting his head on the lockers. The defense lawyer angrily shouted at the deputy's son, calling him a jerk, and asked him to look at himself. He asked how he was talking to the teacher. What does he think he's doing? And from that moment on, Taishok's life went downhill. The next day when he came to school, he was approached by one of the gang members of the deputy's son. However, he was not confused and told him that he should listen to adults. After that, the boy was punched in the stomach. And all the students of the school received messages in the school chat. There was a photo of the boy, and under it it was written that from that day on, this jerk is a school freak, therefore you need to beat this first year several times a day. From that day on, a cult of bullying began to operate in the school. Tai Siok was not considered a human being, and someone attached a letter with the inscription, I am a horse, hit me. He was a nobody. Because his father worked as an ordinary full-time employee in a state institution, and suddenly he was laid off, and the family was left without money. With nothing to do, the man started drinking every day. One day, when there was another fight, T asked his abuser how long he would continue. After all, he had already brought his family to such a bad state. He asked him to stop already. Then he asked how long he would continue to abuse him. These words made the teenagers laugh, and the leader bent down and said that he would do it until he died. After that, he pressed harder on his cheek with his foot, adding that he should die as soon as possible. Tears began to burn in the young man's eyes from the despair and pain he was being subjected to every day. The teachers were aware of this situation and did not take any measures to improve it. So Tay Sok, as soon as he died, the teachers took the initiative and gagged all the students. The police did not even try to hold Chun Hyun, the deputy's son, accountable. The young man added that he was the one in charge of the school, no one else. Then he grabbed his head and said that although the young man had died, the cult of bullying remained. He said that he was the next one to die. Suddenly, his despair and screaming were interrupted by a crunching sound, so the boy opened his eyes and looked ahead of him. He saw the teacher sitting there, stretching a little because the story was quite long and his back started to hurt from sitting like that. The student turned to the teacher to see if he was okay. The man stretched and yawned and asked if he had finished his story. Without waiting for an answer, he asked another question. 
Was this the only reason why the boy was afraid of the fool? This made the boy angry, and he jumped to his feet and shouted that this was not just high school. He asked him if he had even heard what he had just said, or if he was just pretending not to listen because he didn't have the strength to deal with Jong Hyun. However, the teacher was distracted by a smartphone with a notification. After looking at it carefully, the man held the phone up to the boy's eyes and ordered him to look at it, and added, Isn't he on a leash? The smartphone had a picture of a gentleman in a classic suit. A gang of teenagers from the roof looking at the schoolyard noticed that neither the ambulance nor the police had arrived, and they started to wonder what the fool was doing. Wasn't he supposed to have already stabbed someone? Because they had ordered him to... The deputy's son calmly said that he didn't expect much from that loser. Then he added that he had two or three more shots, so tomorrow there would be something interesting. Suddenly someone called out behind the teenagers and they turned to see who had said the words, Oh, you're the kids here. It turned out to be a black-haired teacher who was hugging the beaten student and smilingly saying that the law of the Republic of Korea prohibits students from being on the roof. What a shame. The children were very surprised and began to ask what was going on. Was it really the jerk who complained about them? Had the teacher whispered in his student's ear, or did he want to be in Park Tai seoks skin? The cheeky kids continued to provoke him, asking if he was confused. The man continued to ask whether the boy understood what he was supposed to do. After that, the deputy's son was surprised by what he saw. After all, the victim started moving towards him, and then he started to punch him right under the beard which made him throw his head back. What they saw surprised and angered the friends, and they did not know what to do. So for a few minutes there was silence and everyone present seemed to be frozen. The teenagers grabbed the attacker by the shirt and started shouting angrily. Or was he crazy? Why does he allow himself to do this? However, at the same moment someone's strong hands grabbed their shirts. They threw them straight to the ground. It turned out to be a teacher who had been silently watching everything that was happening. Afterwards, he turned to the young man and told him that he had a talent, because it was a great punch to the jaw. The gang leader was still lying on the ground, but he shouted furiously for the bastard to die, to which the teenager replied that he should shut his mouth. After all, he was garbage who had disgraced his father's name. Having finished speaking, he handed over his phone with a photo of the deputy's news. He added that his end had come. The TV was showing the news that Ryu Kwon Pil had been caught taking a bribe to get out of a sexual assault case. My son was so surprised by what he saw that he cried out, Daddy, in fright. The teacher began to smile slyly when he saw the desperation in the student's eyes. He remembered how he had brought his photo and some information that was available at the school to a man who asked if he was the boy. The teacher, smoking a cigarette, asked if he could trample on the student's father. Because teachers are afraid, they have to cooperate with this senator. The mysterious man lit a cigarette and heard that his friend could not get involved because it was politically related. The gentleman in the suit turned to the teacher and told him not to whine, but to go do his job. He added, smiling, that it was just a small job, because they would grind him into powder. It turned out that this was the same news that was shown to the deputy's son. He could not believe what he was seeing because he kept saying the same thing for three minutes. Dad, Dad, Dad. However, after collecting his thoughts, he added that he did not believe it because it was impossible. The teacher was very pleased with the results, so he stood there smiling. One of the rebel's friends decided that something had to be done because he couldn't spend the rest of the day like this. So he went up to the young man, grabbed him by the jacket, and started shaking him to bring him back to his senses. And he said loudly, Chun Hanushka. And then he angrily shouted, What's going on? And the boy began to tell me that his family treated him like garbage because they beat him even for bowing wrong. His father was hitting him with a golf stick, furious and shouting why his son was so stupid. The mother tried to restrain the father's nagging a little bit, so she said that it was too much. But it didn't work on him and he switched to his wife accusing her of being involved in his upbringing. In the end, he called her a whore. The student said that for his father, who was a local deputy and a member of parliament, he was a terrible son. However, everything was fine outside the home. 
At school, his teacher stroked his head and asked him affectionately how his father was doing, and they suggested that he contact them at least periodically. However, his classmates made fun of him a bit because they knew that his father was a deputy. They mocked him and said that he was born with a golden spoon in his arse. So the young man continued to say that in high school, everyone treated him leniently because his father was behind him. And at school he enjoyed power that exceeded his father's. He couldn't let the freaks who challenged his authority get away with it. He said he enjoyed seeing his victims crawl like worms after he beat them. But there was one problem. One of the worms he played with committed suicide. So he was called to the office that was meant for counseling. The boy added that when he was holding the door handle, he was very worried about what might happen to him there. After all, the police were inside. And if his father knew, he could already start opening the coffin lid. However, he dared to open the door to the room, carefully and quietly began to go inside. The police officers asked him to sit down wherever he felt comfortable. They then asked if he was Ryu Kwan Pil's son. Then they added that it was just a formality so he needed to sit here for ten minutes. So, to shorten the time, they asked how his dad was doing. The young man summed it up, and then he realized that whatever he did, he would get away with it. So, the young man imagined himself as the king of this school, but not after what happened to his family a few days ago. His own gang had elected a new headmaster and began to bully him. One of the situations unfolded in the toilet, where the young man sat on the floor, covered in water wondering why all this was happening to him. The attacker hid his hands in his trouser pockets and called him a piece of shit, and then said that, without his father he was nothing. The young man responded to all these insulting words by saying that he wanted to beat him up for such an attitude. Then he added that he was wrong. After all, he had seen his father imprisoned. The young man did not say the last words, but shouted, because he was overwhelmed with anger. He said that in three to four months this case would be forgotten, and then he would have the opportunity to finish them all off. But he continued to look at the attackers with a menacing face. They in turn turned around and headed for the exit, saying that he had made them laugh. Looking at their backs, the young man whispered to himself, Die, die, all those who dare to touch him. Suddenly the door of one of the stalls opened and a man holding toilet paper in one hand said that the puppies were peeing again, holding his trousers with his left hand. He added that he had to write a report, but he couldn't concentrate. He told the teenager that he had bowed his head as soon as his family went down. Finally, he asked if he had no friends at all. The angry boy got to his feet and shouted to the teacher, Did he really hear all this? When he didn't get an answer, he continued to ask why he hadn't intervened, because these students were wrong. After all, it was his job. The man carefully closed the tap and answered why he had to do it but he added that it was not his duty, not from this day forward, and he started shaking his hands so that a few drops fell on the floor and his hands became drier. Today, the restoration of teacher's authority was complete. From now on, there will be no corporal punishment and the school will return to its previous routine. During the lesson, one of the teachers told the students that they should have learnt at least something from this situation. He added that they should listen well to the school staff so that it would not happen again. However, this had no effect on the students. They started talking to each other and created a mess in the classroom. The teacher ordered silence, but no one heard him. The student with glasses was thinking about Na Hua Jin leaving their school, and he began to fear that the culture of bullying would return. One day, the son of a former deputy was walking down the corridor, and on his back was a sheet of paper that read, I'm a sucker, hit me on the back of the head. The young man was walking and carefully considering something, because his face was mysterious. Suddenly, someone kicked him, saying, And this is a knee strike. It knocked the guy to the floor, and he immediately began to cover his head with his hands. The attacker shouted for everyone to look at his expression, which was frightened by what was happening. Then he leaned over and added, Isn't it unpleasant when you are beaten by a first-year student? Are you surprised? From now on, you have to treat me like a senior. He grabbed the young man's sweatshirt and asked him to wait. Did he really want to cover himself with a hood? He started punching him all over the body and shouting, Take it, take it. So now the new object of humiliation was the second grader, Ryu Jun Hyun. However, it didn't end there. Something else happened in a large, beautiful country house. 
The boy received a hard slap that made his head turn to the right, and the young man himself fell to the floor. It turned out that his father had hit him with a golf club. Holding his cheek, the son asked why he was being beaten. The father replied with a question, doesn't he understand why? Then the man angrily pointed his finger at the plasma screen hanging right in front of them, and there was a news program showing a photo of the boy. It turned out to be a video about Ryu Kwan Pil's son. He was suspected of bullying at school. This work began to spread across all internet platforms and social networks, where it humiliates teachers and students of the educational institution. According to the information provided, he encroached on the rights of teachers and bullied his classmates, using the authority of his father. As a result, one of the students committed suicide. One of the guards entered the building and told the senator that reporters had gathered around the building. He ordered them not to let any of these cockroaches get into even one crack. After saying that, the father swung his club again to hit his son, calling him a bastard. A second later, he added how much effort he had put into it, but it was useless. It was already nighttime and the moon was shining brightly in the clear sky, illuminating the street. The guy was lying on a large bed in his room, all beaten up and bleeding from his wounds. And in his mind, he kept repeating the same word, die, die, die. So a few hours later, he arrived at his school. He went inside and started pouring fuel from a red canister all over the room corridors and classrooms. He was covered in bruises and wounds as if he was numb. He was deep in thought and quietly saying, die, die, die. Then he threw away the empty vessel, and then he took two more completely full ones. He said that in the morning. He would burn everyone here to the ground. However, someone was watching his actions from the corner, with his hands in his trouser pockets. In one second, a foot in a patent leather shoe appeared in front of the young man, which startled him, because he did not expect anyone to be in the school at such a late hour. It turned out to be an employee of the Ministry of Education, who then grabbed a canister and threw it at the boy. It hit him in the face and made him fall on his back. This made the student angry and he asked if the man had gone completely mad, or did he still not understand what he had done wrong? The gentleman took out a cigarette, put it to his lips, took out a lighter and lit it, saying that from now on, the true learning begins. After saying this, he lit up his face to show the seriousness of his words and to instill a little fear. The teenager leaned against the wall and asked, what did he say, what did he mean? And in the end, he asked what he was doing here. The man smiled and wanted to light a cigarette. But when he said that, he realized that only petrol had been spilled. So he dropped the lighter and asked the frightened young man if that was why he had come here. The young man froze where he was sitting, watching the fire begin to approach the floor where the flammable substance had been spilled. He realized that something very unpleasant was about to happen, so he started shouting loudly, Ah! And then there was a loud explosion, which sent small particles flying in all directions. The student was trapped in the flames, Instinctively, he got to his feet, started to panic a little, and kept shouting, Ah! Then he tried to run past the fire to get out of that hellish place. The teacher was silently watching everything that was happening and stepped aside. The boy ran, sometimes even stepping on the fire with his sneakers. However, there was another explosion, which knocked the boy down and he fell to the floor. When he got up, he realized that he was once again surrounded by fire which was spreading very, very quickly. So in a matter of seconds, it could be right in front of him, and he was already on top of it. He decided to stand up in a circle and began to call for help in fright. He began to ask loudly for the teacher to save him. Then he grabbed his hair and asked himself what he had done. He continued to shout and ask for help. He even added please at the end of the sentence. The teacher had already dragged a long but thin hose down the corridor and pointed it right at the student. He quickly turned off the tap, and cold water began to pour through the hose, showering the young man. The man continued to work with a cigarette between his lips and a serious expression on his face. He did not feel any emotion at what he saw. However, he decided to help. So he grabbed a fire extinguisher, walked over to the student who was sitting under the wall with his hands covering his face, and began to extinguish the flames around him. When he was done, 
he threw the cigarette he had smoked on the floor. Then he abruptly threw away the fire extinguisher, which had run out of foam. The young man continued to sit and hide for a few more seconds. The man turned to face the student and said that he would not be able to forget this incident for the rest of his life, because petrol burns slower than a person running. The deputy's son was still in shock at what had happened. The teacher came up to him, sat down, and said that this was his opinion, that education is not something that can be transmitted physically. And then he added that from now on he would know that the fire spread slower than he thought. The next thing the man did was to grab the young man's shirt to bring him to his senses. He reminded him of the bullying he used to do to his classmates, and then started to do to him. Then he made him remember that the father of the boy who committed suicide was drinking because of the redundancy, and his father was shown on all the TV channels in the news. He added that he had to understand that these things can turn everyday life into hell. When it all came back to him like a boomerang, he had to clearly understand his past atrocities and to understand that he was responsible for his actions. With a serious expression on his face, the teacher concluded that this was true learning. After that, he pushed the young man so that he hit his back against one of the walls of the corridor. The man leaned over him and said that whatever responsibility Tysiok had not taken upon himself could not be brought back to life. He added that he should at least not to put his burden on him. The young man sat on his knees and thought carefully about everything. He drew certain conclusions in his mind. Then he began to sob loudly in despair. Tears and snot were streaming down his face. He had to grind his teeth in anger. Then he fell to the floor and began to beat his hands on it. The same morning, the teacher was on the news, saying that he was a representative of the Ministry of Education and providing evidence of Ryu Jun Hyun's crimes that he had collected while at the school. The police quickly responded to the statement and came to the school to arrest all those involved in the abuse of Tai Silk. The young man who told the story stressed that he did not really follow politics. But that day, the news reported that Ryu Junpil's father had been removed from office. However, the man could not stand the public anger that fell on him, so he announced his resignation at a press conference. And because of this situation, Nahua Jin's education method became known throughout the country. It was even in the top ten of popular searches on the Internet, and the media discussed the school administration and the Ministry of Education, which used corporal punishment. A student with glasses was sitting on a bench in front of the school. He was holding a bun in one hand and looking at something on his smartphone in the other, saying that the opinions of many people on the Internet were ambiguous, and he began to wonder if Nahua Jin was really okay. At that time, I went to the Ministry of Education building. It was located in the very center of the city. A young lady with shoulder-length brown hair, red lipstick on her lips and glasses, was riding in a car with a driver. She began to tell him that this was the most important issue at the conference that was to take place in a few hours. Basically, they are supposed to answer the most pressing questions, as the teachers have used unconventional teaching methods. It is also expected that the opposition will add fuel to the fire and subject everything to harsh criticism. The girl then turned her face to the man sitting to her right and said that their scenario was to deal with all this, to which he asked her to back off and take all the sheets away from him. It was not his style to foresee everything and think through the script in advance, so he suggested just moving forward. The girl looked down and turned to him, calling him Choi Kang Seok, and told him that her body was already at its peak from stress to which the man replied that he would prove that his words were stronger than any reporter's writing. The driver drove fast, watching the road carefully. Suddenly his eyes grew huge with surprise as something appeared in their path. It turned out to be a black-haired man who was depressed about something and had his head down. He was dressed in a black suit and stood still in the middle of the road. The driver quickly began to press the brake and the car abruptly stopped right in front of the man. The girl was frightened and asked what had happened. The worker replied in surprise. Oh, there, it's... Senator Ryu Kwangpil is standing on the road, very upset about something. A lady took hold of the door handle and said she would come out to talk to him. The gentleman with the beard asked her to calm down and stay in the car because he would handle it. And he started to walk quickly outside to the man who wanted to commit suicide. When he got a little closer and was taking out a lighter... The man addressed him by his name, Kang Siok, 
and asked if he had arranged it all. After all, he had been trying to get into the party for a long time. He also asked why he seemed to be burying him, even though they were like family. The man listened attentively. He took out a cigar and set it on fire. In despair, he started shouting that they were at the Institute, like they were like blood brothers as if they had run together in the schoolyard yesterday and ate from the same plate. And in the end, he shouted for him to explain what was going on. The man took out a cigar and pointed it at his former friend and said, Oh, Ryu Kwan Pil, and repeated why this was happening. And as he said this, he put the cigarette out on the jacket of the gentleman standing opposite him, and he asked me if I should tell him shit. Because every day it's in the news, and he came here to find out about it, and he asked him if he really didn't understand. So he will tell him only once. He came up to him looked him straight in the eye and rudely told him that he should have brought up his son better. He added that Choi Kang Seok had been in politics for 26 years. He is the sixth most important politician. Before that, he was a representative of the party leader. Now he is the Minister of Education. The man with the beard said all of this with an angry and serious expression. After what had happened on the road an hour ago, the gentleman walked confidently through the conference room where he was announced a 69-year-old politician named Choi Kang Seok. He had first entered the political arena at the age of 43. He did not think about his reputation. No matter who his opponent is, he engages in open debate and knocks his opponent down. The man does not pretend to be like other people in power. He has many allies and can be called the next presidential candidate. But when he got to the podium, he adjusted the microphone and spoke because the reporters knew his style. He suggested that we end this as soon as possible. After all, he always avoids reporters. One of the reporters raised his hand and said that he was from the Korea News Channel. He said that they knew that the project used controversial teaching methods. It was born two years ago, when he was a representative of the ruling party. This is a body with no restrictions. Roughly speaking, it is in favor of corporal punishment. I asked if it was possible to assume that he was the founder of this project. This question made the man very angry, and he could hardly contain himself and asked why he was asked this question. After all, two years ago, an amendment to the law was passed to protect the rights of members and to provide training. And in the end, he asked why reporters had been smoking on the sidelines until now, and now they decided to ask. Everyone present froze for a few minutes because they had not expected such a development and the gentleman continued to say that they were busy chasing gossip about a celebrity. And he added that he understood that this was his bread and butter, but why they only make money on big scandals. He said that he did not advocate corporal punishment, but that the Bureau of Education was an organization aimed at restoring authority in schools where it had been undermined. This program is only for experimental schools and it was not conducted in public and they did not repeal the law on corporal punishment. After saying that, the next reporter from the U Channel, whose name was Chuck Wong, raised his hand to ask the next question. And when he stood up, he said what it sounded like. The children are hearing what they need to hear. But then he clarified that this was not the result of their old-fashioned view. The man, holding on to the podium, replied that everyone hears what they are supposed to, but that is not the case. He added that the atmosphere in the school had improved as a result of the management of the local school administration. I asked him if it was true. He said that he thought the students themselves should prove whether the reporters were right or wrong. The next person to come up was a female journalist, Jin Suk from Ilbo News. She showed some pictures and said that as a result of their investigation, clear signs of injuries were found on the bodies of the students. She asked the man if he thought such human rights violations were still possible in education in the 21st century. The man repeated violation of rights. Everyone present froze for a moment, and the gentleman continued angrily that in the name of protecting human rights and students, a law against corporal punishment was developed that completely ignores the educational system. As a result, some students die. Everyone has the right to get an education in a safe environment. And did they add that it's simple maths where students get bruised by other students and teachers who restore school authority? But isn't it more important to protect children who listen to teachers and behave well? Teachers, children, and parents were watching the conference. 
and a man said that he would say it again. If they are reporters, they should ask questions using different points of view. Aren't they trying to get the truth? And he shouted loudly that he would speak clearly as long as he, Choi Kang Siok, was the Minister of Education. Even if there are many objections, he will still continue to promote the policy of the Education Bureau. He pointed his finger in front of him and told his parents to stop calling him every minute, because from now on, he would not be answering calls about this. The black-haired teacher also watched the speech on his smartphone and said that the old man was really crazy. He added that he asked him to be careful, and the gentleman took it and added fuel to the fire. He asked himself how he managed to become the sixth most important politician in the country. While he was thinking about this, sitting on the lawn behind him in the park, someone quietly approached him and said, How many years? How many winters? Turning his face back, the man, confused by what he had seen, asked in surprise, You're back. And right in front of him stood the same man from the video to whom he had addressed as his father. After these words, the older man kicked the boy in the stomach so that he just flew away a few meters. And the old man said, Who the hell is your father? You son of a bitch. It was a sunny summer day. The sun was shining brightly in the sky. There were colorful cakes on a plate and coffee in a paper cup next to them. After a bad incident, a young gentleman knelt down in front of someone's grave, and an older man stood behind him watching, smoking a cigarette. Then he took one cake. After chewing on it, he said, What a disgusting dessert. It's too expensive and tastes like a simple piece of sugar. The black-haired man replied that it was Ka Yoon's favorite sweet dish. Finally, he asked if Daddy knew about it. And while he was saying this, he was very angry and could hardly contain himself. So I held onto the grass tightly, in order not to get hurt. However, I still had to tear some of it up. After that, trying to ask calmly, I said, How is the education department? It seemed that the students' parents and reporters had turned everything upside down. The old man licked his fingers and ordered them to shut up, because he was Choi Kang Siok. And if he was in charge, everything would be fine. Then the son got to his feet and said that the next influential candidate for the presidency was. He added that his knees were shaking when such a powerful person got angry, standing next to each other. They remained silent for several minutes as they looked at the grave opposite them. The younger man broke the silence by asking if Lee Ka Young would have liked it if they had become like this. The older one, bowing his head, sadly replied that it was impossible to avenge the dead, because the living would not stand it. The man's eyes welled up with tears. In order not to appear weak, he sharply said why the sun was so bright, because it could make you go blind. He turned his face to the exit and his back to his son and ordered him to follow him. The black-haired man told his father to go without him, because he had been assigned a new task. The older man turned his head slightly and asked which school he was going to. The younger gentleman replied that it was Kun Hai Technology High School. The principal himself approached him and asked for help. The father asked again, The principal? The boy replied that usually school problems can be easily solved. However, the head of the school personally asked for help, which meant that the case was already on the move. A few hours later, the man arrived at the school, which was quite large, beautiful, and had panoramic windows. As he walked up the stairs, he put his hands in his pockets and looked around carefully watching the students he met on his way. And he thought that he would see what awaited him here. When he got to the second floor, he saw two teenagers getting into a fight right in the middle of the corridor. The short-haired one was punching him in the face and saying, Take that, you fool! A young man with long hair attacked his opponent and shouted, What, motherfucker? Classmate who was watching, frightened, began to fuss, saying that they were at it again. And he found himself in the middle of the action again. It turned out that there were two gangs of students in the school. One had orange inserts on their uniforms and their leader had short hair with dyed hair. The other group of teenagers wore gray stripes on their uniforms and their leader had black hair with a short haircut. The dyed one said, wow, to the electrode and the Pikachu cub with a sly smile. He asked if it was possible to beat him so that his bones could be collected piece by piece. The opponent replied, that they had all escaped from a car service station and advised him to take better care of his appearance. And of course, after that, they started a fierce fight, calling each other names. 
A new teacher was watching from the sidelines. He smiled and said that it was not a dream, but a fairy tale. And taking one step in his black shoes, he said that he needed to... to stop this strife. And while he was saying this, all the gang members were already involved in the fight. One of the students of this school began to tell me that since childhood he liked cars. He even had a whole collection of different vehicles. Since he learned to crawl, he was not interested in other toys. He played only with cars all the time. That's why he managed to decide on his dream before other peers. Once, in the third grade, at a project defense, he said that he would become a famous mechanical engineer. And to do this, he went to study at a high-tech school, but... <laughs> it turned out that there were two groups of teenagers who were constantly calling each other names and fighting as soon as a good opportunity arose. And the young man, watching another fight, asked himself if this was going to happen every day. After all, all the gang members fought very seriously. Some were kicking each other. Others poured the contents of their glasses or bottles into the opponent's face to blind him so that he would not see what was happening around him. Still others would lie on the floor and wrestle, trying to grab each other by the neck. This young man was quite frightened by this action, because one of the teenagers fell down in front of him and addressed him, making him stand up like a rock and speak. And at that moment, the frightened boy realized that he would not be able to get away quickly. He would have to take part in this mess in the middle of the corridor. So he took a swing and started running straight into the crowd and shouting loudly. However, he did not have time to hit anyone, because he received a slap that knocked him down, and he fell to the floor in some unnatural position, and the other students continued to fight. The guy started crying because he couldn't do anything, because every day it was the same. He could not strike first. Suddenly, feet with black boots appeared in front of his face. This surprised me, because it was definitely not one of the students. They don't dress like that. He looked up and saw an unknown man in a black classic suit with dark shoulder-length hair. He stood proudly and confidently with his hands in his trouser pockets. Then he turned around and walked away from the student, who was still lying there looking at him. The boy began to think that his face looked familiar, as if he had seen him somewhere before. In the office, the principal said that he had contacted the man in the morning, and he had come in the afternoon. He thanked him very much. He made coffee for the ministry employee. He invited him to sit down at the table to discuss everything. He said with a sweet smile that he wanted to consult. The black-haired man raised his cup to his lips and calmly said that there was a struggle between classes. And then he asked if the headmaster had any influence on them. The principal was very upset by what he heard, because what was happening in his school was very upsetting, and he could not cope with it himself. At the same time in the school gym... One of the main bullies was shouting that this high-tech school just sucked. He punched his gangmate so hard in the jaw that he even threw his head back. Then he fell to the floor. It turned out that all the members of the group were kneeling in a line, and their leader started a showdown between them. He asked if they had managed to beat at least one of them, and he reproached them for not even being able to remember the basics. And in the end, he called the students bastards. The young man, who was not happy about being here at all, began to think that it would be nice to have a time machine and go back in time and change his passion for transport, and instead like robots. On the first day of the semester, there was a fight, which everyone happily filmed on their smartphones, not yet understanding what would happen next. The young man who started the fight stood up, put his hands to the side, clenched them into fists, and began to shout loudly that he was the first in the class. Some teenagers watched him without moving, while others filmed everything on their smartphones. A week later, it happened again. A month later, a real war broke out between second and third year students. As soon as they crossed paths somewhere, a fight broke out. The guy went on to say that he was a loser, of course, and for three years in a row he had been in last place. There was always someone who could beat him. It was only through practical training that he was able to endure all those wounds, bruises, and pain all over his body. As long as he was turning the machine to switch to their parts, he would forget about everything for a while. Currently, he is already in the third grade, and as soon as he started it, he thought it would be over. But it was not. This development continued. Liu Ho Song angrily shouted at his friends, calling them freaks and told them that his IQ in the engineering club had dropped. And this is very bad news for today.
and he added that the second place in 10,000 years. He asked if they could win. Without waiting for an answer, he went on to say that he wanted to take first place by the end of the year. Looking at the faces of all those present, he went on to say that he wanted them to study and work hard. Therefore, they must do everything to win by the end of the year. And approaching the last boy who was kneeling and crying, he began to tell him that he could not do it because of them, calling them fucking bastards. But what he saw made him stop for a few minutes in front of this young man, to whom he was saying the last words of his speech. He said quietly, Huh, and then asked who it was. Wasn't it his humble Kim Hyunju? Hearing these words upset him even more, and he could not wipe away the tears that spontaneously flowed down his cheeks. The gang leader leaned over, took him by the shoulders, and said, Why is the third year kneeling? And asked him to get up and make himself at home, and turning his back on the student as if heading towards the exit, he added that Hyunju had also suffered enough, and now he would have to. The boy could not understand what was happening. And then he turned his face sharply to the student and gave him a stern look, as if hinting at something or warning him about something. And after this strange look, the guy raised his right foot, which was wearing an original sneaker, and hit Kim directly in the sternum, which sent him flying several meters away. He landed on the floor. The boss took another swing, but this time he used his hand to deliver another blow. It made the young man dizzy. The attacker, fixing his tattered hair with his right hand, looked down at the victim with his eyebrows raised menacingly, saying that he felt sorry for the bastard. While the guy was kneeling with his head down, the boss grabbed him by the hair and added that he had already suffered enough. But in all these three years, he had not defeated a single opponent. He raised the young man's face to his own and looked him straight in the eye with an angry expression and asked him why he had come to their school of fisticuffs and high technology. At this time, the victim began to repeat the words, Why the hell did you come to our school? in his head, and asked himself what kind of question was that? The reason why students come to school. In an instant, a teacher from the Ministry of Education appeared behind them. He stood there watching with his hands in his trouser pockets. He said, Live to live and he asked if they had ever heard that before. Then he folded his arms across his chest and seriously continued to say, that school is for learning, not a place for fighting, and he asked them if they didn't think so. The teenagers turned their heads in the direction where the gentleman was addressing them, and the head teacher, having heard everything, asked if this could happen at all. He had never seen anything like it before. Then he got to his feet and began to walk slowly towards the teacher, asking who he was, and what is he doing here. The black-haired man pointed at himself and asked, Who am I? And then he said that his name was Nahua Jin, and he was a member of the Education Bureau. All the children present were surprised, and the boy who had just been beaten said quietly that he finally remembered that he had seen this man on the news, and he added that it was the Ministry of Education. The information he heard made the main rebel think and raise his eyebrows in confusion. The teacher was surprised that such an adult boy did not know what he was talking about. Therefore, he took the question from him quite confused. However, after a second, he pulled himself together and asked if he lived in a cave or something, and hadn't seen anything on the internet or in the news. The young man replied that he didn't really know what it was all about. But he waved his right hand, which was clenched into a fist, and said that he knew exactly what the man was going to get from him, and he added that he shouldn't be here at all. The teacher was very amused by these words, but he restrained himself and only smiled slightly. Then he decided to strike first. He punched the young man on one of his cheeks. The teenager did not expect this development. After all, his hand was about to hit the man. This act surprised and at the same time depressed the young man, because he was dizzy and asked what had just happened. Then he lost his balance and fell on his back with his legs up. The teacher stood there seriously watching what would happen next. The gang members started shouting in surprise. What's going on? Had Son Bay passed out? After all, no one had ever been able to beat him, and he had won every fight. The teacher pointed his left index finger at a young man who had never defeated anyone, 
and asked him to come over to him. The boy was sitting on his knees at the time and froze for a moment at what he saw. To ease the situation, the man smiled and added that he would need his help. He asked if he could handle it. The teenager could not understand what to do and what would be better and more profitable for him. He thought for a few seconds with a frightened expression on his face. After everything that had happened in the laboratory, number one, which was called electricity, one of the students said, What are these bastards? It turned out that there was a meeting of another gang at the school, where the leader hid his hands in his trouser pockets and said that at the beginning of the next semester, there would be more fights. So they would not challenge them, because they will come anyway. These words were spoken by the student who took the first place among the electricians, whose name was Cho Honggi. After a moment of silence, he added that the engineering club would attack them from the outside. He would take on Lee Hosen, and the rest of us would deal with the rest. And he loudly added that the electricians club would be in the first place in this school, to which all the gang members clearly and unanimously replied, that's what it will be. Suddenly, someone's voice began to sound through the speakers, saying, Club, Club Dolb. The electricians are fucking. Damn, listen carefully. Everyone in the room instinctively turned their heads towards the speaker. And the voice continued to say that he was from the engineering class and his name was Kim Hyunju. He added that they were all shit, and he was on his own from now on. In the end, he offered to meet them at the gym if they didn't piss themselves. The gang leader became furious at what he said, and said, What a bastard. And he ordered everyone to start moving towards the room where they were called to fight. One by one, the participants quickly walked across the schoolyard. One of the teenagers decided to open the door with his foot instead of his hand, to demonstrate his anger and readiness for what was about to happen. As soon as he stepped into the hall, he was hit firmly on the head with a black, thin stick. This surprised him because he did not expect to be attacked right at the entrance. It turned out that the stick was being wielded by a new serious teacher. The students took turns screaming in pain, especially when they were hit. After a few minutes, the man stopped and smilingly greeted the teenagers. Then he offered them a quick drink. And when they had done that, he invited them to sit down at the desks that were already in the middle of the gym. The members of another group were already sitting at them. And he said that from that day on, they would attend joint classes between their classes. The students listened attentively to everything the man in the black classic suit said. The subject would be called moral education, and everyone must attend it without missing a class, especially without good reason. Then the teacher put a stick on his shoulder, smiling, and added that those who were not satisfied with this could take off their badges, get up, and leave. After all, from that moment on, the students would start their electrical engineering and mechanical engineering classes, that is, their education. The students were upset by what they heard and began to hold their heads because they hadn't attended classes for a long time. The man said that if they didn't like it, they could give up on their future. The leader of the group of electricians asked, what about that guy? After a second of silence, he added, the guy holding his face. The teacher pointed to himself and asked in surprise if he was talking about him or not. The student, wide-eyed, said that he was a man with influence and connections in the Education Bureau at the Ministry. He said he was a gentleman named Nahua Jin. I squinted my eyes and thought to myself, even if he is from the Education Bureau. The next thing he did was to point his index finger at the teacher and say that he had seen him on social media, and he is the person who beat the students and got caught himself. The man smilingly said that this young man was still aware of these events. The teenager then said that this was the second school to fall under their program. So he suggested that he should prepare well for their elections. After saying that, he turned around and started walking towards the exit, ordering his classmates to follow him. And everyone in turn began to turn their backs on the man. However, a second later a stick struck the headmaster's back which the teacher launched to somehow stop this impudent man, who confidently walked away with his hands in his trouser pockets. The teacher asked him if he was trying to make fun of him, or was he just being brazen. Finally, he asked who allowed them to leave the gym. The young man was very angry that the gentleman had allowed himself to be hit with his stick and had said words he did not want to obey. He slowly bent down to grab the weapon with his right hand and pick it up. While he was doing this, he said that if the man had been a teacher, 
he would have known. After that, he started to demonstrate it and shout loudly and angrily that there was no need to put a spoke in their wheels, because you could get yourself in trouble. And he asked if the teacher was a smart person, or did he decide to continue pretending to be a complete idiot? The man smilingly answered the question that the boy did not know what it meant to give up his education. To give up if something doesn't suit you. And he said that he hoped this would not happen. The teacher happily informed him that the teenagers would have to take the first class of a course called Fundamentals of Life, which he had developed himself. The teenager angrily asked who among the students was willing to do this. After all, they had never done anything like this before. And after saying that, he jumped up and waved a stick to hit the teacher and said that they were in their seventh year of study. So he was done for and could start packing his things. However, he didn't have time to strike because the teacher struck first. His hand hit the young man right on the chin, causing his teeth to knock together. And then he pushed the student and he slowly started to fall backwards, screaming loudly from the pain caused by the teacher's blow. All the members of the gang of electricians surrounded their leader and stood waiting for an order because they could not decide what to do. The teacher picked up his stick from the floor with his foot and asked the young man why he was showing off so much. Then the man put his weapon on his shoulder and said that his words were not enough, so he decided to start a fight. A second later, he added that he was too green for that. The excited teenagers leaned over to the young man, who was lying motionless on the floor. Some of them asked him to wake up, while others asked if he was okay. The teenager rolled his eyes and started foaming at the mouth. This scared the members of his group even more. They started calling his name. A student who was considered the right-hand man of the gang looked at the teacher and said angrily that he was a jerk and started shouting at him to look at what he had done. Everyone turned their attention to the man, who was still standing calmly with one hand in his pocket and the other holding the stick on his shoulder. And in a second, everyone started running towards him while the man continued to stand there. The students of the other gang were sitting at their desks in the gym, watching everything that was happening behind them. But their leader turned his head back to see what was going to happen next and said with a sly smile that it looked like they were half an hour back. The teacher began to fight each of his attackers in turn. He decided to attack the first one from behind while he was trying to attack him. However, he did not have time because the man charged him with his magic thin stick on the back of his head, making a loud clunking sound. After this blow, the young man fell to his knees and, holding his bum, began to scream loudly in pain, and tears began to flow. Each of the attackers received a slap on the bum from the teacher. Lying on the floor, they all kept rubbing their bums loudly, thinking that this would somehow help to relieve the pain. The man was very happy with this picture and smiled slightly. And then he looked to his right and saw the young substitute who had ordered everyone to attack the teacher, who stood there with his mouth open in amazement, and quietly said, Did this teacher really put everyone down so quickly? The man put a stick on his shoulder and asked him why he was standing there counting crows. Did he want to get his arse kicked like the rest of his friends? After that, the man started to slowly approach him, but the boy started waving his hands in front of him, saying, No, I'm not. However, he didn't have time to finish, because the teacher suddenly grabbed him firmly by the neck with one hand and lifted him up. The student started coughing because he was quite uncomfortable. The teacher said that it must be like an electric shock. And then, squinting his eyes with a sly expression, he added that the commander-in-chief who lost the war must take responsibility. So holding his neck, he quickly turned the young man's back to him and charged him with all his strength with a stick right on his arse. It was so strong and painful that the student thought his arse was on fire, and he started screaming, Ah! even more. The man turned his head to the rest of the gang and asked who else wanted a red arse. After the question, silence fell in the gym. Not receiving any response, the teacher calmly continued if no one expressed such a desire. Then he ordered everyone to sit down quickly. When everyone finally found their desks, they sat down. The man walked between the rows and handed out sheets of information to each student. Then, with his hands in his pockets, he walked in front of the students and said that they come to school to learn. This is not the place where they can arrange their own showdowns. 
He told them that there was a test in front of them on the sheets he had handed out that would determine their fate. He suggested that they answer all the questions honestly. The young man, who was considered too weak because he had never won a fight, carefully examined the test and was surprised by its content. After all, their level of knowledge was quite low because the questions were very easy, as if they were designed not for high school students, but for primary school students. But for the rest of the students, these were extremely difficult tasks. After reading them, all of them started holding their heads because they did not understand what was required of them. One of them was even so upset that he bent his head over the sheet and started to cry very hard. He did not understand any of the tasks. Some did not care whether they did or did not do it. Therefore, they sat quietly with their arms folded across their chests and looked up at the ceiling, looking at something. The student quickly answered all the questions and didn't prompt anyone, because it would be wrong and dishonest of him to do so. A few minutes later, he got up and started walking towards the teacher to hand in the sheet of work he had done. The rest of the teenagers were surprised, because it turned out that he was the only one who did it, so he emphasized that he was the most capable. It was at this school. While the boy was walking to the teacher, he enjoyed himself and felt very proud that he was able to show himself in this way. And the man, waiting for the student to reach him, smiled slightly with joy because he knew that he would be able to cope with the task. The next day, something unusual happened at the school. On this particular day, a rope was tied to a car tire, and the other end was attached to the lower backs of high school students who were running around the playground. Their teacher told them that they shouldn't fool around at school. So, no more fighting. The priority should be their studies, because no one needs their inactivity and indifference. The students had a hard time running with such a load behind them. It turns out that it was those who scored from 0 to 59 points. And these were not all students because there were also those who were given a radically different task. They had to sit and watch the runners. These were students who scored from 6 to 10 to 90 points, and they were enjoying not running in that heat. When the boys reached the finish line, they all just collapsed to the ground from exhaustion and to catch their breath, because it was very difficult for them to do so. The head of the mechanical engineering gang shouted loudly, emphasizing that they had run twenty laps with tires. Sweat was pouring down his face. And the young man who had passed the test first was sitting in a soft big chair on the balcony. He was dressed in a classic suit and tie. He was the only one who scored a hundred points out of a hundred possible. His tired classmates asked him what they should do next, and they had to wait a few minutes for an answer. The boy laughed out loud and happily told them that they had to run ten more laps at the same pace. In his mind, he thought he was the king. By the time the students finished the last lap, it was already evening, and the sports ground was illuminated by street lamps, and the students had been lying on the ground for half an hour, exhausted, because they had run a lot of kilometers around the football field. All of them were dirty and bruised from the rope that had been tied to their lower backs. However, one of them was taking a cigarette out of his pack holding his smartphone to his right ear and having a quiet conversation with someone. He was talking about the current situation. He said that he was suddenly suspended from school. He was told that the restriction would be lifted in two weeks. He said all this while sitting behind one of the students. He was wearing an orange hooded jacket. With his head bowed, he rubbed the back of his head and asked how the other person was doing, whether he was doing well. And then I asked if he had managed to restore his rating. He was very surprised by the answer he received because he even quickly asked what and raised his eyebrows, which indicated that he did not like what he had said. In anger, he took the cigarette out of his mouth and broke it with one hand and two fingers. After all, he had been told about the man from the Education Bureau, and it surprised him quite a bit because he is an electromechanic from the third grade named Zhang Quan Hyok, who is the top student in the ranking. The school had posted rules that were specifically created for electrical and mechanical engineering classes. They read that the class ranking is based solely on their grades. They cannot disobey the one who is the highest in the ranking, but they must always obey the teacher. When everyone was having lunch in the dining room, a certain division was created. 
Students with an average rating of 60 to 90 points were called nobles. Students with an average score between 0 and 59 were called slaves. There were quite a few teenagers in this group. One guy from this group looked at his tray of food and said that it was a war or something. That you are eating 6.25 because this was the diet Koreans ate during the Korean War, which began on 25 June 1955, hence the name. The student added that now they even discriminate against them with food. However, everyone continued to eat their food in silence, because there was not much time for the lunchtime meal. And the hundred ball king was sitting on a gorgeous big chair, and his tray was filled with completely different food, more delicious. The young man said that he also needed to take care of his health, so he would have to eat in small portions. He threw the seafood into his mouth and began to chew it deliciously, asking the other students what the usual food on their plates tasted like. Suddenly, one of the students quickly got up, grabbed a spanner that was lying nearby and hit the table with it so that all the food flew in all directions. Then he grabbed the tray and knocked it over, angrily shouting that he had already crossed all boundaries by taking away their normal food. But the teacher was already standing in front of him, holding his cane on his shoulder. He asked the rebel if he knew how the Immo incident happened. It was an uprising in 1882. It was caused by the fact that the government was supplying rice mixed with earth. A second later, the gentleman was very surprised to see this and said that this was his reward. The young man had broken his heart, so he could hardly hold back his tears. So he decided to deal seriously with those who did not follow the rules and made a big show of it during the lunchtime meal. Tapping his stick on his palm, the man happily announced with a smile on his face that they had cheered him up so he would punish them one by one. After the meal was over, someone came up to the guy who thought he was the king and grabbed him by the forty and pushed him against the wall. It turned out to be the leader of a gang of mechanical engineers who was very angry about what was happening at the school. He asked him menacingly how long he would behave so low. And shouting, he asked if he thought that the teacher from the Ministry of Education would live for a hundred years. And even if he did, he would not work here until he was old. Then he said that the day this man leaves this educational institution, they will show it on the news at nine o'clock and report that the corpse of a stupid high school student was found. Their argument was interrupted by the same teacher who went to the toilet and said that according to their rules, a slave who threatens the king exterminates three families. He wagged his finger seriously and ordered all the slaves to gather in the gym to discuss what had just happened. When they were all gathered, the teacher stood them up and told them that they must respect their king. From now on, it was forbidden to go against him. Studying is the only way to rise in the rankings. And in the end, he reminded them that they could not but listen to the student who was higher in the ranking. The young man sitting in the king's chair shouted to those who attacked him that if they felt humiliated, they should study harder to become kings. The teacher who was standing nearby said happily that at first he was so quiet, but children get better and better as they grow up, and he added that he should become a teacher because he had a certain talent for it. However, the boy was not happy and you could see it in his expression. After a few minutes, he turned to the school employee and asked if he could no longer be king. Without receiving an answer, he grabbed him by the trousers and crying continued, that if he left the school, they would finish him off in less than an hour. After all, the Lord cannot stay here forever. The student added that he had studied up to the final year and could not just die at their hands. The teacher calmly put his hand on the young man's back to give him some support and reassurance and asked him to stop being afraid because he would not let him die. Looking at all the students, he slowly began to say that they had the same school uniform and the same age so there was nothing to be afraid of. And in the end, he added that this is what this school will look like when he finishes his work here, according to his own methodology. This calmed the young man down for a few minutes. He said that this school would never change. But I asked if the man understood that at all, and all because he created this system of hierarchies. At that time, the man was approaching the gym. He was dressed in an orange raincoat with a large black bag on his shoulder. The guy took a firm grip on the front door handle and stood for a minute to tune in to what he might see there. 
and what would happen after he arrived. It turned out that a minute was not enough, so he stood for a few more seconds, and while waiting, he heard some noise and commotion going on in the room. Suddenly, all the teenagers who were standing in the bar fell to the floor because they had no strength to hold on any longer. Among them was the main rebel of the mechanical engineering group. The leader of the other gang was sitting at his desk and said to him that he had a red hedgehog on his head. He asked him why he didn't take it off if he knew it was there. The young man angrily replied that he should shut the fuck up because he had a haircut like a convict. The guy did not react to this, but asked if he knew what day it was. A second later, he added that their peer, Zhang Quan Hyuk, was returning to school today. The dyed boy was surprised by this information. However, he asked what he was talking about. After all, he was suspended and should return in two weeks. To which the dark-haired man replied that he had received an unexpected phone call from the school, so he was returning. And then he added that this mess would be over and that Ngari would be restored. A South Korean film about the large reptile Ngari that destroyed Seoul. And it means it will turn everything upside down when it comes here. Suddenly, everyone was startled by a loud knock on the gym door. So they instinctively turned their heads to see what was going on. It also took the teacher and the young man by surprise, because they were not expecting anyone. The students who were lying on the floor began to slowly rise to their feet, because they already knew who could make such a noise just by appearing. The dyed man raised his eyebrows and smilingly addressed the teacher, saying that he was finished and that his reign was over. And after that, the door handle fell off and landed on the floor, and small parts began to fly in different directions. Then the door opened, revealing a large silhouette of a guy with a short, tousled haircut. He was dressed in a long orange cloak, he stood there holding a giant hammer in his right hand, his left hand hidden in his trouser pocket. He calmly apologized and said that he had been told to return to the school, but the doors were locked for some reason. At the end, he added that he was a third-grade electrical engineering student named Jiang Quan Hyuk. As he said this, there was not a single emotion on his face. The young man, who had been playing the role of the king for several days, turned to the back of the chair, tucked his legs under him, and began to shout, Zhang Quan Haik, in fright. And the student who had just entered the room immediately looked up, because he noticed the new rules hanging in a frame above the front door, and began to look at them carefully. He stood still for a few minutes to study them in detail, and then he said that it was a pretty good idea. The teacher had already approached the young man. He happily said that he had finally come to school, because he was eager to see him, not to hear any rumors about him. He went on to tell him what the principal had told him, that he was the one who had caused the trouble in the school. He added that it was he who asked that the ban be lifted. So, he clarified where his gratitude for this was, and then he stressed that he allowed the boy to be late for school on his first day back, and so he must be punished, and he ordered him to come and put the hammer down. The student listened to him looked straight ahead and with his eyes on the man threw his weapon on the floor and said that he was sorry for it. And as he put his big bag on the floor, he said that he was actually late because he had overslept. However, he decided not to finish, but to quickly wave his hand and point it in the direction of the teacher, who was standing next to him. And at that moment, he said that the students had already told him everything, since he received such a reaction to his action. And the thought flashed through my mind that the teacher was able to stop his blow. This really deserves respect. And finally, a worthy opponent was found in this institution. Pointing back, I asked the teacher what was wrong with his expression. Because the rules under point two say to always accept a challenge. And then he said whether he was uncomfortable with the fact that he had some influence here. The man stood there in silence and listened to the young man's monologue. After that, he began to slowly raise his right hand to his face. He gently wiped the corners of his lips with it, saying that it must be hard for the boy to be a gangster with the power in this school. He began to move towards the boy, looking carefully into his eyes to understand what was going on in the mind of this main rebel of the school. The student also did not back down and did not show any emotion that would allow one to guess anything, but stopping right in front of his face, he smiled broadly showing all his white teeth, and added that the taste of education was very sweet. And he threw his wand on the floor, 
It touched the floor and made a loud sound. For a few minutes, the teacher and the student stood there looking at each other, unmoving, each studying the other. However, the boy was angry, and the man was feeling quite free, so he smiled. Then the young man said that he was not talking nonsense. He asked him if he defeated him right now. Would he not show up at their school again? The man replied, What kind of nonsense is that? What do you mean he won't show up again? And he stood there smiling, waiting for the student to speak further. However, such a reaction and answer would infuriate the young man, who was already angry. So he clenched his hand into a fist under his bag and shouted that he was going to finish him off. And he raised it to face level and started moving towards the teacher, who was standing there, not moving, just blinking his eyes rapidly. The truth is, his look changed a little to a sterner one. The teenager could not understand whether the man would react to this in any way, or whether he would just stand there and wait for something. The teacher decided to start running to meet the boy himself, so that he wouldn't think he'd given up so easily. And as he approached his opponent, he struck him on the right cheek with his fist. It caught the teenager by surprise, because he thought he would be the first to do it. The boy flew up a few meters and threw his head back from the punch he was holding. However, his gaze was directed downwards, and he was considering what to do after he landed on the floor. He landed directly on the teacher. Then he grabbed him by the hair on his head and bent it downwards and slammed it hard on the floor. After that, the teacher lay face up on the floor, motionless. The student got up and started to move around the gym. It turned out that the young man had managed to knock the teacher out, even with one of his trademark punches. The gentleman's eyes were blurry. The student who played the role of the king began to tell me that when he first saw Chan Quan Hak, he was a storm among all the first years. He was always fighting with someone and winning. When I saw a beaten student lying motionless on the ground, covered in bruises and wounds that were bleeding, it was then that I realized that this impudent student would become a legend of the Kuun Higher Education Institution. And after a short time, Chan Quan began to take a leading position among the second and third graders. And in eight years of study, he achieved great success at school. One day, while walking through the streets of the city, the teenagers came across some other boys who, seeing them, said that the Kuun scum had risen up in front of them. And while smoking cigarettes in the corner, they said that there were rumors that there was a Greyhound first-year student at their school, and it was just a child with milk on its lips, and it was already waving its fists. This rebel held his cigar between his lips and told them to stay away from their school, or they would get a good knock on the head. Chan Quan's influence spread not only to the school where he studied, but he became number one in the whole neighborhood. He had never met a rival who could defeat him. The high school students rejoiced because finally... The whole district was under their control, and they had the right to do whatever they wanted. Eight years ago, the same school was erased. At that time, the teenagers who studied there were called Kunski, the Mongolian yoke, which made them so angry. But now the young man is 100% sure that Chan Quan will become a legend of this school and will be talked about for many generations to come. After all, he managed to defeat a powerful and legendary teacher. So everyone who saw this began to rejoice, jumping high, raising their hands in the air and shouting, Hooray! This joy and the noise from it lasted for several minutes in a row, and the teenagers continued to shout. Kian Heng knocked him out, as expected, and the boy continued to stand by the unconscious teacher and watched his classmates, who were simply delighted with what had happened. The young man was approached by his friends, but he did not react in any way as if he was absorbed in his thoughts. But this did not stop the dyed guy from smiling and saying that this is exactly how they expected him to appear. And he welcomed him back. After a minute, he remembered something and turned his head back, looking at the end of the gym, and said that there was one more problem to solve. Turned out that he was talking about a student who was sitting on the king's throne, and he quickly began to sweat because he was so scared and excited. However... What happened was that a guy in a yellow cloak suddenly put his hand on the left shoulder of the head of the group of electromechanics, which made the young man turn his head forward. A second later, he was punched hard right in the nose, forcing the burly man to fall on his back like a bird's feather, his legs flying up. 
While the victim was lying on the floor screaming in pain, the leader of the other group of machine builders rushed to the offender to defend himself. However, his student grabbed him by the neck with his right hand and lifted him up several meters. He looked him in the eye and angrily called them all bastards, and then asked him if they were just trying to make fun of him. When he didn't get an answer, he continued to say, did they just stupidly watch this teacher do whatever he wanted? Without stopping, he added that they had already participated in so many fights, defeated so many people, but they were smashed by a teacher and began to suck up to him. After saying that, he jumped up, bent his knee, and kicked the teenager right in the stomach so that he also started to fall because he could not keep his balance. He landed at the feet of his peer. He got down on one knee with his hand on the floor, bowed his head and began to cough loudly. After a few minutes, he found the strength to raise his head and look at the angry boy and tell him that he was trying to kill Jae Won Jong, who was a new authority in the neighborhood. The young man pulled out a cigarette and a lighter to smoke it and calm his anger. Meanwhile, the short-cropped peer got to his feet calmly. After taking his first puff, the young man ordered everyone to pay attention to him and to listen carefully and remember what he was about to say. He started by saying that for two years he had been worried about their neighborhood, so he had been quiet for a while. But now there are more and more people who look down on their school, and they don't remember who they are anymore. And it is through Vaughn John that everyone has to get back on track. The students in the room listened intently and mulled over what they had heard. After taking another drag, he added that they would completely rewrite their history, and no one would dare to call them the Kun Mongol yoke anymore. As soon as he finished this sentence, he heard someone behind him coughing loudly. He was very surprised by this, as he could see from the expression on his face, which was still wide open. The teacher covered his mouth with both hands, but this did not help to contain the coughing sound that he was making throughout the gym. Finally, after coughing it up, he started laughing so hard that tears started to flow from his eyes. But he managed to say, what a legend. This is a district joke. A second later, he added that they were really crazy. The pretend king began to smile with joy because the teacher had woken up and would be able to help him. But he was still laughing out loud and couldn't stop himself. A young man in a yellow cloak with a cigarette in his mouth looked at the teacher askance. He approached the student, took the cigar from him, examined it, and said that the guy who was the strongest turned out to be a child. Then he put it in his mouth and said with a calm, teasing tone, If he conquered the neighborhood, would his mother buy him ice cream? The boy was very angry, because he did not expect this gentleman to come to his senses so quickly and to continue trying to humiliate him. So he couldn't stand it any longer and jumped up, swung his right hand, which was clenched into a fist, and flew straight at the teacher, shouting at him not to look at him like that. However, the man quickly put his elbow out in front of him and stood waiting for the boy to land on it. And when he touched the arm during the landing, two of his rib bones cracked due to the impact of such a strong blow. The student felt unbearable pain, and his eyes grew huge and he opened his mouth a little to take in air because what he was breathing in through his nose was not enough to breathe normally. And leaning down a little, he started coughing, and the teacher calmly continued to smoke his cigarette and turned to the young man, saying that he thought he heard a crunch. Taking his hand to the side, shaking off the rest of the cigarette, the teacher smilingly added that this was Newton's third law. Action is always equal to reaction. The more force is applied, the stronger the return. It's just like when you hit a ball. The ball hits us with exactly the same force. All these words made the young man very angry, but he stood there writhing in pain. The teacher came closer to the student, who was kneeling down and added that they say it is a law of physics, but he believes it is a law of life. If they treat money lightly, they will burn in it. If you exceed your authority, you will be eaten alive. If you use your power for other than mercenary purposes, you will be beaten to death. And in the end, he emphasized that this is the law of true education. Sitting down in front of a teenager who was screaming loudly in pain, he said that since he had broken ribs, he would not touch him for two or three weeks. Then the man got up and addressed the king, who was still sitting in his luxurious chair, silently watching everything that had happened over the past hour. 
He said that from now on, the title of this wounded student was the king's devoted euthanist. This surprised the king himself, because he had not expected such a dramatic development. He was so tense and afraid that he did not know how he would manage such a brave, strong and strong boy. The teacher was amused by this reaction, so he smiled sweetly and said that the hierarchical system he had created was very effective and would be able to help. The rebel was in full force to feel what it was like to be at the bottom. The victim was already sweating down his face because the pain was so unbearable. The next day in another establishment, which was quite beautifully decorated in red, there was a serious conversation about the rumors that Yang Quan Hyuk had smashed up school number 40 as Dogo Dai, a man who made a mess of things all by himself. As a rule, they simply did not fit in with the group, but they had considerable authority. One of the cheeky, short-haired guys said that he had a feeling that this Yang Quan Hyuk was not the man to take down the high school 40. In the end, he added that if they also just sit on their eggs, they will also get it. So he suggested that they should unite and smash Kuhn to begin with. Everyone sitting at the table listening to this speech began to think about the proposal. Not receiving any response, the young man who spoke looked at everyone carefully and asked why everyone had such unhappy expressions. He told them not to bother, except for that strong guy. The rest of them couldn't even hold a spoon in their mouths. One of them dared to say that they understood everything, but it was Chan Quan who was the problem. The main one called him a stupid creature because that was the reason they were here. The other one emphasized that he alone had taken out twenty guys from the school of forty. A second later he added that he had used a very effective tactic. So you can throw a stone to the wolves, but you can't throw a wolf in a stone. While they were discussing this, someone tried to quietly sneak into their room. He came in and asked the group of boys what they were talking about, and he was curious. They all turned their faces towards the front door where someone's voice was coming from. The man menacingly ordered them to collect money, because in their time, everything could be settled with it. It turned out to be a tough student from school number 40, who had just been beaten up pretty badly the night before. Further events unfold in the school gym of Kuhn, where the student who holds the position of king is sitting on his luxurious chair watching the water pouring which was slowly and carefully poured into his glass by a teenager with broken ribs. So, every day it gets more and more interesting. Having completed his task, the boy asked with an indifferent expression and a slanting look if there was anything else he needed, or if he could be free. The king could not be happy that the head of their school, Chang Quan, was fulfilling all his requests like this without resentment or reproach. Therefore, from the very beginning he was against this idea, because he did not think that everything could go so smoothly. But it wasn't always like that. The first time he dared to ask for water, the angry young man started shouting loudly. Not only had he been beaten badly, but now they were trying to make him look like a fool. And in the end he added that this was the first and last time he could talk to him like that, because next time he would just knock out all his teeth and that would be it. The teacher heard this threat, because he had just entered the room and was wondering how this counselor could speak to his majesty in such a tone. And waving a small stick with colorful feathers attached to the end, he shouted that he was the royal Sailor Moon, and he would be punished in the name of the moon. He then held the stick up to the young man's face right up to his nose. The student could not understand what was happening and what this teacher was trying to do. However, after a second the boy started sneezing over and over again. The teacher was very amused, because he had expected exactly this result. When the student sneezed, his ribs, which had not yet fused, began to hurt a lot, and caused him considerable discomfort. After a minute he had to kneel down because he couldn't stand it any longer. The teacher ignored him, and handed the magic wand to the king, telling him that from now on it was his weapon. He added that this thing was capable of eradicating all evil, and making the school peaceful. The king took it in his hands and grimaced, because he did not know if he would ever use it. After the incident, a meeting was held on the roof of the school, where someone said that they should expel this teacher as soon as possible. He was not ready to put up with what was happening. It turned out that this was the same young man with broken ribs speaking in front of his peers. 
Then he began to accuse them of being the reason why the situation had turned out the way it did. One of them took his bait, and the others followed. The teenagers did not remain silent and accused him of bowing his head to him, and now trying to shift the responsibility onto them. Someone from the crowd suggested that he shouldn't be embarrassed, and from that moment on, Quan Hick lost his power and no one obeyed him. However, not only he changed, but also the rest of the students. Even the king himself noticed this as he sat and watched them while they were solving a task. Even the leaders of the two gangs were sitting quietly opposite each other and exchanging pleasantries. One of them said how strange it was that he could get it into his head. The other replied by asking if he thought he was smart. The young man from the group of electrical engineers asked if they moved up in the rankings. Would they be able to eat pork in a sweet and sour sauce? The other one, smiling with joy, added that not only that but also many other delicious things. So we decided to celebrate by going out and drinking cola together. They got up and started walking slowly to the cafeteria, laughing loudly. One day during lunch, one of the students begged to borrow a piece of omelet from another, and the latter gladly shared it with him. And that was the impetus for what happened over the course of two weeks. The boundary between electrical engineers and mechanics gradually blurred, and their relationship finally improved. They even spent their free time together playing games on smartphones. The atmosphere at the school was such that Nahua Jin could leave with a calm mind. He still wanted to run away because he didn't understand what was going on. One day, the headmaster quietly watched the high school students through the open door of the gymnasium, his hands clasped behind his back. Tu was very pleased to see this, because he had never seen these boys so calmly able to be in the same room and talk to each other normally. An hour later, he was sitting with a teacher from the Ministry of Education and happily saying that these children could not eat with each other because they did not get along. He emphasized that his work was really impressive. In addition, that violent student, Zhang Quan Hyuk, began to behave properly. While the principal was saying all this, the teacher was sitting in his chair and drinking his coffee. An employee of the school asked him if he was not pleased to see the children take the right path and achieve some success. The man replied that the director was very naive for his age. These words surprised him a little. So he sat down in silence and waited for the teacher to continue. The teacher gritted his teeth and continued to say that he really believed that those ardent rebels had just started everything from scratch. One day when Coven was returning home, the king of the school was walking behind him. He caught up with him and called his name. The young man stopped but did not turn his head. He just stood there and waited for what he would be told. The student said that the lessons were over and that he didn't want to. However, he did not have time to finish because the rebel turned his head a little and told him to get off him. He asked him if he wanted to order him to do something now, but without waiting for an answer, he continued to say that he had probably endured similar humiliation for all three years. The boy was surprised to hear this because you could see it in his wide open eyes and he realized that Zhang Quan Hayek had changed the most. He was simply unrecognizable, because he had never spoken like that before, and had never behaved so calmly. He changed when everyone who was on his side turned away from him, and this would upset him. He was also still bothered by his broken ribs, which reminded him of what had happened every time. Two weeks had passed since the fight in which he had been beaten by the teacher. His ribs had almost fused up and he was glad to see that he would soon not have to endure this unbearable pain. The teenager thought that he had never suffered such humiliation in his life. The ugly face of the cigarette-smoking teacher haunted him even in his dreams, but he promised himself that tomorrow he would deal with him seriously, because he could not just destroy his life like that. He raised his eyebrows angrily and said that as soon as he was done with him, those donkeys from the school would follow and he decided that he would kill them all. While he was thinking about this, some boys came up behind them and asked if the Day of Judgment had come. The students of the Kuan school turned to see who was talking to them. It turned out to be a boy who had appeared in the cafe when his friends were discussing important issues. He said that the headmaster of Kuhn High School was carrying a backpack of some sucker. He asked what kind of new kind of entertainment it was. Chan asked if he was looking for a fight or what he was hinting at. The boy replied that he wanted a rematch to be able to show his skills again, 
The teenager in the yellow cloak stressed that there were only three of them, although the last time he was able to beat him when there were even thirty people. And in the end, he asked where he got his confidence from. The angry student squinted his eyes, called his opponent a fool, and asked him what kind of confidence he had. Without waiting for an answer, he happily said that his confidence was now in the money he had. After these words, I heard someone's slow footsteps. A giant man in a black suit appeared behind me, and the guy added that this world is so wonderful, because if you have money you can order an uncle on call, who kicks the arse of people like this student. It turned out to be three serious gentlemen. The main one wore black round glasses and smoked a cigarette. They are employees of the Cool Kids Cleaning Service. The pupil who played the role of the king started shouting loudly that they were going to be killed, because these men looked very threatening. But the boy in the yellow cloak stood calmly and thought. The men on the phone smilingly told him that even the Chechens were afraid of them, and they added that the boy would become a silk, because they teach very important lessons. And the same brawlers like him. But before he could finish, he saw a hand, made into a fist, approaching his face. The student decided not to wait until he was attacked first, so he decided to attack first to have at least some advantage. The punch landed right on the cheek, forcing the man to stagger backwards. Blood began to flow from his mouth. He rolled up the sleeves of his coat one by one and asked them if they had taken pills to treat him like that. But whatever it was, he would be able to kill them with just one punch, and he started running swinging his arms at the next serious stout man in a suit. However, he managed to hold his fist in front of his face with one hand, and holding a cigarette in his mouth without taking off his glasses, he said that the young people were quite strong. Therefore, one can find a worthy opponent among them. And he asked if that was all the number one of the district was capable of. At the same time, the teenager was thinking that the man had managed to stop his punch, Smiling, the uncle added that he really thought he could scare him, because he had seen worse in his life, and he had been in worse situations. And after that, he swung and clenched his hand into a fist, aimed and struck directly at the young man's broken ribs, causing unbearable pain. The teenager started screaming loudly, and blood began to come out of his mouth, flying in different directions, and sweat began to appear on his face. The caller took out a cigarette, and watching Chan said that it didn't matter how much he was paid. He liked this job. At this time, the young man knelt down and continued to cough. He looked up and heard the following words, telling him to look at himself, because he had been crushed so easily, and called him Hube, which is the name for people who came to work in the company or study at the same institution after you. The student was surprised to hear him say, Hube? The man asked if it had been eight years. He started fixing his hair while waiting for an answer. In those days, the boys from the neighborhood called them Kun, the Mongolian yoke. After that, he slowly began to take off his round black glasses. And then, holding a cigarette between his teeth, he smiled and said that he himself was called the Great Khan. This was the name of Kun's main educational institution eight years ago. The teenager asked in surprise if he was really the Great Khan of Kun. The man was hiding his glasses in the inside pocket of his jacket. The boy looked at the man carefully and continued to say that he had heard this name for the last time, eight years ago. Then, getting to his feet, he asked the man if he knew who had the biggest piece of pie in the neighborhood. The man pulled out a cigar again and began to smoke it with his left hand in his pocket. Suddenly he started shouting what he and this man had. While he was saying this, he accelerated, and with his right hand and a fist, started running again to try to deliver another of his trademark blows. The man thought it was time to decide who was stronger. So he threw the cigarette butt on the ground. With a serious expression on his face, he waited for the boy to approach him. However, the boy didn't have time to get to him, because the uncle lifted his foot up and kicked him right in the jaw with his toe, so that the student threw his head back. And when he landed on his knees, he shouted, What's going on? How is this happening? that he managed to hit him faster than he could raise his fist. How is this even possible? The man approached him, smiled sarcastically, and asked who was stronger. Then he leaned over to the boy, swung his fist again, and called him a weakling, emphasizing that he would not even be able to beat him with both hands. 
After that, he punched the student in the neck exactly where the caducus is located, saying that his time was up and that he should end it. The blow to this place was also very painful, and the teenager again began to shout loudly to the whole street. But he remembered that he was bullied for the first time in the first grade. There was one such situation when he was riding a carousel, and other children came up to him and asked why this son of a bitch came here. They were boys a few years older than him. One of them said that he wanted to ride there, so the boy should get off it in the fog. The other one called him a sucker and asked him if he wasn't ashamed to be there. When he didn't get an answer, he said that he was disgusted to see this boy here every time. He emphasized that the mother was poor, so why did they live here? Another asked if this was a family with only one mother, and suddenly the question was asked, how the boy used to go to the toilet if they couldn't afford to buy proper food for cooking. After listening to everything, the boy could no longer tolerate this abuse, so he jumped to his feet, ran to the head and grabbed him by the shirt and punched him in the nose. After this incident, the victim's mother came to the scene and threateningly asked how she was raising her son. The poor mother had nothing to say, only quietly told them to forgive them. The other woman added that in any case, it was important that the child understood where his limits were and that he should not go beyond them. At that moment, the young man understood for himself that he needed to learn how to fight properly, and then he would not be able to lose to anyone. Because those who are obsessed with money, those who look down on everyone, they should all tremble when they see him, and then no one will allow themselves to look down on him, because he will be at that very height. While these memories were flashing in his head, he was lying on the ground, beaten and bleeding. When he came to, he opened his eyes and realized that he was dizzy and everything was blurry, and he realized that this was the first time this had happened to him, that he had no strength to resist his opponent who continued to stand over him and punch him hard in the face. Each blow to the nose sent blood flying in different directions, and the student realized that, for some reason, he was now very scared. So having found a little strength in himself, he quietly began to say, It's scary. It's scary. But his attacker did not hear him, but continued to strike. And in a moment, the teenager managed to shout out loud that he was very scared, and asked him to stop beating him, because he could no longer bear the pain it was causing him. Then he grabbed the man's arm and begged him to stop. But a second later, he added that he would no longer touch those who had called this man on him, and in principle promised not to fight with anyone else. So he asked them to stop beating him again. The gentleman who was beating him up finally heard the words the boy was saying, and stopped for a moment. He turned his head to the gang of teenagers standing behind him, and asked what his clients wanted to do next. They happily told him that he had done a great job and could finish. They concluded that money was indeed a very good tool. The man got to his feet and added that his thoughts differed from theirs, because when this guy comes to, the first thing he will do is run to them to beat them up, and he offered one favorable offer, of course, for a fee, until they finish school. These uncles will protect them and help them in any fights. The same day, but in the evening, something terrible happened at an abandoned construction site. The beaten teenager Chan was dragged there by force and thrown to the floor, and one of the men held the boy's arm outstretched, who was seriously frightened. The other one was ordering his colleague to hold him tighter, so that he could not move at all, and he lifted his foot up to strike him on the fingers. The guy started shouting, Save me, at the top of his lungs because he realized what was about to happen. At least there was a small chance that someone would hear and at least call the police. The uncle said with a heavy breath how hard it was for him, but he asked him to be quiet because they were not going to kill him. They also dragged the king of the school, Kuhn, to this place, who was kneeling and watching everything. The man continued to say that they were just going to fix his hands because they were not the way they should be. So he has to endure it because he is a man after all. The king was very scared, and at that moment he realized that he had never spoken to Quan Hyun before, but he remembered how he had also suffered all those three years, when he participated in a fight where every time someone beat him, and he was constantly beaten with wounds and bruises. And it was because of this school system that his group, led by the head, was not very well liked, 
because he was dragging them down. But all this was only because he did not know how to fight properly. So every time he was lying on the floor crying, he blamed and cursed the guy who created the system that made him feel so bad. The guy who created this system where he had to survive like a dog. But now, he is in a situation where he is watching this young man begging for help. The main man began to quickly bring his right foot, which was wearing red patent leather boots, down on Chan's hand. However, at the same moment, the king put his hand up, and he received this hard blow, not his peer. At first, he gritted his teeth in pain, but then he had to scream so loudly that even blood began to fly out of his mouth in different directions. Chan slowly looked up at his offender, because he did not understand why nothing had touched his limb. The serious man was looking a little to his right and carefully examining someone. He even showed a little smile, through which his white teeth were visible, and he angrily asked what had just happened, who dared to interfere with their work. The teenager who had dared to do this knelt before him and coughed. A minute later, I heard him begging him to forgive them and let them go home, because they had already suffered enough that day. And in his mind, he was thinking about how much he hated Kwon Hyuk. He couldn't stand by while three grown men beat up a teenager. The man angrily said that the boy had a very long tongue and suggested that he should move away while he could, because in a few minutes it would be too late. While the boy was trying to listen carefully to his speech and understand all the words, he realized that he was dizzy from the amount of blood he saw. Then the man, not seeing any movements in his direction, raised the young man to his level and gave him a hard slap on the right cheek. And of course, after that, the student was thrown to the ground. Quan was lying on the ground, being held by two guards and quietly watching what had just happened. He began to think quickly about why this guy decided to help him, and he thanked him in his mind for such a courageous act, which he had not even expected. However, another problem arose, whether they would still be able to escape from the hands of these thugs, because so far they were winning and had some power over them. And besides, there are three of them. Suddenly, the teenager who was the king of the school raised his left hand and looked at the fitness bracelet, which showed the number of heartbeats per minute in red, and it turned out that it was a high figure, 177 beats. And someone received a notification on their phone with this terrible figure and the inscription that the child was very sick. The location was indicated on the map. As it turned out, it was the smartphone of a teacher from the Ministry of Education who was at home at the time doing push-ups. When he heard the notification, he got to his feet, took out a small towel, and held it to his forehead to wipe away the sweat. Then he picked up the phone from the floor and carefully looked at what he had received. At that time, the evil man on the construction site struck the teenager again, sending him flying several meters away, his legs kicking upwards. Landing on his back, the young man lay unconscious with his arms and legs spread out in different directions, while his attacker stood and admired his creation for a few seconds. He concluded that this bastard was better than the strongest in the neighborhood, and he had been preventing him from going to the person they had ordered to punish for ten minutes. Looking at his face, which was stained with blood, he began to think about what his strength was, and then he asked himself if he shouldn't hold a grudge against this rebel peer. As it turned out, the young man was conscious, so he was able to answer the question, and he said how much he hated him. However, they have ranks, so... Then he turned his head a little to the side and added to the teacher. There was indeed their upset teacher, also in a black classic suit. He stood there for a few minutes and silently looked at his student, who simply had no living space left on him. Everything was covered in bruises, wounds, and blood. The next thing he did was to turn his furious gaze to the men. His whole expression showed that he did not like what he saw. In turn, they froze in their places because they did not expect anyone to find them here, and even more so, to come here on their own without any help. The teacher sat down next to the king of the school, Kuhn, and asked him to tell him briefly what had happened and why. The young man grimaced in pain. However, he slowly began to tell him that some boys had paid, and these thugs called Call Boys had attacked them on their way home from school. The man understood everything, then got to his feet 
turned to the perpetrators and smilingly said that for some reason he thought they were too old to run around on a leash and beat children. The main man was surprised by what he heard and replied that he was not old, because he had just turned twenty this year. He asked the teacher if he had stated his age accurately, maybe all twenty with a tail, or had he soaked his face in hydrochloric acid, because there was no other reason why he looked so old. The other man held up his knife and called the black-haired man a bastard, and told him to filter what he was saying, because for that, you can get a small hole in the stomach. The teacher looked at the tip of the weapon with an oblique glance and asked if the man was crazy, or what was wrong with him. You can't threaten him with a knife like that. It could result in a fracture of the limb holding such a dangerous weapon. So the man grabbed the gentleman's arm so tightly and twisted it in a completely different direction that he began to scream loudly in pain. And when the teacher let go of his hand, it immediately began to swell. What the hell, my hand? The school employee then approached the next bully from behind and grabbed him firmly by his long, white-dyed hair. Then he pushed his nose right into the cement floor. Bright red blood began to flow from his nose. The gentleman also began to scream loudly from the pain he was in. The beaten Quan stayed where he was and watched the teacher deal with the bastards on his own. The head of the uncles on call firm was in a bit of shock that his partners had been overcome so quickly and easily and he said that he felt like his feelings, which he had been trying to hold back, were starting to burn. At this time, the teacher, with a furious expression on his face, his eyes giant and his teeth gritted in anger, asked his students to close their eyes for a moment, and then he asked them if they were the call boys, because he had heard about them several times on the news. It was said that they were hooligans who beat children for money, and a minute later he added that they actually do similar things, and at the end, Starting to take steps to meet the chief, he asked them if they knew what made him different from them. Not receiving an answer, he decided to answer that he was a civil servant and they were just street freaks who would do any job for money. The man standing in front of him listened attentively and then raised his eyebrows because he did not like what he heard from some strange man. However, he remembered that he had broken his friend's arm a few minutes earlier so that he did not even have time to blink so he concluded that his punches were faster than lightning. He could easily kill the man. This is what the employee of the Ministry of Education demonstrated a few minutes ago on his partner. The bully decided that he needed to get his knife out, because this was no easy opponent. He would have to fight him now, whether he wanted to or not. The teacher stood with his legs wide apart and watched every move of the man, who seemed to be panicking a little so he decided to calmly suggest that he hide the thing, which was useless. I wondered if he hadn't learnt anything from what had happened to his partner, who had also threatened him with a knife. And he asked why he had decided to threaten him with this stump. These words surprised the bully, because he considered this thing to be an excellent weapon. The teacher decided to give him some advice. However, he did not have time to speak, because the angry man started running at the teacher pointing the knife directly at his chest and shouting at him to shut up and not say a word. The black-haired man in the suit realized that the fight was not going to go away, with or without a weapon. He is confident in his strength and knows that he can win. First, he put his hands down and began to stretch his fingers and then raise them to his chest to position them correctly in relation to his opponent. Finally, he shouted, Fight! Loudly. Having taken a comfortable and safe pose, he began to wait attentively for the hooligan, in a classic suit with a knife in his right hand, to approach him. He studied every step, every movement to find the weaknesses that could be used to win the victory by delivering an accurate signature stroke. The teacher noticed something with his sharp eyesight. He decided that he had to stop his hand first, to prevent him from striking first, and to prevent his opponent from getting too close. For a few minutes, the caller stood there swinging his knife left and right, Suddenly something caught his attention, and he couldn't understand whether he had accidentally stuck the knife in his hand. He began to wonder how this could have happened. Then he turned his gaze to the teacher, who was standing opposite him, in a rather interesting position. He was raising his hands in front of his face, slowly fingering them, and his eyes were mysterious. He said that it was some kind of nonsense, so he decided not to stop, 
but continued to move with the knife towards the teacher. However, the teacher put his hands in front of him and did not allow him to strike again. He knocked out the weapon, which fell to the floor. This upset the hooligan, and he said in despair, with a twisted face, What the hell is going on? What is wrong with this guy? And the teacher began to say that when he first joined their gang, he was told that no matter how firmly your sword is in your hand, there will be opponents to be wary of. And the knife ended up a few meters away from its owner. The black-haired, long-haired man said that it was a martial arts skill. The uncle on call looked at his knife. Then the teacher covered his face with his right hand, so that only one eye was visible, in which one could see anger, confidence, and courage. And then he elbowed him in the temple. Everything became blurry in front of his eyes, and he spat blood out of his mouth, which flew in different directions. The next thing the teacher did was to put his foot under his leg and knock the opponent down, so that he even threw his legs up while falling on his back. While he was falling, his face was very much contorted from the pain and the fact that he was going to land on the floor. As soon as he landed, a school employee jumped on top of him and punched him right in the nose, causing blood to spray out and smear the offender's hand. Leaning closer to his face, he whispered that it is used when survival or killing is required, and it is not known what the limitations are. It is a special hand-to-hand -hand system called Krav Maga, and then he loudly ordered the man to get up quickly, because they were not done yet. Their fight was still on, so when he saw no movement, the teacher grabbed his opponent by the hair on his head and dragged him for several meters. One of them had to die for the fight to end. When he had finished, he punched the man in the right cheek, causing him to reel back and scream in pain. Quan was lying on the floor, quietly watching everything that was happening, because he didn't want to make any noise to disturb the fight. The king of the school, Kuhn, crawled over to the wall and leaned his head against it. He was very pleased with what he saw and even smiled a little. Another employee from the company called Five on Call saw what was happening to his colleague and asked the teacher to stop. However, the man did not react to these words and continued to hit his head angrily on the floor so that a pool of blood formed behind him. Then he began to kick the victim's face with his right heel causing blood to fly around for several centimeters, staining everything. After that, the caller realized that this black-haired man was beating him quite well, beating him with everything he had. He can kill without blinking, because in his eyes you can see so much anger that needs to be taken out on someone. Plus, he is so tough because he can fight for so long. So in desperation, the man grabbed his leg tightly to stop him from hitting him for a few minutes and tell him that he didn't need to hit him anymore because he realized that he wanted to live. In addition, he started crying to put a little pressure on pity and humanity. He continued to beg me not to kill him. Of course, his face was covered with wounds and red bruises smeared with blood. And in the end, he admitted that he was wrong, that he had realized his mistakes and would not do it again. All he needed was to save his life and enjoy it to the fullest. Having listened carefully to everything, the teacher was not convinced and he did not strike from the knee of his left leg, so the man threw his head back again and began to fall to the floor from which he had just barely risen. He landed on the back of his head and it was very loud and painful as he screamed and covered himself. The victim also lost two of his front teeth. Nevertheless, he found the last of his strength, got down on his knees and folded his hands as if praying, continued to beg the teacher for mercy and promised that he would get better if he allowed him to live. The man was not convinced either, and he elbowed him in the face, causing blood to stain the sleeve of his jacket. My uncle fell to the ground, and he stood and watched what the man would do next. He was expecting something new, not the same old promises he had heard a million times before. It turns out that the offender fell a few centimeters from where the also beaten king of the school, Kuhn, was sitting and watching the gentleman get his ass kicked. And when he saw him, he started smiling, thinking it looked pretty cute. But in reality, it looked terrible, because he was smeared, wounded, and even missing teeth. The young man looked at him with his mouth open in amazement. He could not understand how you could smile at someone you had threatened and beaten mercilessly a few hours earlier. The man got down on his knees. He crawled a little closer to the teenager and quietly asked him to forgive him for what he had done to him. 
What he heard surprised the boy even more. Then the man folded his hands again in prayer, but this time he raised them up and addressed the teacher, calling him sir and shouting, begging him not to kill him. Then he added that he would pay for the treatment in ten, or if necessary, twenty times. The teacher took out a cigarette and put it in his mouth, then took out a lighter and put his other hand in his trouser pocket. He said that he now saw a man who had finally taken the path of truth. After taking the first puff, he said that it is important to apologize not to the person who offended you, but to the person you beat. In the end, he said that if he understood everything so well, he could leave as soon as possible, because he would not give him a second chance to leave so easily. At that moment, the uncles on call gathered in a bunch, holding each other, and began to move towards the exit. At the same time, the teacher turned around and walked towards the guy in the yellow cloak. He was still on his knees, frightened. Coming up to him, he asked him if he had finally felt what it was like to be a victim, and a second later he added that at that moment he was doing the same as them. And after saying that, he continued to smoke a cigarette, and the room fell silent. The young man was in a mild shock. He was thinking about what had happened to him today and how he felt at such moments. The next day, Nahua Jin's teacher left their school. And on the same day, the students of the electrical and mechanical engineering faculties gathered because they had been waiting for this moment for so long. Namely, to kick the arse of Kim Hyun Ju, who was already tied up and had his mouth taped over with green tape. Everyone started shouting various phrases loudly, including, Die! Kill him! Die! The chief mechanic spoke up, asking if he had heard everything well, because it was their indignation. And then everyone stopped talking, and the teenager was able to continue talking calmly, asking if he had heard that today was the day the teacher left their school, and this means that the news will show his lifeless body being found. The student who played the role of the king was very scared of what might happen to him now, and there was no one to help him. Suddenly, the door to the gym was loudly opened by the foot of another student from the same school, who came in very confidently with his hands in his trouser pockets. Everyone turned their faces towards the front door and saw the school's main rebel in his favorite yellow raincoat. He in turn shouted that they all quickly moved away from the boy, and with a serious expression on his face, he added menacingly that if anyone laid a finger on him, he would die. The student was quite amused by this because he had lost all hope of being saved. However, he could not say or add anything because his mouth was taped shut. A week later, a red car was speeding along the motorway, and after a few kilometers, it turned onto a street where a large building was located. Slowly, it approached the main gate, through which you can get to the park near this beautiful building. A security guard approached the car. The girl rolled down the driver's side window and said hello. In response, she also received a greeting and a question about what she had come here for. The lady had shoulder-length red hair, and her lips were painted the same color. She calmly replied that today she had been appointed as an observer of the education department. At that time at the Kuun School, students from two faculties came out of the gym upset and not understanding what had just happened. The two leaders started talking to each other about what was going on. After all, they got the worst of it. The other one suggested that maybe the teacher had threatened him or something. While they were thinking about it, Quan slowly began to remove the green strip of tape that was glued to his new friend's lips. The young man gently rubbed the place where the sticker had just been, because it was quite red, and sincerely thanked him for standing up for him. But then a thought flashed through his mind. Does he really want to deal with him face to face? He smiled confusedly at the fact that he didn't understand everything yet. While looking at his classmate, Quan began to recall what had happened at the end of the evening yesterday. The teacher was standing over him and asked if he understood everything. Because now he too had been in that shoes. Namely, he had fully experienced what it was like to be bullied. After all, he only asserts himself by humiliating weaker opponents, far surpassing them in strength. And in the end, he added that you can never feel or understand these feelings until you are beaten in the same way. And saying this, the teacher began to slowly lift his leg up. Then he held it right in front of the student's face. This already made the young man quite worried, because he could not guess what was going to happen. Because this teacher has his own peculiarities, 
that are not so easy to unravel. However, the blow fell a few centimeters from the teenager's groin, and he almost fainted, thinking he was going to die. The teacher quickly got down on one knee and put his right elbow on it, leaning slightly towards the boy to be at the same level as him and saying that he was very lucky. And after a second, he added that if these uncles did not show up on call, he would have to personally take up his re-education. Then he emphasized that he was lucky twice. The young man sat silently with his eyes wide open in amazement. The teacher continued to say that it was all thanks to Hyun Ju's strong character. The main rebel turned his gaze to the student in question. He continued to listen, saying that in such a situation, nine out of ten people would have just watched his bones get broken. Although he could have smoked on the sidelines and enjoyed the moment while your life was being broken. But Hyunju chose to rush in to defend you, his enemy and abuser. Then he asked if he thought he could have handled it himself. When he didn't answer, the teacher leaned a little closer to the student and said that a person's rank is not determined by strength, but by a strong character. But if he still did not understand anything and did not draw any conclusions, then he will know the power of the true education. Having said all this, the man put his hands in his pockets and began to walk slowly towards the exit. The two disciples followed him. Quan was still standing there, unmoving and without showing any emotion. The former king continued to kneel in the middle of the gym, watching his savior. He expected to hear something from him, but he just turned around and started walking towards the exit without saying anything. After a few steps, I decided to clarify the situation and said that maybe the guy had misunderstood him. He did not help him because the teacher threatened him. Without turning around, he added that what happened yesterday was really cool, was actually very cool, and this surprised the rescued teenager, because he was ready to hear everything, but definitely not this. After that day, Kim Hyun Jin graduated from school well, and no one dared to bully him, or even say a single harsh word in his direction. And Yang Kwon Hike never started any more fights at school. He began to prepare diligently for the entrance exams and think about his future in detail. After graduation, their paths diverged. Ten years later, they would find jobs at the same tech company. At that time, the Ministry of Education came to the building. A teacher returned, satisfied that he had once again succeeded in re-educating a few teenagers and setting them on the right path. The man was sitting in the office of the head and looking at a folder on the table saying with reproach that he had just returned, and here was something again, is it the next task? The gentleman with the cigar replied that everyone was confused about whether corporal punishment was justified. Doesn't their job involve a constant accumulation of documents and reports? So he would have to sort through these sheets and, and he would have to do it as soon as possible. He asked what the hell he was doing at school for the past two or three weeks. He added that he was a contracted bully and whether he knew that corporal punishment had long been discontinued. The teacher picked up folders and sheets and asked the man to stop and hire more people instead. After all, how could he deal with all this alone? The man replied that it was his responsibility for now, and sooner or later new staff would be hired. The guy's eyes grew huge after hearing this information. An hour later, the man decided to go through the small pile of files. Flipping through each one, he studied the information in detail. And he came across one story that shocked him, that so many different kinds of bullying were going on in this educational institution. And he concluded that this was the most reflective school he had ever come across. So he closed the folder with the name of the female high school stuck on it. After that, he slowly brought his right hand to his chin, closed his eyes, and began to think, Hmm, a girls' school. A school for girls. Girls. Then he turned his head to his interlocutor and said that he was a minister and understood everything, but a women's school was too much, to which the man replied that he had a stupid and quarrelsome temper. He added that he knew he would not be happy with this, so he hired a very reliable employee, who at that time was already approaching the office door, and the boss suggested that perhaps the man also knew her. After these words, the secretary knocked on the door and said that a new employee of the Ministry of Education had arrived. The man replied that she should be invited in. The door slowly opened, and a rather cute little girl walked in. 
The teacher, who was already present in the room, looked at her carefully to see what kind of beauty was coming. When the lady appeared in front of the men, she raised her hand to her temple to salute. The boss instinctively raised his hand to his head, and only then wondered why he had done so. The black-haired worker began to wonder who she was because she was just plain bugging him. The woman said that she was an agent of Special Forces 72X. Her name was Imhan Lim, and she was assigned to the Ministry's Education Bureau as of today. This information scared the man, who continued to study his documents. The new employee was wearing a white shirt and a black classic trouser suit. She was wearing small heels on her feet. She approached the desk where the teacher was sitting. He stammered in fright and began to say, Um, Staff Sergeant Im? And asked why she was here. Smiling, the lady put a strand of hair behind her ear and said that she had come to catch deserters. And he was the leader of the group that had suddenly disappeared. At the end, she added that she hadn't seen Nahua Jin for a long time, and he realized that his peaceful days were over. The next day, in the beautiful building of Sioyan Girls High School, a frightened young man with his eyes closed in fear and medium-length brown hair was pushed against a wall that was right behind him. A group of girls stood in front of him. The main one was in the center with light purple long hair. Her other friends were filming everything that was happening on their smartphones. The guy asked what they were going to do. The main lady, demonstrating a shaving machine, said to the teacher that they just wanted some variety because everything was monotonous. Then she added that he had a nice face, but his hair left a lot to be desired. She asked him to come closer to her, because she would not hurt him. The teacher was very angry about the whole situation. For several minutes he stood there silently thinking about what he should do next, so as not to harm himself or this young lady. So he grabbed the girl by the hand in which she was holding the car, and addressed her by the name Han Ai Ri, and shouted at her what kind of behavior she was doing. Does she really think it's fun to mock her teachers? The young lady turned her attention to her hand and asked the man how he dared to grab it, because it was out of the question, how he could afford to do that. Then she began to mock him, saying, Oh my God, will he be okay after this? And the man realized that he had acted rather rashly and that there could be terrible consequences for this. The girl continued to stand in front of the teacher, but changed her posture a little. She pressed one hand to her chest and brought the other to her left cheek and said, Oh, no. If you touch a student... And smiling, she asked him if he knew what that would mean. After the incident in the toilet, the man slowly opened the door to the teacher's office, where two teachers and one lecturer were watching him. Having carefully examined him, the colleagues approached the upset employee, who bowed his head and asked what had happened to him and what happened to Teacher Nam's hair. The gentleman did not answer, but continued to stand silently, deep in thought. Did the teachers continue, or did those freaks from the fourth grade do it? And then they asked a series of questions that were never answered. They were as follows. How is he after what happened? Will he be able to continue teaching? Because after such an incident, it will get worse and worse. There was also a new employee of this educational institution in the office who was shocked by what she saw, to put it mildly, but she sat silently and looked through her documents. So today's victim was a teacher named Nam Sang Wook. Now they have turned their attention to him, so they will play with him without considering him a human being. Five minutes later, the bell rang and the teacher walked down the corridor to the classroom where she was supposed to be teaching. The door was open, so the upset woman stopped for a second leaning against the wall and stood silently between them to get ready to work with these children. When she entered the classroom, no one paid attention to the teacher. Everyone continued to go about their business and talk loudly to each other. The three girls were looking at something on their smartphones, and taking turns showing the images on them, began to discuss everything in detail. When the woman approached her desk, she put a magazine on it and quietly said that she needed to open page 87 in the textbook. However, even after that, no one reacted, because they were busy doing their own thing, and the teacher emphasized that for these children, she was an empty place, a ghost. Employees of the Ministry of Education had already left for the school in a red car. 
The woman turned to the man and asked him how he could not recognize his friend with whom he was eating from the same plate. The man holding her hand asked if she would recognize herself now. The lady said angrily that it was very funny. It hadn't been ten or twenty years, it had only been two. The man stressed that she had changed since then. She used to have black hair, which was always tied up in a bun, but now it was bright red, and she had bangs. After that I asked her when it became customary to let your hair down in public, and what was the point of having bangs cut off by mice with such a hair color. The girl smiled and said that he was still mumbling. She continued that when she was in high school, she actually had that color. But since they were going to be dealing with school children, she wanted to reminisce about the old days. Turning her face to the window, the teacher asked her if she liked chewing gum. The lady asked him angrily if he was really laughing. After all, they couldn't change them now. Then she asked what about his long braids. She emphasized that they looked quite bad and that they could be cut and made into a beautiful hairstyle. The man replied that he was in mourning. This confused the girl because she did not expect to receive such an answer from him, and she bowed her head and was sad that she did not know this. So she began to think about who it could be that he missed so much. The teacher interrupted her thoughts by saying that they had already arrived, and she needed to slow down here, and he looked out the side window at a large building nearby. He got out of the car, stood on the sidewalk, and slammed the car door loudly. Then he leaned over to the open window and said that, first of all, she had come to the practice as a teacher. Therefore, she needed to keep an eye on the school until he returned. The girl listened to him and put her hand to her head, smiling, and said, Yes, sir. Then she pressed hard on the gas pedal and drove off down the road. The man only had time to turn his head to the left to see his partner driving away. He looked up and started to look at something. It was a rectangular blue sign with the words Police Department on it, which could be reached by calling a single number, 182. After taking a few steps around the school, he stood in front of the front door with his hands in his pockets and looked at it, wondering what to do. At this time, a woman had already arrived at the school, and the principal introduced her to the teachers, saying that from today they had a new trainee teacher, whose name was Imhan Lim. He asked them to help her join the team if possible. Everyone stood silently and looked at her sympathetically, because they thought she didn't know where she was going. The girl stood there, dressed nicely and smiling sweetly, and said that she was very pleased to meet him and would be happy to work with them. She added that she hoped they would get on well. The principal raised his hand to his chin and said that he would be responsible for her for the time being. The head teacher of the second year four class, Jong Seon Yun. The woman did not expect to be appointed to this position, so she opened her mouth a little. Then a new employee approached her with her hands behind her back and happily said that she would be happy to work with her, to which she replied, The feeling is mutual. And then she added that it was a pleasure to meet such a beautiful woman. The school employee was very surprised by this, because she did not understand the reasons for joy and inappropriate smiles. Then they started walking down the long corridor of the school. The new girl walked along the back and looked at everything carefully, while her colleague bowed her head and held her textbooks. The red-haired girl happily said that she hadn't been to school for seven years, and then she said that she missed it very much, and she emphasized that she also graduated from a girl's school. I asked her what kind of children are now. After all, they used to play pranks on each other and their teachers. To this, the woman calmly said, Intern Imhan Lim. And when they approached the door of the classroom where they needed to go for the lesson, they stopped for a few minutes and the teacher added that she would give one piece of advice. That you should never jump above your head. And then she started to open the door to the classroom a little bit. However, her expression seemed to the new employee to be very sad. So she moved across the classroom to her desk with her head bowed, and the red-haired teacher had to follow her, surprised by what she had heard. For a moment she froze in her tracks, because what she saw in the room was even more surprising than the words she had heard a few minutes earlier. After all, the senior students did not react in any way to the teacher's entry into the classroom. They were all solving their own problems. Many of them were not in their seats, but sat next to their friends. 
When they stood in the middle of the classroom near the table, a quiet teacher put her hands on the table and addressed the children, asking for their attention. She told them that a trainee, Imhan Lim, was standing next to her. The gang of three girls continued to go about their business, namely taking selfies on their smartphones. The teacher could not stand it and shouted loudly, saying, Lady, well, the new teacher is here, at least today. At this time, the employee from the Ministry of Education stood silently and studied everyone so that she could deal with them later. Her nerves were also frayed by this attitude towards the elders. So she had to force herself to play the game Air, where you have to breathe in slowly through your nose and out through your mouth. And in her mind, she was monologuing that these students were doing their own thing and talking without stopping. This is a tough method of bullying, when you are not noticed as if you have vanished into thin air. And smiling, she asked herself in her mind what they were trying to say to her, that these girls were mocking their teachers like that. But she said out loud that she was very pleased to meet her, and told me her name, Im Han Lim. Then she added that she hoped they could become friends. But in her head, she said that the next target for bullying is the person who breaks the rules, especially if there is someone who talks to her. Suddenly one of the students raised his hand and addressed the teacher. It was the leader of the group, who had long, dyed, light purple hair. With a smile, she said that the new teacher had a very nice hair color. And the longer she looked at it, the more she liked it. So then she asked where she got her hair dyed. This question surprised the employee, who had been working at the school for quite some time and had never received such questions. The woman calmly replied that it happened in a hairdresser's in Xiongbukune. She said that if she was interested, she could give her their business card. The student happily clapped her hands and thanked her. Next she asked how old she was because she looked quite young. The lady replied that she was 26. The students then asked if she had a boyfriend. The lady calmly replied that she did not have one at the moment and was completely free. The group of teenagers were talking among themselves and could not decide who would ask the next question. However, one of them finally decided and asked how many plastic surgeries she had had. After that, they all sat back and waited for the reaction. Without waiting for an answer, the gang members started talking to each other, making various assumptions. Among them were, Oh shit, you must have had to fix a lot of things. From the top of your head to the tips of your toes, it's all done. If you redo everything, it's more than a thousand operations. The woman did not like this very much and tried to remember all the words spoken in her direction. Then she decided to answer the question. So, smiling, she said that she had only had one operation, and it was for breast reduction. By saying this, she knew that she would make them all look at her in surprise. Everyone was quiet and almost did not move, because none of them could have expected such an answer. This went on for several minutes, but the new teacher took advantage of this awkward moment by bending to the right and left, saying that she was a sports fan but that her size made it uncomfortable for her to move. Then she asked with reproach that they were not really interested in reduction surgery, so there was no point in talking about the price. The teenagers continued to sit silently with their mouths open. Suddenly, someone from the crowd said out loud, Fuck, that's unlucky! And the lady began to dart quickly between the desks to spot the person who had allowed himself to say that out loud. She moved a little to the right and put her hands down, and asked who had just said that. The two girls who were looking at something on their smartphones replied that they were not talking to her at the moment. One of them held the phone up to her face, showing it to the whole class, and said with a sly smile that it was just a YouTube video. And then she added that the woman had red hair like a witch. And then the lady tried to smile nervously, but it didn't work very well, so she loudly called them girls which in their understanding was very rude and was used on a par with the word maid. The students did not like this very much, and one of them, who was wearing a burgundy hoodie, angrily rose to her feet and shouted at her to repeat what she had just said. The woman responded calmly, even with a smile, saying that she was not talking to her now. And in my mind, I thought that this was the way it was supposed to be. Suddenly, she ended the conversation by saying that it was the end of the lesson and that she would see me at the next lesson. This behavior and attitude surprised the students in the class. A girl with purple hair opened her mouth and said with enthusiasm that it was very interesting. 
they are already looking forward to the next meeting. The satisfied teacher slowly walked out the door and looked back at the teenagers for a moment, thinking to herself how sweet education tastes. During one of the long breaks, the new teacher and her mentor met in the school's backyard, and the quiet girl began to ask angrily if the lady knew what she had said to her before entering the classroom. Without waiting for an answer, she repeated herself, so that the lady would not try to do something impossible. The red-haired woman folded one arm across her chest and rubbed her beard with her left, and said quietly, Of course, it's obvious that the students are a little aggressive. And then she asked if it was normal for them to hit teachers. Seeing the frightened face of the interlocutor, she said that she understood everything perfectly well, because she had also studied at a girls' school, and these children needed to be set on the right path. The teacher clenched her right hand into a fist in anger and said that she knew nothing at all. The employee of the Ministry of Education was surprised by this reaction, because this girl seemed too modest and shy to show such emotions. The next thing the lady did was to put her hands to the side and say a little more calmly that children are not only cruel, but also very cunning. Suddenly, a strange whistling sound was heard in the mountain, which interrupted the conversation of the two teachers at the most interesting place, and they were forced to stop for a few seconds. And the red-haired girl looked up to see what was going on and noticed a pot from under a flower pot flying straight at them. So she didn't get confused, but quickly grabbed her new colleague by the blouse and pulled her to the right, and the pot fell on the spot where she was standing and all its small parts flew in different directions. It scared the teacher very much. For a few minutes she stood there hugging her interlocutor to calm down and come to her senses. The lady from the ministry looked at the lady and said that she understood everything. A second later, she added that this was why she had been sent here and finally said that she was an employee of the Education Bureau. After that, high school students began to look out of the windows of the second floor and asked if the teacher was feeling well. Observing this inhuman reaction, the woman in the suit asked the school employee to explain to her in detail why the school had slipped into such a state. While the lady was still coming to her senses, a student with light purple hair appeared in the window and happily said that it seemed to be the wind. Then the story goes on from the man, and he says that at first he was very respected in this class, because he was the class teacher of class 2-4 and a part-time history teacher named Ko Yun Su. When he met his students in the corridor, he would smile at them happily, and one of the students would ask him, with a grimace, if he could stop eating in the homeless shelter. Teacher Ko Yun Su always treated his students with kindness and respect, as he claimed that there were no cruel students in the world. He was a good teacher and was a role model for the students in his third year of teaching. The gentleman came to school and went straight to the classroom, where he took his seat and told the children that he was their new class teacher. After that, he suggested that they should have a good year, as he hoped they would get along well. Teacher Ko's black streak began when he became responsible for Hanairi, the main rebel of the class, who had her hair dyed light purple. One day, he saw a yellow e-cigarette on their desk, which no one even tried to hide. It was just lying there as if it was a normal thing for a school student. So the teacher called the girl to discuss it with her. When they were sitting at the table, the girl said that the thing was not hers and that someone was probably just trying to set her up. The teacher calmly replied that he had seen her smoking it this morning around the corner of the school. The student said that there are studies that prove that e-cigarettes do not harm teenagers. The gentleman replied that he thought she was just trying it out of curiosity, so he hoped the young lady didn't smoke and didn't harm her health. The girl sadly bowed her head, put her hands on her knees, and said that he was right because a friend had suggested it to her, but she did not know what it was. Then she put her right hand to her chin and said with a sweet expression that she would not do it again, and finally asked him to forgive her for the first time. After this conversation, the teacher returned to the teacher's office where one of his colleagues asked him if he had spoken to Han Ai Ri yesterday. She told him to be careful, because last year one or two teachers were convicted without even touching her. After listening carefully, the gentleman smiled and said that Avery would not do that. After all, they had a good conversation. He explained everything to her, and she thought about her behavior. 
and after a minute he continued, if the children understand. But before he could finish, someone came into the office and shouted loudly, addressing the man by name. It turned out to be an angry principal who did not come in, but simply flew into the room, unable to contain his anger, and asked the man if he knew where he was going to call. But without waiting for an answer, he told him that he was going to call the Education Committee. And in the end, he added that he could not have molested the student in the psychology classroom. The man was very surprised to hear this, as he had not expected to receive such accusations against him. An anonymous complaint was filed with the local education department, alleging that Teacher Ko had raped student I. Re. The decision was made to suspend Teacher Ko and revoke his teaching license. The man defended his innocence. However, he did not file an appeal, although he was not satisfied with the investigation against the victim. Criticism of people around him and slanting looks. The man still could not forgive the betrayal of his students, and as a result, he died. After that, the young lady said touchingly that it was really her who had written and left that anonymous statement at the Ministry of Education. It turned out to be one of the girls from the high school's rebel gang who began to think things through because she had actually heard the sounds coming from the psychology classroom. And besides, Airy said that he had molested her. At this, the student calmly said what she was talking about, because it was just a joke, and the teacher had misunderstood her. And then she began to think about why Seo Hyun had said this without asking her. The girl, frightened by what had happened, put her hand to her chest and said with tears in her eyes that she only wanted to protect her friend. The student with purple hair said it was just a misunderstanding. Even if there was a problem, they would write it off as a joke. After the girl finished speaking, someone asked her a question. What does she think about Ko Yun Hyun's death? What does she think about Ko Yun Sung's death? This surprised the young lady a little bit because it was evident in her wide open eyes. Rolling her eyes to the sky, the student began to say calmly that she was sorry that this happened to her teacher because of such a small misunderstanding. She added that people die all the time, whether it's a car accident or something else. Then she began to smile sweetly and correct a strand of hair behind her left ear, saying that isn't the best way out the one you chose or something like that. It turned out to be a video of an interview with Kim So Hyun and Han Ai Ri. A black-haired man in a classic suit was watching it on a computer at the Ministry of Education. One of my colleagues said she would show him the statement that had been sent to the Ministry of Education. At the end, she warned him that he should keep quiet about the content of the interview he had just watched. The next day, the new teacher, who had red hair, was walking down the corridor of the school holding in her right hand the senior class magazine she was on her way to. Cautiously opening the door, she began to slowly peer into the classroom where the students she had just met yesterday should be sitting and waiting for her lesson. Suddenly, a sound startled her. It turned out to be an ordinary firecracker. And then she heard surprise. It was the same joyful children holding a cake in their hands, saying that they were very happy that she had come to their school. One of the students came a little closer and said that last time there was not a very pleasant atmosphere and it turned out to be just a fever. So they suggested that she forget about it and become better friends. After listening carefully, the young lady began to think that even though she was from the Bureau, it was not an easy task to correct these children. But she would not give up halfway through. Suddenly, she turned her head to the left and noticed that not all the students were standing around her, but a girl with purple hair named Han Ai Ri was sitting at the last desk by the window, she did not approach, as she always stays in her seat to observe the action from the outside and to notice some pros and cons that could later be used against her. The teacher's thoughts were interrupted by a student standing right in front of her, holding a cake with a candle in her hands, telling her to blow it out as soon as possible. The woman held her hair so that it did not touch the sweetness, bent down a little, and blew so that the candle went out immediately. The phrase, welcome, was written on the cake. After that, she looked up at the lady who held it and noticed a sly smile on her face and a stunning idea in her eyes. And right at that moment, the student raised the cake to face level and began to point it at the teacher, who stood there in surprise and watched. 
However, the woman managed to knock it away with her right foot, and the cake flew off and landed directly on the head of the girl with purple hair. She obviously hadn't expected this development, because she made giant eyes in surprise. The classmate who was supposed to deliver the blow turned her head to the leader and shouted, E! in surprise. And everyone present opened their mouths at what they saw. The woman, smiling sweetly, first apologized. Then she began to explain that her reflexes had kicked in, and she hadn't expected him to fly all the way there. The student simply could not contain her anger. She did not like it. Because everything had already started to melt and run down her face, the teacher realized that she had to save the situation. So she decided to act scared and said how come he had come so hard. Then she quickly ran up to the student and, with her arms outstretched, asked how she felt. Maybe she had hit something and needed help. The student continued to sit with her head bowed and asked the woman how she would be responsible for this. This surprised the teacher a little, so she opened her mouth. The teacher looked closely at the student's head and noticed that all the blood was quickly starting to appear and wondered what to do next, because it could not be left like that. And in the head of the girl with purple hair, the thought began to appear that she would simply destroy this vile teacher. What a scum she was. The red-haired girl didn't think twice about grabbing the lady's head and slamming her face against the desk so that the rest of the cake flew in different directions. All the students who watched this action were seriously frightened and opened their mouths and began to shout, What? Interrupting each other. Continuing to hold the student's head, the teacher clarified whether she wanted to ask her how she would be responsible for her actions. At the end, she asked if that was what she wanted to ask. Then she pointed out that it was just an ordinary cake, so why was she bleeding so much? What was wrong with this cake? Looking at the remains of the cake on the floor, she noticed several sharp blades in the middle of it. She turned to the students and asked them if they had tried to disfigure her face with them. The furious student got to her feet, leaned her hands on the table and shouted that she didn't know. They had done it all and pointed to her classmates. The lady calmly replied that she would introduce herself again. She told them that she was a member of the ministry's education bureau and that her name was Imhan Rim. The girl was very surprised to hear this information as she stared at her already large eyes. However, the woman calmly continued that since the student was constantly looking at her phone, she must have seen a video of Nahua Jin's teaching methods. The teacher then grabbed the student by the chin and leaned over to look her straight in the eye and asked her what was wrong. And then she said that she didn't look as cute as him. After school, the teacher went to the gym to take out her anger on a punching bag by hitting it hard. After more than 40 minutes of such intense training, the woman had to stop and take a break. So she began to take off her boxing gloves. Sweat dripped down her face and she was breathing heavily. However, out of the corner of her eye, she saw someone watching her and immediately asked what was wrong with her that she was seeing him here. Her black-haired colleague from the ministry took out a bottle of energy drink from a bag and smilingly asked her if things were so bad at school that she even decided to let out her anger. The lady replied that this was not true at all because she had just decided to warm up. Then he threw her drink in the tin can and the woman started to catch it with a smile. Then, of course, she thanked him for his kindness. The teacher sat in the ring and asked the man if he had watched the video of the police investigation. The man replied that he had, and that he had learned even more than she thought. The teacher died, and they smiled slyly. After a moment of silence, he added that even his head realized that the case was not clean. After all, they had perfectly hedged their bets when they charged Suho, even though her innocence was obvious. The man went on to say that several teaching methods should be carefully considered, because it would be useless if they acted covertly. As she got to her feet, the woman asked the captain how he felt about entrusting all this work to her. The gentleman, in turn, turned to face her and listened attentively to her proposal. He approached the pear tree, and the lady put her right hand on it and added, No matter how aggressive the opponent is, he still won't be able to treat girls harshly. And after saying that, she began to beat it quickly with her hands, which were made into a fist. After a few minutes, I noticed that she was a graduate of a women's school, so she could choose the right method of training. 
The man, watching all her actions, simply melted before her eyes with pleasure. However, her colleague kept asking questions, and one of them was whether he wanted to fight with her, and whether he would be okay, because he had been retired for a long time. For a few minutes he stood there quietly watching, but then he remembered what the question was, so he pulled himself together and answered briefly and clearly that he refused. The next morning before school, the high school students read the news about what the Bureau of Education had done to the school that had visited before theirs, and what they saw shocked them, to put it mildly. It turned out that the class leader and her group of girls were looking for these certificates. One of them stressed that even this man had sent the deputy's son to prison. After that, I asked if they would do the same to them. There was no answer. But the next assumption was that perhaps the new teacher had come here because of Yun Su's death. The friend was frightened and said that if that was the case, then they were definitely finished because there was no way back. The young lady with purple hair was sitting quietly on a chair with a plaster on her forehead. A second later, I asked her what she was afraid of. She just needed to behave as usual. That's all. She added that she had learnt something. Their stay here is only two weeks. And she asked her friends what this woman could do for them since she was alone. Suddenly, I heard a voice behind me asking, Who told her they were only here for two weeks? It turned out to be a red-haired teacher as she reached for the leader's phone saying that they would be here until they got the school back to the way it should be. Because Nahua Jin's teacher is so competent, he was able to get the job done in just two weeks. Carefully looking through the contents of her smartphone, the woman added that she was not really that experienced, so she could stay until her graduation. The student was furious and jumped to her feet, leaned on the desk with her right hand and angrily called the teacher a bitch and ordered her to give her phone back. However, she attacked the wrong person. The woman held a baton in her hand and struck the student hard on the limb that was on the surface of the desk. The girl's face twisted in pain, and she tried to hold back a scream that was begging to be released. Then the red-haired woman leaned close to the leader's face and spoke, saying that the girl should forgive her, but she was older. She also asked why such a young lady could not restrain herself from swearing and allowed herself to speak to the teacher in such a tone. Watching the student, she raised her eyebrows and, opening her eyes wide, angrily ordered her to look her straight in the eye without looking away. Having calmed down a little and mastered her emotions, the student did not do the task, but first turned her head away and looked to the right. After a minute, she decided to change her position, so she lowered her head and looked down to the left, making an expression as if she was thinking about something. At this point, the teacher turned to face everyone and pointed to the right and said that this applies to everyone, so they should put their smartphones in the box on the first desk. She added that all students were forbidden to use their phones during the learning process. The students were very surprised and upset by this new rule, because no one had ever restricted them like this, so they started to protest, saying what had they done. The woman added, smiling, that they should check the notice board after school. After all, it was written in detail who had caused them to be detained for four months. The leader could not help but feel angry, because all these words were directed at her. So she was not happy to hear it, because the authority that had been built up over the years could easily collapse. The next lesson in this class was taught by another teacher, who told the class that animals also have emotions and the need for socialization. But unlike humans, it is all based on instincts and people can grow into a personality only in a society with certain traditions and values. After her monologue, she turned her face to the students and looked carefully at all the desks, asking what characteristics of people she had mentioned. Not seeing a single hand raised, she said that Han Ai Ri would answer this question. The girl was drawing various pictures in her workbook with a pen and did not hear what was being asked. The next lesson was taught by a different teacher who, after explaining the material, also turned to the girl and asked her to write down the solution on the board. The third lesson was taught by a new teacher, who, standing at his desk, asked the young woman to clarify something for him with a serious expression. The last lesson was taught by a young and beautiful teacher who, standing at the blackboard, wrote a sentence that needed to be unscrambled, and Han Ri was supposed to do it. 
At the end of the day, she couldn't take it anymore. So she jumped to her feet, leaned on her desk and shouted at the whole class, saying that she didn't know anything, and emphasizing why she was the only one being asked since the morning, as if there were no other people in the room. Suddenly, the same ominous pointer flew into the wall behind the student, and the class teacher asked her menacingly if she was proud of not knowing anything. Then she raised her weapon and put it on her right shoulder and said, Shouldn't a young lady study textbooks like this if she knows nothing? The girl was still angry at what had been happening all day. However, a minute later she heard an order to kneel with her hands in the air. However, the lady did not resist for a long time, but decided to do everything she was asked to do at once. So while fixing her hair, she emphasized that it looked somehow childish. And having approached a little closer, she smiled slyly and put her hand to her chest and asked if the teacher had any evidence that she had harassed the staff of this educational institution. She added that suspicion without evidence is not a violation of human rights. This did not affect the class teacher, because she did not show any emotion on her face that would indicate anything. And after a minute of waiting, she quickly knocked the student down, and she leaned against the lockers at the back of the classroom to avoid falling. The girl could barely stand on her toes. This scared her a little and hurt her, because her head had not yet fully healed, and she was hit again. Then the teacher approached the student, who crouched down and put her knee on her legs, pressing down firmly to create uncomfortable conditions. The woman also grabbed both of her arms and pushed them against the lockers and asked, Svetlana, have you said everything? However, the girl answered these questions with a short, It hurts. Leaning down slightly to the student's face, the teacher continued to ask if there was any evidence that the school staff had asked her to answer their questions. And finally, she added that in fact her suspicions were similar to the girl's. At this point, the lady with purple hair looked at her offender angrily and incomprehensively. After that, the lady from the Ministry of Education's bureau turned to the teacher who was teaching the last lesson and told her that there was another rule for the students. The children were very interested, so they turned their faces back and listened attentively to the fact that from now on, if at least one student misbehaved in class, the whole class would be held responsible. So, at the end, with a serious expression on her face, she looked around at the high school students and told them to kneel down and raise their hands, and that they should do it now, not to find out anything else. After the incident in the girls' toilet, one of the students called her class teacher a fool and said that she was fed up with her because she was going everywhere with their class. Another in the group began to wonder what they had done wrong. One of the students, who had short brown hair, angrily asked if it would really last two weeks after all. One day seems like an eternity. How can we endure it? The leader clarified by saying, Really? And then held up her yellow e-cigarette to her friend, interrupting her thoughts. Then she raised her hand in the air and asked with an angry expression what she had to endure when her anger was overwhelming. After saying that, she slapped her classmate hard on the right cheek, which surprised and frightened the girls in her group, and they asked in fright what was E.R. doing. However, this did not stop the student, and she continued to slap the young lady's face. The girl could not understand why she was being treated like this, so she hid behind her hands and asked them to stop. After a few minutes of fighting, the leader told Sung Hee that the lady's face was swollen and bleeding, because she had been beaten by the madwoman from the Education Bureau. After taking one puff of her e-cigarette, the lady with purple hair said with a sly smile that there was a payphone across the street from the school. So she had to call someone. After a few hours, Chairman Yuk Seok arrived at the school dressed in a brown classic suit and sporting a short haircut. She got out of her car and stopped for a second in front of the front door. Walking down the corridor, she knocked softly on the door of the senior classroom and began to open it gently. A woman with red hair stood in the classroom with a pointer on her right shoulder. The furious lady opened her eyes and mouth wide and began to shout loudly that her daughter's face was covered in blood and then asked where the red-haired teacher was. And turning her gaze to the new class teacher, she said, Oh, there you are. The woman from the Education Bureau did not understand who this lady was and why she was shouting at the whole class. 
However, before she could figure it out, the angry woman ran up to the teacher and slapped her hard on the right cheek, saying, You're such a whore. A second later, she began to tell her off, because if she was a teacher, she should be teaching children, not beating them. She added that she somehow managed to teach without beating. After all, they had just recently dealt with a teacher who was a pervert. She threatened to do the same to her and called her a bribe taker. The teacher was tired of listening to all this. So she responded by slapping this angry mother of one of the high school students hard on the left cheek with her right hand. Everyone in the classroom opened their mouths in surprise, for they had expected anything but this. Even the teacher who was teaching the lesson was shocked. The woman who came to the school to attend the class fell to the floor, and her handbag fell out of her hands, scattering all the documents around her. The teacher nevertheless decided to tell his colleague that this lady was a representative of the educational work in their school. The lady with red hair folded her arms across her chest and said, So what? Looking carefully at her attacker, the bureau worker calmly said that if she was a representative, she could afford to hit anyone without fully understanding the situation. A minute later, she added that if she was so offended, this respectable lady should call the Minister of Education and clarify everything with him. The mother, angry and confused, rubbed her cheek, which was sore from the blow. After all this, the class teacher turned to her students and began to look at everyone's faces to see how they reacted to everything that had happened. She smiled and told them that if they wanted to, they could try any method they wanted, but that she would not be affected, because she would stay here until they corrected their behavior. And in the end she added that the more they resist, the worse it will be. The leader leaned her head over the desk and started biting her nails to calm herself down and control her emotions. A few days later, at the first lesson, the leader read, Road, be lock to filai for, Sam days deo to employ error. He din fauzi industrious. After ten days under the supervision of members of the Education Bureau, the girl calmly answered the question put to her, saying, This situation kulidi have been evolved. And it was clear that Han Iri's character had changed a lot. This was even noticed by one of the teachers, who was listening carefully to the student's answer. Of course, the student did not immediately succumb to re-education. One day, while confidently walking down the corridor of the school with the girls of her gang, she was fixing a strand of hair and throwing it over her shoulder. Even after the visit of the stern and demanding representative Yuk Sung, with whom they crossed paths after school in that ominous corridor among the crowd of students, they tried to collectively continue to do harm discreetly passing notes with specific instructions to each other while no one was looking. However, they only thought that no one noticed, because the moment the letter was in their hand, someone suddenly grabbed it and started to take it out to read the contents. And after reading the content a little, she noticed that it was a note from a girl, and I asked, Isn't it interesting? As it turned out, there was quite a bit written there. But in fact, and in large block letters, so that it was not clear who had written it. It read, Tomorrow we all don't come to school. After reading it, the teacher smiled ominously and ordered all the second graders to quickly go to the sports ground, because she had a very interesting idea to spend their time. But every time, Im Hanrim figured out their intentions, so all the second graders were always punished for it. This time, they walked around the football field, crouching with their hands behind their heads. After several days of unsuccessful attempts to frame a teacher from the Ministry of Education and finally get rid of her, the leader pierced her right leg with a pen. She inflicted this pain on herself while sitting on the toilet in one of the stalls of the women's toilet. For several minutes she sat there and tried to come to her senses, but it was taking a while, and the young lady would squirm and say quietly, Shit, shit, and then tears would start to fall. When she recovered a little, she looked up and noticed that her legs would soon become like a hulk's. So she said she just wanted to die, because she couldn't take it anymore. A few minutes later, she overheard one of the high school students say that it was all because of that strange little fucker named Hanai Ri. This surprised the young lady. After all, why would she ignore her teachers and make up all sorts of nonsense? Another lady emphasized that it was because of the leader. 
The third one, who was painting her eyelashes in the mirror, also agreed with this, and added that if she continued in this spirit, it would be very harmful to her. Then the fact that even the third graders are thinking of beating her up was mentioned, because they can't use their phones either because of this stupid woman, to which another girl replied laughing that they were not the only ones who wanted this, because even when the Bureau finishes here, it will still be difficult for her to be in the school. As a result, all the students blamed Ari and told the school administration, and the girl who was like a queen among the students fell to the very bottom. It seemed to the teacher that the children who accused the leader of everything acted ignobly. After all, they were all her accomplices. And when the young lady was answering in the first lesson, there was an incident where she apologized to the teacher and said that she did not know how to read the word that was next. The rest of the classmates were sitting at their desks quietly and calmly. The woman, standing at her desk next to the blackboard with a sad expression on her face, replied that the correct reading was irresponsible, which means irresponsible. Then she said that she was done reading and ordered the student to take her seat. The girl sat down in confusion and began to look carefully at something in her workbook, saying to herself, what's in this sentence? She was closely watched by an employee from the Ministry of Education, who had been standing behind her leaning on her wooden pointer throughout the lesson. She found it very boring, because she was so bored that she could just fall asleep on the spot and collapse to the ground after her boring day at work at the martial arts school, which was located a few blocks away from the school. A woman with red hair was dressed in a black, tight-fitting sports uniform and was fighting with someone in the ring taking out her anger and pent-up energy. Her opponent was a colleague from the ministry with long black hair. He was skillfully trying to dodge the angry young lady's punches. During the fight, the man smiled and asked if the high school student named Han Ai had finally calmed down. He clarified that she was the one with purple hair. Striking again, the woman replied that she had, and suggested that all her friends and classmates had probably turned their backs on her and were not talking to her. Then, looking directly into the eyes of the gentleman, who was holding his hands in fists in front of him, she raised her right leg, bent at the knee, upwards. She pointed it at the head of her opponent, who stood in his place without moving, just smiled sweetly, and tilted his head with a mysterious look. However, there was no impact. The next thing that happened was that they stood in front of each other with their hands down. At the same time, the woman bent down as if to bow and thanked him for such a productive sparring match. She walked to one side of the ring and began to take her white towel. She said that it is not easy to regain the lost authority, because when the Bureau's activities are over, it will be impossible to control the children. Wiping her face, which was dripping with sweat, she added that the students would not be able to be stopped, even if they left slowly and slowly. Suddenly, she felt a sharp pain in her right arm and turned her head to the side and noticed that she had been hit by the same black-haired colleague. The teacher said with a surprised expression, Wow, I was so surprised. It... And for a minute, she stood and looked into the eyes of the man standing opposite her. Then the girl decided to defuse the situation, so she waved her hand and said, smiling, that it had come very unexpectedly. But she stressed that it was not like him at all because if it was a training session, then maybe. My colleague calmly replied that she should be more careful. After all, if they weren't easily broken, there would be no point in coming. With a serious expression, he added that she shouldn't forget, because that's the reason the office works, because there are some weirdos who are devoid of common sense. When it was already quite dark outside, the teacher who was teaching the first lesson in the high school where the leader was trying to answer the question, walked out. As she walked away, she reflected on the fact that the teachers were no longer intimidated and the lessons were easier to teach. However, for some unknown reason, she was still worried. After all, not so long ago, Ari was having fun as if she had no breaks at all. Images of a girl with purple long hair came to mind. It scared her a bit, and she said that she shouldn't think about it but she believed that this student was a demon that could not be pacified. And again, she saw the girl smiling sweetly and tucking a strand of hair behind her ear. 
However, in this last lesson, she appeared so defenseless as she stood at the desk and read the new text, and the woman began to assume that maybe she doubted her. As she approached her house, she asked herself if they had gone too far when they started to be too demanding of Ari. As she walked up the stairs to the desired floor, she held her purse tightly under her left arm and continued to think about it all over again. When she reached her landing, she was startled for a few seconds because she saw someone she could not have imagined being there. It was the same high school student sitting on the floor. The girl was upset, so she pulled her legs under her and leaned her head on them. The teacher asked her name in surprise, Hun A. Ri, and then she asked what she was doing here because it was quite late and it was already dark outside. The student looked up and was very upset and crying bitterly. After a little bit of self-control, she asked the woman she had come to what she should do next. However, she did not give her an answer, because she started to tell her that all the children and teachers blamed her for the fact that the Bureau had come to them, and they all look at her as a bastard. The young lady emphasized that of course she was doing the wrong thing, because she had also thought about it. And in the end, she asked the woman, who still couldn't properly recover from her surprise, how she could apologize, because she simply didn't know what to do to be forgiven. And then the teacher had a flashback to her former class teacher, who said that there are no evil students, because there must always be a reason why children behave the way they do. Therefore, you first need to find out the reason, and then direct the child to the right path. And the last phrase, that's the job of a teacher, just put everything in its place and let the woman decide how to proceed. So she knelt down on the circle right in front of the girl, gently hugged her, and told her to get up. She offered to go and discuss everything. Then the teacher went to her door and put her right index finger to the intercom, where she had to switch off the alarm. She began to slowly and carefully enter her security code, tapping on the blue backlit numbers on the touchscreen. The student standing behind her watched intently and tried to remember the order in which the numbers were entered, as she had already prepared a plan for the development of events. When she opened the door, the tired woman turned her head towards the student and kindly invited her to enter her modest home. However, this was not what the teacher had imagined. The student put her hand to her mouth so that she could not make a sound. Then she pushed her to the ground and put her hands to her neck as if trying to strangle her. The class leader's eyes were giant, as if someone had glazed them over. The woman tried to resist, so the attacker grabbed her arms tightly and still said a long mmm, hoping that the girl would come to her senses or that someone would hear and come to her aid. As it turned out, two other girls from the high school gang were standing behind her watching their classmate. They were a little surprised by what they saw because they hadn't expected it to look like this. The girl with long purple hair continued to sit on top of the teacher and asked her if she knew what she was doing, that when you go to the main page of the Education Bureau, you can see a very interesting feature that allows you to leave an anonymous request. And in order not to tell everything for a long time, the girl said that in short, isn't the Bureau the place through which you can report like a little cunning mouse? Then she pressed her hand on the teacher's face and angrily asked if she had done it. Had she reported what was happening in their school? Nothing could stop the student and she continued to shout that it was just a joke. But the teacher decided to sell his students. While all these words were being heard throughout the room, the victim emphasized to herself that neither she nor the teacher, Eun Su, had made a mistake. However, her thoughts were again interrupted by the leader, who said that from now on the jokes were over, and it was time to get serious. The assistants standing behind her took out a box cutter and scissors. They leaned over the woman, who was very frightened and could see their faces as if their eyes were glowing red, and their mouths were wide open. The woman concluded that these children were devoid of humanity, and were simply monsters. Suddenly, this discussion was interrupted by a loud and unexpected knock on the front door of the apartment. It frightened all the children who were present. After the knock, a woman's voice was heard saying that she was a neighbor, so she came to ask why they were making so much noise. And the second question was whether the teacher was okay. This did not scare the leader too much, because she allowed herself to shout loudly to the lady behind the door. 
first telling her to shut the fuck up and get out of here, because it would be over soon. However, this did not stop the neighbor, and she started to open the door slowly. Behind it was the person the students hadn't expected to see. It was the same teacher from the bureau, who had red hair and was dressed in a modern sports suit. The lady came into the room and said that the students had gone too far and had already allowed themselves too much. And looking angrily into the eyes of the student leader, the woman raised her eyebrows and said that if they were not going to open the door, they had better count to three, because it could be the end. And after saying that, the woman began to count slowly. Raz, Tua, three. The student looked at the teacher from behind her with a frightened look and couldn't figure out what to do next. What would be the best solution? A few days ago, when this very calm teacher was returning home from work and took the lift to her floor, she saw something that surprised her. There was a woman standing right at the door of the neighboring apartment, opening it with her keys. It turned out to be her new colleague from the Ministry of Education. She was also surprised by the person she saw. The teacher addressed the lady as Teacher Lim. The lady turned her head to face her interlocutor and replied, Yes. Good evening, Teacher Damim. Opening her mouth slightly, the school employee asked if she also lived here. The woman replied that she had rented an apartment for the duration of the school's activities because it was close enough to the school. The lady with red hair began to straighten her hair in the back and smilingly asked if she also lived here. What a coincidence. After training in the gym, the man from the bureau said that human psychology is quite an interesting thing when you realize that the goal you want to blame is unattainable, so you direct your anger to another. These children will definitely blame the wrong person and thus put a spoke in the wheel, so their next step will be to find out who reported it to the management. Turning his face, he added that it was obvious that Han A. Ri would blame the informant, who she thought was the only problem. So he set a task for his colleague to find out who the next target would be. That's why when she heard a strange noise, she decided to go to her neighbor's house and ask if she was okay. She realized that the leader of the senior class was inside and ordered her to open the door. Not receiving any response, the lady finally added menacingly that if she didn't do it within three seconds, it would be her biggest mistake. She started the countdown by saying one. The students turned their heads to the door and were surprised, so one of them said what this teacher from the office was doing here. The in, too, was heard behind the door. The leader was still sitting there, thinking about what to do. The teacher they had attacked asked Ari to open the door and then offered to discuss the matter in detail. She made the assumption that nothing had happened that she was ready to forget everything and start their relationship all over again. The student still couldn't figure out what to do in the situation they were in. After a second, she turned her head to the victim and asked him with a mysterious smile if he wanted to die, and then added that it was just a joke. Then she got to her feet, walked over to her friend, and snatched a blue-handled clerical knife from her hands. This action surprised and frightened the student. She turned around and sat on top of the teacher and held the knife up with both hands. The victim began to cover her face and head with her limbs. However, the same friend grabbed the girl by the arms and quickly pushed her against the wall, holding her limbs up, asking her what she was doing. When she received no answer, the furious student began to shout that they had only agreed to scare her a little and put the woman in her place. She asked if she was really going to hit her and she asked if she was crazy. Why did she allow herself to do this? After that, the friend stood there waiting for an answer to her questions. However, she did not receive any, but instead felt a severe pain in her right arm because the leader had cut it with a clerical knife. The girl fell to her knees and held the injured limb, screaming loudly, Ah! The student with purple hair quickly jumped to her feet. She calmly said to herself, Was our CO Hyun scared? She asked how she dared to stop her. How did they have the courage to attack her? The calm teacher went over to the injured high school student and asked her if she was okay or if she needed help. The third member of the gang turned to the door and threw out her cold steel, namely scissors, and said that her friend was just some kind of crazy person. The student went to the intercom and pressed one of the many buttons with her right index finger to open the front door. As the door slowly opened, the bureau worker looked through the small crack 
eyebrows raised in anger, at those in the apartment and was already making a plan to deal with them. With wide eyes, the teacher said that three had long since ended and that the leader had wasted her precious time on nonsense. The high school girl opened her mouth at what she saw because she was surprised by what she saw, because she did not expect the woman to be able to get to them so quickly. And the girl came up with what she thought was a brilliant idea. So she picked up speed and began to move quickly from one end of the room to the other, where there was a large glass door to the balcony. She grabbed the handle and opened the door, and stepping outside, she quickly leaned over the not-so-high railing and began to... She began to fall straight to the ground, head down, with her legs thrown up. After a few minutes of this free fall, the girl landed on her back right in the bushes that were planted next to the house. After lying there for a minute, covered in scratches and bruises, the student began to slowly get to her feet, ooing and eyeing in severe pain. A teacher from the Ministry of Education was watching the student's actions from the same ominous balcony, placing her left new shoe on the railing. Then she decided that she had to act immediately and kicked off with her foot and jumped straight to where her student was lying. Landing on her feet in the bushes, the woman began to watch the young lady, who was already trying to escape as she ran along the alley, looking back to see if the teacher would follow her. Suddenly, the red-haired lady started calling the student's name loudly and shouted that she could not let her go after what she had done. However, this did not stop the girl, and looking back, the young lady continued to run and think about how to get away from this place and from this lady as soon as possible. After running a few meters at this pace, the lady saw something she clearly did not expect, and something that could help her out right now in this difficult situation. It turned out to be two security guards of the residential complex who were patrolling the area in case someone needed any help. The girl stopped a few steps away from them, put her hand on her chest and, with a scared look on her face, asked the men to help her. And pointing to the teacher who was running after her, she said that this mad woman wanted to kill them. The woman stopped because she did not expect the student to act so viciously and twist everything in her favor. The student hid behind the guards and began to cover her face with her hands, saying that she was very scared. The men reacted instantly, so they turned to the teacher and ordered her to stay where she was. The woman from the bureau was very angry at this development, because what this young lady did was simply unthinkable. And here were these two men who were not aware of what had happened, defending this shameless woman. One of them asked the lady what was going on, and what has she done with the child. The woman replied that it was a misunderstanding because she was a teacher at the school where the young lady was studying. The second man asked if she was a teacher and offered to check her identification card. The lady replied in confusion that she had neither her wallet nor her phone with her at the moment. The student was quite amused by this, and while everyone was distracted by this, she simply turned around and started running down the alley, smiling ominously. At the same time, the teacher was being held tightly by the guards, preventing her from following the student. The woman was shouting angrily after her. Hey, Hanai Ri, stop! However, the bureau worker was so furious that she started pushing the men as hard as she could to get between them and follow the student, and yet she managed to do so. And without looking back, the woman began to run along the route the leader had taken. The men didn't even have time to come to their senses and understand how she did it. The woman decided to go back to the guards and shouted that her name was Han Lim from the Education Bureau. She promised that they would meet tomorrow and sort it all out. The men just froze in their seats because they were so surprised by what had just happened. And they began to say to themselves, The Bureau of Education. Someone must have heard about this somewhere. At that time, in the apartment, the teacher was bandaging the injured student's arm with an elastic bandage and saying that it was good that the wound was not so deep. Then the woman was silent for several minutes waiting for at least some words from her students, who had broken into her apartment in the middle of the evening and started a showdown. After receiving no response, the teacher turned to Seo Hyun and told her that she had looked at the lists and realized that she had gone to high school with A. Ri. And she asked if she had always been like that. Had she always been so disrespectful and insolent to adults and friends? After hearing the question, the girl sat depressed, 
and thought about how best to start her story. At this time, the young lady with purple hair had reached her house and was quickly climbing the stairs to the floor she needed. She held on tightly to the railing to keep from falling, because she had walked a long way, and her legs were very sore. She ran to the door leading to the roof and quickly opened it, and ran in with a smile, thinking she had managed to get away from the teacher. Then she turned around and grabbed the handle to hold the door with her hands, so that no one could come in through it and cause harm. However, she did not have time to do this, because she had already received a strong blow from the door right on her right cheek, and that is why her lips started bleeding. As it turned out, the teacher caught up with her and kicked the door again with her left foot, so that the student who was standing next to it flew back several meters. While the student was lying on the roof of the house with her arms and legs spread out, the furious woman walked confidently towards her, clenching her hands into fists. She came a little closer and angrily raised her eyebrows, shouting, asking if she hadn't been clear. After all, the lady had warned that this would be her biggest mistake in life. The girl leaned against one of the walls and began to slowly rise, frightened. Meanwhile, in the apartment, her friend began to tell her that in high school, Ari was not like this. Because she had a beautiful face and a bright personality, she was very popular. She was smart enough to do well in school. Then, a high school student with short brown hair tilted her head down sadly and quietly added that there was an incident. At this time, another brilliant idea came to the student on the roof and she calmly said that it was true. So she raised her head and looked up at the sky with many stars and said to herself that if she did this, the Bureau would no longer have such power. What she saw was a woman with bright red hair that scared her and surprised her at the same time, because something happened that she could not have even imagined. It turned out that a student with long purple hair had decided to jump from the roof of a building downwards. After one incident in high school, A. Ree became an outcast. That time, in the apartment of a school employee, the student told her that after the incident, Ye Ri changed a lot and became exactly the same as she had been in high school. The modest teacher was surprised to hear this and, with her mouth open, quietly asked if this was true and if there was a teacher like that. The girl was angry at the memory and gritted her teeth, and because of that bastard, she began to despise all teachers. Because their class teacher in high school, whose name was Jong Sangnel, was a big serious man who always wore classic suits and a tie. Before throwing herself off the roof, the student told the woman who was cautiously trying to approach her with small steps that she had a great idea. After a minute, she added that if she did it, and she began to use her arms to pull herself up to lean over the existing roof edge. And she said that then the new teacher's work and the activities of the Education Bureau would end. The woman finally realized what the girl was going to do and started shouting and begging her to stop. However, this did not stop her and she leaned over and started falling down. And the employee from the ministry reacted very quickly and started running to catch the young lady. But she didn't have time to do so on the roof, so she rushed down right after the girl without hesitation. And while they were flying, she tried to grab the student somehow. After several unsuccessful attempts, the woman managed to catch up with the student and grabbed her by the waist. For several seconds, they fell in free fall with their heads to the ground. But this did not frighten the woman, because she was already looking around to figure out how to escape. And yet she managed to grab hold of the air conditioner of one of the apartments a few floors down. The teacher was holding the air conditioner with one hand and her student with the other. When she came to her senses a little, she angrily asked the student if she was crazy or what she was doing. At the same time, sweat was streaming down her face from excitement and from the fact that it seemed quite difficult to hold on with one limb, the young lady replied with a sly smile, Yes, I'm crazy. Then I asked her if she didn't understand after her perfect act. After that, she started flailing her legs, which caused some discomfort, and also prevented the woman from holding her position properly, who asked her to stop. However, the teacher could not resist, and they started falling down again. But the student was holding on to the woman from above, and she was falling backwards. And as soon as they got a little closer to the ground, the student grabbed the teacher by the shoulders and pushed hard so that she landed on her back. The heavy and painful landing caused drops of blood the color of her hair 
to fly out of her mouth, along with her first cough, and scatter in different directions. The student ended up on the ground unharmed. For several minutes, she knelt on top of the teacher and watched her actions. After the woman coughed, she froze in the same position without moving. This scared the student a little, and she quickly got to her feet. She began to smile nervously. He, 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 and wondered what she should do next. What was the best thing to do? All that came to mind was to kick the woman in the face with her foot, so that her head turned to the right, and blood flew around again. After the girls from the gang told everything, they went outside the apartment complex and started looking for them, going in different directions and calling their names. A student who was wearing a red blouse started crying and saying that they had not been able to find her classmate and teacher. So she asked if she could go home. Suddenly, a familiar voice shouted from the corner of the room, Die! Die! Everyone turned their heads to see what was going on. They were debating whether to go there or not. A student with purple hair was kicking and punching her new class teacher. After a few minutes of this torture, the student got a little tired. So she stopped to catch her breath, rest, and think about what to do next. And her attention was drawn to the bricks lying next to them. So she walked over to them and picked one up with her right hand. Then she walked over to a woman with red hair who was lying on the ground, unmoving, and stood with the brick right above her, watching to see if she would do anything. She raised her weapon up as if to swing it, but someone grabbed her arms from behind and whispered in her ear, Don't do that, Airy. The girl was very angry and shouted angrily, Why did the quiet teacher interfere? Why did she allow herself to do this? Did she really have the courage? However, this did not stop the woman, and she added that Seo Hyun had told her everything, namely, about the class teacher they had in high school. The student was surprised by what she heard. The teacher continued to say that this did not mean that her actions could be justified. So she asked the young lady to do something that she would regret and that she would not be able to fix later. After she finished her sentence, the student turned sharply to face the teacher and elbowed her right in the right cheek. This made the woman retreat a few steps back. Then the high school student began to speak sarcastically, addressing the teacher. Oh yeah, did you hear everything from Seo Hyun? The woman stood and listened attentively to her attacker's questions. Then she picked up the brick she was holding in her right hand and approached the teacher, saying that she should know that she hated hypocrites like her above all else. The woman realized what was about to happen, so she froze in place in shock and began to shout, Ah! loudly to the whole neighborhood. Suddenly, someone grabbed the student's hand with the brick and stopped her from doing this insidious act. It was a teacher from the Education Bureau who came to her senses and quickly got to her feet, came up behind the girl and grabbed her hand. The woman was so angry she could not control herself. The student began to cautiously turn her head, along with her gaze, back to see who was so brave as to allow himself to stop her. And what she saw surprised the young lady. After that, a strong and rough slap landed on her left tender cheek, which made the student turn her head to the side and her saliva fly around. The student fell to the ground with her hands covering her face while the red-haired teacher watched her clumsy movements. The desk teacher was beaten with many bruises and scratches all over her body. She was very angry, because no one has the right to do this to anyone, not just her. This expression on her face scared the student, so she said, Oh my God, with wide eyes and mouth moving her arms and legs backwards. However, the employee of the Education Bureau, clenching her hands into fists, stepped directly towards the student, who had already risen and knelt down and said that she was wrong. Then she folded her hands as if in prayer, and said with a sad expression that she was really wrong, and she promised that from now on she would not ignore her teachers and would stop misbehaving. And in the end, she asked to be given another chance. The teacher stopped and watched the student's performance in the middle of the street. However, this performance was interrupted by two guards who found them, and said to each other that the two young ladies were at it again, so they started waving their sticks. The student took advantage of this chance while everyone else was letting their guard down. She quickly got to her feet, turned toward the men and started running towards them. As she approached them, she grabbed one of them by the sleeves of his shirt and with a pitiful expression on her face, asked for help again. She said that the madwoman was continuing her attempts to kill her. 
She then asked if they could see her wounded face, which had no living space on it. At this point, the woman with red hair turned to her quiet colleague and asked if she had seen everything. This innocent Aerie. The woman froze for a few minutes and went through all the facts she had received that evening in her head and thought about what to do. Finally, she gathered her courage and began to walk confidently towards the men, and when she was a few steps away from them, she addressed them and said that she was the student's class teacher. She told them that she had something to tell them, because there was enough evidence concerning this young lady who was standing next to them and begging for help. The student did not expect that this woman would dare to do such a thing. So she smiled nervously, because she knew what was coming next. There was no escaping the punishment. So the teacher, Jong Seong Yeon, told us about the break-in and the threat to her life. She also added a story about Han K. Ri's bullying of teachers. They found facts that proved teacher Ko Yun Su's innocence. And Kim So Hyun was investigated because she was an accomplice. She was accused of fabricating charges in Ko Yun Su's case and bullying teachers. She was also charged with trespassing on private property and threatening her life. Han Ri is currently awaiting trial in custody. When an employee of the Ministry of Education came to see her, she still proudly and brazenly first called the woman a bitch and then asked what she wanted. After all, everything was already over. So why did she come to her? To show her face. Despite all the words she said, the teacher calmly told us that the office had received 62 complaints about the young lady. This fact surprised the high school student, so she lowered her head guiltily. These complaints were about her behavior. However, most of them were about the death of a teacher, Ko Yun Su, where it was written that it was because of false accusations that this man took his own life. The ministry employee added that to tell the truth, her class teacher had not sent them a complaint. After reading everything carefully, the girl grabbed the sheet in her hands and tore it in half. Then she smiled and said that it actually sounded very funny, and then she added that she would not be told about this hypocrite anymore. After that, she said that if the woman had nothing else to say, she could leave as soon as possible. After all, she was sickened by the sight of her face. Finally, the red-haired woman calmly addressed the girl by name and said that this was a shameful act on the part of the teacher and demonstrated something to the student, who opened her eyes wide at what she saw. The girl's mind flashed back to her high school class teacher, who always wore a classic suit, light shirt, and tie. For several minutes, the student sat frozen by her memories. Her face scrunched up, and her eyebrows drew together in a fierce manner, and small, scarce tears began to form in her eyes. The woman standing by the table said that the student had also gone beyond the limits of what was permitted, and she should understand this. And then she added that she had done the same thing when she was in high school. But even so, the teacher still had no sympathy. After all, the law says that everyone who commits a crime becomes a criminal. The girl looked at the teacher from the corner of her eye. The red-haired woman turned to face the door to finally leave the place. However, she finally said calmly, I promise, Zhang Sang Nil, that teacher, he will definitely pay the price. He straightened his black braids away from his eyes, took out a cigarette and smoked nervously. The school staff member ran his right hand along the window sill of the classroom and noticed a lot of dust on his index finger. And after seeing this, he turned angrily, saying what he had said to him last time. All these words were directed to the student who stood behind the teacher with his head bowed and hands in his jacket pockets. After a few minutes, the man began to say that the dust had been rising a lot lately. He also said that he had asked him to pay special attention to cleaning in the morning. Suddenly, the teacher turned to face the student and grabbed him firmly by the head and put his index finger with the dust on it into his mouth, wiping it off with his tongue. After that, the student bent down to the ground and covered himself with his hands and started coughing non-stop from what was in his mouth. The man watched all this. Then he asked the student why he was coughing. After all, the dust had come in because he was not focused and did not pay proper attention to cleaning. Finally, he asked the question, shouldn't he have licked it up afterwards? Because he is very bad at his job. This showdown continued during one of the lessons, where many of the young man's classmates were sitting. 
The serious teacher raised his eyebrows and said with his thread-thin lips that from now on, the student would be called Bastard. After the lesson, the man was sitting in the teacher's office when a student came to him, wearing round glasses and holding a small pink gift box. The teacher asked what it was. The girl replied that it was gratitude for his good advice. It had made her feel much better. The student smiled sweetly, looked intently into the man's eyes and expressed her great gratitude. The teacher reached for the brightly colored box, but only took the envelope on top and said that he would only accept the letter that was inside. In response, he also smiled and added that he was happy to help her with advice and asked her not to bring anything like that next time, as it would be enough for him to just thank her verbally. One of the colleagues who saw all this came over and leaned on the system unit and told the teacher that she envied him because this student was not even in his class, but she worked so hard that she even asked him for help. The man opened the envelope with an indifferent expression on his face and said that it didn't matter whether the student was from his class or hers. He would help in any way he could when asked. But the question is, shouldn't any employee of an educational institution do this? The envelope contained money, about $2,700. Suddenly everyone in the teacher's office was alerted. The door opened and the following phrase was heard. Wait a second, Inspector Hua Jin. We haven't finished talking to you yet. The principal held the black-haired man by the sleeve of his jacket and continued to say that there were no problems with students in their school. It must be some kind of misunderstanding, and suggested that they sit down and calmly discuss everything and leave. The employee from the Ministry of Education turned his head towards the main school, smiled, and calmly said that he had received a complaint and had come here to check whether it was true or not. The man's face became frightened and sweat began to appear on his face and drip down. The inspector turned to him, emphasizing that he had just said that there were no problems, so there was nothing to worry about. So standing at the door, the man greeted the teachers and said that he was an inspector from the Education Bureau. Everyone present froze as they still did not fully understand what had just happened. Squinting his eyes, the man smiled sweetly and asked everyone to cooperate. The teacher, who had just received a considerable reward, was not happy about this visit and showed it with his whole appearance. At this time, in the classroom where the teacher was teaching, the students were sitting at recess and discussing their topics. One of them had taken off his school jacket and was wearing a purple hoodie. And the student who had been humiliated in front of everyone was sitting at his desk, upset, with his head on his right hand, scribbling in his notebook. Suddenly, someone decided to disturb him, so he put his foot on top of his notebook, wearing a rubber slipper and a white sock. It turned out to be his classmate, who had dyed his hair red. The young man leaned over to the boy and asked him what had happened. He put his lips to his classmate's ear and said that the next lesson would be with the class teacher. So, he still had time to kick his ass. He ordered the boy to get up quickly and start cleaning up and he warned him not to behave the same way as in the morning. The midterm exam was coming up, so why should they disrupt the class for him? The humiliated student continued to sit at his desk with his head bowed. However, after all the words were said, he said that he would do everything now, but his classmate had to take his leg. The dyed-in-the-wool man, with his eyebrows raised, said that there were rumors that a miserable student like him had accidentally died while studying. What a misfortune. The impudent student continued to humiliate his classmate, saying that his grandfather, who carries waste paper, does not straighten his back at all. After that, he asked if he needed to pull out the bells. At that time, the insidious teacher and the inspector were walking along one of the school corridors. The black-haired man walked behind with his hands in his trouser pockets. The school employee was carrying a magazine under his right arm. Suddenly he stopped and, without turning around, asked the ministry official why he was asking him about the school's problems. The man replied that the others would get their turn, so he didn't have to worry about it. The teacher heard the answer and continued, Problem students. Indeed. Then he asked if there were any schools in the world without students who were constantly causing problems. After a minute he turned his head a little and added, If you look at it that way, the inspector must have a lot to do. 
After all, they were one of the hundred he came to see and asked if the Bureau didn't only deal with bad students. Without giving him time to answer, he said that of course we are allowed to use physical violence, unlike them, but... Before he could finish, he was interrupted by the interlocutor, who suggested that the gentleman must have misunderstood. And with a serious expression on his face, he said that they work not only with children. This time, the inspector did not have time to finish because the teacher emphasized that he also supported their methods. After all, students who don't understand the rules of this world are just rubbish, disgusting to look at. This monologue surprised the man who came to inspect him. While the teacher was smiling and slowly turning to the interlocutor, the inspector's thoughts ran through the words, methods, to teach this garbage. The teacher bowed his head and addressed the gentleman, saying that he would go to class and, if he had any questions, he could ask them later. After that, the man quickly turned around and walked to his classroom, while the inspector remained standing in the same place with his hands in his trouser pockets. But he was not just standing there. He was carefully thinking about the fact that this man was behaving in a rather impudent, strange, and self-confident manner. When the teacher came to the classroom and opened the door, he saw something that surprised him. It turned out that in the classroom, right in front of the blackboard, one student was sitting on top of another and punching him in the face. The teacher watched for a few seconds. The main bully of the class was very angry. He switched to his left hand and continued to hit, saying, can that big-eyed bastard hear him? And he added that he had become too brazen. The blow was so hard that the whole class heard a loud sound, and the young man turned his head to the side in pain. At that moment, the teacher decided to intervene and walked across the classroom to the two high school students and looked at them with a serious look. And the painted student noticed him and turned his head back to see who was coming. The man, with one hand in his trouser pockets, calmly addressed one of the children, Kim Guang Shmuk, by name, and asked what he was doing. The bully said a long, ah, and then apologized, and getting to his feet, he began to tell him that in the morning he had pointed out his joint, so he asked him to clean it up, but he was in a bad mood, so he attacked him. And in the end, he added that he might be wrong, but he didn't have time to finish because the teacher raised his eyebrows with a serious expression. The person who came forward was a young man who had just been beaten and wore glasses. The teacher ordered him to kneel down and apologize to Kwang Shik Khoi. The student was outraged by this, so he jumped to his feet and began to scream, saying that he had cursed his grandfather first. The man replied calmly that whatever the reason, he was the first to attack and start a fight. Then the gentleman came closer to the student put his hand on one of his shoulders and said that starting with non-compliance with the rules, he ends up with violence. After all, no matter what, rubbish is rubbish. And leaning over to his right ear, the teacher smiled slyly and looked at the young man with an oblique glance and asked him if he was telling the truth. And finally he added, a bastard of a loser who collects rubbish. The student was very surprised and at the same time very offended by these words because he did not expect to hear such things from a school employee. So he turned around, grabbed the teacher by his tie and shirt, raised his right hand, clenched into a fist and shouted angrily, asking why he was the only one being bullied. And a second later he continued to ask why the teacher didn't bully other students like that. So why only him? What had he done that the others hadn't done? The man replied, smiling sarcastically, that a student should not talk to a teacher like that, let alone grab his chest. This was the way to violate his authority. Suddenly the young man's hand, which was clenched into a fist, was caught by an inspector who had just entered the classroom. The teacher said in surprise, Inspector Nahua Jin. All the students in the class looked at him carefully, and someone said, Who is this guy? What inspector? What is he doing here? The student who was wearing a pink hoodie asked if there was something wrong with their school, and the young man who was recording everything on his smartphone said, Nah Hua Jin, get the fuck out of here. The student wearing glasses looked the inspector straight in the eye with his mouth open, and the words came to mind that if the bureau caught him, he would go to jail the same day. The employee from the Ministry of Education looked at both the student and his class teacher with a serious expression and thought about the situation.
He turned to the teacher and asked him if he could take the student under his care. The man straightened his tie and replied with a clear and short, Of course. And a second later, he added that when the Bureau comes, there will be some good educational activities that will help to establish a positive mood in the classroom. Suddenly the phrase, bad luck to the rubbish, was heard throughout the class from one of the students in the class. At this point, the inspector leaned over to the young man's left ear, who was standing there already frightened. He quietly asked him to clench his hand back into a fist. This surprised the teenager even more, because he could not understand why he had to do this. The inspector looked at the teacher, who was still standing there, adjusting his tie, thinking that everything had ended well enough for him. Suddenly, he noticed that the black-haired man holding the student's hand pointed it directly at the teacher and struck him on the right cheek, causing saliva to fly in all directions. The students of this class who had seen all this opened their mouths in surprise and surprise and stood silently watching what would happen next. It even scared them a little. The teacher was surprised by this development, so he held on to the spot where he was hit and asked why the inspector had done it. The inspector replied that he and the teacher agreed on something. More specifically, he agreed with the fact that we need to make sense of the garbage that has already allowed itself a lot. And then he smiled slyly. A minute later, I asked him if that was what the teacher, a bastard who equated his students with himself, thought. The teacher stood there and angrily held his cheek, which still hurt. After the incident, two employees of the Ministry of Education met in the schoolyard. The woman handing over the sheet said that they were Hanai Ri's records. She went on to say that she had been a good student in the second grade, but that she had been in the top ten before Jong Sang Nel was appointed her class teacher. The man reread the sheets and asked what was known about her parents. The lady replied that in the first grade of primary school, the student's parents divorced and the father raised the girl alone. As his job was related to sales, he had to go on business trips for six months. That's why they rarely contacted each other. He was a complete stranger to her and wasn't even interested in her school life. After listening to everything, the gentleman began to roll the sheets into a tube and calmly said, That's because... The woman was surprised and said, Oh? The gentleman continued to say that Choi Hyun Un, who is now under pressure from Son Sang Nel, was the best student in primary school and was ranked third fourth, but he lost his parents early and now lives with his grandfather who collects waste paper. The woman listened and asked what the hell he was talking about. Isn't a child without a family allowed to study well? And in the end she added that she also had no mother, and that was why she was very angry. Suddenly, the attention of the educators was drawn to a situation that was just happening in the schoolyard a few meters away. They heard the following words. Fucking suckers. Stand up straight and tall. It turned out to be one of the school teachers who, with his hands behind his back, was addressing the two students, saying, how could these young men with swollen faces afford to be idle? One of the young men said that this was not true and clarified that they could not even go outside the school grounds and then added that they were not trying to escape, they just wanted to buy food and eat here. The teacher did not like this impudent behavior and decided to slap the student as a form of discipline because he could not talk to adults like that. However, he did not restrain himself and continued to slap the student, asking if he was trying to justify himself in this way. He also asked if going outside the school was not a violation of the rules. The teenager, hiding behind his hands, replied that they were not trying to leave. Then the man noticed that another student was holding a phone and asked him if he was filming it and a second later added that he was doing the right thing. The teacher asked the boys if they knew that an inspector from the Education Bureau had come yesterday, and they are here because of students like them. A woman with red hair watched and said that it looked like they had other problems besides Chan Sun Nel. The man closed his eyes sadly and said that there was a misunderstanding of their work, so they would have to demonstrate it to the fullest. And before he catches Chan Sun Nel, he will take up the task of re-educating these devils, and lowered his hands and started to move towards the side where the showdown was taking place. At the same time, the teacher who had been taking bribes from the students was walking down the corridor, thinking that he hadn't given his name to the bureau inspector. 
but he knew him anyway, so it didn't mean he was after him. So he stopped for a moment and assumed that it was the trash named Choi Hyun Un, who had reported everything, and written a complaint against him. Then he raised his right hand to his chin and emphasized that this could not be, because he had just started to raise him, and he hadn't done anything wrong for the Bureau to come after him. The teacher's thoughts were interrupted by a group of students standing in the corridor, discussing something loudly, leaning on the windowsill, through the wall. One of the teachers could be heard shouting at the student, calling him a sucker, while the student stood there thinking that the hag was at it again, and that he would be better off borrowing a sports shirt. The teacher put her hands to her sides and continued to shout loudly, I thought you could solve this in half a break. All these words referred to the young man who stood at the blackboard, with his head bowed over the problem he could not solve. The student could not stand the pressure, so he turned to the woman and shouted that he really could not do it. This made the lady very angry, and she repeated, You still can't do it. So she quickly rolled up the textbook, walked closer to the student, and started hitting him in the face, calling him stupid. The young man tried to shield himself from the blows, but the woman kept shouting, Why can't you solve it? When you've gone through all the material and suggested that it was probably because he was playing with his gadgets during the class. If he didn't study, he would be expelled from school and forced to go to work at the factory. The teacher who heard all this noticed that teacher Kang Hyun Suk is in a bad mood every morning, so she takes it out on the children. And then he started to walk down the corridor, thinking that there was already enough rubbish in the school. So why was he the first to be handed out? He raised his eyebrows and began to think about it even more carefully. At that time, the inspector was already standing outside a classroom where the teacher was yelling at one of the students. He stopped to look after the teacher. Then the man bent his head down attentively, looking at something and making a plan for his further actions. It turned out that he had written in a small notebook with a black pen in capital. Beautiful letters, Suspend Teacher Jong Sang Nel. Further events unfolded on the sports ground near the school, where the teacher put a pointer to the student's hair and asked her to look at her hair. What kind of job would she get with that look? The girl bowed her head guiltily and said that this was allowed in this educational institution, to which the teacher replied, If you shout about freedom, you can fall. Freedom must be in everything. Then the man raised his eyebrows and made a face brought the pointer to another place on the young lady's body and asked her to tell him the truth. Answering the question whether she was going to seduce guys in nightclubs, the student was offended by the accusation and looked at her collarbone, which was being pressed by the teacher. The woman shouted, Ouch! and took a few steps back from the pain. To this reaction, the man replied, Oh, I was wrong. And then he asked if she was going to go and complain about him for sexual harassment and he emphasized that girls have been abusing their rights lately. Then he began to threaten her, saying that if she told him about it, he would hang her by the neck outside the house, and she would be responsible for his wife leaving him. He asked her again, Do you understand? The girl started to cover her face and cried out loudly. The man leaned over her and asked why she wanted to make him a bad person. The inspector watched the situation from the balcony and made notes in his notebook. During that day, the ministry employee saw quite a few angry teachers who were taking it out on their students. For example, a teacher was shouting loudly, asking a girl where she was looking. In another classroom, a teacher threw his textbook at a student sitting in the second row on the third desk, all because the teacher did not like the way he was behaving. In another classroom, an adult lady stood at the podium and pointed her left index finger at the door, and shouted for one of the students to leave the classroom immediately. The inspector was able to take notes on every last detail, so that he would know how to deal with them in the future. After several classes had passed, the teachers gathered in the teacher's office where one lady raised her hands in the air and shouted that it was time for lunch. Her colleague got to his feet and said he was going to go to a Chinese restaurant. Suddenly, their conversation was interrupted by a voice coming from the loudspeaker, and everyone instinctively turned their heads to it and listened attentively to the words, This is the Education Bureau speaking. The black-haired man, holding a small microphone with his right hand, and his notebook with the other, 
continued to say that the teachers he was about to name would be forced to gather in the gym, and he began to list them. Jong Sung Nel, Ma Dong Chang, Kang Hyun Suk, Park Han Seo, Choi Chun Haik, Yang Sung Mi, Yi Yu Yon. When they all gathered at the destination, they were handed something that made them surprised. So one of them called the inspector respectable and asked what it was. The man replied that for the last two days he had been around the school and realized that they had problems with teaching. From now on, they would become students to experience everything for themselves. The teachers were both surprised and frightened at the same time. That's why the physical education teacher asked if he was kidding or what. And then the facts started pouring in. For example, the fact that the midterm exam is coming up. And this is just out of the question. The inspector was not listening to all this very attentively, scratching his left ear with his finger. One of the teachers, who wore round glasses, opened her mouth wide and shouted, What kind of education bureau is this? Do they have a problem with the authority of teachers? She walked closer to the man and raised her finger up, adding, Does it make sense to undermine their authority in this way? The man in black responded calmly, asking if she even knew what a bureau was. And he began to tell her that the rights of teachers, the rights of parents and also the rights of students during their studies, incompetent teachers who infringe on the rights of students receiving education. They are also, obviously, their target. Then he calmly added that there were too many complaints and said that if they didn't want to wear the uniform, they didn't have to. Putting his thin black stick on his shoulder, he happily announced that tomorrow morning there would be letters on their desks. All those present began to look at each other. Then he smiled broadly so that all his white teeth were visible and added that they would contain disciplinary reprimands with the seal of the Ministry of Education. The inspector couldn't stop laughing at this, so the last phrase was, when, at, meet you. This made the teachers very angry, but they still held their uniforms in their hands. The next day, the teacher who took the bribe stood there dressed in his school uniform and said that he was a student named Jong Sang Nail. It was late, but students are students, regardless of age. The inspector put his black stick on his shoulder and smilingly said that they should become friends and that their relationship would be informal. This development surprised the students of this class. They began to laugh quietly, covering their hands. One of them even said that their class teacher was now a student, and then laughed out loud. When the teacher took a seat at an empty desk, a student who was looking at him on his smartphone said that the uniform fit him quite well, as if it had been made for him from the very beginning. Two boys standing at the back of the class continued to laugh loudly and asked the teacher to look at them addressing him simply as San Nenchik, which made the man very angry, and he tried to hold back. Suddenly a dark blue rag fell on the table in front of him, and this surprised him, so he bowed his head slightly and opened his mouth. This cloth had been brought and placed by the same student whom he had fed with dust a few days earlier. The young man said that Nahua Jin had told him to clean up as well. The older man tried to smile sweetly instead of doing something irreparable, during one of the classes, the teacher drew a world map on the board and explained that Japan is still seeking the sovereignty of Dokdo. However, there are even Japanese sources that recognize the island as Japanese territory. Then the teacher, holding a chalk in her hand, turned her face to the students and asked them who could name the three main sources. She didn't see a forest of hands, so she decided to look at the magazine to see who should answer. At this time, the teacher was sitting languidly with his hand on his head. She decided that the teacher should answer this question. He was surprised to hear that and asked, Yai Yai? Seeing that he was not ready, the woman said that the next person on the list would answer, and it turned out to be a student with round glasses whose name was Choi Hyun Un. So he carefully got to his feet, and he began to say, Inju Shi Cheon Hapki 1667, Map of the Three Countries, 1,785, Taejong Wang Chirinmun, 1,877, and others. The teacher looked at the young man and said that this was a very good answer, and she clarified that he had memorized everything, even the dates, and then she asked him if he was the one who got the highest score in the Korean history exam. The student replied that he was looking forward to the next exam. The next scene takes place in the school cafeteria during lunch. The students were standing in a queue, 
each picking up cutlery on a tray and waiting for their turn to receive their food. A young man who had answered quite well in the previous lesson sat quietly at one of the tables and quickly ate his food with chopsticks. Behind him was his class teacher, who was watching him with his head on his left hand and his right hand stirring the food on his plate. With a serious and angry expression on his face, the man sat there for almost the entire long break that was specifically designated for lunch. Suddenly, an inspector approached him, put down his tray of food, and smilingly asked the teacher who he was looking at with his piercing gaze. The ministry official then sat down and started eating, saying that Yunun was a very sincere boy, and despite his family's difficult situation, he has a good reputation among his teachers because he is a much better student than the rest of the class. But why is his class teacher, Un, so upset that he can't help him? The man listened to all this with his eyes glazed over and an angry look on his face. Then he stood up and said that there was no discrimination against the students on his part. The inspector replied that if he was not going to eat, then perhaps this pork cutlet would satisfy him. However, the teacher stood up and started to walk calmly towards the exit, because he did not like it. And the gentleman with black hair and a mouthful of food looked up with a piercing gaze and followed the offended class teacher. Further away, in one corner of the school, a group of teenagers stood smoking cigarettes, while one stood peering over the wall so that no one could catch them doing so. The blonde boy told the blonde boy to watch very carefully so that no one would burn them. The blonde replied that it was good, because if anyone saw him smoking, he would be in trouble. He was distracted for a moment and when he turned his head to see if anyone was moving in their direction again, he noticed something and started to say, E, in surprise, and the young man quickly turned his head to his classmates and began to say timidly, Fuck, there's this. Should I say something? It's like... Blondie, not understanding anything, said to him to speak more clearly. But before he could say anything, the teacher, Kim Gui Shik, appeared, hiding his hands in his trouser pockets and coming towards them with a serious expression. The students who were smoking started throwing everything away quickly and turned to their class teacher in fright. The man calmly said that the rest of the children had already moved to another boat. Then he held up two fingers of his right hand and asked for one cigarette. So the young man with dyed hair, who was also the school's main rebel, gave the teacher what he asked for and helped him light it with a lighter. After taking one drag, the teacher asked why the boy didn't do what he asked. The boy started to get nervous and said, Me? Me? What do you mean? The man said he was talking about Choi Hyunun. He asked why that bastard was still eating away at his brain. After all, he asked to get rid of him by the middle of the semester. The student began to say that this task was harder than they thought, because the bureau was constantly watching him. The man replied that no one said to deal with him at school because there are many ways to do things outside of school. The teenager decided that it was time to leave, so he started pacing and told him to leave him alone because he would not do anything for him. Suddenly the teacher put his hand on the student's shoulder and said that he was not asking to deal with him for free, but if he did, he would... The gentleman did not have time to finish because the boy interrupted him and said that he would not take the case anyway. The man shook his head from side to side and told the young man to think it over and not to refuse just like that. Then he approached the student from behind, which scared him quite a bit, and whispered the following with a serious expression. The boy made very big eyes and opened his mouth in surprise. After that, he turned his head to the class teacher and asked if he was telling him the truth. The man first called him a puppy and then ordered him to keep quiet. This situation was imperceptibly observed by the inspector, who was also having a smoke break at the time, but on the roof of the school, and he was very, very interested in this situation. Then the events unfolded on the streets of the city, where a saleswoman left a package of paper cups with a note on it that read, Grandpa, this is especially for you. I hope this will make his job a little easier. The elderly man carefully picked it up and put it on his cart, thinking that it was probably important to collect such a pile of cups. But the world is not without good people. The man smiled sweetly and said to himself that he was definitely in a good mood, and that Hunan Ne would not have to buy that strange soup in the alley today, because they could make it themselves. After that, 
The man put on white gloves and took hold of the cart's handles and began to slowly roll it down the street. After walking one block, three men dressed in black clothes or standing out from the street were watching him from behind a house. They watched him closely for several minutes. They were also wearing caps and masks so that their faces were not visible on purpose, and it was impossible to guess who was hiding behind them. In one cafe, there were two people, a man and a woman, who said that she had heard about everything from her daughter. She asked him if the Education Bureau had come and was terrorizing him. The seemingly modest lady asked if he was okay. Does he need any help? The gentleman took one sip of tea and said that she shouldn't worry, because they had already thought of everything perfectly. The woman replied that the fact that this young man was mocking her and meddling where he shouldn't be made her very nervous. The teacher smiled and said that if she was talking about Choi Hyun Un, she shouldn't worry because he had already ruined his life. He added that he would no longer be able to concentrate on his studies. At this point, the young men in black caught up with the old man and started throwing the waste paper up in the air, even tearing some of it into small pieces. The children did this very happily, shouting and laughing loudly. My grandfather stood a few meters away and shouted at them for what they were doing, calling them fools. Then he walked up to one of them, grabbed him from behind by the shoulders and asked him to stop doing it, shouting loudly. The young man didn't like that and turned around and punched the old man in the face with his right fist, so hard that his head turned to the side. And then he fell to the ground and started to cover himself with his hands to protect himself from more blows. And his cap fell down next to him. All the hooligans came up to him and one of them said, how can he touch him with his dirty hands? He also asked if he knew how much the clothes cost, and he said that his grandfather would not be able to pay even if he collected fifty of them. After saying that, the young man raised his head above the old man. He punched the man in the ribs, causing him considerable pain. The old man grimaced but kept himself from screaming. At the same time, the old man's student was returning home from school and was a few blocks away from the scene of the fight, but he did not hear anything because he was listening to music in his headphones on his Walkman. When he looked up to look at the road in the distance, he noticed his grandfather coming out of an alleyway and pulling his cart with waste paper. The young man walked over and put the Walkman in his jacket pocket and smiled happily at the old man and said hello, and the man said, Oh my God, my Hunan is already leaving school. The boy put his school bag on the trolley and told his grandfather to leave it because he would help him. The old man replied that it would be very uncomfortable for him if he had to carry it through the streets. The student smilingly asked why it would be inconvenient, because it was their bread. Moreover, he was not too tired at school, so he still had a lot of energy to put to good use. But when the student looked closely, he noticed something that surprised him in the form of his grandfather and asked him what was wrong with his face. What happened? When he received no answer, the young man asked angrily who had attacked him. The man smiled to defuse the situation and said that everything was fine and there was no point in being so nervous. The old man decided to tell him that he was very lucky today because a passing man quickly scattered them, told him to leave, and thus saved him. Then the man addressed his grandson by name and said that no matter how hard it was, he should not give up, because bad things happen in life, but good things also happen. It turned out that this savior was an inspector who forced the attackers to kneel down and take off their caps and black masks to see who was underneath. The black-haired man sat down next to the painted man and said that his older brother had come, and if the head of the house was not his father but his eldest son, should the young man listen to him? Holding a cigar between his teeth, the inspector asked seriously what San Nell had said. What made them decide to do this? Why did they allow themselves to do this? At the same time, in the cafe, a man sitting with the mother of one of the students put a yellow USB stick on the table and said that it was his backup, just in case. The lady reached for the USB stick, took it carefully with her right hand, and asked what the man was asking her not to show it to anyone and to watch it when she was alone. The lady looked carefully at this yellow thing and asked again what it was. The inspector, holding a cigarette between his teeth and smiling, showed the dyed student the USB stick and asked if it was a midterm exam question. When he didn't get an answer, 
he continued to ask if they had the courage to undermine the student's performance. And the target for persecution is an inferior family, which the school gives up on if there are difficulties. But a second later, he added that it was actually within his competence. The circumstances were established. The evidence was found. The man was very pleased because he did not expect to find everything so quickly. So now he can start the real training. The class teacher of the high school students smiled to himself as he continued to sit in the cafe. After the incident, the red-haired woman looked at the ominous yellow flash drive and asked him if he was bullying the kids over their grades. And did he have a plan to distribute exam tests? The lady sat on the edge of the ring while the inspector worked out by the punching bag. The lady looked at him and said that if he reported this to the police, his shop would be closed down quickly. Suddenly the gentleman looked up from his work and said that it was impossible. And then he asked if distributing the tests was the only sin of Yong Sang Nul. First we need to find more evidence of his brazen activities. After saying that, the man picked up speed and ran straight for the pear tree. He hit it hard with his right hand which was tied with a white elastic bandage. The inspector bent down to pick it up and put it back in place and began to fix the bandage on his left arm because for some reason it had come undone. The colleague opened her eyes wide at what she saw and asked the captain if he was angry because it had touched the young man's family. After this question, the man stood there and did not move as he thought about the best answer. So he squared his shoulders, raised his hands and said, a little bit, in a short, clear voice. The next day at the school, all the teachers were holding up certain sheets of paper and looking at what was written on them in surprise. The women tried to read it carefully, because they still could not understand why they had been handed it. But there was a bold heading saying that it was a midterm exam, and then there were the tasks. The first one was to clean the classroom, and you could get two points for that. The second task was to clean the dining room, which also earned two points. The third task is to greet the students. The fourth task is to read the school rules. And the last task was to apologize to the students in question. The inspector stood in front of the teachers with his black thin wand on his shoulder and watched their reactions. One of them finally dared to ask what it was. A black-haired man with a serious expression shouted to the whole class that the midterm exam would begin from now on. He added that the test would end exactly one week later at 21 minutes to zero, and those who do not get 60 points will be considered bad students, and they will be immediately suspended, which means only one thing, complete expulsion from the school. All the teachers present were quite frightened by this information. Then smiling sarcastically with all his 32 teeth, he said that the people paid special attention to the last task. The senior class teacher was very angry at what he had read, and sweat began to break out on his face and slowly trickled down. On his paper were two names, Choi Hyunun and Kim Gwang Shik. At this point, the inspector added that they had to try hard, because if they didn't deal with this problem, they would become outcasts. After the meeting in the school gym, the physical education teacher shouted loudly that it was too much because one of his students was holding his hands behind him, and the student was poking him with a small pointer, saying, What? Are you sorry? She added that they should forgive him for doing this to girls all the time. After a few minutes of this torture, the young lady continued, asking why he was crying. Because they thought he was going too far, because it was just a joke. Is the one they suffered so much from really shaking all over the place? And smiling, she repeated once again that it was a joke and they were just trying. The class teacher of the high school saw this mockery as he was standing a few meters away. He was very unhappy with what he saw. He said to himself, what kind of a joke is this? And he began to think about whether he could bow his head before that bastard Choi Hyun Un. Then he took out his assignment sheet and carefully looked at the task and concluded that he would think about it after a while when he had put his thoughts in order. However, he still couldn't understand why Kim Guang Shik's name was on the paper. So he decided to start with an easier one. A few minutes later, the teacher found the dyed in the wool rebel of the class sitting outside the school smoking a cigarette. The man held a sheet of paper up to the boy's face 
and asked him to sign it. And continuing to stand there, he seriously asked how Choi Hyunun's grandfather was feeling. And while the student was finishing his cigar, the teacher continued to demand an explanation of how everything went. Even if he was hospitalized, it was a great success. The young man was listening attentively and was fed up with such accusations and assignments. So he jumped to his feet and punched the class teacher, saying that he was going to be taken to the hospital. The boy beat the man for several minutes, asking him how many weeks he would get. One, two, or maybe all ten. The teacher managed to catch a moment to ask if the student had lost his mind or what was going on with him. The teenager continued to kick angrily, shouting that it was not he who had gone mad, but the teacher who had called him a jerk. He asked the teacher if he could make him do such things. Then the man fell face down on the ground, and the student took out another cigarette and put it to his mouth. With the other, he carefully looked at the teacher's assignment sheet. After a few minutes of silence, he asked the class teacher if he was apologizing for such insolent behavior towards the children. But it looked very boring, so he threw the letter at the man, and he fell on his face. The boy said that the man looked very poor. After the teenager turned around and walked to the school, the teacher took the letter with his right hand and used his left hand to help himself to his feet. The inspector again watched this fight, but this time from the window of the teacher's office. He said that the old man was collecting autographs. Then he congratulated him and said that there was one more left. But he sarcastically stressed that he only needed two signatures, and it was so difficult. The school worker looked up to see his supposed interlocutor. The next day, the teachers were picking up rubbish around the school, sweeping the sidewalks and thoroughly washing the windows. The class teacher stood at the restroom, looking down and smoking a cigarette, wondering why his relationship with Kim Kwan Shik had deteriorated so dramatically. He wondered if something had happened yesterday when he had told the young man something to force him to go and do that inhumane task. But it also occurred to him that maybe the file was on the yellow thumb drive he had put in his pocket. But in any case, it's not the worst thing that could have happened, and it won't break him. This test is from last year. He couldn't give the real one to such a jerk. When the teacher took his last drag, his colleague told him that the cleaning was over and they could be free for the day. Suddenly, however, a crumpled piece of paper hit the class teacher on the forehead. He had to look up to see who had done it. And he saw students looking out of the windows of the school and throwing their rubbish in the place where the teachers had just cleaned up. And laughing loudly, they were shouting at them to keep picking up or they would not get points. One student who wore glasses raised his right hand up, smiling happily, and shouted, Were they allowed to stop? And other students began to shout back, Get out of the school! Go away! Get lost! The teachers were very surprised by this and stood for a few seconds looking at the school. After this incident, one of the teachers brought in her resignation. She handed it to the inspector, saying that she had made this decision yesterday because the students thought they did not need them. The man stood there and listened attentively. The woman was very upset by what had happened, so she looked down and added that this would be proof that they loved their students. A minute later she added that whether she left or not, she would still apologize again. After all, a teacher who is not respected by students has no right to teach. The lady folded her arms and tilted her head down slightly, as if bowing and thanked the inspector for being able to convey such an important message. She turned around and started to walk towards the exit, but a black-haired gentleman called her and asked her to wait, because he was taking something out of his inside jacket pocket. He pulled out a sheet and showed it to her, saying that students had signed for her today. They said that sometimes she was annoying, but that was no reason to give up on the teacher. He added that the woman had successfully scored 62 points, so he suggested that she take off her school uniform and start her school duties. After that, the inspector turned to the other teachers and said that they could do the same. Everyone present was quite angry. And smiling, he continued to say that they could see that decent children were being brought up in this school. If this is a sincere apology, then there will be a holiday in their street. The high school class teacher was standing behind him and was just boiling with anger. So he said angrily, If it's sincere. So he decided to act as quickly as possible and came to the student and addressed him by name, saying that he was wrong, and finally dared to ask him to forgive him. 
The man knelt down with his head bowed and said that if there was anger in his heart, he could let it go here and now. He did so. The young man continued to sit silently at his desk. The teacher decided to continue speaking, saying that if the student wanted him to resign, he would. Finally, he asked him if he had anything to say. The boy again did not answer, and this reaction made the teacher nervous, and he leaned his hands on the table and angrily said, Hyunun, to somehow reach the student. Then the teacher realized that he was going a little overboard. So he tried to smile sweetly and said that he was also wrong then because he was in a fit of anger. Finally, the young man decided to say something, and it was that he would think about his offer, that he would improve, and then his life would fall apart again. So he said that if the man wanted to quit, he could do it at any time. He did not care because he knows that worrying about a freak like him is a waste of time. Then he turned his face to the teacher and looked him in the eye and said that he would never do anything that could negatively affect his life because of an arsehole like this teacher. The next day, the high school teacher came to the prison where Hun Airi was being held and knelt down in front of the girl. He tried to smile and said, Ski, how many years, how many winters, and raised his hand up to ask how the lady was doing. However, the lady was not happy about his visit, so she decided that she could give him a kick from the foot, where she was wearing a sneaker right in the face. All this was happening when it was quite dark outside, and something could be seen only where a lantern attached to a pole was shining. The girl continued to beat the teacher, while the inspector, who was sitting on the stairs a few meters away, watched closely. The man was lying on the ground with his hand over his head, screaming loudly begging the young lady to forgive him, because so much time had passed. However, this did not convince the lady, and she struck the man in the chin. The blow was so hard that the man turned his head to the right and his nose bled. The girl kept repeating, What? Forgive? Forgive? Gritting her teeth in anger, she asked him if he could just forget everything, especially what he had done to her when he was her class teacher in high school. And she asked him again if he was sure he was asking for her forgiveness. And a picture came to mind of her as a little girl, crying, washing the floor with a blue cloth, and the man standing behind her with his arms folded across his chest. Then the girl knelt down and timidly told the teacher that she was done, and asked if she could go home now. The gentleman made a serious expression and said, with his eyebrows raised, that tomorrow there would be a midterm exam in this class, and smiling a little, he added that he would come in an hour to check everything here, and if he found even one speck of dust, she would be ready. That same day, after school, someone pushed the same girl so hard that she hit her back hard against a brick wall and grimaced in pain. Turned out to be a gang of girls who surrounded the student from all sides. The little lady could not understand what was happening, so she asked them what they wanted from her. Smiling broadly, the girls said, Welcome to Mimin's beauty salon and showing her the scissors, they said that they would make her an incredible beauty. Hearing this, the girl said that she did not need to do this. However, it happened anyway. And the young lady sat on her knees near that ominous wall, sad and disappointed because she had a new hairstyle, and strands of hair were lying around her. Picking up a few curls, she began to sob loudly, because she was so hurt and painful by what they had done to her. Suddenly she saw someone's black shadow coming from the corner, as she said, Hello, what is it? This made the student stop for a few seconds and look at who was standing there. It turned out to be her class teacher, who, seeing his student, began to smile and asked her why she had changed her hair. And without giving the lady a chance to answer, he said that it was even very good, so she could wear it all the time. This upset the girl even more, and she continued to sob loudly. Constant nagging, bullying, underestimation of grades. At the time, the young lady did not understand why the class teacher was putting sticks in her wheels. One day, she received a text message saying that Han Yun Ri was not on the list of students who had entered the secondary school of foreign languages. And at the end, they thanked her for showing interest in their school. After this letter, she cried in the locker room during her lunch break at work. Her colleagues tried to calm her down, telling her that everything would be fine because it wasn't even a university and all was not lost. 
Suddenly someone interrupted their conversation and asked why the drinks hadn't been served to the third table yet. One of the workers angrily replied that they would get it done. Yuri wiped away her tears and got to her feet, telling her friends that everything was fine and she would go back to work. One of the ladies asked if she could have a rest today. If so, she could talk to their bald manager. The student replied that she didn't need to because everything was fine. Returning to the hall, the girl went to the bar and took three glasses with certain drinks with black straws inserted into them. And slowly walking to the table, the young lady heard the following words. Class teacher, thank you very much. Because thanks to him, they were able to get to the foreign language school. The girl froze in her tracks because the teacher was sitting at the table with two students, and one of them handed him a light envelope saying that her mother was sending him a thank you. They turned out to be twins who were doing much worse than in their second year of high school. They then asked Han Iri, smiling, if she had really failed the exam, and they received a positive answer. So they started clapping their hands with joy, and at that moment the girl received answers to all her questions and she realized that this piece of dog shit had arranged everything. And then she decided that she would not be deceived by her teachers twice more, and no one would ever offend her again, because she didn't deserve it. So right now, the girl's hands were handcuffed, but she still bent down to the ground to pick up a large stone. She angrily raised it up right above her former class teacher, who was sitting on the ground, looking at the upset young lady in fright. The young lady stood there for a minute opening her mouth wide and shouting that everything that had happened to her was because of him, and then tears quickly flowed. The man realized that the blow was going to happen, and there was no way to avoid it. He was very scared because he could see it in her expression, where her eyes and mouth were wide open. So he decided to turn around and try to get to his feet to run away, but the girl came back for him. And the man saw this and began to shout loudly, Ah! The young lady was still screaming that he had done this to her. Therefore, she must take revenge at any cost, and whatever it takes. After all, her life had already gone downhill. She raised the stone again above the gentleman, who stood frozen in place, watching her former student's actions. Suddenly, she was stopped by a voice she heard behind her, asking if she was going to kill him. After all, she had her whole life ahead of her, but had she already decided to roll rice balls from a cookpab? Throwing the cigarette he had just finished on the ground, he added that she could do as she pleased. If she wanted to ruin her life, he would not stop her. And in the end, he said that it was up to her. The girl stood there holding the stone up and listened attentively to what the inspector was saying. At this time, the teacher took the opportunity when she was not looking at him. He quickly got to his feet and started running away from her. And looking back, he cursed angrily and said how this girl had turned into such a soulless monster who could do this to a person. But taking the next step, the former class teacher missed and stepped between the steps so his foot slipped, and he started to fall down the stairs, shouting loudly, because what he saw in front of him scared him, and it happened very suddenly. The inspector approached the edge of the stairs, looked down carefully with his hands in his trouser pockets, and asked the student if she had ever thought about it. Was it worth ruining her life for such a trifle? And down below was the teacher, who, after landing through his arms and legs in different directions and foam began to come out of his mouth, crying, the girl shouted that her life was already ruined and asked what she could do. She had already been convicted and had been serving her sentence for several weeks. The black-haired man turned his head to her and said that whether she was a past convict or not was not really important. What matters is what her heart says. He added that Ko Yun Su's teacher died because of her. The lady was surprised and saddened by these words, because she knew that she was the cause of the death of one person. The inspector said that she knew better than anyone what injustice was, and the girl had a picture in her head of a woman sitting in the kitchen one day, looking at a photo in a wooden frame. On it was an elderly man smiling sweetly. The black-haired man continued that the injustice to teacher Ko yun Su was incomparable to her. After all, his family is suffering a hundred times more. The woman sitting in the kitchen was the wife of a school employee who had unfortunately died. A person who was at peace after a murder, whether he was convicted or not, cannot lead a disorderly life. 
she is like abandoned rubbish. And he said if she has a chance to start over, she should ask the family of the deceased for forgiveness. The girl put the stone down and began to think carefully about it. Next story. Teacher X of Seoul's Chuckman High School received bribes from students' parents and provided them with future exam papers. He was arrested by the police today. On the news, the anchor, holding a sheet in one hand and a microphone in the other, seriously announced that corrupt teacher X had been caught by the Education Bureau. According to the Bureau, the man had been engaged in this activity for ten years. It turned out that he accepted bribes from parents and abused some students. Teacher X also manipulated examination tests. He deliberately lowered the exam results of students from disadvantaged families. However, Lady N, who had recently begun serving a sentence in a juvenile prison for driving the teacher to suicide, was also recognized as a victim of Teacher X. Lady N was disappointed in her teachers because of Class Teacher X and therefore committed the offense. However, now she has repented of her actions and writes letters to the family of the deceased every day. She does not ask for early release or just release. She just wants to say that she is very sorry. Therefore, there is no point in forgiving her. The inspector calmly said that this case tells us all that a teacher's shameless teaching method can destroy the lives of his students. The red-haired colleague emphasized that the captain had done a good job. She added that she would never have thought Han Iri would regret what he had done. The inspector replied that there is a collection called The Other Side of Education. People learn when they see not only good examples. These words surprised the interlocutor. Raising the cup of coffee to his lips, the man smiled happily and added that Jeong sang Nel was a bastard who only received his portion of true education at the very end. Three months later, the imprisoned student was still writing letters to the family of the teacher who had died because of her. Each time she carefully considered what she wanted to write. Suddenly a guard named Han Yun Ri called out to her through the small bars on the door. Hearing the voice, the young lady turned her head in the direction of the call. Then her hand reached through the bars and held a letter in a white, beautiful, small envelope. This surprised the student even more, because no one had ever written to her, only she and then only to a certain family, so she did not know who could have done it. She took the envelope carefully so as not to tear anything, opened it and took out a letter and began to read it carefully, standing in the middle of her cell. The letter read, Good afternoon, Han Ai I am the wife of your teacher, Ko Eun Su. I didn't have the strength to open the letters you've been sending me for three months. When I saw you on the news, I was shaking with anger because people started to sympathize with you. If you hadn't suffered before, this could not have been the reason for my husband's death. As she read these lines, tears began to form in her eyes. She did not expect anyone to write back to her at all, and on the second sheet was the following text. I cannot forgive you, E.R., but my husband is a teacher. Even if I can't forgive you, my husband would smile and forgive his student Han Iri. Don't send any more letters. Don't go down the wrong path. Live a good and honest life. This will be a real atonement to my husband. The last lines moved the lady very much, and she clutched the letters tightly to her chest with both hands, bowed her head, and began to sob loudly. The story continues at a bus stop where one guy tells us that he was so annoyed by the game that he even broke his keyboard and he added that he just took the bitch and hit her against the monitor. He broke the keyboard in half and shoved it down the young man's throat, and with the other part, he hit him in the balls. Seeing his grandfather approaching them, the boy continued to tell him that he had just chosen a good tactic for the attack, but the son of a bitch had spotted him and finished him off. The elderly man listened attentively and said, Just look at the students today, and he remarked that an old man was standing in front of them and they couldn't take his place. Then the man turned to a young man with green-dyed hair and asked why he allowed himself to swear like that in public places. Maybe his parents had brought him up badly? After these words, the boy started to slowly get up from the bench and took a few steps to approach the elderly man in the cap. But he struck him so hard right in the shoulder. It made the old man fall to the ground, dropping his cane and hitting his head hard on the bus stop wall. The teenager picked up the stick, leaned on it, and bent down to the man called him a fucking old man, 
and asked why he was bothering him at all. And why is he asking about his parents? Why does he have to listen to humiliation about them? And in the end, he asked the last question. Is the gentleman drunk or what? Because his mouth stinks, so he asked to cover it and not to stick his head out anymore. Then they went into the bus where the people who were there started to find out what was going on at the end. And maybe they should call the police. The teenager held his grandfather's stick on his shoulder with one hand and put the other in his pocket and smilingly said that he would let them try to call the bastards. Then he opened his mouth wide and stuck out his tongue, and on his left hand he showed everyone his middle finger, and emphasized that he was only fourteen years old and could not be punished, so they could report him for that too. At the same time, a red-haired woman and an inspector were talking outside the Ministry of Education building, telling him that a lot of time had passed. They were standing next to a red car, and the man said that today was the day she joined the army. The woman happily replied that she had been dreaming about it since she was in high school. Then she slowly raised her hand to her temple and smiled broadly, saying that it was an honor to work with the captain, and in this wonderful institution. In response, the captain raised his right hand to his head and smiled sweetly. Seeing this, the young lady smelled his hand, and after a second her expression changed. So she said that she really thought so. The colleague did not understand what she meant. Then the woman became upset and looked down, and tears began to flow from her eyes, and she pulled herself together and said that if she was telling the truth, then a table with many delicious dishes was shown, and one man said that it was an honor to meet Captain Choi Kang Siok. It turned out to be Lieutenant General Lee Dong Chan of Special Operations, who smiled broadly and added that he had been a student at the same Daejeon High School as him ten years earlier. And finally, he asked why the minister wanted to talk to him. The man standing in front of him seemed angry and folded his arms across his chest, but he could not control himself any longer and punched the general right across the left cheek so that he flew several meters away. And leaning on the lockers behind him, he held on to the place where he had been struck and looked with a strange look at the gentleman in the classic suit who said that if he swallowed the spirit of Tejongo, he could become his blood brother. He asked why he kept calling him by his title. Then the black-haired man smiled broadly to lighten the mood and said that he could call him Hyun Nim from now on. The lieutenant general, still holding his red cheek, opened his mouth wide in surprise. What he heard took him by surprise and he had not expected to receive such an offer. After that, the men sat down at the table and began to drink drinks and taste the food that was there. When they were very drunk, the man in the military uniform asked if the gentleman was talking about Im Han Lim. If so, he could take her away for a thousand years. Suddenly a red-haired woman smiling happily said that she had suddenly received a call from a major general who said that she was staying here until the minister resigned. The inspector clenched his hands into fists and said to himself that this old man was abusing his authority. The lady then walked to her car, smiling broadly, and added that she wished him all the best. In the end, she called him captain, and then corrected herself and said senior colleague. The inspector smiled sweetly as he carefully observed the reaction and all the actions of his fragile colleague. Then the events unfold on the territory of a certain educational institution, where one of the students, while browsing the social network, noticed that the video with her grandfather had gained a million views and she started shouting loudly, telling her friend that they were so cool and popular, who was beating up a student at the time. However, he heard everything and asked if she had posted that video. The young lady happily raised her hand up and added that it was only on social media, but what would happen if it got into the news? The young man struck again and asked what they could do. After all, they can't even arrest him, and again he hit his alleged rival in the right cheek who could not even resist. Then the guy with green hair raised his two hands in the air wearing red boxing gloves and shouted loudly that the final blow was coming. The punch is called the demi-roll, and it is not one but a series of several punches in a row. The victim started to cover his face with his hands. However, he was unable to do so properly, as the blow hit him right on the chin, causing blood to spray out of his mouth in different directions and then he fell unconscious to the ground. And the boy, who was only fourteen years old, joyfully raised his hands in the air because he had won his desired victory. 
After that, he began to take off his boxing gloves and said that that was it. He asked the victim a question, so that he would not even think that he could avoid him at school tomorrow. Then, sitting down right next to him, he took up his jacket and asked the young man what he had done to get Min Jin Un's coordinates. However, without receiving any answer, the bully began to kick his opponent who was lying on the ground and not moving, and the teenager asked in fright what had happened to this idiot. Another young man approached them, who also leaned down and looked at the student carefully. Then the boy with green hair said that the jerk had fainted and was very fragile. So they decided that I could leave. As they walked up the stairs, one of the young men pointed to the door they had just come through and asked if they could not leave Ji Hong here. The chief replied that he would lie down for a while and then go home. The comrade could not calm down and said that he might die if they did not send him to the hospital. The green-haired man hid his hands in his trouser pockets and said that people don't die that easily, so there was nothing to worry about. But even if it did, it was just a mistake. And showing his hand clenched into a fist, he asked me, smiling, why does he think he puts on boxing gloves? And he added that even if he died, he could say that they were just boxing. Of course, he does not expect this to happen, but if it does, he will be charged under Article 8, where a minor serves a one-month sentence in an isolation ward. And taking a few steps, the young man said that if you listen to him, you can assume that this year is his last chance to kill someone. But the most severe punishment is under Article 10, up to two years in prison, provided that he has not been convicted before. The chief, laughing loudly, said that if the guy died, he would definitely tell him. So to end this pointless conversation, he asked where they would go now. To the karaoke? Or will they call the children to Chi Yun? My friend, who had been watching something on her smartphone all this time, said clearly and briefly, The sea. The boss asked where the idea came from. The young lady showed a certain photo and angrily said that this bitch was getting a lot of likes just because she left school and went on a trip. So it was time to have some fun. Shifting her gaze between the guys, the blonde suggested going to the Eastern Sea, not the Western. After all, it shimmers with blue there. A young man in a tracksuit asked his girlfriend if she was crazy. First she should look at the time, and then where would she get the money to do it? The young lady began to beat him on the chest with her fists and said what a bore he was, and added that if they didn't go to the seaside, she would go home. The teenager asked with a grimace if she was having one of those days. Is that why her mood is so changeable? Suddenly, the boy with green hair noticed that across the street from them, a man in light clothes parked his car and quickly ran out of it and started moving towards the building, saying, Toilet. And he had a brilliant idea. So he smiled broadly and happily said, This is what we need. And turning to his friend, he clarified that she said she wanted to visit the sea. And then he pointed to his friends at a black car that was standing not far from them, completely empty. At that time, a red car belonging to an employee of the Ministry of Education was speeding down the motorway. The red-haired woman looked at the inspector and asked him if the next school was related to sports. The man answered with a short, Yes! However, a minute later he added that according to the report it was a complete mess. Starting with the crazy teachers and ending with the corrupt director, he concluded that the fish rots from the head. My colleague looked at the road and said, that even the sports school was a complete mess, and the military is doing nothing about it. Suddenly, in the car's side mirror, the inspector noticed a black luxury car that was quickly catching up with them on the right side. And then it not only caught up with them, but also overtook them at breakneck speed. Employees of the Ministry of Education tried to carefully examine who was driving the car, who could just afford to break the rules like that. The sight of a black-haired man surprised them because he made very big eyes. He even froze for a moment because he hadn't expected to see such a thing. In the black car were three teenagers who were very happy and were rushing forward, smiling broadly and listening to their youth music loudly. They were driving so fast that they didn't even pay attention to anyone else. They didn't care because they were enjoying what they had just done. A young lady with red hair asked what kind of madman was driving a car like that. The inspector, looking carefully ahead, ordered her to follow them. The woman turned her head to her colleague and shouted in fright that there were children behind the wheel. 
The man said that he thought they were from a secondary school, after all. This is the most reckless and irresponsible age. And who else but them needs to be shown true education? And smiling, he added that these are brainless children who do not yet understand the consequences of their actions. And the students were having a lot of fun in the car. The Law on Minors, Article 4. Paragraph 1, Subparagraph 2. A minor child between the ages of 10 and 14 who commits a conditional offense will be dealt with under the law on the protection of minors. In simple terms, children under the age of 14 can get away with anything they do. And they know this quite well. And they are skillfully using what they are not allowed to do. And they will not be pursued by the police, because according to the law, they are not guilty. And therefore, they are free to walk around as if nothing had happened. Even when they kill a person or drive him or her to suicide with their bad actions and deeds, at this time, a traffic light on one of the city streets turned green for pedestrians, which symbolized that they could safely cross the road. So they started to move. Some of them were holding their handbags tightly in their hands, while others were looking at something on their smartphones and not even looking at the road. Suddenly, several pedestrians were drawn to a sharp sound coming from the right side of the roadway. So they turned their heads there. And at the same moment, a car rushed right between them at breakneck speed. It even scattered people on the road with a wave of air, and they started asking what it was. A young man in a tracksuit turned his head back and said that they were in a film. A blonde woman asked the guy with green hair if he knew how to drive. The high school student replied with a short and clear, Of course! And pressing the gas pedal, he asked her if she knew how fast he drove in GTA 6 and they began to race down the road even faster. Despite the signs and traffic lights, one of the gang who was sitting behind them pointed ahead and said that they would reach Gangwon Do in just one hour. His friend looked over at him and started laughing with amusement, and when he turned him back to the road, he saw something that scared him a little. There was a white car in front of them. The young man began to shout nervously, What the hell is this Kalima doing here? And then he began to shout, Get out! Call it off. Go away. However, the collision could not be avoided. The right front wing collided with a car parked by the roadside. Then they flew into a pillar and hit the bumper, which finally brought the car to a stop. And gray smoke started pouring out of it. And the vehicle they initially hit remained standing where it was. And the man who was sitting in it hit his head hard on the steering wheel and raised his head and rubbed the back of his head, grimacing, because it hurt a little. And then he noticed through the side window that the children started to quickly get out of the car and shouted to each other that they needed to get out of this place. So the driver opened the door and shouted at them that this idiot didn't know how to drive at all and drove onto the road where there were already many cars. The student with the green hair turned his head back and called the man a piece of shit and added that the next day he should watch where he was driving. Suddenly, a red car came in their way, blocking the road, and they couldn't move on to escape and hide from the man. The leader approached the front side window and knocked on it with his fist, asking why he was there. Finally, he ordered the Cretan to get out of here. However, it didn't happen as he thought it would, as the gentleman sitting in the middle suddenly opened the door and hit the guy right on the forehead. This caused the student to fall to the ground head first with his arms and legs spread in different directions. What happened to their friends scared the other children very much. They started shouting at the inspector, did he really dare to hit him? And calling him an old man, they told him that he was out a hundred million won. Suddenly, they felt someone behind them grabbing their necks with his strong hands and holding them against his body so that they could not move normally. It turned out to be a red-haired employee of the Ministry of Education who was pleased to catch them both like this. And the children looked up to see who had done this to them. Then the woman looked at her colleague and asked what they would do next. Perhaps it would be better to call the police to deal with this. The blonde woman who was still being held by the neck began to smile sarcastically and said quietly, The police? Well, let's see what happens. And a minute later, she said that their birthday had not yet passed, and they are not fourteen years old. So it would be useless to call the cops. The inspector said that the children were one hundred percent right. After all, as soon as they get to the police station, they will be released immediately. Taking out a single cigarette from a red packet with his teeth, the man carefully looked at the students standing in front of him. He asked them what school they were from. 
Suddenly, the blonde girl also took a closer look at the man and quietly said that his face looked very familiar to her. On that day, there was a fight at Hyunjin High School in which a student was hit hard in the face and heard the words that the attacker's birthday was in 13 days. The student was being beaten by a classmate right in the corridor, even kicked, while the children behind him were loudly shouting, Go, go on, go on! Then the next girl in line, who was wearing a yellow hoodie, came up and kicked the student right in the stomach with her left foot, causing him to take a few steps back. The next kick was to his right cheek and was also so hard that saliva flew everywhere. His nose started to bleed. The young man rolled his eyes and thought that in 13 days he would be criminally responsible. But in the end, he started to fall face down, not even trying to hold on to anything, and everyone who was watching shouted with joy that they had beaten him quite well. While the student was lying on the floor of the stove, the bullies, including two girls and two boys, gathered in a circle and started having fun, ignoring the victim. But after a few minutes, they all said, Why is this idiot lying on the floor? And they called him a fucking bitch. To this, one of his comrades said loudly, You fucking bitch, and said that he would file a complaint about the use of this bad word. The beaten student saw before his eyes someone's foot wearing a white sock and a light rubber slipper. And a minute later, the bastard's arse sat on the victim's head. It turned out to be a teenager with light gray hair, and while he was sitting there, he took out a cigarette and started smoking it. For a second, he hung in that position. Without even blinking or taking another puff, he just held the cigar between his lips. The redhead put her hand over her nose and asked the blonde what that sound was. Was he farting? The young man smilingly replied, Yes, whoever put the toilet here and added that she was lucky he hadn't already taken a shit here. The boy's name was Min Ji Un, and he got to his feet and asked if they had seen Hyun Chul, Tu En, and Mi Yang. Were they skipping school again? Leaving the victim lying on the floor, the student began to move down the corridor and asked someone to call them, as they were going to meet today. The young man, who had been beaten up a little bit, began to get to his feet, thinking that their school was the most horrible place in the world and he would not be criminally punished for 13 days. So the idea came to him that Min Jin Un should die, and his eyes filled with a fury and courage that had never been there before. He began to slowly and carefully take the knife out of his trouser pocket, saying that he had practiced at home with hundreds of pillows, so it was time to put his skills to use. And he started to move slowly towards the blonde boy, who was standing in the middle of the corridor, raising his cold steel up to deliver a very strong blow. Suddenly a door opened from the classroom next to him, and another student came out, who saw this and started shouting at the entire corridor, Hey, stop! Stop it! The blonde asked what was wrong. Why is he shouting like that? Does he have something wrong with his face? At this point, the victim hid the knife behind his back and looked down. The boy continued to shout that he had just seen something on the second floor of the school. The blonde man was very surprised to hear this information, because he had never expected to hear it, especially that it would happen to their school. As it turned out, an inspector came to the school, standing at the end of the corridor, looking at the students who came out of their classes and looked at him with open eyes. The informant said that Yun Chol, Tuen, and Mi Yan were in trouble. One student in the crowd added that he knew it would end one day. The red-haired bully standing behind him stood on her tiptoes to see better and said that this was not the education bureau. The blonde asked her to shut up. The girl did not hear his request, but instead covered her mouth with her right hand and asked why they were here. Her blonde friend asked what was wrong with these freaks, and a minute later he added, Isn't it their birthday? Why are they wearing this? As it turned out, the guy with green hair was wearing a sign that said, I am a kidnapper, and he was handcuffed. Today's victim was standing with a battered face and a nosebleed. However, he watched everything carefully with wide open eyes and an open mouth. Then the inspector began to walk down the corridor, holding his magic wand on his right shoulder, followed by three pranksters who had done a lot of mischief that day. After school, another gang of students, led by the blonde boy, sat in a cafe and discussed what had happened today. The blonde girl said that these suckers were just unlucky. How could they get caught by the bureau outside the school? The black man asked what happened to them next. 
The young lady replied that she did not know, but they were first taken to the teacher's room and then disappeared. The redhead suggested that they lay low and wait for a while. But what should they do with that scoundrel Park si Hyun? Perhaps they should stab him. After listening carefully to everything, the blonde man got to his feet and asked his comrades if this bureau was really that bad. Everyone present turned their heads to him. The young man continued to say that they were only thirteen years old and wondered if this teacher could do anything for them. And in the end, he smiled slyly. All the students present became angry at the same time and began to address him menacingly, asking what he was talking about. They said that he was from a school of technology, which is one of the top three educational institutions in the country. The head calmly said that he had seen on YouTube that this gentleman had beaten 300 people himself. But was this an obstacle for them? After all, rumors can be exaggerated, so you need to think things through carefully. Suddenly, their argument was interrupted by a red-haired woman who had been watching something on her smartphone and then started shouting loudly. Everyone turned to her and asked what had happened. What had she seen? For a few seconds, the girl did not respond to them, just saying to herself, Wow! 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 And then she turned the phone to her friends and told them that the new Sebastian Louboutin shoes had come out, and they were so cute. And then she invited everyone to register, because it was a very cool exclusive. One of the gang angrily pointed out that they were actually discussing important things here, and she was looking at shoes, and the blonde lady replied that it was crazy to pay 800 lakhs. After they had discussed everything, they started to climb the stairs where they met a young man who asked them to clean up after themselves, because if his father found out, he would be in trouble. After all, they don't even pay the rent. The girl with red hair kept saying that these new shoes were very cool, and the more she looked at them, the more she wanted them. But her mother would not buy them for her, even if she died. Walking along the sidewalk, the same girl yawned and sadly asked why her father was giving her some miserable 300,000. Suddenly something caught the attention of the blonde man walking behind her. It turned out to be a supermarket which was closed at this time of day. The only lights were on in the vending machines that stood around the premises. Looking at the building, the young man smiled mysteriously, because he already had a plan in his head for what he was going to do. He walked up to the glass door with his bright green toy, and his friends, who were standing a few meters away, asked him where he was going. Then he brought the toy closer to the glass, and when it touched it at high speed, it broke, and all the tiny pieces flew around. All the hooligans opened their mouths wide at what they saw, because they did not expect him to do that right then and there, without even warning them. The blonde girl asked what he had done, and what was the purpose of all this. The blonde man, putting a hood over his head, replied that he also needed to buy something. He also put a black mask on his face so that he could not be recognized on the dash cam. However, the rest of the gang came in with him. The leader, standing at the cash register, said that they should take cigarettes because they would sell them for 4000 per pack to school students. Suddenly, one of the boys, who was wearing a red hoodie, pulled his mask down to his chin to taste the candy he had just taken out and unsealed. However, his friend warned him not to take it off again. Moving between the shelves, the boy noticed someone's smartphone lying near the drinks. Taking it in his hands, the young man turned to the others and asked them if they should take it or leave it here. The blonde man was surprised by what he saw and slowly asked, Mobile? Then he realized what it was for. So he jumped out through the hole and shouted to his friends that they needed to run away as soon as possible. However, he didn't even have time to do this himself because a man was already standing in his way, stopping him with his muscular torso without even touching him. Looking up, the student saw a very large man who was just barely holding himself back from the rage that was bubbling up. This gentleman was Mart Juin, and one of his special characteristics was that he had been working out for twenty years. The man angrily said through his teeth, Damn you, you bastards. It's a good thing I came back for the phone in time. However, this did not frighten the blonde in the slightest so he took his green toy out of his pocket and started spinning it in his right hand. When he reached normal speed, he brought it up to his opponent's face and it hit him hard on the left cheek, and the gentleman even turned his head slightly to the side. 
And then he started screaming loudly from the pain he was feeling right then, as his cheeks seemed to be on fire. However, in a minute, he pulled himself together and the pain even went away a little. He looked at the student with wide eyes and shouted, You bastard! And a second later, he added that it would be the end of him. And as he approached the student, he swung hard and hit the blonde in the face with his big fist. It was such a powerful blow that the boy flew several meters away like a fluff of fluff and fell to the ground. His friends were very scared for him. At that time, the man turned to them and with a furious face called them juvenile bastards and ordered them all to stay in their seats. He added that they would all eat Konpab. The leader of this group of students raised himself up on his elbows and smiled happily when he heard this. After the incident, they all arrived at the nearest police station. It was already quite late in the day. Three boys and two girls were sitting on chairs in the waiting room, trying to take a normal photo together. When the policeman on duty saw them, he said, Is this Min Jinun again? Rubbing his head, the policeman told the man that these children were a pain in the arse. The gentleman turned his head to them and asked, Are they repeat offenders? And he added that their lives were in the shitter, and they would definitely go to jail. The officer on duty turned his head back and asked his colleague to call Park Suk Jen's guardian. He said that the young man should be sent home as soon as someone from his family came. What he heard surprised the man, who brought the children to the police station to have them dealt with properly. The policeman began to ask him questions about how to send them home. What was he talking about? To which the gentleman calmly replied that they were minors and they could do nothing. Finally, he asked the man if he had hit the blonde. After a minute, the man said yes, but only because he had attacked him first. The policeman on duty said it didn't matter. After all, how could he hit a child? He asked the man to sit down because he needed to draw up a report. The man was very outraged by this and angrily said what kind of stupid laws are in this country. At this time, the children were still sitting on the bench and looking at the red-headed student's smartphone. The gentleman who brought the children here was still not satisfied with what he had been told a few minutes ago, saying that it was self-defense and asking if they would all go home. Suddenly, an inspector walked into the police station with slow steps and apologized for his unannounced visit. He could see the surprise on the faces of those present. Then the man came closer and apologized again for the fact that people had to bother with his students at such a late hour. Some of the gang of hooligans were surprised while others sat back and looked at the gentleman from the Ministry of Education. When the inspector managed to take them away from the police, a group of children standing in the street in front of him put their hands to their heads and said, Thank you, in a chorus. Then they all turned to the right and the blonde man waved and smiled, saying that he would see them tomorrow at the school. The man was a little angry, and waving his right index finger, he ordered the young man to close his mouth and quickly come to him. The blonde boy turned around, sticking out his tongue, and happily pointed his middle finger at him, asking what if he didn't want to do it, and he added why they should obey him outside the school. All the children turned their backs on the man, and one shouted that it was time to run away. Watching this, the man leaned slightly forward to pick up speed to follow the students and said, Oh, those impudent students. For several minutes, the inspector chased the students, turning different corners, but after one... He was surprised to see something he did not expect. Right in front of his face, a blonde boy started waving a knife, trying to wound him in some way, so that he would not run after them. And when he couldn't hit him, he stopped for a minute and said that the teacher was able to dodge and it was very amazing. The man watched the student's actions carefully. Then the young man began to lick the blade of the cold steel and smilingly said that he could really dive a person and not even blink. The inspector stood there with a serious expression and a piercing gaze and asked the student if he had ever killed a person. After such an unexpected question, the man continued to stand silently looking at the student. The latter in turn, moving the knife from side to side, said to clarify what he meant. Can a teacher kill a person without hesitation? And in the end, he added that if the inspector did not want to die, he suggested that he leave their school. The man heard these words and began to smile slyly. However, the gentleman put his hands in his pockets and said that it sounded interesting, as if the student had already killed before. The young man listened carefully to the man's conclusion.
but furious, he started running straight for the inspector, brandishing a knife. However, the teacher had a plan for this case. He pulled out a pair of handcuffs from his trouser pocket, which came in handy just in time. When the young man approached him, the man swung wide and quickly fastened one part of the handcuffs on his right hand where the knife was. A minute later, he grabbed the student by the other arm and put on the other part. The guy was very angry at this turn of events and started shouting, What? in anger. At this point, the inspector carefully took the knife out of the student's hands. He held the end of it behind him. Then the man pushed the young man to the ground, holding him tightly to it. The student's face twisted from the pain. The student turned his head slightly towards the gentleman with black hair and shouted loudly to let him go immediately. As he was a minor, the teacher took something green out of his pocket and with squinting eyes said that if a student has a sin in his soul, he should not be proud of it. The next thing he did was to pull the mask over the young man's eyes so tightly that they almost came out because they were so big. However, the boy did not give up and kept shouting to be released immediately. The rest of the gang members saw this and said that they were probably fucked too. And so they decided that it was better to just run away and turned around and started running quickly in the opposite direction. And the blonde man was shouting that he was really going to kill him. But a second later, he asked the inspector if he had heard what was said. He said that their bureau should get out of their school. The friends ran away and turned their heads to hear everything. However, someone appeared in their way, very skillfully and quickly punching each of them, so that they flew back a few meters. It turned out to be the same colleague from the ministry who had red hair. And with just a few kicks of her right foot, she was able to take out four students. For a few minutes, the woman stood there looking at these main troublemakers of the school and trying to understand what makes them do such things. Then. Holding her smartphone in her left hand, she told the inspector that a convoy would arrive in five minutes. The student was quite surprised to hear this. The black-haired man replied briefly, Good. Turning his head to the student, the man leaned in slightly with a menacing voice but smiling sweetly. He told the others to address him by name, Minjian and four others, and informed them that they were under arrest on charges of theft and threatening the life of an innocent person. Blondie froze in place and listened intently. As the students drove away without seeing where they were going, they talked to each other about how several hours had passed and they had not yet arrived. However, a second later, someone turned to the inspector and said that the girls could get out. However, they offered to let everyone out. And when the masks were removed, the young man saw a large man in uniform in front of him, a little blurry. And when a few minutes passed and the sharpness in his eyes returned to normal, everything became clear as day. It was a prison where many children like them were kept behind a mesh fence. As the newcomers followed the guard along the fence, the inmates shouted at them, asking if they felt their peaceful life was coming to an end. It turned out to be the Kim Chain Men's Colony. In the cell where the students were placed, there was a rather fat and adult man who smiled and said that he was very pleased to meet them and asked if this was the first time they had been imprisoned. When they took a good look, the gentleman was sitting on top of their schoolmates, one of whom had green hair. The prisoner held up his index finger and said that one by one they would redeem themselves. The three newcomers saw this and were very scared and asked Hyun Chul Yi Tuen, Are you here too? How did this happen to you? And we were wondering where you disappeared to? The blonde man said that he and his friends had robbed a shop and were trying to take a human life. The man who was listening said that this was absurd. It was just a show. And he stressed that you can't go to jail without going to court. And in his head, he thought that someone just wanted to scare the kids by putting them in jail to teach them a lesson. The blonde guy on the left said that he had also beaten up some students at the school. Two others stood waiting for their turn to speak. The prisoner pointed his finger at the blonde man and ordered him to say what he had done to end up here. However, he stood frozen in place, not even blinking, and the man turned to him again, asking if the young man could hear him at all. Was he deaf? The prisoner began to move slowly forward to get to his feet and said angrily, That bastard. Damn him. The gentleman who was also in the cell and was lying on the floor reading his favorite book looked up for a moment 
because he was interested in what was happening. At that moment, two prisoners approached the blonde man and asked him if he understood the situation he was in. But one of them suggested that maybe he was too far away and he just didn't hear. So he decided to repeat the question again, this time closer. However, before he could do so, he got angry for some reason and started shouting loudly, telling the young man not to look down. If he did, he would scratch them out with a spoon. The blonde boy continued to stare at the gentleman who was crucified with anger, without even blinking. The student wondered if he was joking with them. Then he smiled sarcastically and continued to think that they were not real prisoners. So if they hit them, they would not get away with it. However, in the end, he said to himself that this was not possible at all. However, while he was in his thoughts, someone's strong fist hit him right in the nose. And this surprised the blonde man, because he did not expect such a development. It turned out to be the man who had been reading a book a few minutes ago and hadn't touched anyone. However, right now, for some reason, he was beating the student and calling him a jerk. The angry gentleman then struck him in the neck on the right side and asked if the young man had not yet realized where he was. The blonde man was very upset and disappointed by what had just happened. He was very, very hurt from the blows he received from the adult man. Suddenly the prisoner got too close to the student's face and made giant eyes filled with rage and said, Did you look down? So without hesitation, he grabbed the young man firmly by the neck with his right hand, and the student opened his eyes wide, and tears began to flow down his face. Then the man started moving forward quickly with the young man and pushed him against the wall so that a loud sound could be heard throughout the cell. The young man began to cough loudly because he did not have enough air to breathe normally, and thoughts began to appear in his head. What? What? This bastard? As if they could start a real fight? And with a student? Having carefully examined the attacker's face, the blonde noticed that he seemed quite familiar so he began to remember where he had seen him before. The next blow came from a knee to the stomach. The guy started screaming even louder in pain. Then the young man fell to his knees in front of the attacker, and holding his stomach began to say, Ooh, because he was in great pain. The prisoner was looking down at him from the top of the hill, watching everything. The gentleman sat down so that he was on the same level as the blonde, and said that the juvenile prison was very disciplined. He said that if there was a bad incident, the time spent in prison would be extended by a day. But if he killed them all, the time would be increased by exactly the same amount as in a normal fight. After these words, the student remembered that he had seen this man on the news. A black and white picture came to mind which was shown on TV about a year ago. It was about the murder of seven people. It turned out to be a mentally ill man who did not say a word while being held by two strong guards by the hands. However, the prisoner just smiled slyly. This gentleman's name was Ma Ken. He was only 19 years old. He had been in prison for 20 years. This is the maximum sentence for a juvenile prison day. And this young man looked at the newcomer and told him that he had nothing to lose. Blondie froze with his eyes wide open because what he heard shocked him and he realized that from the outside they might be protected by society. But here, at this time, Zhangju was in the women's prison, which was located a few kilometers away from the men's prison. The girls from the gang were washing the floor with blue rags and sobbing loudly to the whole cell, saying that they really wanted to go home, not understanding why they were punished like this. Suddenly, their crying was interrupted by a loud sound of a pen hitting a desk with several white sheets of paper on it. The angry lady turned her head to the newcomers and said angrily that they had had enough of the noise. She asked the girls to shut their mouths before she sewed them up. And at that moment, the young ladies fell silent. Only tears and snot continued to flow down their faces, and they looked on without blinking. So we can assume that the girls were having fun with Han Ai Ri. Then the events unfolded in the men's colony, but in a different cell, where a young man named Min Chun came in again, smiling and holding his belongings on a tray. He sat on the floor and told his neighbors that he had been to the juvenile colony several times. One of the big boys asked him what article he was in for. The student happily replied that he was in under Article 8 for stealing a car. The guy showed his strong and big fists and said that he was in prison under Article 9 
and said that those guys were in a coma after just a few punches. The newcomer concluded that sometimes it can be very fun here. He doesn't have a criminal record, but there are a lot of interesting guys here. At this time, the blonde man and his comrades were in the cell. The main one was lifted upside down, and his saliva was running down his face, dripping onto the floor. Even in prison. There are class inequalities while he was hanging like that. All his cellmates sat down next to him and ate and savored the food they had brought for lunch. After a few minutes of this torture, Oh Dong Su, who was in prison for grand theft and had been sentenced to three years and two months, this young man took a spoonful of rice and told the blonde man to say, Ah! And his fellow prisoner was named Shim Soon Tong, who was in prison for a brutal murder and had been serving four years and six months. And he also turned to the young man and asked him if it was cool to be fed by the boss, while the student was hanging there with a mouthful of food that he could not chew properly. He realized that there were just non-humans who continued to do their bad deeds. Then the high school student received a strong kick from his heel on the stomach, so that all the food flew around and fell on the floor and walls nearby. After that, the blonde man was lowered to the ground, and lying head down, he coughed loudly, trying to spit out what was no longer coming out. At this time, Makem, who was serving a twenty-year sentence for the murder of seven people, came over and told him not to spit it out, as it would be a waste of rice. The next morning, at eight o'clock, certain work was to begin in the prison, and for this purpose all the children were lined up in a line, standing one behind the other. A large and fat teenager approached the young man with blonde hair from the back, and whispered something quietly in his ear. Rule one. And then he began to take out a pen, which he had hidden in the right sleeve of his top. When he had it in his hand, he took it far enough and stabbed the sharp end into the back of the young man in front of him in the queue. In pain, the student gritted his teeth, closed his eyes, and contorted his face in such a way that it was clear that it had caused him considerable pain. Then the black-haired attacker, smiling sarcastically, angrily said that it was better not to go in front of those who were higher in class. The victim was still standing and trying to move away from the unquenchable pain. At three o'clock in the afternoon, there was a physical education class where a group of boys were playing volleyball on the school grounds. However, one of them said that today they would play the game with their feet, so he jumped up high to hit someone and Hyun Chol became the scapegoat. This is the same guy who had his hair dyed green and was in jail for car theft. After his shot, the attacker raised his hands in the air and shouted, Wah! A three-pointer. The rest of the audience saw this and said that he had done it quite well. The second rule in prison was to stand still and not move, because you become a target after doing something stupid. After sports at four o'clock in the afternoon, there was a scheduled shower where everyone had the opportunity to wash off the sweat and dirt. The blonde stood under the watering can next to his cellmate, the one who had killed many people and had fallen under his hands as soon as he got there. Trying not to notice him, the student noticed something that caught his attention for a few minutes, and his eyes became gigantic. The man had a rather large tattoo of a snake on his back, which covered most of his back. As he was soaping his head with his side vision, he saw that someone was watching him. So he turned his head, smiled sweetly, and winked. Rule number three is to be very careful 25-8. The blonde was quite surprised by this, because he hadn't expected this burly man to have such an ambiguous reaction. At seven o'clock in the evening, it was time for recreation, where everyone was in their cells. The new teenagers knelt in front of those who had been here for a long time while they read the newspapers with the news. The fourth rule was to keep your hands on your knees as a sign of respect so that everyone could see them clearly and have no complaints. It turned out that in a juvenile prison, the hierarchy is much stricter than in the army. That's why recreation time is the most difficult time for newcomers. If you move even a little bit, as one young man did, he put his head down a little bit to rest because his neck was already very stiff from this position. And after a second of this, a large plastic bottle flew into his face and hit him right on the nose. After that, the guy bent over even more and his nose started to bleed, and the one who threw it reached forward and tongued the bastard. The other thug, holding his bottle in his right hand, angrily stressed that not even a week had passed, and he was already allowing himself to behave like that. 
The only weapons in the prison were water bottles, because there is one advantage that they leave no marks on the body. The furious head prisoners said that today they had crossed all the boundaries. The blonde listened attentively with his mouth slightly open, but after a minute, one of them added that in his time. And while he was saying this, a guard passed by their cell and looked inside through the small bars. He added that he and him would have to spend at least a year here. The policeman looked at everything carefully. He turned his head forward and walked away calmly, because he sees such situations quite often. The prisoner continued to say that when he first came here he was perfect in everything and hadn't lost a single point. After seeing what the blonde man had seen, he concluded that this was by far the worst juvenile prison in Korea, where he had been for several days. Usually juvenile offenders are sent to special centers, but when you end up here, there were all prisoners without exception, great criminals who cannot even be imagined by an ordinary person. As the guard walked down the corridor, he heard many shameful phrases. After nine o'clock in the evening, the prisoners had to sleep for nothing. And after such a busy day, everyone was sleeping like the dead. Only one blonde boy from the school lay there, staring indifferently at the ceiling, summing up the five days that had already passed and asking himself how much longer he would have to stay in this bad place. Carefully looking at the long chandelier above, the boy said that they had not even reached the age of trial. Suddenly, the young man's thoughts were interrupted by someone stepping on his face with a bare foot. He could not understand what was happening. It turned out to be someone who had been sentenced to twenty years for the murder of seven people. The man covered his mouth with a yawn and then said how sick he was of having to go to the toilet at night. The student got up and sat down to hold his eyes. Then the gentleman came to the stall and began to calmly relieve himself with his back to the front door. It turned out that there was no door to the toilet, and the blonde man was watching the main inmate of his cell from the corner of his eye. He was watching because he had a pretty great plan in his head. A few seconds later, he was behind the black-haired man holding a pen to his neck. However, this did not frighten him in the least. He continued to pull up his trousers asking if John Weed was the guy and what he was going to do with this thing. When he didn't get an answer, he asked the next question. How much longer was he going to stand there? The student shouted out loud in anger. Had the man heard anything about the man from the education office? A minute later, he ordered him to answer as soon as possible before he finished him off. The black-haired gentleman turned his head back a little and asked with a sly smile, Bureau, is this the name of some new country in the world or what? The teenager just couldn't control himself anymore, because his rage was just overwhelming him, and he first called the black-haired man names, and then asked if he really thought the blonde could kill him. He quickly stabbed the older gentleman in the shoulder blade with the sharp part of his pen. He said that he had been planning to do this for a long time, but had to wait for the right time. After that, the black-haired man could no longer stand the show, and elbowed the blonde man in the stomach sending him flying several meters away. He fell to his knees, bowed his head down and began to cough loudly throughout the room. The prisoner was still adjusting his blue trousers and looking at the young man with a proud expression. Then he lifted his right foot and put it on the student's head. This action surprised and frightened him a little. Pressing firmly on the skull, the student lowered it straight to the floor. He stood there as if bowing to him. And with an indifferent expression on his face, he asked clarifying questions. Bureau? Teacher? What kind of words are these and how do they relate to him? And he added that perhaps the person he was talking about was the one with long black hair that curled a little. The young man's eyes widened as he heard the description, which sounded quite familiar. Through the bars, the black-haired man noticed a new guard in a blue cap, who asked him what they were doing here after curfew. The convict turned his head and looked at the man carefully, smiling mysteriously, and said that something very interesting was happening. This man, the guard, turned out to be an inspector, who squinted his eyes and smiled slyly and first called them freaks, and a second later added that they needed to be re-educated. The blonde man raised his head a little to see who was watching them at such a late hour. And what he saw was quite satisfying when the prisoners returned to their cell. The front door began to open slowly, and an inspector dressed in all black walked through it, placing his thin wand on his right shoulder. 
The teenager who had been brought here because of him became very angry when he saw him, and he gritted his teeth and said angrily, You! Then he ran up to the man, grabbed him by the shirt, and shouted that he should send him back home right away, because he had already spent enough time here. He also said that he would report him for being in prison when he was underage. The inspector responded by putting his index finger to his lips and saying, Shh! And then he struck the blonde man on the head with his black stick in such a way. The student fell to the floor with his legs up. The inspector raised his index finger on his left hand and asked him why he had shouted in the quiet time. The next thing the black-haired man did was to ask another prisoner what they do in such cases. The guy replied that if discipline was broken during the curfew, the guards would clean up the mess. And the instigator gets a sticker and is sent to the isolation ward. The blonde man was lying face up on the floor, and saliva began to flow down his cheeks from his open mouth. He went on to tell me the name of a young man who said that there was an ugly cat. It had black and white fur. The guy stood on the balcony and looked at the animal, and said it was an instinct or just a fight. But for up to four hours the meowing did not stop, but only intensified. After a few minutes of watching the cat that day, the young man's soul was in a state of turmoil because he had a premonition, and his mood was just terrible. At that time, someone dressed in a white apron finished his cigarette and put the butt on the ashtray. The cat's upside-down bowl was lying next to him, with food lying around it. You could also see that the man's hand was reaching for it, and then the young man said that he was going to kill the cat, but he killed the person, and she was lying face down on the ground, and a lot of blood was spread around her head. After that, the boy sat in the police station and gave some testimony about what happened on that ominous day to the man who was documenting everything on a computer. The blonde man bowed his head, and sweat dripped down his face, which was caused by anxiety, because he thought he would be sentenced to death. But a few hours later, a white and green taxi was driving through the streets of the town at a fairly high speed. The same young man and his mother were sitting in it, the young man asked if it was true that he could go home. The woman did not answer and continued to look out the window. However, the student emphasized that he had killed a man and asked his mother again if he shouldn't be executed. The woman still sat silently, ignoring him. Then the young man decided to look for information on the Internet, and all he found was that children under 14 cannot be prosecuted. But children under 14 are not criminally liable. And the only way to punish the boy is to punish his guardian. The boy read all this when he was at home and sitting at his desk. At that time, the boy was only in the third grade of primary school. However, even then he understood everything, and his eyes became cheerful, and a wide smile appeared on his face because of what he had just read. The adults who wrote these laws must have thought that children were too stupid. However, he wrapped it around his mustache, and from then on he did it to avoid punishment. After the incident in the cell, the blonde man woke up lying on the floor. A minute later he got up and looked around but could not understand where he was. He also couldn't understand how he got here. But he began to remember what had happened a few hours ago, and who he had seen before he lost consciousness. He realized that he had heard something about the detention center before, but sitting still, the young man began to look towards the front door with a small grill on it. At first he felt a little relieved. After all, he didn't see those vile bastards nearby. However, the guy could not understand how much time had passed. Was it already lunchtime? Or maybe dinner? And then he realized that something was wrong. He began to think about how many days he had been here. What time is it? He felt suffocated. He began to realize that he was going mad. So he jumped to his feet, ran to the door and began to pound on it hard and shout furiously, demanding that he be let out immediately. Then he began to ask when it would end, and said that he had had enough of the abuse and again asked to be released. After this noise, an inspector dressed in a security guard's uniform entered the cell and said with a serious expression that the young man had spoiled his appetite. However, he sat the student down at the table and put white sheets of paper and a pen in front of him, saying that he should think carefully about his behavior and write in detail why he was here. At the end, he added that if he did a good job, the man would be able to send him home.
the young man was so surprised to hear these words that he stood there for several minutes with his eyes wide open. When he recovered a little, the student happily began to clarify, Really, you're really going to send me home? The man replied briefly and clearly that they had already taught him a lesson. However, closing the door with a smile, he added that he would read one letter a day, and the more deviations from the truth there were, the longer he would stay here so he suggested that he be honest with himself. The young man continued to sit with his hands on his knees, not moving for several minutes after the door to the isolation ward was loudly closed by a guard. Then smiling slyly, he thought for some reason that this task was very easy, so it would be enough to write a profound apology. He quickly grabbed a pen in his right hand and began to write what they wanted to hear, so he put all his energy into it. And here's what he came up with. I haven't reached the age of majority yet, but I will soon. I have committed several thefts and assaults. When I got here, I realized I was wrong, and after thinking about my behavior for a long time, he is grateful to the teacher for this chance to understand his mistakes and repent of his actions. I will never behave like that again. Please forgive me. He handed the letter to the inspector and smilingly waited for him to respond. Instead, the man held the letter up to his face and blew his nose in it. He crumpled it up and threw it on the floor and happily told him to redo it, and that he was adding another day to his sentence. The student was shocked, to put it mildly, because he did not expect such a reaction, because he thought everything was written perfectly for him. After all, he had spent eight hours on this letter, and it was just perfect. He sat there for a few seconds, thinking about it in detail. Then he took up his pen and paper again and asked himself what the man wanted, and he decided to step over his pride. The next day the inspector came again and read the new letter, and then he tore it into two pieces, crumpled it up and threw it away. He told me to redo it. This went on for several days, and the guy was just so surprised and disappointed because he had already put everything he could in it, so he was really pissed off. His anger was overwhelming, and he shouted through gritted teeth, calling the teacher a bastard. Then he turned the desk over and told him to stop mocking him. Finally, he asked what he wanted from him. As he got closer, he raised his hand, which was handcuffed. He raised it to hit the inspector, because he had no more strength to endure it. But then the teacher grabbed it and quickly put it behind his back and said that he was right. But he could not do anything to him. And he stressed that as long as he was handcuffed... It would never happen. But looking at the guy who was sitting on his knees and said that he could not write anything today because he had already been working on this case all day and leaving the isolation cell, the man turned his head and smilingly added that the young man should not think that he was so cruel. It was just the rules of this prison. The words he heard and what had just happened made the student very, very angry because he could not influence the further development of events. So he spent the night lying on the floor with his hands handcuffed behind him. The guy was also upset that he hadn't succeeded, and he started to work himself up about the fact that he had nothing to breathe. It seems that there is not enough fresh air in the room, and it seemed that his mind was leaving him. Tears began to appear in his eyes because society thought he was too young to support him. But there is no forgiveness here. This is a freakish prison there is simply no chance for a person to survive in it, because there are so many obstacles and trials that not everyone can withstand. The student spent the eighth day in a row in the isolation, wondering in detail what he should do next to get out of here. On this day, he again presented the inspector with another letter he had written, and sat silently waiting for him to read it and give his verdict. However, the teacher waved his head to the left and right, and crumpled the sheet and said that it needed to be redone again because it was not enough. The teenager was neither surprised nor angry. He just continued to sit in his seat without moving or saying anything. The inspector put his foot on the table and said that before he left, he would read his drafts. And taking the first one, he emphasized that the guy must have thought long and hard to write this. Straightening the crumpled sheet, the man read a few lines and said, Oh, this is about the student's first impulsive act. At first he read it with a slight smile, but then he could not contain himself and began to laugh loudly in front of the camera. The young man turned his head to the sir and could not understand what made him laugh so much. After calming down a bit, 
he said that the guy was a fool and asked why he had written such nonsense before this letter. Then he brought the sheet close to the teenager's face and told him to look at it carefully and read what he had written. After reading everything in detail, the man said that this was the reason why he was in this prison and in the isolation ward. The young man made a face at what he heard. After this incident, all the newly arrived students began to take off their blue uniforms, which they had been wearing in prison for several weeks. The inmates who had been here for quite some time and were still serving their sentences watched the teenagers and said that they were lucky. The young man with green hair wearing his white shirt sobbed loudly and said that they were finally going home. Suddenly, the door to the cell slowly opened, and an inspector, still dressed in his guard's uniform, came in and asked if everyone had changed. When he received a positive answer, he turned to the exit, smiled sarcastically and said that they were leaving the cell quickly. Three of the students raised their hands in the air and began to cry with joy. However, only the blonde boy stood there with an indifferent expression and a devastated look on his face. When the teacher left the room, the students of the secondary school followed him one by one. The gentleman who was in this cell for the murder of seven people carefully watched the actions of his former neighbors, sitting silently with his head on his right hand. And when the blonde man was the last to leave, the black prisoner sat on his bum and said with a sigh, Oh, schoolboys. The young man did not understand what he meant. Then he added with a sly smile that he would be here for another four years. People stay in juvenile prison until they are 23. Then they are transferred to a regular prison. And finally, he added, See you later. Turning his head slightly towards the prisoner, the blonde man stood for a moment and listened to him attentively with an oblique glance. The next day, during the sports hour, the juvenile prisoners played volleyball on the playground in the middle of the prison yard. But the guy with the mop of hair, who was about to serve a 20-year sentence, was not. He was calmly doing his second set of pull-ups on the horizontal bar. As he was doing another set of pull-ups, he noticed that someone came up to him from the right and offered him a cigarette, holding up a whole red and white pack. It turned out to be an inspector who was holding a bottle of red energy drink in his other hand and drinking it in small sips. He said to the young man that it was a very good job, and with a big smile on his face, he offered the prisoner a little rest and a smoke together. The black-haired man did another pull-up and smiled back, saying that he didn't actually smoke and didn't advise the inspector to do so. After finishing his workout, the prisoner jumped down to the ground and asked the inspector to give him a drink of cola, which he had also brought with him, and they moved to the benches, which were located a few steps away from the horizontal bar. For several minutes they sat in silence, smoking a cigarette and drinking a sweet drink from a tin can. Then the prisoner looked ahead of him and asked the teacher if the boys had returned to their previous lives. The inspector took another drag, looked into the distance, exhaled the smoke slowly, quietly and calmly, and said, Well, they are, as they drove fast in a blue and white police van on their way home. A student with green hair sitting next to the blonde man said that the words of the murderer haunted him. He still can't forget them. And the teenager just looked silently out the window and the words, see you later, flashed through his mind, because they were definitely not crazy. Who would want to be there again? Then he remembered the situation when he was in the isolation ward, and the inspector showed him a draft that said, I will commit suicide if I get here again, and said that this was the right answer. After a minute of reflection, the secondary school student asked the man with an indifferent expression what he was talking about. Why is this the answer? The inspector smilingly said that the young man probably thought he wanted to see him justify himself, but he was very wrong. He asked him how he could believe the fairy tale that a person can change in two or three weeks. An employee from the Ministry of Education told the student that he wanted to show him his future if he did not change his behavior for the better. There are many juvenile boys like him in this prison. He added that all of them cannot understand the consequences of their bad actions, because crime, if you try it at least once in your life, it will be hard to give it up, just like alcohol and cigarettes. With two fingers pointed, the inspector said, smiling, that they probably thought they were the smartest and used loopholes in the law. But during this time, they had already got used to crimes. 
and after that the gentleman threw the sheet right into the guy's face, who sat silently with his mouth open. Turning to the exit, the man happily said that there was only one prison for juveniles in their country. So if he gets here again, he will meet half of his friends. After saying that, the inspector closed the door of the detention center behind him. The young man remained sitting where he was. However, he was very angry, because it could be seen in his expression, where his eyes were squinting and his cheekbones were moving up and down. However, he still did not understand whether it was a lesson or a warning. At the thought of such sad memories, the young man slammed his hands into fists on his feet. However, he would understand everything in the future. And he continued to sit looking out the bus window with a mysterious look at everything around him. The prisoner, holding a red tin can, told the inspector that he had heard about the bureau from a local boy named Ryu Jun Hyun. He then took one sip of the sweet fizzy drink and said that it was very boring. And then he started talking about what it would be like to have a teacher like him at their school last year. And the memory of that ominous day when he was beaten up by a group of kids came to mind. But then he continued to say that he would not have been driven to the point of taking a knife out of his inside jacket pocket. And then he would have lived in peace. Just like before he killed those seven monsters, the picture of him covered in blood, attacking the students who were mocking him, came back to him. And the boy told the man that if they had had a bureau, then no one would have died that day. The black-haired young man said this with his head down and looking at the ground. The inspector listened attentively while smoking a cigarette. However, when he blew the smoke out of his mouth after the last puff, the inspector moved forward a little but still looked ahead of him. The prisoner, not hearing any words, began to slowly rise from the bench, but finally asked a question. Perhaps the future would be different. If there were people like them, employees of the Ministry of Education Bureau, suddenly... One high school student received a reminder on his phone that the age of permissiveness ended just today. It turned out to be the young man who had been severely beaten at school 13 days earlier. At that time, in prison, the black-haired man continued to say that he would not have eaten those hooligans and would not have become prey himself, and then there would have been no monster like him. And the boy, who has now become an adult, went to the bin, which was located a few steps away. He took out a small black folding knife from his trouser pocket and threw it into the bin. The black-haired prisoner, moving a few meters away from the teacher, added that he would not have become such a monster who killed seven people without any feelings. After that, the inspector threw his cigarette on the ground right next to the bench where he was sitting. But a minute later, he took another cigarette from the pack and put it in his mouth, took out a lighter and lit it. Then, after taking the first puff, he raised his head up with his arms spread wide and said calmly how burdensome it was. The inspector's thoughts were interrupted by a security guard who came up to him and said, So you've been here all this time, and invited the man to follow him. While they were walking to the building, the policeman informed the inspector that he was allowed to meet with the person he had requested. When the prisoner was brought to the meeting room, the guard told the teacher that the man had just been released from the isolation ward so he might be a little overexcited. And finally, he said that if something happened, he could call him. The inspector looked carefully at his interlocutor who was sitting opposite him with a piercing gaze. He was a man with a slightly darker skin color and long, straight, long hair. He was smiling a little. The bureau worker asked him his name. He calmly answered Cho Kyu Chol. The next question was about his age. The guy answered briefly and clearly that he was 20. The third question was what crime he had committed. This made the interlocutor smile sarcastically. A second later, however, he said that he was in jail for assault, robbery, gang rape, gang formation, and more. But he didn't have time to finish because the inspector asked if he remembered or knew Choi Ga-young. This name made the prisoner very surprised at first. But then he started laughing loudly throughout the room. Rubbing his hands, which were made into fists, he slowly and confidently said, that's right, that's right. And smiling ominously, he said that this was the bitch, or rather the girl, whom he had beaten and sent across the Stisk River. The inspector was filled with such unrestrained anger at the words he heard, which could be seen in his evil gaze. However, the prisoner, sitting back on his chair, 
continued to say that it must have been in May because it was a very hot day. He remembered that he sweated like hell then. And these stupid schools don't switch on the air conditioning until June. The long-haired man had a hazy picture of that day in his head and said that he was very angry that day and went to skip school. However, when he was walking down the corridor to the door to leave the building, someone stood in his way. It turned out to be the victimized girl whom he called a bitch, and she tried to stop him. The guy went on to say that he did not remember exactly, but she was very loud, because she was screaming frantically. The man stressed that he was very tired that day, and it was also very hot, and the screaming was really annoying. Then he punched his fist hard into his palm. These movements were closely watched by an inspector sitting opposite him. Then the gentleman with straight black hair put his head in his hands and said that Tyson had once said that the best punch he had ever taken in his life was at his wife. The prisoner looked up with a sinister expression on his face, and he said with a big smile that he could guarantee that that was the best punch of his life, because the sounds of the bones breaking and her body twisting in pain. And he added that when he closed his eyes, he could see the picture in detail. Then the gentleman calmly asked what it was like to be such a loser. The inspector was surprised by this question, because his eyes became quite large. The man tapped his index finger on the table and said that if it hadn't been so hot that day, and the air conditioners were working in the school, if she hadn't stopped him, if she hadn't fallen from just one innocent blow, that day would not have been my best punch in my life. The education ministry official sat silently and listened intently to remember the smallest details. Then he got to his feet with his hands on the table and said, Oh, shit, and added that the other man should tell the prison authorities. Then he got too close to the inspector, so he had to put his hands in his fists just in case, and the prisoner said that he had done nothing wrong. He was just unlucky because of the circumstances that day. However, he did not fight with his visitor, and after saying that, he turned around and left the visiting room. After the meeting, the inspector went outside the prison to get some fresh air. However, he decided that in order to think things through, he needed to smoke a cigarette, which he had just taken out of his pocket. As he lit it with a metal lighter, he thought about all the words he had heard a few minutes earlier. However, his attention was drawn to what was happening to his right, and he turned his face to get a better look. It turned out that his boss from the Ministry of Education, had come up to him and used his lighter to help the man light a cigarette. The man took out a Cuban cigar and held it between his teeth and said that the inspector had finally left because he had already thought that he was being held for robbery. The subordinate took the first puff and exhaled light gray smoke. He stood there in silence for a few minutes. Then he turned around and walked in a different direction, saying that he didn't need to do anything to a man who was already responsible for his sins. The main man was a little surprised by these actions and looked in his wake. However, after stopping for a split second, he added that he shouldn't have known about it. Even if the offender is right in front of his nose, even if the perpetrator is mocking the victim and the black-haired teacher said that he could do nothing, the only thing left to do is to clench your fists and the heart overflows with white, and after that deep wounds remain on the palms which fill with blood. Then a picture from his past life appeared in his mind, where he was drinking, and a gentleman from the ministry came to him and called him a pig and ordered him to get up, because he had had enough of sitting on his pants. He said that the guy who killed Gayun was protected by the law on minors, so the man said that he wanted to create an independent organization to catch such bastards. He shouted that they should destroy these bastards. The inspector said that at first he thought it was some kind of nonsense. And putting his hands behind his head, he added that he still thought so. Turning his head a little to his superior, he added that it was still a little useful. The gray-haired gentleman stood there silently listening to his subordinate's monologue, holding a cigarette between his teeth. Then, on the sports news, the presenter smilingly said that she would now introduce the new young athletes. The players who will be shown today are Kang Suyun and Kang Jayon, the youngest national representatives of the women's basketball team. These protagonists are sisters from Sinan High School. Yi said that they were showing a training match against the women's team of the prestigious Kangyang University. Kang Jayon is the one who is shooting the ball, 
and they are being blocked by a member of the national team, named Song Sil Gi. However, it was a deception, because the girl then passes the ball to her sister. She grabbed it tightly, and quickly started moving towards the opponent's basket, and with one hand she exquisitely throws a three-pointer. And of course, she hits the target, because it is her well-practiced shot, which always works out well. That's why Kang Suyan is the best sniper from last year, and Kang Jayan made many successful passes. After the match, during an interview, one of the girls said that she and her sister have been playing basketball together since they were little. So they think that together they play better than other athletes. At Kang Suyun's school, the basketball queen is tall and incredibly beautiful. She has more than 200,000 followers on social media from all over the world. A correspondent who was at the match said that the high school sisters, who are still so young but already in the national team, demonstrate their majestic tandem. He added that he hoped to see them in the new year at the Asian tournament. When it was finally over, the journalists approached the girls and thanked them for their work. Shaking hands, the man with the glasses said that he would be looking forward to watching Su Yen's future career. The two ladies then began to move quickly towards the locker room, one after the other. When they entered the room, one of the sisters began to remove the hair elastic from her hair. However, members of their team lined up in front of them and bowed to emphasize that it had been a great interview. Then one of the ladies emphasized that the captain was very beautiful today and that she should look beautiful on air. The girl with the long hair replied that it was because of the makeup. When everyone finally got dressed and left the dressing room, the sisters went to one of the lockers and used a small metal key to open the door. They looked inside with serious expressions on their faces. They leaned over and said that the journalists had already left. They asked what she would do now, calling her a bitch. There was a girl tied up with her mouth taped shut, and a sheet with the words Kang Su Yon and Kang Jia Yon are the leaders of school bullying attached to her. The long-haired young lady, holding the victim's chin, quietly said that it was a good enough attempt. And after a minute, she added with a sly smile, but whatever she did, the victim girl was very upset and tears were streaming down her face. At this time, a red-haired woman from the Ministry of Education had already arrived at Sing Yon's school. She looked around the large room and began to stretch her arms, knowing that she had a lot of work to do. However, let's go back a little bit, or rather 13 days, when she and the inspector brought the teenagers to the prison, namely when the girls were the first to be released. The teacher told her colleague that it was possible to leave them at Han Ai Ri. She asked him if they shouldn't go to the school they were planning to attend. The man said that they had to find out something about the basketball team. The lady looked down a little and said that she had already read the report and everything seemed very clear. And if they didn't hurry up, something very terrible could happen. At this time, someone in the school took a rope and attached them to the steel and made one noose. Turned out to be a girl who was constantly bullied, so she climbed up on a chair. Crying hard, she began to slowly put her head into the noose. She looked ahead of her with a blank stare. During the measurement, the nurse said that the girl named Park In Ha was one meter seventy-nine centimeters tall. The woman emphasized to the young lady that she had grown by four centimeters in the last year. The girl began to say that when she was in her first year of high school, she was one meter seventy-five centimeters tall, and a coach came to her house every day. Back then, she tried different sports such as basketball, volleyball, judo, until she found the one she really liked. It turned out to be basketball, and it was no accident. During training, the young lady liked the tactics of the game, and the quite professional teammates who were already skillfully applying their tricks, and they hit the basket with precision. These were first-year students from high school, Kang Su Yan, who were also sisters. At that time, the girl was a super player among high school basketball teams due to her unsurpassed skills. She could shoot the ball with one hand just like the men. And the young lady dreamed of wearing the same uniform as Su Yen. So when she came to their training session, she happily announced that her name was Park In Hai, and she was 1 meter 86, so she could play any position. And after she said that, she stood silently and waited for what they would say. After two years of hard work, the girl entered the women's basketball high school where Su Yin studied. However, it was like any other sport. She had to train a lot and life was not as sweet as it had been before. 
Morning training, afternoon training, training after training, training. Training. The new arrivals were abused when they were given hard training that exceeded human capabilities. During one training session, the team leader approached them and addressed a red-headed girl named Kang Ja Yun. With a serious expression on her face, she invited her to come and eat chicken together. The young lady knelt down and happily replied, Uh-huh, calling the other woman her sister. The redhead, following the leader, said that she had called her mother yesterday and that she had been giving her father a hard time. The young lady who had just arrived noticed that they were breaking the discipline and she was ready to turn a blind eye. But not when a freshman is excused from training just because her sister is the team leader. That's why she was jealous of Jay Young. At the end of the day, they rested in their rooms, where there were bunk beds. One day, the redhead looked down at the new girl and called her by name. She asked if she wanted ice cream. As it turned out, they were neighbors, and her behavior depended entirely on her mood. When they first moved in, they occasionally switched floors. The redhead asked her to wash her clothes and basically do everything for her. The dark-haired girl told her neighbor that she didn't want ice cream and that she could go by herself. The redhead did not like this answer. However, at first her classmate did everything because she had a very kind soul. But now she was just sick of being taken advantage of whenever she wanted, so the lady couldn't take it anymore. Suddenly, after a few minutes of silence, she saw a red box cutter in front of her face which was waved in front of her face by an angry redhead. She gritted her teeth and angrily called her neighbor a bitch and ordered her to get up and leave quickly. When she saw no movement, she asked if it was so difficult to do. However, this did not frighten the dark-haired student, and she first grabbed the hand where the weapon was and then pushed her neighbor to the floor. Then she climbed on top of her and began to break her limb with a knife. She said that before basketball, she had practiced judo and she told the redhead to go get her ice cream by herself. And in the end, she asked if it was really that hard. The girl who was lying face down on the floor watched her neighbor angrily. The next day, someone showed off a few dark hairs in her hand, asking if the scum could see it. It turned out to be two girls from the team, and they asked the newcomer if she ever cleaned her shower. Had the first-year girls become so impudent in their time? The angry young lady began to shout loudly that it was not her turn to clean the showers this week. This week it should be Jay Ann's turn. After she had finished speaking, the student put her hand in her mouth with a handful of hair. And the redhead sister tucked a strand of hair behind her ear and said that Jay Young had said it was her turn. And when she came closer to the victim, the head asked if she was saying that her relative was lying. The student summed up that she had paid heavily for touching the commander's sister. And just from that day on, no one passed the ball to the girl, even when she was open to it and clearly demonstrated it. She also got all the blame, and in an instant everyone stopped talking to her. The only work she had to do was to massage Su Yon and Jang Yon's backs. The bullying did not stop even when they moved to a new class. Day after day, she continued to massage them without touching the ball. Some might say it's easy, that you can just give up basketball. However, it was hard for the girl because she had fallen in love with the sport since she was in high school. One day, during a regular training session, the coach announced some good news. That Kang Soo Yeon and Kang Ja Yeon would be going to the Asian competition next year, so the man invited the rest of the team to congratulate the girls. But for the victim of bullying, the world just collapsed in front of her eyes. Because some people give up their dreams because of constant bullying, and the perpetrators face a bright future. The day the reporters showed up, the young woman risked her life to tell about their atrocities. After all, she had been abused to the point of death, and things were only going to get worse. Her last hope was the Education Bureau, but she thought they wouldn't come here. Suddenly, someone began knocking loudly on the door of the storeroom, where the young lady was standing and trying to commit suicide, addressing the young lady. He said that the new coach would be thirty minutes early. Therefore, she should quickly come to the gym. When she got there, everyone was already there and waiting for the teacher. Red asked her sister how it happened that their coach was suddenly injured. The long-haired woman replied that she didn't know, because he had suddenly called over the weekend and said that he had injured himself while drinking. The victim, with an indifferent expression on her face, hoped that the new coach would not be particularly interested in their lives. After all, 
They were on the national team, and what could he do for them? Slowly entering the gym one by one, the players saw a rather interesting person in front of them. Turned out to be a red-haired woman who, tapping her stick on the floor, smiled sincerely and said that she was their new coach, and her name was Im Han Lim. She said that she hoped they would work well together. The victim looked at the new teacher carefully, made giant eyes, and opened her mouth in surprise. And the two sisters started smiling sweetly because they didn't know what was coming. The team leader turned to her sister and asked her if this person was the reason why she was so nervous. And coming up to the coach and looking her straight in the eye, she said that she was just a short person. The teacher was outraged by this statement, so she asked what the student had just said. Just a short girl? And as she spoke, the lady looked intently into the eyes of the girl standing opposite her. Then squinting her eyes, the woman continued to say that she was with her mentor. No, she allows herself to talk to a simple person? Where is this customary? The student looked up at the teacher and stood quietly with a serious expression on her face, listening attentively and thinking about every word she said. Then she bowed her head a little and apologized, because she had never seen a basketball coach of such a small stature before, and so she did not recognize her. However, after a minute, she slowly raised her head in gaze and started smiling sarcastically and asked if a lady with such a body could handle them. This made the woman very angry, but she managed to keep it together. She just put her wooden pointer to her right ear and began to fix a strand of hair with it. She said she wanted to give a warning to the team leader, whom she had never seen before. She told the young lady not to think she didn't understand, and added that she would only tolerate such actions once. Then the woman took her pointer and put it on her left shoulder. Turning her back slightly, she said she was not going to tolerate it twice, because she was not capable of doing that. After this incident, another training session began in the gym, where the team members followed the instructions of their new coach. One of the sisters, the red-haired one, gained enough momentum to jump high up and throw the ball with her right hand to the basket that was right in front of her. It turned out that the ball hit its target. A few seconds later, the baller landed on the floor and started running in the opposite direction. At the same time, the woman with red hair was carefully observing all the team members to see how they were behaving and to find weaknesses that could later be used against them. Suddenly, her attention was drawn to a girl with dark hair who was giving it her all. She was even sweating as she moved quickly around the court. She was very focused on this training session because she hadn't been able to play basketball for several weeks, because the team leader had been punished. The teacher called out to her, Hey, over there! This caught the student's attention and she turned her head and looked towards the new coach. The woman pointed at the girl with a stick and said that all the children were practicing throwing and asked why she was practicing steps. The student was surprised by this question. So the teacher told the young lady to stop talking nonsense and go to the other children. This surprised the student even more, so she even opened her mouth a little bit at this. The head teacher went to the teacher behind her and calmly told her to leave the girl alone. The woman turned her head slightly to the student and asked why she should do this. The student replied with a sly smile that it was a special order from her coach. In Ha is not that strong, so she was told to practice this way for a week, and in the end she added that she would be watching her, so the woman could just watch from the sidelines. The teacher was silent for a few minutes, thinking about everything she had said, and then she asked, addressing the main team, whether she and the previous coach had no eyes at all. Or does she mean that this girl trains steps for hours on end and has poor endurance? She also noticed that the other children had only made a few throws and were already running to get a drink of water. She asked if the lady thought they were the ones who needed endurance training. Then the woman with red hair turned to the darker girl and pointed at her and told her to get on the field and not to stand there. After these words, the teacher felt someone put a hand with long, thin fingers on her right shoulder and she froze for a few minutes. It was the head of the team, who had already come too close and with a serious expression and a threatening tone of voice, told her to stop doing this. She added that she and the previous coach had created this training system, so she didn't like the fact that someone could come in and change everything to her liking, so she said angrily that the woman was interfering in the middle of the workout. She asked her if she didn't think she was ruining their teamwork. 
The coach did not like this. She grabbed the student by the arm and asked her why she was training alone. And next, did the head coach even know who the substitute coach was? When she received no answer, the lady replied that he had the same powers as the main coach. The woman squeezed the student's hand so hard that she could not understand how such a frail lady could have so much strength. The teacher continued to say angrily that there was no difference between them at all. Therefore, it was not her place to interfere with the training or change the system. After all this, the red-haired woman took a basketball and headed towards the girl with dark hair and told her to go to the field and pass it. The student was very surprised by what had just happened. After all, she had simply lost hope that she would ever play again. When the ball was in the student's hands, she was still standing there, staring at it with her mouth open. It was a very familiar feeling to hold it in my hands. After a few successful shots, the coach ran up to the girl and asked her if she had just made a three-pointer. She praised her and called her a good girl. The student was touched by these words and froze in her tracks, tears beginning to appear on her face. The woman tried to find out what had happened to the student. The team leader was watching the whole show and was very angry. Her arm was still hurting, as it had been squeezed tightly by the new coach a few minutes earlier. When the training was over, the young lady with dark hair was hit hard on the right cheek by someone, so that her head turned to the side and her saliva flew around. It was a red-haired neighbor who called the girl a bitch and asked her if she had a lot of courage and reminded her that their sister had told them not to touch the ball. She asked again if she had decided to just forget the order. Then with her eyebrows raised and her teeth clenched in anger, the student asked why the hell she was crying in the middle of training, in front of the coach, or did she decide that since the replacement had come, she could do anything? And then she struck again, this time with her fist, which landed right in the stomach. This showdown was interrupted by the head of the team, who entered the room and shouted to her sister that enough was enough. Hearing this, the redhead turned her head back, and she saw her terrible sister, who was walking straight towards them with a serious expression on her face. And to top it all off, she was in no mood, because of what had happened at training. She walked up to the victim, looked her straight in the eye, and addressed her with the name Inha, and calmly asked if she was having a hard time. Then the head teacher put her right hand on the student's left shoulder, and said that she was very worried when the lady wanted to tell the reporters everything. And she said that now she could let her live a normal life. But for that, she just needs to leave. The student said the last sentence not so kindly, but even with impudence, and even began to smile sarcastically. A minute later, the teacher calmly asked the victim to promise that she would never tell anyone what had happened here today, and then no one would bother her in class. The dark-haired student's eyes flashed back to the moment she heard those words, because just a moment ago it wasn't basketball, but the end of her life, which she wanted to say goodbye to in a dark little back room. But what happened at today's training session? when a new coach stood up for her and finally allowed her to train normally with all the teammates. And to top it all off, she was able to put the ball in the basket with her signature shot. So the victim lowered her head and looked down at the team leader, who was still standing in front of her, and said so quietly that she could barely hear, I'm sorry. And then, gathering courage and strength, she said louder, Basketball, I really want to play it. This decision did not satisfy the student, but made her even angrier. So, without hesitation, she grabbed the dark-haired girl by the hair and began to drag her somewhere. The girl screamed out in pain, Ah! Captain! This did not stop the head teacher, and she approached the door and ordered one of her classmates to open it quickly. The girl did so without asking why. The victim was pressed with her back against one part of the door, and her right hand was held where the open part was. She was still trying to save herself by shouting, Ah, Captain! Only now she raised the girl's head to look her straight in the eye and angrily tell her that she had been making direct hints to her for the past year. But for some reason, this young lady was so slow to understand. Couldn't she understand why everyone was doing this to her? Why everyone was treating her like this? Then the main one turned to her red-haired sister and asked her why she was standing. When she received no answer, she ordered her to close the other side of the door. The dark-haired student started to scream even louder at what was about to happen, because if her arm was hurt, she might never be able to play basketball again. 
However, at the last moment, someone managed to stop the door with his fist. The team captain was very surprised. She thought that everything was already decided with this lady. After a few moments of silence, everyone present began to look through the small crack to see who had allowed themselves to do this, who had allowed them to interfere in their dispute. And they saw on the other side a woman with red hair who was very angry at what she had seen and heard. You could see it in her expression, with her eyebrows drawn together and a piercing look. Most of the team members were very surprised by who they saw and how the coach looked, and they were even a little scared of what would happen next. Next, the teacher gave the order to take a lying down position, and the sooner they did it, the better it would be for them. Hearing this, the students froze for a few seconds in their positions. The captain decided to save the situation and calmly turned to the red-haired lady, telling her not to get so excited because it was just a joke, and tilting her head slightly to the side. She began to tell her that she was worried about her obedience, and she said that as captain, she had to keep discipline in the team, and she said that the woman should punish the student as a coach. After listening carefully, the lady realized that it was time to do what she had long wanted to do. She put her right hand behind her head, clenched it into a fist, and punched the captain of the basketball team right in the nose, who was standing right in front of the teacher. Blood immediately began to flow from her nose and spread all over her face, and the girl began to scream loudly, Ah! At the top of her lungs from the pain, the trainer, standing over the young lady who was lying on the floor, angrily asked her if she remembered what she had said this morning during training. When the red-haired student didn't answer, the lady raised her eyebrows and gritted her teeth, and angrily reminded her that she would not tolerate this attitude twice. When the captain raised her head, because it was no longer so painful, the teacher asked again, Do you remember what I said? That I would not tolerate it twice. The student wiped the blood under her nose with an angry expression and replied to the red-haired woman, asking her if she remembered what she had said. The red-haired sister, who was standing behind the trainer, began to smile slyly at the words, because she remembered those words well and knew what they meant. The captain reminded her by saying that she would be able to cope with them. So far, this hadn't scared the woman from the ministry too much, because they were just the words of a teenager. However, all the children from the team slowly began to gather around the coach. They were very confident in themselves and their abilities, so they smiled slyly. The main one added, How will she manage with him with such a frail body and such a tall height? At this time, the woman was looking at everyone carefully, and the situation was already a bit stressful, so she clenched her hands into fists. However, she already had a plan in her head for what she should do in this situation, and she allowed herself to smile a little to get at least a note, a piece of positive. Behind her, a red-haired lady came up close to the teacher and asked her if she thought they were incapable of doing this. The woman listened to her with a look that said she was getting tired of it. The younger sister then pulled her right arm back to gain enough swing to hit the woman hard, saying that they had warned the trainer about the consequences. The student's attempt to hit the woman failed, as the red-haired lady managed to duck and avoid the blow. This surprised the student. The woman then tripped the other attacker, who began to fall on her back. Everyone who watched began to fear that something similar might happen to them. The student who had just landed on the floor began to scream loudly throughout the room from the pain in her legs and from the hard landing. At the same time, the woman fell on her back and threw her legs up to jump as high as she could. The young lady standing behind her could not understand what was happening. The trainer pushed off and hit the next attacker right in the chin with her heels. And it was so hard that the student threw her head back and threw her arms to the side. When the lady dealt with everyone, only the red-haired girl was left standing to put it mildly in shock at what had happened. She had not expected such a development. At this time, the teacher sitting next to her looked up with a piercing gaze directly at the student, who asked frightenedly, What is it? What does she want? After these words, the trainer got to her feet and with her right elbow struck the redhead right in the chin so that she threw her head up. And from this blow, she began to scream loudly in pain and despair, her mouth wide open and sweat began to appear in small droplets on her face. When the woman finally dealt with all her attackers, she stood looking at them with her legs wide apart, 
and her hands clenched in fists. Then the coach turned her head and gazed to the main basketball team, which had been silently watching everything that was happening around them. The girl sat there, surprised to say the least. She was simply shocked because she was sitting there with such an expression on her face. Wide eyes, raised eyebrows, and a gaping mouth. Suddenly, the teacher moved with quick, confident steps straight towards the captain. She was very serious, and her hands were still clenched in fists. The young lady was frightened by what had happened. So she began to quickly address the teacher, saying, No! No! Wait! After these words, the red-haired girl stopped in her tracks, and raising her right foot up, the woman brought it closer to the captain's face, who began to tremble, and clenched her teeth in fear, expecting another blow. However, the woman put her foot near her right ear and held her back. To avoid seeing what was happening, the girl squinted her eyes tightly and lowered her head slightly. It turned out that the teacher did not intend to beat her at all, but only wanted to scare her. That's why she propped her leg against the baskets of balls behind the student. And she calmly began to say that from this second onwards, the basketball team will obey all her orders, because if anyone dares to object, they will all follow the punishments she will invent for them. The captain looked up at the woman and looked her intently in the eyes, and she listened carefully to every word so that she would not miss anything and remember everything properly. The next day, all the team members lined up with their large travel bags. The two girls were talking to each other and speculating about whether they could leave just like that. The coach went up on stage. She put her wooden pointer on her right shoulder and told the children in front of her that if they packed their things, they could go home. The main one said that the summer games were coming soon. The red-haired girl replied briefly and clearly that a good team will do well even if they don't live together on campus. And smiling, she added that disputes arise from living together. What is forbidden in the Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism is allowed in this school. And finally, she said that even at the Olympic Games, this is not allowed. The captain silently turned around and headed for the exit, and her teammates were shocked by this reaction. The next morning at the first training session, the girls stood against the wall, half crouched with their arms outstretched. A red-haired woman walked in front of them and put her hands behind her back and asked if it was hard for the ladies. When she received no answer, she continued to say that they must be feeling very bad, and she asked if it wasn't fun to live separately. One of the girls, unable to bear the strain, said, Fuck! What a time! The redhead heard all this well, so she turned her head towards the lady who said it, and started to take small steps towards her, because she didn't like the expression. Then the girl raised her right hand up to slap her hard, and at the same time angrily called her classmate a bad person, and said that she should listen carefully when her elders speak. Suddenly someone caught her hand from behind. It was the new coach who approached her left ear and whispered a question. Had she forgotten her words? And added that the girl should not bother her teammates. Then everyone moved to the gym, where they started a training game to practice their shots to improve their accuracy. And then the main team faced each other on the field, with the ball being kicked with the left hand, and a dark-haired girl chasing her from the right side, who until yesterday had been subjected to massive bullying and was punished by not being allowed to play. After running for a few meters, the two girls collided and ended up on the floor, flying in different directions, and the ball rolled in the opposite direction from both of them. The dark-haired girl quickly got to her feet and walked over to the captain who was still sitting on the floor, and stretched out her hand and sincerely apologized. She asked if the girl was okay and if she needed any help. The boss was very angry at this development, so she looked angrily at her victim. The coach, who saw and heard all this, shouted at the dark-haired girl and asked her why she was apologizing. It was a foul. And it was the captain's fault alone. Then the woman said seriously that the girl should not worry about that during training so she could give her best, no matter who was watching. Then the coach asked why they looked so interested. After all, they can play at the same level as the national team, but they are not able to pass properly. After the training, one of the girls processed the captain's photo in Photoshop to add bruises and different kinds of scratches to her face, and then on her buttocks, where they would also be quite visible from under the short black sports shorts with two white stripes on the sides. 
It turned out to be the team leader and her red-haired sister. The captain looked at the photo and noticed that it was quite good. The young lady asked her if she knew how much time she had to spend in the Starfall. After all, thanks to her, the main one gets 200,000 likes. The redhead smiled happily and said that she didn't need to cross their path. But a minute later, she added that the damned redhead wouldn't be here much longer. The same evening, the captain posted the story on her social media with the text, I'm worried about tomorrow. What pain I'll have to go through this time. Will I be able to stand it? And at the bottom, she attached a photoshopped photo of herself with a bruised face, where comments of support began to appear below it. Of course, this news came to the trainer, who picked up her phone and opened the student's page and began to look at the photo carefully and read every comment. She did this in her room, lying on the bed with her round glasses on. It took her a few minutes to study everything carefully and draw some conclusions. Surprisingly, she was not upset or even angry, but even pleased because she was still looking at the photo and smiled sweetly, saying, Great. The next morning, the news spread all over social media. So, even a very popular blogger named Bomb So He did not miss it. The girl first greeted her audience, and then she said that today she would talk about the coach's abuse of her sisters, who are already known to them and are members of their national basketball team. A photo of a red-haired woman was then shown, and it was said that the new coach had beaten the captain, Kang Su Yan, because of different views on training. After that, a photo of the alleged victim was shown on the full screen, with several bruises and scratches of different sizes on her cheek and chin. The younger sister shared the story in her star city, so it quickly spread through all the available social networks. Even the teachers at their school saw it. Followers began to collect all the personal information about the new coach. The red-haired woman liked it very much because she thought that this woman would get what she deserved. However, after a few minutes, something interesting was discovered. And it did not please the main rebels of the basketball team so much because it turned out to be dirt on them. Last night, someone anonymously sent screenshots of Kang Jiayun's text messages where you could read various threats and blackmails that the girls resorted to. They even touched upon the young lady's parents. The news said that an independent examination had been carried out, which confirmed that the photo of Kang Jiayan's post was photoshopped, and there is evidence that Kang Jiayan is spreading bullying at school. A search of the coach's personal information showed that she had come from the Bureau of Education to deal with bullying at the school. The red-haired girl was already starting to get quite nervous about this. It went on to say that this inspector had caught the very student who had driven an innocent teacher to suicide and the reason why her face was not known until now was because she had taken all the students' phones at her previous school. When the team members watched the video in their classroom, Ruta asked a clarifying question, Is this fucker from the Bureau? In response, she heard a clear and short yes from a red-haired woman who had entered the room a few seconds earlier. The woman happily showed off her smartphone and said that she was also watching the news so she wouldn't have to tell her who she was in a long and boring way. She then turned to the redhead and asked her if she had seen enough, and in the end she called the girl a bullying queen. The student's face began to flush with excitement. Everyone in the classroom froze in their seats at what they had just heard. They tried to digest everything and understand what to do, how to behave. Then the coach's happy expression and smile disappeared from her face, and she became serious, so she calmly and briefly ordered the main bully of the basketball team to leave with her. The redhead turned her head slightly back and looked at the woman with raised eyebrows and squinted eyes, wondering what she should do. Go or not go? Where is her sister when she needs her? All she could think of was to get to her feet and start running, leaving her friends behind and the teacher, who had expected such a reaction. The student rushed to the door. She opened one half and began to look around to see which way was safe to run and where to go. The teacher was very amused by this development and started laughing, saying, Yeah, yeah. And then she put her wooden stick on her right shoulder. The woman asked the next question, whether the young lady thought she could just run away from her problems. As the redhead ran down the corridor of the school, everyone who saw her stopped in their tracks. They took out their smartphones and started filming everything 
and then they posted them on social media with various humiliating hashtags. Suddenly on the ground floor, the redhead saw the girl she had been bullying for several weeks. The young woman stood in her place without moving. The rebel with wide open eyes that even showed red capillaries shouted loudly, calling out her name, Pa, in, ha, to the lady who was standing a few meters away. And then the angry redhead, clenching her hands into fists, started to move quickly towards her classmate to deal with her for such bad rumors about her and her sister. However, before she could get there, a small packet of milk which had been opened hit her head and began to pour onto her face. A young man standing on the balcony threw the carton and asked if this was the girl who allowed herself to be bullied by her peers. Everyone turned their heads in his direction and listened attentively. Then he drew his eyebrows together, leaned down a little on the iron railing, and called the redhead a nutcase and asked why she was screaming so loudly throughout the corridor. And then, seeing the girl's entire face smeared with milk, he said loudly, laughing, that all her insides were now coming to the surface, showing her true face. After that, everyone watching the show began to raise their hands and shout loudly for the rebel to apologize. And she did it not later, but right then and there. The girls who were standing in the center of the corridor looked up and were shocked at what was happening in the school. Ruta was very surprised that no one supported her. The school children insulted her and called her various derogatory words and phrases. Then the news showed a photo of a basketball player smiling sweetly and stated the facts that Kang Jiayan had been bullied since primary school. The girl had been bullied by her classmates, and when she went to secondary school, she continued to do it, and no one could stop her. But people are trying to find out who is behind these terrible acts. That is why it has been suggested that her sister, whose name is Kang Suyan, is the person behind the murders. Five facts about the second inspector of the Bureau of Education, Im Han Lim. During this, a photo of a red-haired woman in a black classic suit was shown. The controversy about the bullying of Kang Jia Yun, a player on the basketball team, continues day after day. But as it turned out, her sister named Kang Su Yun is behind the scenes. The newsman went on to say that yesterday, Kang Jiayan's high school teammate made a statement on New Tub and said that the girl was a criminal and that her sister was behind the school bullying. The video received one million views within an hour of its publication. Other revelations appeared in the comments, and the case took an unexpected turn. At that time, a red-haired student had just returned home and turned to her older sister, who was sitting on a chair watching the news on TV. The younger one was sobbing so hard that tears and snot were streaming down her face. The upset young lady asked what they should do now. What are they going to do? After all, now even in the star game they write hateful comments and start receiving threats that they want to kill her. And in the end, she asked her sister again how she was going to live now. The captain slowly got to her feet and started moving towards her younger sister, telling her to calm down and pull herself together. Because people behave like this because they are famous people. And wiping her tears, she said that they would forget about it in a few months. Then the older one said in a calm tone that her sister should quickly calm down and do what everyone expects. We need to record a video of her apology with this expression on her face. It can move the people and help them forget their terrible actions and behavior. After that, the captain told the girl to listen to her carefully. She told her that she was the one behind all the bullying at school, so she had to leave the team. And what was said about her older sister was slander. After all, she was to blame for everything, so she hopes that all misunderstandings will be cleared up very quickly. Red didn't like this, and started shouting loudly and angrily across the room that her sister was saying such things. How could she do all this alone? The girl went on to say that it was her older sister who told her to do all this, and especially what to do to Park in High, how to abuse her. The elder sister could not stand the pressure, so she grabbed her younger sister's hair and pulled out several strands, causing her considerable pain and making her scream. The young lady fell to the floor and held her head exactly where it hurt, and the captain called her stupid and asked if she understood the seriousness of the situation. Without receiving any response, the older woman threw her torn hair on the floor and added that if they did what the younger one wanted, they would both get hurt. 
She also said that she wanted to live in peace until this unpleasant situation subsided. She stressed that the girl had done nothing for her, so now she had to do something. For a few minutes, the redhead sat there and tried to recover from what had just happened and draw the right conclusions that would be useful for both of them. So she decided to record a video. For it, she dressed in a black tracksuit and cap. She stood in the middle of the room and said that her name was Kang Jayon, and she recognized that school bullying was coming from her face. Therefore, she sincerely apologizes to the victims, and in the video she bowed low, demonstrating her remorse for what she had done. She also said that she was leaving the women's national basketball team and would cooperate with the Education Bureau and the police in the future, and she would never do it again. Turning her head and gaze to the right, she added that one fact in the story was a lie, and it is a lie that her sister was behind the bullying. And with tears in her eyes, the redhead said that the captain did not even know that she was bullying. A minute later, she added that she had used her sister's name to intimidate her teammates. After that, the young woman began to tell us that her sister had been working since primary school. Therefore, the redhead said that she would take all the responsibility and the anger of society. And in the end, she asked to stop slandering her poor sister. The next day, positive comments began to appear under this video, which were favorable to the captain. And when she came to the morning training session, she handed a sheet to the coach, saying that it was from Jay Young, and it said, Resignation. The captain said that her sister would not go to school and would stay at home. She added that the decision was up to the red-haired girl, so she could do as she pleased. Holding the application form, the woman looked the headteacher in the eye without any emotion and listened attentively to what the girl standing opposite her was saying. The woman then put the paper in her blouse pocket and said that the lady had sent her sister to boil in the cauldron and had cleared her name. She asked how she felt after that. The girl turned her back on the trainer and told her not to make useless guesses. She could just answer Jay Young's statement and return her. After listening to everything, the woman calmly said that it's not good for children to see an outsider as a leader when the tournament is so close, isn't it? She checked with the main team, and taking out her small notebook and pen, the lady said that of course the decision was hers. The captain's words caught the captain's attention, so she slowed down to hear something else. The teacher came up to her and showed her what she had written a minute ago on a torn-off small sheet of paper. What she saw surprised the head teacher. The woman said that she had distributed the starting positions of the team, where the following names were written. C. Choi Soon Yan, S. F. Kim Ji Sung, P. G. Park In Ha, S. G. Kang Soo Yan, P. F. Lee Hyun Hua. While the long-haired woman was reading this list, the rest of the team members began to arrive at the gym for the next practice, which was scheduled to start in a few minutes. Suddenly their attention was drawn to the captain, who shouted angrily at the coach, asking her if she was crazy, why the positions were set up the way they were. And throwing this sheet aside with her right hand, she added angrily, A girl who doesn't even know what basketball is going to be like? Where have you ever seen such a thing? A minute later, she asked the next question. What about the rest of the players? Did she really want to start the game with players who hadn't even been considered for the job? The woman interrupted this monologue by asking if the young lady had ever thought that even if she had been cleansed by Kang Jayan's speech, she still didn't believe her. She added that this was the best punishment, given that she had thrown her guilt onto her younger sister and got away with it. And in any case, the girl is not suitable for her previous position because children like her need to shake their pride and confidence first. Finally, the coach emphasized that the reason she disregarded Park in Ha and tried to get rid of her was because she was better at basketball than her. This surprised the girl, because she didn't expect anyone to know about it. And so, in order not to reveal herself again, she started shouting loudly at the whole gym about what this woman was saying. She has never been afraid of anyone and will never be. The red-haired woman did not react in the same way but simply told everyone to go to the warm-up. The victim of bullying was very surprised to hear these words, because she still couldn't understand why she was being treated this way. Smiling slyly, the coach turned to the head coach and said that if she was wrong, the girl had to prove the opposite. Not with words, but with her actions. And she offered to play the girls one-on-one. -on -one. 
The fair-haired girl, who had not yet recovered from the previous information, heard a new and equally serious one. This proposal interested the captain, and she slowly turned her head and gazed back a little to see the reaction of her future rival after a few minutes of preparation. The girl put her hair in a high ponytail, and they stood in the middle of the field opposite each other, waiting for the signal to start the game. The coach stepped a few steps forward, and demonstrating her hand with five fingers spread wide, said that the winner was the one who scored five times first. The team leader asked if the woman would keep her promise that if she won, she would have to go back to her education office and leave them alone. The red-haired woman blinked both her eyes to demonstrate her positive response and then she clapped her hands, symbolizing the start of a fierce game. The captain put the ball down on the floor and began to pass it from hand to hand, looking intently at her opponent, who was standing opposite her, no less concentrated. The long-haired woman thought that it would even be very easy, because she hadn't trained properly for a long time and might have lost some of her skills. At the same time, the short-haired one, having taken a comfortable pose, was carefully watching the ball and the movements of the girl who was handling it right now. The main girl was simply sure that she would not lose today, so she started moving towards the basket to shoot the first time and get one point, which would bring her closer to victory. However, it didn't work out the way they thought it would. Right before the basket, the ball was intercepted by the opponent, and she jumped high and threw it herself. And of course, it hit the target. The other members of the basketball team who were watching were shocked by what they saw, because they hadn't thought Parkin Ha was such a strong player. After a few minutes of such a fierce game of basketball, the score was tied at four dashes to four, and now it was match point, the decisive point that would put everything in its place. The captain was resting and trying to catch her breath as quickly as possible and gain new strength, and while doing so, she was developing a plan for her next steps to bring her victory. At this time, the memory of the events that took place two years ago at the National Basketball Tournament among secondary school teams came to mind. There was a red-haired young lady and this dark-haired girl who showed quite good skills and techniques that allowed her to take the ball away from her opponents. This made the tired younger sister of the captain very angry because she could not get the ball into the basket to bring her team some points. At this time, a young lady with a short haircut and dark hair color came over. After resting for a few minutes, she felt quite confident on the court. The game was closely watched by the redhead's older sister, who was standing on one of the stands. She immediately noticed this skillful player who had no worthy rivals. The coach, who was also watching the game, emphasized that this girl was very good, and he asked a clarifying question about who knew that there was such a talent in Inso High School, and turning to the captain, who was just burning her eyes at the young lady she didn't really like, he said that he was sorry to say that, but she is much better than your sister who can't beat her, and to reveal a strategy to take the ball away for at least a few seconds. Even then, the captain began to think about how to get rid of this rival, so that she could no longer join their team and not damage its authority. However, the captain told the coach that she had already played her last year and that she was just a tall player and nothing more. She hadn't shown any extraordinary skills then. However, in just a year, her fundamentals and technique have become much better, and she demonstrated this during every game and thus brought winning points to her team. So the captain went on to say that when Park Inishe goes to high school, she could become a player who surpasses her and leads her school to a leading position. With a serious expression on her face, she turned to the coach, who was sitting on the sidelines listening attentively and trying to understand what his student was getting at. The young lady smilingly suggested that instead of this player going to another school and becoming her rival, she should take her to her team. It would be better to keep her close. After the dark-haired girl moved on to high school, she found herself on this team where during a regular training session, she managed to steal the ball from her opponent in front of the basket. She threw it into the one she wanted. This made the coach very happy, as he shouted that her skills had improved significantly. He added that he was thinking of keeping her in reserve until next year, but there was no need. So from today, she will be in the main team. And a minute later, he added, addressing the girls, 
that this year they would become national champions. The captain was standing on the sidelines, furious, because since this lady had come to them, their anxiety had only grown stronger. The lady stressed that, just as she thought, the problems from high school had not disappeared, and that Park in Ha could become a professional player, the same age, the same school. If this girl does become such a good player, they will immediately start comparing them. That's why, during a conversation with the coach, she was surprised to hear why she didn't want In Ha to join the practice. After all, she had asked to take the young lady to them. He asked again why she had changed her mind. The girl said that he hadn't received money from his parents for joining the team this year, and she stressed that he had announced it a few days ago. And smiling slyly, the captain looked up at the man and asked him if she should tell him about it. Right from that moment, the young lady was abused by her red-haired younger sister and several of her teammates. They met the young lady in the backyard of the school, where they slapped her hard on the face so that blood began to flow from her nose and lips, staining everything around her. The new girl could not understand why she was being treated like this. Badly beaten, she sat under the wall of the school and cried bitterly because of the pain she had suffered and the fact that it was all unjust. At that time, the captain was watching her from the second-floor window and was very pleased with what she saw. After all, this was what she had expected. The next day, at the next training session, the coach treated the girl differently than usual, not so kindly. He angrily said, Get out of here, you empty-headed girl. This upset the young lady, because she still couldn't understand why everyone had changed their attitude to her in a moment and become so unfriendly. Standing against the wall, she thought about all the words that had been said to her. Namely, get out of basketball. How much longer are you going to resist? You should give up. Get out of my sight. We return to the gym, where a decisive game is taking place right now. The captain froze for a few minutes as she was immersed in her memories. Of course, the dark-haired girl noticed that something was wrong with her opponent. She was too upset and lost in thought. She also froze for a few seconds to see what the other girl would do next, to see if she would practice her signature shots. However, she still managed to knock the ball out of the captain's hands, who was just heading towards the basket to make the final shot and get her last point. The young lady was very surprised by this act, and she opened her mouth a little and made giant eyes, because she could not yet understand whether she was still in her thoughts or in reality. Their game was interrupted by the sound of a whistle coming from the stands. The coach blew it to draw their attention to her. She raised her hands to her chest and shouted loudly with a serious expression, saying that it was time to change the attacker to make things fair. The girls stopped and began to pierce each other with intense glances, showing that no one had any intention of giving up or making a mistake. The captain, however, was still furious. And this could be seen in her expression, where her eyebrows were drawn together and her nose was wrinkled. She wondered if this was even possible. And she assumed that this girl might be a genius. But how could she be on a par with her if she hadn't practiced properly for a long time because of her punishment? At this time, the dark-haired girl took the basketball with both hands, walked to the center of the court, and took a comfortable position to start the next game. However, Things were not as bad as the team leader thought. When everyone else was still living on campus, the dark-haired girl couldn't sleep while everyone else was fast asleep. On top of that, her smartphone alarm went off at 4 o'clock in the morning, the exact time when no one would notice her. So she gathered her things, put on a dark tracksuit, and tried to quietly leave the room where her roommate was sleeping sweetly and not hearing anything. The victim of bullying would go to the basketball court which was located in the courtyards of high-rise buildings, and practice various shots on her own. She was very focused and motivated by the fact that even after such bullying and punishment, she would not give up basketball because she loved it so much. The young lady recalled her emotions during that training session because they simply overwhelmed her and gave her a lot of strength to continue no matter what. So now, during the game, she pushed her opponent away and began to move quickly towards the basket, tapping the ball on the floor with her right hand. The other teammates who were watching the game were very surprised by this action and opened their mouths wide because they did not expect this young lady to do such a thing. 
The captain naturally tried to catch up with her and take the ball away to prevent her from getting closer to the basket where she could score the winning point. The fact that she had not been able to do so for several seconds made her very angry and upset because she could not lose her leadership and authority so easily. In front of her, the captain could only see the back of her opponent, who was slowly moving away from her, heading for the basket to shoot the ball. When the dark-haired young lady finally reached the end of the field, she stopped, raised her arms and was about to push her feet off the floor. However, she was unable to do so because someone grabbed her by the hair and pulled her backwards. The young lady screamed loudly throughout the gym. The coach was furious and quickly went to the girls, who were on the basketball court at the time, to find out what was wrong. The main one kept pulling her opponent's hair and shouting angrily, Is she seriously going to do this now? How can she afford to do this? And a second later, she added that she should have stopped it when she thought about it, but for some reason, she didn't. And now, she has to deal with these problems. Then she started asking the dark-haired woman questions about why she was still resisting. Why can't she just let it go and let her build a successful career? This time, however, the victim of bullying would not stand for it and grabbed her offender by the vest and pushed her firmly to the floor so that she landed on her back. This was quite loud and painful for the captain because at first she was very distressed by the trouble that had happened. And then she started screaming loudly at the top of her lungs, so loudly that saliva was flying out of her mouth. She did not expect that the dark-haired girl would have the courage to answer her like that. Even the trainer herself froze in place with her mouth open a few meters away, and someone from the crowd said in surprise, Wow, wow. The short-haired woman stood there calmly, looking down at the team leader, who was lying on the floor trying to cough and recover. Then, with tears in her eyes and clenched teeth, she asked why the girl liked destroying other people's dreams so much. Why does she allow herself to do this? What is wrong with her? Then the dark-haired woman lifted her right foot and put it on the captain's left hand and asked if she could do the same to her right now. This frightened the captain a little. The dark-haired woman began to press her foot on the captain's arm, causing her considerable pain. Sweat began to appear on the young lady's face because she was so nervous and had to endure what was happening to her. The next thing the short-haired woman did was to grab the same hand she was standing on and slowly break each finger. This alerted the captain even more, who turned her head and gazed to the right and watched her attacker with wide eyes and mouth. The victim of the bullying turned to the older redhead sister and asked her a very simple question. Did she know that this match was not fair? After saying this, the student turned her head back to look at the rest of the team, who were silently watching this action. After all, the captain knew nothing about her basketball game. A picture came to mind of the ominous match she had participated in, and when she was training off the field, she was closely watching the team captain and all her actions and game strategies. In fact, no one noticed the victim then and did not take her into account at all. While doing stretches on each leg, the girl was bent over with her head down, looking upside down at what was happening on the field but this did not prevent her from noticing something. The shape of the throw, the technique used by the captain, and even the time she used to cheat, and even the style of training she had developed with the previous coach, who had fallen under her influence. The dark-haired girl watched all the captain's games closely, because she had enough time, because she didn't train with everyone else, but just did something on the side, as far away from everyone else as possible. She then interrupted her story, turned her head to her classmate and asked her why she thought she was doing it. Why did she need to do it? For several minutes she was mostly silent, but the attacker tightened her grip on her hand, which suggested that she wanted to take revenge at any moment. The short-haired woman calmly and briefly replied that, No, and she explained that she was doing it all because she really liked the way the captain played basketball. And despite the fact that she didn't like her as a person, she stressed that she could learn a lot from her in basketball. She said this sentence with tears in her eyes. After all, the girl takes this game seriously. Therefore, the victim thought that if she trained long and hard, one day she would understand. This confession was very surprising. However, a minute later, the girl stressed that in the end, the captain had even cheated on basketball. Tears began to roll down the dark-haired girl's face. Then the student got to her feet 
turned around to face the exit, and after a few steps addressed the head Kong Su Yan by name and summed up that she was just plain garbage. The girl remained sitting where the attacker had left her, and with her head down and looking at the floor, tried to think carefully about what she had heard. After that, the coach came up to the young lady from behind and told her that In Ha didn't really want to punish the boss. After all, Kim Soo Yeon is a treasure of women's basketball, so she shouldn't be let go because of her mistakes. The red-haired woman added that these words were said by a student who had just left the room. The coach went on to say that the victim of their school bullying simply wanted to play on the same team as the captain. These words surprised the girl so much that she didn't even blink. The woman said that even if In Ha had forgiven the head girl, she couldn't leave it at that and go back to the education office. The student sat on her knees and waited for the coach to speak next. And the red-haired woman said with a serious expression that from that moment on, she knew for sure that the red-haired girl's older sister would never make the national team. She stressed that the young woman had dug her own grave by her actions, decisions, and by using her sister and her teammates. A few days later, the bureau employee spoke at a conference where she said that as a result of an investigation conducted by the Ministry of Education, it was concluded that the team captain, Kong Soo Yeon, was behind the bullying at the Sinan Women's Basketball Club. The Korean Basketball Association, having received the results of the investigation, decided to disqualify Kang Soo Yeon and Kang Jae Yeon from the national team. They are currently under investigation by the juvenile court over allegations of school bullying. And ending the conference with the results of the investigation, the woman said that she would like to address the athletes who dream of becoming professionals and wants to tell them that the main task of a player is not to play better than everyone else. The former captain watched this interview on her battered smartphone. The woman on the phone at that moment said that the main thing for each player is to show a very good game that can give joy and make a positive impression on the audience. And in the end, she asked a question that read as follows. Who might like the game of a morally broken player? The redhead's older sister listened to all this, wrapped in a blanket and biting her fingernails with excitement. A few weeks later, the 20th National Basketball Competition for Middle and High School Girls was taking place. The team from the school where the Bureau was investigating took part. The game was closely watched by three judges sitting at a long table at the end of the gym. The children were engaged in a fierce competition with each other. One of the men who wore glasses looked at something on a white sheet and said it was a pity that this happened to Kang Soo Yeon. His neighbor replied briefly and clearly, That's right. Then the gentleman with the glasses looked up and said that the beauty with great influence. She has been doing well since high school, and if she could get into the pros, she would become a star and a catalyst for the revival of women's basketball. At this time, the dark-haired student was holding the ball in her hands and looking at it carefully. However, a second later, the young lady turned towards the opponent's basket and started running straight towards it, avoiding the players who wanted to take the ball away from her. However, no one could stop her from reaching her goal. So the focused student jumped high, took aim, and threw the ball into the basket. The ball flew several meters through several students and landed in the basket. This surprised everyone present, because it is a very legendary shot that not everyone can make. And for this young lady, it was quite a common thing. Therefore, she started moving quickly backwards without stopping, following the ball, which was being driven by her opponent. Suddenly, the referee took off his glasses and asked with a surprised expression who this girl was, who could make such a magical, successful shot that brought the team points. A red-haired woman was watching the game from the far stands, especially her student, who had been rescued from school bullying. The lady was very pleased with what she saw, and she concluded that this student was not inferior to Kang Soo Yan, who also behaved quite well on the court. The dark-haired student was very happy that she was able to bring victory to her team and glorify her school throughout the city. On top of that, she had a lot of fun. The interview that the coach gave a few days ago was being watched carefully on the big screen. And after listening to half of the interview, an unknown person said that this red-haired lady was very annoying with her self-confidence and behavior. It turned out to be a girl who had her hair in a ponytail, and on the table were crackers, 
which he was eating while watching TV. And a second later, she asked herself why the bureau worker was wearing so much makeup and the red hair color. After that, the next question was asked about the student who had cheated on her innocent teacher. The young lady reached for another crumpet. After eating it, the young lady went on to say that it looked very funny, because in our time, what kind of justice can there be? Because the rights of female students are always humiliated, it is an established norm. She added that she herself had to work hard to survive there, and on her laptop she opened a document titled Additional Study Materials. Then, typing the text to the community, she asked them to share information about the effectiveness of their training and educational quotas. It turned out that this young lady also wore glasses, and smiling broadly, she said quietly to herself that in case of a student who is not well controlled, the teacher will inevitably... The next day, an employee who was a trainer in one of the schools arrived at the Ministry of Education in her red car. She felt quite tired and sleep-deprived. There was not enough time to recover properly and gain new strength for further work. At the same time, her black-haired colleague did not pay any attention to her, because he was watching a conference where a lady with a serious expression was speaking. This really made the woman angry, so she started shouting loudly in anger for him to turn it off quickly. The gentleman smilingly said that she looked quite good on the screen. Then he could not contain himself any longer, so he started to cover his mouth with his hand to make it less noticeable. However, he managed to ask a question that sounded like memorized words. The woman straightened a strand of her hair and said that she did not want to say it. But the minister made her. Her voice was trembling, and it was the worst possible way to say it. Then the man leaned over to the computer and used the mouse to turn on a new video and said that here are five facts about Imhan Lim. This made the lady very angry, and she started trying to take the mouse away from the man, who managed to get away with it so that she couldn't catch him. However, their argument was interrupted by their gray-haired boss who came into the office and started shouting that they were flirting instead of working. And then, having calmed down, he asked them if they had already chosen their next school. The black-haired man turned his head and said that he hadn't yet because he was just about to review the report. The gray-haired man quickly put a yellow folder on the table and said that if they hadn't chosen one yet, he suggested starting with this one. The inspector turned his attention to the folder. While he studied the contents of the documents, the chief took out a cigar and started smoking right in the office. The black-haired man said that he hadn't been doing it for very long because there wasn't enough fresh air. After a few minutes of reading, something caught the inspector's attention. So he had to bring the folder closer to his eyes to make sure he had read everything correctly. What he managed to reread was still very serious. It contained the following lines. Anyone involved in education has experienced that students who have had a bad home upbringing tend to deteriorate the learning atmosphere in the classroom. Therefore, teachers have no choice but to create an atmosphere in the classroom in which such children are psychologically depressed and intimidated. The enclosed materials contain psychological techniques that can help maintain the right educational atmosphere. The gray-haired man turned to the exit and said that as a child he was most disgusted with anti-communist ideologies in education that praised the military dictatorship. The red-haired woman began to read the report which was in a yellow folder. After a few minutes she was shocked by what she read, to put it mildly. The senior among them stressed that primary school students are the foundation and future of the country. And here, someone decided that they could psychologically influence and promote ideology. At this time, in this ominous school. One blonde student was kneeling at the back of the classroom with a sheet of paper held above her head, on which was written, I am a sexist. The teacher turned to the rest of the students and told them to look closely at the bad child who was behaving in such a discriminatory way. This woman had dark wavy hair, plump lips, and she wore round, large glasses. With a smile, she said that the culprit should feel the consequences of his behavior. The scene then moved to a bright room where a tall man in a classic suit stood by the window and called his manager to tell him that he could not come to work today. He heard the following response in the receiver. Hey, Assistant Shing, have you gone mad? We have a stock exchange listing the day after tomorrow. Do you want to get fired or what? 
The upset gentleman apologized for the circumstances, but he had something more important than the company. At this time, he was holding a blue diary in his right hand. On the phone, someone else was trying to shout out to the gentleman, saying, Hey, Assistant Shing! Hey! But he had already put down his smartphone and pressed the red button, which interrupted the conversation. Then the man opened the notebook he had been holding all morning and began to read what was written there. The information he received made his face start to show a flush of excitement. The following words were written there. I didn't quite understand what the teacher was talking about, so I said I had a different opinion about it, but the teacher called me a sexist. Since then, other children have been bullying me. I hate the teacher. At that time, it was a long break in the school. That is why three of her classmates started approaching the victim, smiling slyly. Then they grabbed the young woman by various parts of her outfit and began to push her in different directions. The girl they were doing this to tried to cover her face with her hands. When the torture finally ended after a few minutes, the young girl leaned against the lockers and noticed that someone was watching her from the right side through the open door. It turned out to be her class teacher, who was very pleased and happy and was smiling broadly. She did not even try to help her student. A few hours later, employees of the Ministry of Education were already driving in a red car to the school. The woman said that even thinking about it made her shiver. She added that it was annoying that the teacher thought he could impose his ideology. What kind of bullying is this? Have they gone mad or what? The furious lady continued to shout loudly, asking how they could bring the teacher to justice. They can't just go online and beat her up. The man calmly told the lady to calm down and watch the road carefully. After saying that, the gentleman continued to sit there studying the information from the black folder he was holding. The sheet read, Good afternoon. I am the mother of one of the third grade students at Star of Power Elementary School. My daughter began to receive a strange education from the class teacher. She suddenly tore up all the fairy tale books and said they were old, old-fashioned, bad. She also started using bad words, but no matter how many times she warned her, she did not listen, and in fact said that the teacher said to ignore such words. We are afraid that our daughter will become even more strange and out of control, so please help us. This teacher was sitting at her computer in the teacher's room. She was typing something. We had to stay late at school to complete our assignments, and when my two friends and I were walking home, we were accosted by seven drunken guys. They were pushing us, shouting, You bitches are so scary. My friend ended up fouling and bleeding, and these guys just loffed. I tried to call the police, but... After typing this line, the teacher put her index finger to the key labeled Enter and pressed it once to jump to the next line. After that, the lady raised her arms up to stretch her back, which was stiff from sitting like that, and said that she was finally done with her extra duties. Suddenly a new message appeared in the open chat. It read, Teacher Sang Hui, it seems that over the weekend there was a leak of information from our educational website. The internet is on its toes right now. The site administrator has shut it down, but the information has already reached the Blue House, the National Assembly, and the Ministry of Education. The young woman got to her feet and addressed her colleague, who was sitting opposite her at the computer, by name and asked, Are they criminals? Why are you writing through a messenger? The woman replied that people are now talking about their ideological training, so be careful. She was interrupted by a teacher with glasses and said, What kind of ideological training? Taking her notebook in her hand, she smiled and calmly said that they were only making noble efforts to create a world without any discrimination. After saying that, she turned and headed for the door to leave the office and go to the classroom where she was about to teach a lesson with primary school students. However, Halfway there, the teacher was approached by two people she did not know, so she had to stop and turn her head to face the interlocutors. The inspectors, smiling broadly, showed their badges and said that they had come from the Ministry of Education to clean up the place. The man asked the surprised school worker if she was a teacher named Yang Sang Hui. For a few minutes, the lady stood there shocked at who she saw. However, the woman calmed down and asked why they had come here. The gentleman put his ID card in his inside jacket pocket and smiled, saying that she shouldn't worry. After all, 
When they were teaching students, the issue of gender discrimination arose. The man said these words very happily. He went on to say that they had heard that the lady was quite knowledgeable about the case. So he asked if she could give them a master class. They really wanted to see it with their own eyes. When the woman heard the last sentences, she became very happy and smiled broadly and said that it was very good that they had decided to come to her because she knew the business. And turning her back on the inspectors, she said that they could follow her now and she would give them an open lesson in her classroom. The red-haired teacher leaned over to her colleague and whispered quietly in her ear that this lady was very easy to deal with because when they had developed this plan, she was not sure that it could work. Entering the classroom, the teacher sat the guests down on chairs in front of the blackboard and began the lesson. One of the students stood up and began to read from the sheet about how the celestial clothes had disappeared, and the fairy was confused. And at that moment, a woodcutter appeared and said, You will become my wife and give me children. Then I will return your clothes to you. The student read this with a very serious expression on her face, and nothing in this text bothered her at all. However, after a minute, the young lady's mood changed. She opened her mouth and eyes wide, raised her eyebrows and shouted the words of the fairies, Shut your mouth. She continued to read that in anger she swung her fist and ring at him and smashed his head. The woodcutter was confused. He thought what would happen if he took away her heavenly clothes and she started crying and did everything he told her to do. But that did not happen. The teacher went on to explain that traditional fairy tales contain old-fashioned sexist language that is not true to reality. That's why she gives fairy tales that are modified to reflect a modern point of view. She said squinting red in the face that original fairy tales that have been adapted to the present. Of course, this can also be a good way to learn. But original fairy tales are folk tales because they are passed down by word of mouth. Then the woman suggested that maybe we should learn the original story first. After all, in the third grade of primary school, there may be children who have never heard the original fairy tale, The Fairy and the Woodcutter. The teacher did not like this statement very much, and her mood changed. So she replied that she was saying that it had a lot of old-fashioned sexism in it. And she asked the next question. How can the original be useful for children? Then the teacher started to show a presentation where on the first slide, she suggested looking at the numbers, as this was proof that the sports ground is considered a boy's facility. The next proof was in the form of an advert showing men in trousers and women in skirts. She emphasized that in this way, the media impose gender roles on everyone. The next scene that happened during the lesson was the boys leaning forward and apologizing for being so careless just because they were girls for calling them pigs and shouting at them. At this time, the classmates sat proudly on their chairs, watching this. The teacher calmly told the inspectors that it happens that children start using sexist language without realizing it. She added that, of course, children are innocent, but that is why they often do not understand that they are saying bad, wrong things. Ultimately, it is up to education to correct this. The male inspector sat silently and watched all the actions of everyone in the classroom. He was already developing his next plan of action to correct this shameful situation. However, he noticed a blonde girl who was very upset and had a sign around her neck with a very unpleasant statement, I am sexist. The inspector pointed his index finger at the student and asked the teacher why she was the only one with such a sign. The lady clarified whether the man was referring to so me. She began to explain that this girl had once spoken out against this classroom policy in the past. So to set her on the right path, the lady had to take strong measures. The red-haired girl came to the conclusion that this teacher, while talking about education against discrimination, was discriminating against students because they did not agree with her opinion. And now it's clear why she fell for their trick so easily. After all, she has no idea how horrible her actions are. At this point, the teacher turned to her students and said that this is exactly what they should do. At the same time, a dark-haired man was watching what was happening in the classroom through the window from the corridor. He was surprised and angered by what he saw. He was already very nervous, and now this. On the green board, there was an inscription, Do not express discrimination. And one of the students in the class was standing there upset and holding a sign with an offensive inscription. Suddenly, 
This man in a dark classic suit burst into the classroom. He was holding a gray folder in his hands. You could see his displeasure on his face. Everyone present was surprised, and the teacher, clutching her notebook with her eyes wide open, quietly said, Saomi's father. After a moment of silence, the blonde student said, Dad, to herself. She hadn't expected him to show up unannounced in the middle of the day. Then the angry gentleman showed the notebook he had brought with him and said that what was written here was indeed true. And he stood there for a second, waiting for at least some response. Then the man turned to the teacher, saying that it was very unprofessional to call a primary school student a sexist. He asked her to immediately apologize to so me and take the sign away. All the woman said was that there was a lesson going on, so he had to leave. The gentleman continued to say that since it was a lesson, there should be at least a little common sense. And in the end, he asked how he could openly mock a child like that. The woman bowed her head and said that every teacher has a different teaching style, and she didn't know what he had in mind about what was nonsense and what was common sense. A minute later, she added that the girl's parents were also good. They took and read their daughter's personal diary without permission, and she asked if this was not a violation of personal boundaries. However, without giving the man a chance to answer, the woman continued with a sly smile that they were definitely not parents. After all, he is divorced and raising the girl alone, and she concluded that it was clear that he was just like his daughter, arrogant, haughty, and self-confident. That's why it is clear why he is divorced. The man was even more enraged by these words and began to move directly towards the teacher, saying how dare she discuss someone else's personal life in front of all the children. However, he was unable to strike because someone caught him by the arm. It turned out to be a black-haired inspector who was watching everything that was happening from the side. And then he calmly told the father that if he hit her now, it would be considered an attack on the teacher. This helped the gentleman to pull himself together a little. However, it was a red-haired woman who came up to the teacher and slapped her hard on the left cheek with her right hand, so hard that even her glasses flew off to the other side. After that, the inspector happily told the parents to leave it to them to deal with such teachers. After all, that was why they had come here. The teacher was surprised and upset by what she had just heard, because it turned out that no one really admired her, and trying to defend herself at least somehow. She asked the guests what they were doing to themselves. What right do they have to beat someone? The inspector calmly and with a sweet smile said that they had actually come because they had received reports that teachers at the school were brutally brainwashing children. As expected, this method of teaching is very specific. Moreover, seeing how the lady allows herself to speak rudely to parents who are not satisfied with these teaching methods. And with that, the woman had already crossed all the boundaries. The lady slowly bent down to pick up her glasses from the floor and said that she agreed that she had crossed the line in her words towards Saomi. Then she added with a twisted face, but she didn't agree with the phrase brainwashing. After all, brainwashing is a flawed educational method that instills narrow and immoral ideas such as Nazism. Therefore, she cannot agree with the comparison of her teaching method to brainwashing. The inspector decided to clarify whether she was sure that her teaching method was very correct. The teacher replied with a short and clear, Of course. After receiving this answer, the gentleman smilingly said that they had only seen the morning class, and that was not enough to draw a conclusion, so that was why there was a misunderstanding. And he offered to do the following. He and his red-headed colleague sat down at an empty desk, and happily greeted the children who were also in the classroom. The man went on to say, with a big smile and a squint in his eyes, that they were the new transfer students, Na Hua Jin and Im Han Lim, and they were transferred here to receive education on gender equality from Teacher Yang. The woman was not very satisfied with this development and simply boiled over in her seat. When the Ministry of Education staff were sitting in the classroom during a break, they noticed one of the girls showing off her new dress that her father had bought her yesterday at the department store. Her friends who were standing around said that she looked very beautiful in it, and that it was a fast-selling model, so her father was just incredible. The red-haired girl happily said that she hadn't had a chance to look at children much lately, 
so she didn't know they had become so cute. At this time, another group of children were sitting at their desks very upset and looking at their classmates standing a few meters away. The teacher was walking slowly down the corridor, holding a white journal and thinking that if these people had come to sniff out her teaching methods, was it really because of that leak of certain data from their website? And this, in her opinion, is even better. After all, she needs to make sure that her method is recognized by the Ministry of Education and accepted as official. Entering the classroom, she stopped for a moment at the door and set herself the task for the evening, to make the website more secure so that no one could hack it again. Suddenly, a dispute arose between two groups of children in the room, where one of the students said that she was happy with everything. Why was her classmate bothering her? She replied that the teacher had said that Lukeism was also a form of discrimination. The dark-haired teacher decided to intervene and approach the children and ask them what was wrong. Why are they shouting at each other so loudly? A girl with a two-bun hairstyle pointed her index finger at her classmate and said that she was judging Yumi for her appearance. She also reminded them that the teacher had told them that judging by appearance is also discrimination. For several minutes, all the children stood there waiting for the woman's response. The lady came closer to the accused children and asked them if they had really done it. The students guiltily replied that they had just told Yumi that she was very beautiful in those dresses. The teacher replied that whether it was in a good way or not, it had been a few weeks, so she said that it was impossible to judge appearance. She told them to go to the back of the class and stand there with their hands up. The red-haired woman was furious and asked her colleague why it was normal for children to say such things. Why punish them? However, he did not answer her, because he was already walking right into the epicenter of the conflict and clapping his hands said that it was very wonderful, just incredible. The teacher did not understand why he was doing this, but the gentleman continued to say that it was absolutely true that discrimination based on appearance or clothing should be eliminated in this country. He added that he also believed that a good education instills the right values in children. A second later, he said that all of this should happen when someone criticizes appearance, but he doesn't think that compliments are bad. So he asked her why skimp on them? After listening carefully, the woman calmly replied that in fact, everything is not as he thinks. After all, as girls grow up, they are constantly praised for their beautiful hair and clothes. Then children begin to think that the more beautiful they look, the more compliments they can receive. Thus, they gradually become feminine. Isn't this an imposition of an ideology when children are forced to play a gender role through careless comments from adults? The man took one step forward and said, Maybe, of course, there is a certain sense in this. But if a person likes it, what's the problem? As he spoke these words, he approached the two children and hugged them lightly. He added that he believes that the desire to look good is not only a matter of gender, but also of personal preferences and tastes. After all, it is important to teach children the right values. But such outright humiliation of a person can be regarded as fascism. The teacher was very angry at these words. The inspector then turned to the girl with a friendly smile and asked her if she liked to dress nicely. The young lady answered very briefly, Yes. A few minutes later, the lesson began, and the teacher, standing at the blackboard, said that teachers, police officers, doctors are similar to Korean words for professions, and they are also in English. At the same time, the bureau employees were sitting at their desks and looking at their textbooks. The man said, This is what they look like now, and the woman said they were very bright. Then the teacher took her copy and asked everyone to open the book to page 57. She started looking for it herself. What she saw on it surprised and upset the lady. And the woman quietly said to herself, This is a damn world and everything is not right here. So she raised her head and looked at the students and said that there were a lot of inaccuracies in the textbook. They listened to her carefully. She decided to look at that ominous 57th page herself. When she opened it, she didn't see anything that could cause any problems in understanding. However, after a minute, the teacher began to explain that the pilot, doctor, and policeman were all drawn by men. But the teacher was a woman. This was her way of instilling gender stereotypes. 
She added that she hoped that representatives of the Ministry of Education would see this and make some corrections. The inspector listened to this story with squinted eyes, because he did not share this opinion. Suddenly, one of the students raised his hand and asked the teacher a question that read as follows. Isn't a male police officer stronger? A second later, he added that men have more strength, they run faster, and it would be easier for them to catch a criminal. The teacher did not like this answer very much. She thought that this boy was not so brave before and could not even say a word. But because of these two, he gained courage. So the woman replied that it was true that men are superior to women in physical abilities. But in any profession, there is something that only a lady can do well. At the end, the school employee turned to the red-haired woman sitting on one of the first desks and asked her if she thought so. However, before she could answer, she said that the YouTube video she was watching in one hand said that Inspector Imhan Lim was a member of the top special forces. I asked her again if she could tell her children what the role of women in the army was. The bureau worker smiled sweetly. She got to her feet and began to slowly turn her head towards the students. Then she decided that before she started her story, she needed to take off her jacket and leave it in its place so that it would not get in the way. A few minutes later, she walked to the center of the classroom and put her hair back up. The teacher asked what she was doing. Then she looked down at the floor with red hair and a serious expression on her face. She started doing push-ups. Everyone who was in the classroom and watching this still did not understand why this was happening. What was the woman trying to say? After that, the inspector put one hand behind her back and started doing push-ups on the fingers of one hand. The students quickly got to their feet and watched with delight as the lady performed this action. The red-haired woman said that in the pre-selection test for the special forces, she had passed the physical fitness test according to the same standards as the men. She was in the top five for the mission, and she was in the highest unit. She added that she was unrivaled in one-on-one -on -one combat. Then the lady got to her feet and said with a serious expression, based on what she had experienced, women do not play a special role in the army. After all, there is only one role, a soldier. The lady said these words with a sweet smile on her face. Then she turned to the teacher and added that she thought this was true for other professions as well. The school employee did not like this very much, because it could be seen in her face. So the lady, holding her sheets of paper, nervously began to say that it was all wrong. Then she went on to say that she could not agree with the teacher's opinion. At this point, all the students in the class rose to their feet and shouted happily, laughing that they thought the transferred students were right, and they agreed with them. The woman crumpled her stack of white sheets with one hand in anger. After the lessons, she sat leaning over her desk and thought about what to do next. In a cafe, she met with her students, who told her that everyone at school had gone crazy, because they avoided teachers, and listened only to those from the Ministry of Education. A girl closed her eyes and said that the uncle had a very dirty beard that made them feel sick when they saw it. Another student added that people don't even go to primary school with red hair anymore. He concluded that it would be better if everyone died. In the evening, the teacher returned home and sat at her laptop chatting with someone about her website. For several minutes, she thought about what to say to the next message. She did this with her lips tightly compressed. Suddenly, the next text message came, which read, we need to be more confident in demonstrating this method because it is a good opportunity to prove to the Ministry of Education the values they have. The lady with the round glasses sat silently and carefully read each message that appeared in the chat. They gave her so much confidence that she concluded that she could not leave everything and retreat. So when she was sitting with her students in a cafe, she happily turned to them to tell them that she had a request for them. She smiled broadly for a few seconds to see how the children would react. The next day, during the first lesson, a blonde student in the class rose to her feet and raised her right hand in the air and confidently said that she did not agree with this. She added that if there were such toilet signs, she thought it would be difficult to distinguish them from each other. After all, a person in a hurry might make the wrong choice. She asked if it was not fashionable to choose signs that were easier to understand. The teacher got angry and started shouting loudly, So me as a teacher, 
However, the inspector did not let her finish, saying that she should not interrupt like that, because she needed to hear everything to the end. After all, this is how gender stereotypes manifest themselves again. And he asked if the point of the pictograms was to be invisible. Because in academic circles, there is still no final decision on what is best in toilet signs. As a result, the issues that have not yet been resolved will be openly discussed among students. But isn't this more useful for the development of the personality she was talking about? The teacher turned her head to the inspector and smiled, and said that this was a good point, so they would continue the discussion in free form. She then turned to the students and asked if anyone had an opinion that differed from Xiaomi's assumption. One student stood up and said she did. She folded her arms across her chest and said that she didn't like the skirt on the woman's sign. She asked why the color was red. After all, it annoys her. She then turned to her classmate and said that only idiots like her would not be able to tell the difference. She asked her if she still didn't know the Korean alphabet. The blonde girl replied furiously that she was not only referring to them, and there are children who do not know how to read yet. However, the young lady did not listen to this and turned to the others and asked who thought the same way as her. Two girls smiling slyly began to slowly get to their feet. After them, a boy in a red t-shirt stood up and said that he also agreed with Naon's words, and he asked how it was possible not to distinguish between them. And someone said out loud, that the blonde was as dumb as a dog. Then the boy added that she was a sexist animal, and he said that if she still didn't know the alphabet, she should go to preschool. The teacher demonstratively decided to intervene in the argument, and said that it was good that they were talking so openly, but there was no need to humiliate the other person. Then she turned her head to the inspector and thanked him for such an effective method. After all, it had livened up the atmosphere in the classroom. And with a sly smile, she said that she would actively use it in her next classes. After the lesson, a girl with two buns on her head with her hands at her sides angrily told her classmate that she was very annoyed. At this time, another student entered the classroom and several children pointed at her and told her that sexists had no place in the classroom. In the next lesson... The same young lady rose to her feet and said that she completely agreed with the teacher. Upon hearing this, the woman happily asked if there was anyone in the class who had the opposite opinion. All the children sat in silence in their seats and were shocked by what was happening here. At this time, the teacher was very pleased with the development of these events. So she turned her head to the inspectors and thought that they obviously did not like the atmosphere. However... They cannot interfere because they themselves suggested open discussions in the classroom. And if children cross the line, she intervenes and pacifies them. After all, society follows those who are supported by the majority. And if the students continue to do so, the bureau staff will lose, and they won't get anything out of it. However, it was not as simple as she thought. After all, a blonde girl in an orange t-shirt raised her hand and said that she did not agree. Rising to her feet, the girl put her hand to her chest and asked if the topic was not very painful. This made the teacher very angry. She wondered why this Shin Seomi always wanted to say her ugly word. The student held her hands out to the side and said that she could just let it go and not necessarily be aggressive right away. The young lady with the two gobbles got up from her seat and started walking towards the blonde, saying, What kind of stupid answer is that? Then she grabbed her classmate by the t-shirt and started pushing her in different directions, continuing to shout something, proving her point. And in the end, she added that discrimination exists because of people like her. It was said so loudly that it could be heard even in the corridor. But it didn't stop there. And the lady with two lumps angrily told the other woman what she was living for. She should just die. She shouldn't breathe at all, because even the air is bad for her. The teacher was very angry and frightened by these words, so she started walking towards the student, who was no longer in control of herself, and ordered her to stop doing it. What happened next, however, made the woman stop where she was and watch in silence with her mouth open. The young lady, who was shouting non-stop at the top of her lungs, was hit in the right side of the head with a white sneaker. This was done by a boy who was sitting on the last desk wearing a blue t-shirt. When everyone turned their heads to him, he said that it sounded disgusting, 
and he asked the young lady with the earplugs if she thought that all she had to do was raise her voice and everything would be solved. But when there is no intelligence, no logic, no brains, this will not work. The student could not stand the pressure, so she shouted with her mouth wide open for everyone to stand up. Her friend stood up smiling and said, Let's finish her off again. Another classmate said that Seo Nayon had been going overboard with her behavior and attitude towards others lately. At this point, the classroom started to break out in a frenzy, with each student expressing their opinions, sometimes even humiliating others. Everyone was so overexcited that they were just talking nonsense. The teacher was shocked that this was happening. After all, this had never happened in her practice before. After a few minutes of this noise, the inspector decided to intervene. So he slowly started to get to his feet from under his desk. He began to move toward a group of children who were having a fight in the middle of the classroom. The teacher stood there silently watching, not even trying to calm them down. What the man did surprised the teacher. This could be seen in her expression, which was wide-eyed and genuine. It turned out that he had hit the table with his right fist so hard that it simply broke in half. The school worker saw that the gentleman was already quite angry, so she asked him what he was doing. However, the boy pointed back and said that just like this table, the class split into two camps. At this point, the students stopped arguing and listened attentively to what was being said. They were surprised that someone could stop them. And to top it all off, he broke the table with a single blow. The man concluded that if someone does not agree with the other's statement, they just start to gnaw at each other's throats. The man then turned to the teacher and asked her if splitting the class was the goal of her educational method. Coming very close to the teacher, the man stressed that if someone disagrees with the opinion of another, then they start gnawing at each other's throats. The woman was very upset by these accusations, and tears began to form in her eyes, because she had no such intention. At the same time, a short no sounded in her head. The students who were on the teacher's side stood frozen in their seats and listened attentively to what the employee from the Ministry of Education was saying with open mouths. The school employee could not gather her thoughts and control her emotions enough to say anything to justify herself and explain what she really meant by her method. After a few minutes, she managed to start her story. She said that once she and her colleagues had gathered at a round table to do some research, their colleagues were teachers who sincerely loved and cared about children and also wanted to teach them properly. Therefore, the lady added that she was very touched by their enthusiasm and desire to make a difference. But one teacher said, Do teachers know that in their day, children make many derogatory comments about girls without thinking? Another supported her by agreeing with this and said that this attitude made her very angry. After all, the whole problem lies in that guy's YouTube. Children do not think twice about repeating the hateful messages he says in his videos, which he posts almost every day on his channel. At some point, the discussion turned to sexism and hatred. Another teacher put her hand to her beard and said that she had heard about a website for teachers that discusses how to deal with such problems. The blonde woman said she had also heard about it and was going to register there tonight. And turning to Sang Hui's teacher, she asked if she wanted to do it together. For a few minutes, the lady with the round glasses thought about what to say, how best to act. Then she pressed her lips together and said slowly and long, Yay. But then, with a big smile and happy eyes, she said that she'd been registered there for several days. And she reads quite useful advice on certain situations. And for the sake of a society without discrimination, she conducted her lessons with great concentration. She used new methods of education and training in almost every class. She believed that this would be of great benefit in the future, and it was all about helping children develop properly. And she devoted a lot of her time to this cause, so she was as loyal to it as anyone else. In the evenings, she would sit on this ominous website and carefully read every situation that her colleagues posted there and this became her driving force. It was as if she had found her main mission in life, so she was sure that she was doing everything right. After a couple of such jobs, she was very pleased with herself and her actions. She also managed to find her own methods. Then the woman's tone changed, 
and she opened her mouth wide and began to shout loudly to the whole class that it was all because of him. It was such a heartbreaking scream that saliva flew in all directions. Then, pointing her right index finger at the inspector, she continued to say that he was still criticizing her teaching method. That's why the children became so strange. The man, looking at the finger in front of his face, calmly said that she had noticed everything correctly, because he completely disagreed with her thinking, and he began to say that in the future, children like her now would meet people who had completely opposite opinions to theirs. The lady listened with wide eyes and sweat began to appear on her face. The inspector went on to say that everyone develops different values as they grow up, and there is no superiority or inferiority in them. However, in her teaching method, she puts her own idea above and tries to guide others as she wants. If someone stands up for their opinion and does not follow her, she starts to harass and humiliate them. The children present continued to listen attentively. After all, it was also directly related to them. The gentleman calmly went on to say that not only is it difficult to gain acceptance, but a collective force is created that attacks those who disagree. So those children who are forced to defend themselves will build up their strength and attack, and then the whole of Korea will be divided into two camps that will constantly fight each other. He then turned his head to the teacher and asked her a simple question. Is this the kind of society she wants to build? The lady listened carefully and realized her mistakes in what she had been doing up to now. Therefore, crying, she timidly answered, No, no. And having calmed down a little, she tried to calmly say that the values they pursue. And then the man heard something that surprised him very much, even made his eyes giant. So he interrupted his interlocutor and emphasized that she had just said the word we. After that, the lady realized that she had just given away her colleagues. The inspector asked her if she was trying to say that there were other teachers who used a similar method. The employee realized that she had said something unnecessary, so she began to make excuses that there was nothing like that, and she said what she meant. At that time, one of her colleague's friends was standing outside the classroom door and heard this conversation and stood there biting her nails with excitement. The woman with the glasses could not think of anything that would convince the inspector so that he would not just keep digging and find several other teachers like her in this school. The man understood, so he decided to change the subject and turn to the exit, and emphasized that he was not going to argue with the value of gender equality that she was pursuing. Then, turning his head to her, he smiled broadly and emphasized that the teacher had simply chosen the wrong way, and he already had a plan in his head that he would follow. And approaching the girl with blonde hair, who was wearing an orange t-shirt, he put his hand on her left shoulder and said that so me would tell them which method would be correct. Then turning to the young lady, he said that she always thinks differently from the teachers and invited her to tell everyone in the class. The student was very surprised by what she had just heard. So for a few minutes she stood there with her mouth and eyes wide open. The inspector added that she could say what she really thought right now. Then the girl took a large white sheet of paper and stood in the center of the classroom and calmly said that she would tell what she really thought about gender equality. The red-haired girl stood behind her and carefully watched the reactions of her classmates. And the young lady continued that the basic idea is that both men and women have equal rights in all spheres and speak to each other in a kind way, without humiliating or offending each other with any bad language. First, she suggested that we stop thinking that women are weaker just because they are women and men are strong just because they are men. An employee of the Ministry of Education wrote the main points of the story on the board with white chalk. Secondly, it is necessary to stop mocking those who wear clothes that they really like, whether they are men or women. Thirdly, she suggested that we should not take a position based on their gender, men for men, women for women, but rather hold the right opinion. Fourth, there is no need to look for differences between men and women in terms of hopes for the future. A classmate with two buns on her head tried to listen attentively. However, she did not like these thoughts very much. Fifth, the blonde girl suggested that we should respect the preferences of both men and women, 
The two fair-haired classmates liked this rule very much and smiled at each other. Sixthly, you need to learn to distinguish between discrimination and differences between the sexes. There was absolute silence in the classroom while the new rules were being announced, and no one dared to break it. The young lady in the orange t-shirt announced that she was going to say the last rule, the seventh rule, which was no less important than the previous ones. And it is also necessary for everyone to follow. She calmly began to say that, just as the teacher had said a little earlier, the young lady's parents had divorced when she was in the first grade of primary school. The class teacher was surprised that the student had brought it up herself. The blonde girl said that it was really hard for her father and mother. After all, the mother is wrong in some ways, and the father in others. And each is constantly trying to prove his or her opinion to the other, which causes conflicts. Quarrels also start when one of the adults raises his voice at the other. And this is quite emotional, and comes with different signs and signals. The girl clarified that if they did not get angry and talk normally and calmly, maybe then they would continue to be a family. When she watched this through the open door, she was very upset that it was happening this way. Therefore, the last rule is that you should not get angry and shout if your opinion differs from the other person's. The young lady said these words with tears streaming down her cheeks. Standing at the blackboard with her back to the class, she listened attentively and was very upset that everything had happened in this girl's life. And such humiliation was happening in the classroom. The classmates sat in silence for a few seconds, reflecting on what they had just heard from the blonde girl, who stood in the center of the classroom with her large white sheet. Then the student concluded that she would be very happy if they all stopped fighting with each other and finally started living peacefully and communicating with each other. The inspector folded his arms across his chest, lowered his head and spoke his words so that the teacher could hear them. And they had such a meaning that the girl said just everything she needed to say, even to him. In line with fair and neutral values without any elements of conflict, this is exactly what state educational institutions do. The man summed up his answer. The teacher sat for three minutes and tried to think about everything in detail and put it on the shelves in her head to make a normal conclusion that she would follow. So all she could do was get to her feet and start moving to the center of the classroom where she was standing with a red-haired blonde student whom she was trying to calm down by hugging. As she approached the blackboard, she pulled out her smartphone and took a few photos of the rules that were written there. They were as follows. The first is not to think that women are weaker just because they are women. The second is not to mock those who wear the clothes they like. The third is not to take a position based on gender. The fourth is not to look for differences between men and women. Fifth, respect the hobbies of both men and women. The sixth is to recognize discrimination. And the seventh is not to get angry or shout. When she got home, the teacher sat down at her laptop and opened a chat with her colleagues and sent them a photo of the rules with the inscription that it was a training program on gender equality. The next message was that this little child was so cute that she completely agreed with it, and she suggested adding this to their lesson materials. But then she noticed that there were only two people in the chat room. She was very surprised and upset. She hadn't even noticed it at first, and she began to say to herself with her mouth wide open, What? When did everyone leave? The next question was, maybe the chat was postponed, but why wasn't she told about it? A minute later, I started receiving messages from an unknown person. They read, Madame Star of Power, you try so hard all the time. I respect and support you for fighting the harassment by the Ministry of Education inspectors alone. I am very sorry for this, but as a result of discussions among colleagues for the sake of continuing our work, the decision was made to expel you. At the end, the following words were written, saying that this decision was made for the sake of their children. The lady was surprised that she had been thrown out of a job she really liked. For half an hour, the teacher sat there calmly trying to understand what she had done wrong and what she was going to do in these long, lonely evenings. Closing the laptop with her right hand, she put her head on the sofa behind her and continued to look at something on the white ceiling of the living room, 
without any emotion. And in her head the words, for the sake of children, for the sake of the children. After all, she also gave birth to all this so that they would feel good, so that in the future they would be educated on this issue. The next day, the bureau worker read the letter, which read, As the inspector said, I brought up my children badly. I sincerely believed that the method of teaching was good, and I never doubted it before. But now I admit it. You are right. They say that the method is no different from brainwashing which depresses children. I take full responsibility and resign as a teacher. The dark-haired man asked his colleague if this envelope was on Yang sang -Kui's desk. The woman folded her arms across her chest and answered briefly and clearly, Yes. However, the lady got very angry at this and said all their actions after she mentioned we. This is, respectively, an attempt to cut off all the tails so that no one can get them. She added that they needed to bring all these teachers to light as soon as possible. The man was still carefully looking at something on the sheet he was holding in his right hand. Without looking up, he emphasized that there was no need to be so categorical, and then he plunged back into the text written in the letter. Suddenly, however, a black computer flash drive fell into his palm. The inspector was very interested in it, because it could contain something very interesting and something that could help them understand. The gentleman said that this was called a warning. The next day on the news, the presenter announced that an investigation by the Office for the Protection of Education Rights had found a group of people who had been brainwashing children in a primary school. The news caused a stir on the Internet two weeks ago. Yesterday morning, Teacher Yang from a Seoul Elementary School handed in her resignation and handed over a USB stick containing the group's website to the Education Rights Protection Office. Strategies for convincing parents exploring ways to encourage students to form groups, and possible solutions when legal problems arise. Even looking at the file name gives you a horrible feeling. There are 10 to 30 people in one chat room, and there are also so-called seniors, elders who manage the others. The problem is that they work as a separate organization for each school district. Even Ms. Yang, who was one of the seniors, said she did not know all the details about the others. Currently, the Ministry of Education and the police are working to uncover full information about the members of this community. A special investigation team has been set up. The teacher, who wore round glasses, gathered her personal belongings in boxes and, on her way out, said goodbye to her colleague who was sitting at the computer and looking at something carefully. The teacher did not even turn her head to say goodbye to her friend. However, she began to type something quickly on the keyboard. And then the word traitor appeared on the screen in the text editor, printed in big, bold letters. After reading it, the released lady just smiled to herself without saying a word. She just continued to move towards the door, through which she could go out into the corridor and head for the exit as quickly as possible, because she could no longer just stay here. Suddenly someone appeared in her way and took the boxes the teacher was holding. This surprised the lady because she was not expecting this to happen today, so she just froze in place. It turned out that it was the inspector, who was happy and said with a sincere smile that he would help her take it to the right place. So they slowly walked down the corridor to the door that led to the street. The woman walked in front, and the black-haired gentleman followed her, carrying a single box of things. The gentleman decided to break the silence and said that she probably thought he had come to mock her, but he had come to help her, from the bottom of his heart. So far the lady did not fully understand what he was getting at, so she stopped abruptly in the middle of the corridor. She said that up to that point she had never doubted her method of education. She believed that this was the truth to which one should strive and constantly go, and she thought so because all the people in her social circle were convinced that it was the right decision and that she was on the right path. It would definitely lead her to success. The woman summed up that when she was kicked out of the chat room, she thought about it and realized that they were treating her exactly the same way she had treated the children in her primary school class. Sadly, she said that she herself had been fooled by them and this ideological teaching that did not really benefit the students. Turning her head back a little, she said that he shouldn't misunderstand her because she was not saying this to make herself a victim. 
and she began to think out loud that if she, an adult, felt so bad afterwards, how could children bear it? How scared were they? And she concluded that she certainly understands this, so I hate myself so much that I just want to die here and now. She said this very sadly and with tears in her eyes. When they went outside and approached the teacher's black car, they opened the trunk and began to put boxes of things in it. Closing the door with both hands, the inspector asked the woman if she didn't even want to say goodbye to the children she had taught for so long and had become accustomed to their presence. Without turning her head to her husband, the woman sadly replied that she did not have that right. No matter how much she wanted to, no one would allow her to do so. So the only thing she could do for her students was to simply disappear from their sight forever. Suddenly the man interrupted her and put his hands in his pockets and said happily, that sometimes, teachers, it is worth learning a little from children. At the same time, a red-haired inspector with two girls stood behind her. The woman approached the students and crouching down a little to be on the same level said calmly, Children. The blonde girl asked if the teacher was leaving them. The young lady with two buns on her head, holding a white sheet in her hands, stretched her limb towards the woman and said that they had brought it for her. Carefully taking it in her hands, the lady slowly began to unfold it, and what she saw surprised and touched her. She did not expect to receive such a present as a last gift. There were written words of wishes from each student of the class in which the woman worked. Tears began to form in her eyes as she read it. The girls said that, of course, there were some who had written not very good words, but she was leaving right now and they did not have time to erase them. The teacher burst into tears and hugged her students tightly and sincerely apologized to them for teaching them like that. She emphasized that she was really wrong to use such a method that could harm them now and in the future. The woman could not stop apologizing, so for several minutes she just kept repeating, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The children decided to hug her in return to calm her down. The inspector, standing behind the teacher, carefully observed her movements and gestures and took note of all the words she said and how she sincerely apologized to the primary school students. He therefore rejected Yang Sanghui's resignation on the basis that she had cooperated with the investigation and had sincerely repented and understood her mistake and had affirmed that she would continue to follow traditional teaching methods. The educational institution where she worked held a disciplinary meeting and imposed a three-month suspension on Yang Sanghui. In order to understand the real situation with this kind of ideological teaching, the Ministry of Education decided to conduct a global survey across the country among parents and primary school students. One day, as another class was taking it, a blonde boy picked up the sheet with the survey questions on it and began to read them carefully to give the correct answers. The reason is that there is still no complete information about the members of this community. The Ministry of Education stated that no disciplinary action would be taken against the teachers mentioned in the survey. However, it has warned school staff that if something similar happens in the future, they will be forced to take the most severe measures possible against the teacher in question. Every day, a group of residents and teachers gathered in front of the Ministry of Education to oppose the measures indicated by the organization. People held placards and shouted their opinions into a loudspeaker. They claimed that the website was a normal community for communication and that it was all a fake created by Yang Sanghui to get rid of the accusations. The people who gathered condemned Minister Choi Kang Siok for violating the rights of teachers and teachers and at the same time suppressing the topic of equality in the educational process. One day, the head of the ministry came out to the protesters and addressed them loudly, saying that he too would like it to be a fiction. But whether this is true or not will only become clear when the long-awaited investigation begins. And in the end, he suggested that everyone who had gathered should stop talking nonsense to the masses. The news on the same day showed how this gray-haired gentleman spoke angrily to the people gathered outside the Ministry of Education, showing him in a way that did not look good. At that time, two inspectors were driving by in a car and asked the red-haired man if they could get to the bottom of the truth. The man replied that, according to the investigation, the website server was located abroad and it would be quite difficult. And turning his gaze to the woman, he smilingly stressed that this time it had become a matter of public debate 
so they would soon lose most of their support. The lady was very satisfied with this answer. She calmed down for a moment and even tried to smile sweetly, which she did quite well. Driving through the streets of the city, the inspector suddenly noticed a store ahead of him that he needed to go to. He told his colleague who was driving the car. He asked her to stop because he needed to buy some cigarettes before they got to the motorway, as his favorite cigars were not sold in Hueso. The woman happily replied, Okay. As the man got out of the car, he looked through the side window and asked the lady if she needed to buy anything. The lady replied that he should buy some banana milk and not forget about the pipe. The inspector went to the store and tried to remember what kind of milk he needed to buy. After all, he doesn't make such purchases every day, so he couldn't easily remember the name. Walking between the shelves of products, the man put his hands in his trouser pockets and carefully began to look for what he needed to buy for his waiting colleague. Suddenly, he bumped into a person who was crouching down and looking at something at the bottom of the display case. She was wearing a burgundy sweatshirt with a hood pulled over her head. This attracted the man's attention, and he stood for a minute and carefully examined the man, who was a few meters away. There was something wrong with him, but he could not quite put his finger on it. So the man decided to help the stranger pick up the food that was scattered all over the floor around him, which he did only after he apologized. And then he saw what he had guessed, but he had to make sure. The inspector stood for several minutes looking at the face of the young man who needed help. The boy was very small, dark-haired. He had bruises and scratches on his small face. He was in no mood and his eyes were rather sad and empty. As he approached the cash register, the man put a small jar of banana milk on the table, which had a bright green lid and an inscription on a white background. He told the saleswoman that he would take this and two packs of Maboro Medium. The woman turned her head towards the counter where the cigarettes the customer wanted to buy were placed. However, she could not find them right away, so the man had to point to where they were, because he immediately noticed them with his eyes. At this time, the black-haired boy saw that no one was watching him, and this was the right moment to do what he had come here to do. For a few seconds, he stood there and made sure that no one was looking at him. So he decided that he needed to leave right now. However, just at that moment, the shop assistant turned her head and noticed that the young man was stealing her products in broad daylight. She began to shout loudly at him to stop immediately and return what he had taken with him and hidden under his blouse. At this point, the inspector turned his attention to the lady. Holding out the money... He calmly asked her to count what the boy had stolen and to pay for it with her own money, and then the store would not suffer any losses. After the young man left the store, he went to the nearest alleyway and sat down on the ground and began to unseal the food and eat quickly, as he was very hungry. The inspector decided to follow the young man to see why he had done such a shameful thing, and after a few minutes of searching, he finally found him. Peeking around the corner, the man watched all the child's movements and tried to understand what had happened to him in his life, that he was forced to live like this. Where are his parents looking? Suddenly the ministry worker's phone rang. He picked up the phone and heard the voice of a colleague asking if he was making the milk himself, or why was he taking so long. She told him that there were surveillance cameras here, so she had already been ticketed for parking incorrectly. All the man said was that he invited her to go first. While saying this, he continued to watch the young man he had seen beaten and hungry in the shop. At the end of the conversation, he added that he was busy for a while, because he had a very important matter that he had to solve right now, because he could not put it off. The young man stuffed his mouth full of food and realized that he would not be able to chew and swallow it all properly. That's why his eyes grew huge, because he didn't know what to do. He sat there for seconds without moving. He just stood there, not even blinking, thinking about whether to spit out the contents or try to chew and swallow it all. But then he started coughing loudly, because a few of the bun lids had fallen on the wrong place, and at that moment a black-haired man appeared in front of him and offered him banana milk with a friendly smile. The young man did not immediately want to accept a treat from a stranger. However, the inspector assured him with a big smile that everything was fine and he could safely drink the contents of the plate. Only then did the child dare to pick up the drink and carefully start drinking through the straw, 
to wash down the food and also to quench his thirst. Watching this carefully, the man was also scanning the boy with his keen eyes, noting things for himself to draw a conclusion. However, he decided not to make any guesses and asked the boy if he was not fed at home, or why was he so hungry. The boy froze when he heard this question. Then the inspector asked who had left such wounds on his face. The blonde boy put down the bottle of banana milk, but still did not say a word. The ministry worker said that the boy could not worry and tell him everything calmly, because he really wanted to help him. However, he needed to know what had happened. The young man did not understand the inspector's good intentions, so he turned to the right and quickly got to his feet and started running away, leaving all his belongings where he was sitting. The black-haired man said to himself in disappointment, had he asked the question too directly? He stressed that it was very difficult to find a common language with children of this age. However, he decided not to stop halfway. So he got to his feet and started running in the direction where the young man he wanted to help so badly had run away. Suddenly around the corner the man saw a young woman with blue hair standing next to the boy, and she leaned over and asked him if he was Minseo, and then she asked him if he remembered her. The child looked intently into the face of the lady who stood opposite him, and spoke to him so sincerely and sweetly as if she knew him. The inspector decided to intervene, so he took slow steps towards the woman and asked her what she had to do with this boy. How well does she know him? Straightening her back, the woman said with a serious expression that she was a teacher at the kindergarten where the young man was studying. She then put her right hand on the child's shoulder. Then the two adults and the young man moved to the park where they sat on one of the benches to discuss the situation. And to understand how best to proceed, the boy put his head on the woman's lap and began to doze off, and she, in turn, began to gently stroke his hair, saying how this could happen in modern society. She stressed that Min Seo must still be suffering in such a hell. The man put his foot on his leg and turned his head towards the young lady, listening attentively to her every word. After a minute, he asked the lady in a serious tone to tell him everything she knew. It is advisable not to miss a single detail because this is a very important case he wants to take on. He asked the next question, whether the child was subjected to domestic violence. The woman looked down and a tear began to run down her cheek as she remembered. However, after a few seconds she regained control of her emotions and began to tell me that Minseo had been attending their kindergarten until earlier this year. He was a quiet child who was easy to work with. While everyone else in the group was playing with various toys, he sat alone on the floor and looked at everything around him. But he did not play with all the other children, so unlike active six-year-olds, he didn't talk much and didn't get along with his peers, so his mother had to watch him all the time because he felt lonely. One day during lunch, the boy started coughing loudly. The teacher was frightened and quickly brought him some water in a white cup and offered him a drink. But what happened next scared the woman even more. She had never seen anything like this in her practice. For a moment she was even confused and froze in her seat. The young man was coughing so loudly and intensely that blood began to come out of his mouth. This caused him great pain, for he was grimacing with every movement he made. At the same moment, the teacher called Min Sun's mother and told her that she had received a call from the kindergarten where her son was attending. She went on to say that he had suddenly started coughing up blood and suggested that she take him to the hospital. The woman on the phone replied dryly, rudely, and briefly that there was no need to take anyone anywhere. They should leave him where he was. She would come and take him home in a few minutes. It turned out that it was not the mother who came for the child, but a man. He was wearing a dark blue cap and had several round earrings in his right ear, and he had blonde hair. The woman looked at him and said to herself that she had seen this boy sometimes being picked up by his mother. So she was surprised to see a completely different person at the entrance. Today his father came to pick up the child, who looked like a very stern and serious man. He was wearing a blue tracksuit. This showed that the gentleman was not a very friendly person. As he approached the door, the man greeted me and said that he was the father of this young boy. He went on to say that he was pleased to meet his son's teacher. He then grabbed the boy's right hand and said menacingly, Let's go home quickly. The child grimaced at the pain he was receiving from the grip. The man dragged the boy, 
who had not even had time to put on his shoes properly, away with him. The boy resisted a little, as if to show that he did not like such company. The teacher emphasized that for some reason she thought something bad was going to happen. This premonition haunted the young lady for almost the whole day, as the boy's eyes kept coming back to her. After the meeting, it took her a few minutes to control her emotions and thoughts and continue working. After all, there are other children waiting for her who still need her. That's why Min Seo didn't come to the kindergarten for more than a week. The teacher was very worried because she had a bad feeling about him, so she decided to come to their home to make sure that everything was okay. As she approached the door, she raised her right hand and forefinger to press the button to signal that someone was there. However, she did not have time to press it, because through the door she heard a man's voice loudly shouting, Hey, you little bastard! I told you not to talk to me during the match. The tone scared the teacher, not to mention the boy. However, the boy said he was very hungry. The father shouted at him to apologize as soon as possible, before he broke his head. He also stressed that he thought the boy would grow up to be something normal, not like this. The next day, the teacher went around to all the local pediatricians to find the hospital Minseo was attending, and heard the doctor's opinion that the boy's vomiting could be caused by internal trauma, intestinal damage caused by violence. The woman went on to say that she and the pediatrician immediately reported the matter to child protection authorities, and from that day on, Miso did not attend kindergarten anymore, and three to four months have already passed. On her way home from work in the evening, the woman saw the same young man with his father, who was again wearing the same tracksuit. At first, she was very surprised and then frightened by what she saw. She thought that the special authorities had dealt with this family and that the young man was now feeling well. However, it was not like that. The boy had a bright blue bruise under his right eye, and the man, with his hands in his trouser pockets, smiling, said that they already knew each other and noticed that they hadn't seen each other for quite some time. A minute later he said that they had some very serious business so they could not take the boy to the kindergarten. At this time, the child was very upset and did not look up from the ground. The father finally added that they would be going to school very soon, so she should take care of his son. The woman listened to this with wide eyes. Then the man began to walk slowly past the woman, and it was quite close. At this time, the lady stood silently, not even blinking because she did not know what to expect from such a person. Then the gentleman, smiling slyly, said that he could see that she was quite surprised, and he added that everything had happened as he had expected. It was she who had complained about their family. The man leaned down to the teacher's ear and threatened that if she did it again, he would just kill the boy. And that was that. The lady told the inspector that it turned out that the Child Protection Organization had only interviewed the parents. A few days later, the lady found out that the staff of the organization had simply left without taking any action. The teacher bent her head over the boy who was lying on her lap crying and asked how they could do such a thing. Didn't they notice anything suspicious when the evidence of violence was so obvious? The black-haired man replied that in the case of preschoolers, the reality is that it is impossible to properly assess the damage done to them, and they have no choice but to rely on their parents. The Child Protection Organization is similarly underpowered and poorly resourced, with many people leaving after just two years. And despite the fact that it is a specialized facility, there is an acute shortage of staff who can make proper judgments in this area. The lady then asked how he knew this. Does he work in a related field? If so, his face seemed quite familiar. The man quickly pulled out his name tag from his inside pocket and showed it to the lady, saying that he worked there. The lady opened her mouth wide in surprise but mumbled, The Department for the Protection of Educational Rights, and she remembered seeing on the news that it deals with cases of violence at school. Then she grabbed the inspector's right hand and asked him to help the boy. After all, she would not be able to cope with this on her own. And if this continues, something might happen to Minseo that cannot be reversed. The young man continued to doze sweetly on his tutor's lap. The man closed his eyes and began to think about what he should do. What should he do first? 
But then he suddenly said that he was sorry, but this case was not in their jurisdiction. The woman was very surprised by this answer, because she did not expect him to refuse. The gentleman went on to say that the Education Rights Unit is an agency under the direct supervision of the Ministry of Education and can exercise a wide range of powers in matters related to public education. But child abuse and domestic violence fall under the jurisdiction of the Ministry of Health and the police. Finally, the man added that they do not have any authority to intervene in these situations now. The woman bowed her head because she was hoping for his help. She said sadly and quietly, I see. The inspector went on to say that, if you think about it, kindergartens are also under the jurisdiction of the Ministry of Health and Social Security, not the Ministry of Education. Then the gentleman quickly got to his feet, and with his hands in his black trouser pockets, told the woman that it looked like she would need to send the child home. Turning his head to the woman for a moment, he added that if she left the boy without parental permission, it could be considered kidnapping and she could be punished. After a minute, the man said that he would take the boy home by himself, but she had to give him the address. If she did not, she could get into big trouble. So the man lifted the boy on his back and began to carry him slowly and carefully to the house where he lived with his parents. It was already quite dark outside, and no one was even looking for him. Looking at something carefully on his smartphone, the inspector reasoned that this was the only thing he could do as a person working for the Ministry of Education. The boy hugged the man's neck and dozed off soundly. It turned out that he was dialing the number of the Department for the Protection of Children's Rights, but he was still wondering whether he should do it. Would it bring any benefit to the young man? Or maybe he should figure it out on his own. So he decided to find out everything on his own. Approaching the house where the boy lived, he put his hand to the button that signaled that someone had come. A few seconds later, the door was opened by an angry blonde man who angrily shouted, Fucking calm down. Even if they don't open the door, you need to press it calmly. Having calmed down a little, the father stopped and looked at the gentleman in front of him and asked who he was, and why did he come to them, and why he dared to ring the bell so insistently. The inspector slowly said, I am... He was silent for a second and then continued, from the Department for the Protection of Rights. No. However, he didn't finish his last sentence because he had decided to say something else. So, with a focused look in which one could see a lot of anger, he said that he was just a person passing by. But it was difficult to confirm this from his expression. My father, holding the door handle, looked at the stranger carefully and tried to understand what he had just said. And what did he want from him? Why did he come to them? Then he started looking for his hand and asked the question, Citizen, what are you talking about? Because he had not yet understood what was happening. Suddenly the man noticed that his son was sleeping on the man's back. And he didn't even notice that he hadn't been home all this time. He didn't care whether he was there or not. The father began to shout loudly at the entire staircase, Minso! The inspector turned his head to the boy and asked the man standing opposite if he lived here. The young man woke up from the noise and rubbed his eyes, trying to figure out where he was. The bureau worker continued to tell him that he was walking down the street and saw the child and picked him up. Then he asked around and was given this address, so he brought him here. The blonde man was very angry about this, and with a simply beastly expression on his face, he started shouting, This son of a bitch! When he got out of the apartment, how did he manage to do it so quietly? Then he approached his son and grabbed him hard by the hair. The young man grimaced because it was causing him a lot of pain. He could no longer stand it, so he began to raise his hands up to remove the adult's hand. Then the man turned to face his apartment and started pulling the young man inside, asking him when he managed to sneak out, and why was he being brought home by a stranger. Suddenly, the inspector said that the child had a lot of wounds on his face. These words made the blonde man stop in his tracks and freeze because he did not think that anyone would dare to ask him such a question. The bureau worker noticed that this caught the gentleman's attention, so he continued to say that he had bought the boy bread, and he ate it so quickly that it looked like the boy had been starved for days. The father turned his head back a little to the side and watched the black-haired man standing outside the door 
saying something he didn't like. However, he continued to hold his son's hair and called the stranger a freak, asking him what he meant by that. Why did he start talking about it? Then he suggested that maybe he was a policeman, or one of those stupid people who protect children, and come every day and say that you can't do that. The inspector replied that it was the duty of every citizen of the country to report a crime, especially when it comes to the abuse of such young children. The blonde man looked down and listened attentively to the words of the stranger. After these words, the father turned his head to the boy, and addressing him by name, asked him if he had ever beaten him. The boy stood there silently and did not know what to say. When the boy did not answer, the man asked him another question. Perhaps he had starved him. The son put his head down as he thought about what he should say to avoid hurting himself. And after a moment he hesitantly said, No, no. And tears were welling up in my eyes because he was not really telling the truth and everything was quite the opposite. And to top it off, he said that it had never happened. After that, he bowed his head down in sadness. His dad turned to the inspector with his mouth wide open, asking if he had heard everything well. And as he was closing the door, he asked who the black-haired man had accused of child abuse. He said this very confidently and boldly because he thought that everything was over and the gentleman would not be able to show him anything. Finally, the blonde man told the bureau worker not to let him see him again, because if he saw him again, he would leave. After these words, the inspector could no longer contain himself so he put his foot between the doors and thus prevented them from closing. He said that when people are rude like that, of course, it's better for people not to get involved with such a person. And he said that, fortunately or unfortunately, he was not like that. On the contrary, such difficulties encourage him to take radical action. Having said that, he grabbed the door with his right hand. The calm father was again enraged by this and made an unnatural face, clenched his teeth and said angrily, you bitch. He thought it was over, so he decided that he needed to deal with this stranger right now. He slammed the door to the apartment hard, leaving the boy inside, who froze in place in surprise. Then the blonde man walked up to the inspector and said, Let's say I hit this young man 300,000 times. The ministry employee looked him in the eye to see what he should do first. Then my father put his right hand into the pocket of the man's black jacket and his left hand into his own, and asked him what he would do to him. What could he do? When he received no answer, he continued to say that he had created this boy, so he could do what he wanted with him. And he asked what this had to do with this black-haired gentleman. The inspector continued to stare at this arrogant man, and waited for the right moment to finally give him what he deserved for such horrible behavior. The father continued to be insolent and waving his right hand, which was clenched into a fist, said that maybe right now he should hit the gentleman once for prevention. However, he did not have time to do so because the inspector did it first. He hit the blonde man right in the chin with his right hand, and it was so hard that the saliva started flying in all directions. Daddy couldn't stay on his feet, so he took a few steps back and landed on his bum at the door of his apartment, head down and looking down. The inspector began to scratch his left ear and started to speak, noticing that the gentleman started to speak to him in an informal language. He assumed, if he looked closely, that he was twenty-five years old, which was eight to ten years younger than him. Then the bureau officer opened the door to the apartment, and there was still a frightened boy standing outside, his sweet eyes wide and holding on to his T-shirt. It turned out that the inspector had thrown his father over his shoulder and carried him into the room telling the child that his father was very tired and had fallen down suddenly. After taking a few steps around the room, the black-haired man laid the blonde man face up on the white bed, and it was noticeable that a red mark from the blow had begun to appear on his chin. The inspector sat down on the same level as the boy, and smilingly informed him that his father would be unconscious until the morning. The boy was still silently watching everything that was happening. Suddenly, the ministry employee caught sight of something he had expected to see here. However, not in such a quantity when there are children in the family who go to kindergarten. It was just a pile of rubbish that simply wouldn't fit in the bin anymore, so they piled it up around it. There were quite a few bottles of alcohol, 
The sink was filled with dirty dishes that hadn't been washed for more than a week. Even here and there, you could see midges that had appeared from spoilt food. And on the table next to the laptop were many paper coffee cups and a large pile of cigarette butts lying around. Everything was clear to the inspector. However, he decided to ask the young man a rather simple question and turned his head and gazed towards him and said cautiously, Where is his mother? The young man stood silently for a few seconds. But after a few seconds, he began to nervously twiddle his thumbs and tears ran down his cheeks. So he said that his mother was working and would be home very late. The man listened carefully to this. He realized that the boy was not telling the truth. However, he decided that he had had enough of all kinds of talk for the day because the child needed to have a good rest. So coming closer to the young man, I gently put my left hand on his head and smiling sincerely told him that he would come to visit them again. The child opened his eyes wide to show his great surprise. Then the inspector went to the door and slowly started to open it and go out into the corridor to go home. But there was someone waiting for him for several minutes. It turned out to be a woman who was holding her handbag tightly with her right hand, which was slung over her shoulder and raised her left hand up to help. At the same time, she was trying to smile sweetly. The man asked in surprise, A teacher? The young lady, with both hands up, replied that she was very worried, so she decided to follow them to see everything with her own eyes. And laughing, she said that the black-haired man looked like a martial artist. After all, he managed to knock out a grown man with one punch, which requires a lot of skill. The inspector listened attentively and smiled sweetly in response, and the thought flashed through his mind. So that's when she was spying on him. Then he turned to the stairs and began to descend slowly. He turned to his companion and told her that nothing bad would happen until the morning. He emphasized that it was already quite dark, so he suggested that they go home. The woman took one step and asked him if this would solve the problem. The black-haired gentleman leaned forward a little and answered clearly and confidently that of course not. And he began to tell me that the father is about 25 years old. He can't even wash his face. It's obvious that he doesn't work. So he takes out his anger on his child. This can be seen as a typical case of domestic violence. And a minute later, he stressed that he was just sure that when he woke up, he would be very surprised by what had happened to him that evening. Smiling sarcastically, he continued to say that in the case of domestic violence, it cannot be eradicated if everything happens behind closed doors, so constant monitoring is needed until they are pressured. The next morning in the apartment where the victim boy lived, his father woke up and could barely open his eyes. His beard had turned blue as a result of the blow. After lying still for several minutes, the man said, Fuck! Sitting on his bum, the blond man held his head because it hurt so much. He asked himself what had happened. He continued to sit for a few seconds to try to remember something. Suddenly, through the open door, he noticed his son sitting on his knees with his back to him, doing something quietly, not paying attention to his father. The man got to his feet and approached the boy and asked him what he was doing. At this time, the child was eating sushi, and the one he had just picked up fell backwards as his father's voice scared him. However, the young man slowly turned his head back and told the adult with a smile on his face that his uncle had bought him a pack of sushi. You could see the joy in the boy's eyes at what he saw in front of him. The man made a face. He started to get angry because he didn't like what he had just heard from his son, and his happy face was just annoying him. Then the boy pointed to the tray next to him and said that he was black and had bought him breakfast too so he suggested that they sit down together at the table and eat some normal food. However, the father did not like this, and all he decided to do was to kick the tray with his right foot and the food, which was done so hard that all the contents were scattered around the room. The gentleman was simply beside himself with anger. He gritted his teeth and asked his son the following question. Where is this bastard now? How could he come here again? The boy's tears began to flow down his cheek in large streams. He was silent for a few seconds because he was very scared of the way his father looked. The man did not hesitate to lift his left leg up and threateningly asked the boy again where the gentleman in the classic suit was. The young man bent down, 
covering his head with both hands. Suddenly, music began to play loudly throughout the apartment, which attracted the father's attention, who turned his head in the direction of the sound. At first, he did not understand what was happening in his apartment. After a few minutes, he said, What the hell? What kind of a jerk listens to music so loud? He couldn't stand the sound anymore. So walking around the apartment, he realized that it wasn't theirs. Opening the door to the corridor, he realized that it was coming from the neighboring apartment, which had been unoccupied until now. Then my father decided to go to the neighbor's door and started banging on it, shouting at them to turn down their music, which was blaring throughout the floor. A second later, the door opened and the blonde man he saw standing there was very surprising. It could have been anyone, but not him. It turned out to be an inspector who greeted him happily and asked how well his neighbors slept. The man began to get nervous at what he saw and his face began to show signs of it. The black-haired man stood without a t-shirt, showing off his muscular body. Holding a cigarette between his lips, he asked if the breakfast was good. All my father could say was, you... How are you in the next apartment? The bureau employee calmly replied, How? I just rented it for a while, that's all. After taking one puff, the inspector squinted his eyes and added that they said that it was because of the blonde man that three people had moved out of the apartment. Thanks to this, the gentleman was able to rent it very cheaply. He also said that now his title was not just citizen, but citizen neighbor. I asked him if he was a volunteer. After all, in their time, when people pay a lot of money for real estate, you need to be able to reduce the price tag so easily. After these words, the blonde man began to run at the inspector, who was calmly smoking a cigarette. The first blow was unsuccessful, as the black-haired man managed to duck and catch the attacker's hand. Then he turned him with his back to him and put him face down on the floor. Without taking the cigarette out of his mouth, the bureau employee immediately took up his fists and said, Incredible fighter, Dong Chul. The blonde was very surprised to hear this. He did not expect this man to know anything about him at all, so he decided to ask how he knew his name. The inspector replied, smiling slyly, that he had a person who had told him about it. An image of a teacher appeared in my mind. Then the black-haired man continued to smile and said that he was very sensitive to various sounds especially to the loud crying of children and stress that when he hears it, he starts to go straight crazy. So the blonde man should try to keep quiet. After what happened in the morning, the father returned home and started playing his favorite computer game. While having fun, the gentleman said the following phrases. Did you think I was scared, so I just came? The raid was dropped and I had no choice but to re-enter. It turned out that he had tied his son by the neck to the lockers, and he was sitting silently on the floor nearby. However, after a few hours of being in this position, the boy began to pull at the rope crying. Seeing no reaction from his father, the boy began to scream, saying that he had no air to breathe. However, the man was so focused on the game that he did not hear anything at all. He continued to say, Oh, in this round, everyone is in pretty good shape, so we will pass in the seventeenth attempt. The boy continued to cry and ask to be let go, even promising not to go outside. This constant indifference on the part of the young man's father was very upsetting. However, the blonde man still did not pay attention to him. He just started shouting loudly, Ooh, almost, almost passed. It worked, I got it, we killed it, we killed it. It's finally happened. Suddenly, something appeared on the monitor screen that surprised the man. As he opened his mouth and his already large brown eyes wide, for a few seconds he tried to understand what had happened, because on a red background it read, Loss. All points of the group's revival are exhausted. The gentleman just sat there as if spellbound, because he hadn't expected such a development when everything was going so well. The boy looked at the adult and said quietly, Dad! Dad! The father angrily raised his right hand, clenched into a fist, and hit the black computer keyboard on the table in front of him, saying loudly, Bitch. After that, he got to his feet and slowly entered the room where the young man was sitting and addressed him by name and asked him if he was crazy or what. Without giving him a chance to answer, he reminded him that when his dad was playing, especially during a raid, there was no need to talk to him because he was playing a very important round that could bring a lot of points and authority among other players. 
He added that because of this shouting, he was distracted and the whole team lost. My son listened attentively with wide eyes, and tears continued to flow down his cheeks. Suddenly there was a loud knock on the door and a message like this came through. No, Dong Chul, you're wrong! Everyone in the room instinctively turned their heads in the direction of the sound. The man's voice continued to say that the fact that my father lost was the problem of his crooked fingers. And the next question was why he was blaming the child for that. And finally he added that he goes crazy when he hears a child crying. Having heard everything, the blond man opened his mouth wide and shouted loudly for him to shut up and get out of here. He said that this was how he was trying to raise his son. However, this did not stop the man standing in the corridor and he started pulling the handle to open the door and enter the apartment where the father and his child were. A few minutes later, the front door opened and a black-haired neighbor wearing a black t-shirt walked through it. Confidently entering the apartment, he told the blonde man to be ashamed to talk about his upbringing. Then he asked if he could take a picture of this and show it to someone, to confirm whether it looked like upbringing or not. Dad was just dumbfounded that the inspector had managed to enter their home so easily. So he asked the ministry employee in surprise, saying that he was closing the door. How did he manage to get in? The gentleman put his hand in his trouser pocket and calmly replied, Really? I didn't notice. Seeing the white, long, thin rope lying on the floor, the black man said that he had not closed the door, and finally sarcastically said the name of his neighbor, Don Chal. The blonde turned to the inspector and called him uncle and said that he had seen the young man wandering the streets of the city alone. The black-haired man looked at the other man and listened attentively to every sentence. The father said that he had just decided to punish his son a little because he had done something wrong. Therefore, he needed to explain everything so that the next time it wouldn't happen. However, the ministry employee did not like this answer, and he came closer to the father, grabbed him by the neck with one hand, and began to slowly lift him up. He angrily said, You're raising him then, and asked if he was trying to correct his habit like that. After all, rubbish like him always has the same excuses. The blonde man was coughing loudly because he was short of breath. Then the inspector gently leaned over to his father's right ear and whispered quietly that he should listen to him very carefully right now because education was created by infecting children. And the fact that they are being punished and subjugated by their parents is just animal breeding. The blonde man began to shout loudly, and his face showed a flush of excitement and fright. After what happened in the evening, in the morning, the father and his son were sitting at a small table and trying to have a quiet breakfast. However, the father picked up his spoon and looked closely at the boy sitting opposite him. And he quickly threw spoonfuls of rice and vegetables into his mouth, not always successfully. So the food flew all over the place, onto the floor and onto the table. The boy was so hungry that he didn't notice anything around him. For some reason his father's face was twisted, and it was clear that he did not like what he saw in front of him. He sat there in silence for a few minutes. But he couldn't stand it any longer and loudly slammed his hands on the table, calling his son an idiot and saying that he threw everything around when he ate like that. The young man was frightened because it took him by surprise. Then the man gritted his teeth in anger and said how many times he had already told him that he shouldn't litter around when eating, because it irritated him. The boy did not understand what to do, so he started picking up the food on the table with his hands and throwing it into his mouth. This made his father even angrier, and he ordered him to take his hands away, because he did not deserve breakfast. After that, someone knocked loudly on the door again, and addressed the blonde boy by name, and said that all children under six years old crumble when they eat. He asked him if he hadn't done the same at that age. After a second, he continued, saying that he was just a child and it was normal. It's okay to get a little dirty. After all, we are all human beings and there is nothing abnormal about it. Then another fact was mentioned, that the gentleman behind the door had a famous tycoon who at the age of 36, still ate like a pig. Hearing the familiar voice, the boy began to smile sincerely. Suddenly the blonde man got to his feet and raised his right hand to hit his son. But the phrase, Don't you dare do that, Dong Chul, was heard, 
The boy tilted his head down and began to cover his head with his hands. This distracted his father, and the young man managed to quickly get to his feet and run to another room. However, the phrase, Do Chal, stop right now. After that, the man went out onto the balcony with a bottle of beer and lit a cigarette to smoke and calm down a bit. The morning had been quite emotional. However, downstairs he noticed his black-haired neighbor, who looked up, put his hands in his pockets, and asked the father how he could smoke when he had a small child in his house. Then he helped him with his hand and told him to come down to the street, because Hen was bored here, and it would be much more fun together. He took out a cigarette and stuck it in his mouth. The inspector saw that the man was frozen in place and was not going to do anything. The inspector shouted that he had something to say to the blonde man, so he had to go downstairs immediately. Having slammed the door to the balcony, the father grabbed his head and began to shout loudly about how he was fed up with the bastard, and he started thinking aloud about what he could do with this jerk of a neighbor. And suddenly, in his bright mind, he came up with what he thought was a pretty perfect idea, and he heard the phrase, disposal of poo. However, he continued to hold his head because thinking is not something he is used to. It turned out that these words were spoken by his son, who was sitting on the floor playing with a yellow lorry and laughing, saying, Disposal of poo, disposal of poo. The father turned his head to the young man and slowly lowered his hands down, listening attentively to the words of his son, who at that time did not notice that someone was watching him. So he continued to smile loudly and say the phrase, Disposal of poo, poop disposal. This game amused him greatly, because it had been a long time since he had smiled so genuinely. The man, wide-eyed with surprise, smiled softly to himself, but he still didn't really understand what had happened to him to make him show such an emotion. Then he began to move slowly past his son with a smile, saying that now even the child does not obey him. The son turned his head to his father after these words. The man went to one of the cabinets and opened the door, where on the first shelf there was a hammer, a tape measure, a few screws and a transparent box for other parts that are constantly needed in the household. Then he returned to the room where the boy was playing with the machine, and addressing him by name, asked him to listen very carefully. The young man held the toy with his right hand and turned his head to the adult. The next thing he heard surprised him because he suddenly opened his eyes and opened his mouth wide. And what he heard was a phrase that read, Dad's not coming anymore. When the boy saw the hammer in his father's hands, he asked where the adult was going. And why did he pick up such an object? What does he need it for now? What is he going to do? Then the man began to move towards the door to go out into the corridor. And the inspector's voice could be heard from the street through the open window still calling the blonde man outside because he had something to say. Daddy stopped for a moment and, with his head down and not turning it, told the young man that he would have to go very far away for a very long time. However, he decided to see his son's face one last time, so he turned his head back sharply and told the young man that today he would kill the bastard of a neighbor and go to prison for several years. So he grabbed the door handle with his right hand and began to quickly turn it in the opposite direction to open it, and finally go outside to deal with the black-haired man. However, it turned out that the inspector had already come up to their floor and was standing right outside the door, and what he saw when the door of the neighboring apartment opened surprised him greatly, because he had not expected such a development. It turned out that an angry blonde man with a hammer in his right hand was going to attack him right away. He couldn't stand the pressure any longer. Suddenly. A loud bang sounded throughout the entrance. My father watched carefully to see if he had managed to hit his annoying neighbor or if he needed to swing again. For several minutes he stood there with his eyes and mouth wide open, looking at the man standing in front of him. Having regained control of his emotions, he could not understand what had happened. The black-haired gentleman had managed to protect himself, as he was wearing a large orange glove on his right hand. It is still unclear why he put it on at that moment. All the inspector could say was the word bad, because he had very good intentions, and this bastard attacked him with a cold weapon right out of the blue. Then the events unfold in the Ministry of Education, where the head of the ministry entered the joint office and raised his left hand, smiling, and called Na Hua Jin to take a smoke break.
The red-haired girl, sitting in her seat looking through files, smiling, greeted the minister. He was surprised not to see another of his employees at the workplace, so he immediately started asking his colleague if he hadn't come to work yet. Where did he go? The woman asked him in surprise if he didn't know. A minute later she said that Sanbei had taken a holiday. He said that he didn't know for how long, but for two weeks, and then he would see what happened. The boss angrily asked how he had left without permission. The lady replied that the black-haired man had told her that he was allowed to do so. The minister stressed that there could be no leave during the school year. At this time, in the entrance, the inspector called his neighbor a worthless person, because he was going to commit such a brutal crime in front of his child, and only a complete moron could do that. However, after that, he did not give up his idea of educating this man and told him to go out and do it as soon as possible. He had already pissed him off enough. The blonde man stood silently with a twisted face and thought about what he should do, whether to go and get ready, or to try and argue and not give in so easily. The man made the first decision, and they all ended up in the park on the playground. The inspector gave him the orange glove that had saved him from the hammer. While his father was looking at it, a small salad ball hit him right in the nose, it caused him a lot of pain because it was so sudden. The black-haired man put one hand to the side and shouted that he had pitched very lightly, and the blonde man couldn't even catch it, and stressed that it was because he was constantly sitting at the computer. My father held his nose with one hand, which still hurt very much, and with the other hand he held a small ball and said quietly to himself, Bitch! He was ready for anything. But not this so he decided that there was no need to hesitate, but to act quickly. He got to his feet, swung his right hand, and threw the ball in the direction where the inspector was standing and waiting for it. And he managed to catch the ball in his playing glove. He did this with a very concentrated expression on his face, because this is a rather serious game that requires maximum attention. Then the ministry employee said, What's wrong? Why didn't the blonde boy catch it again? and asked if he could at least do something right. Dad replied that the opponent was just serving badly. The game was also watched by a boy who also wore an orange baby glove on one hand. The inspector threw the ball to his father again, and he tried very hard to catch it to prove that he was capable of doing so, and that he should not be written off immediately. The black-haired man turned his head and gazed to the boy and said that it would not work. The child looked at him in return, and did not understand what the meaning of these words was. A second later a ball was flying slowly towards him, which the new neighbor carefully threw in his direction. A sweet and sincere smile appeared on his face. The boy raised his right hand, which was wearing a glove, jumped up a little, and managed to catch what was coming towards him. The black-haired man stressed that this was a very good result, because not everyone can catch it the first time. And turning to Don Chell, he said that even the child was doing better than him. The son was surprised that he had done so well, and also that someone was praising him. After all, he had never heard that from his father before. The bureau worker turned to the young man, smiling, and said that he was just serving the ball to his dad. The blonde boy began to say excitedly, What has he come to? What was he doing here? And finally he added that he would rather go on a raid than participate in this bullshit. The son, holding the ball in his right hand, listened attentively to all the words his father said. However, they did not stop him. So he picked up the pace and launched the ball straight toward his dad, who was standing with his gloved hand outstretched. But this time he managed to catch what was flying towards him. The inspector turned to the other side and began to take off his glove, but told them to continue playing. He stressed that the weather was very good and he asked his neighbor a question that read as follows. Wouldn't it be better to play with your son than to go to prison for attempted murder? After saying this, the black-haired gentleman moved a few meters away from the playground where he was playing the game. The father and son continued to play. Sitting on a bench, the inspector carefully took a new pack of oblong chewing gum out of his right pocket. Suddenly, he heard the blonde man shout to the boy, Hey, you idiot! Can't you serve it properly? Putting one gum in his mouth, the black-haired man began to watch the interaction of the family in front of him. The young man threw it again to his father, who managed to catch it. And having done so, he said that he needed to start teaching him immediately. 
and throwing the ball back to the boy, he angrily shouted at him to pitch correctly. The inspector was very amused by this picture. He squinted his eyes and began to smile broadly. The boy was also very happy because he and his father had never had so much fun before. Then they all went to a place called Toysland, and sitting down in front of the boy, who was smiling happily, the blonde inspector and the inspector brought him something in a red box. Then they went to a cafe where the boy pounced on the food. The father was getting a little angry, but the black-haired neighbor didn't seem to care. He just smiled as he watched the child. The boy enjoyed everything and closed his eyes, thinking that today was a day for children. After such an exhausting day, everyone returned home. The blonde man was carrying his tired son on his back, and the ministry worker had his left hand in his trouser pocket and the boy's package in his right. Suddenly, the father decided to call out and said that he did not understand these little creatures at all. And looking at the black-haired man, he asked what he was chewing on all the time. At this time, the inspector's mind flashed back to the rule that smoking near children is prohibited. A moment later, he answered the question with a question, saying, Isn't this great? The blonde man asked what could be unsurpassed, and the black-haired man decided to say what he thought, so he said that he was a self-confident man, who constantly beat his son, swore, and cut himself off. And the child still called him father, played and smiled. The blonde man stressed that calling him a devil was too much. The ministry employee, fixing the boy's hair, said that he was just a child. He stressed that no matter how much garbage the blonde man was, he was still his father. And the young man has no choice but to follow him and depend on him. After all, for children, parents are their universe. Therefore, no matter what they do, children will never hate their fathers and mothers. Finally, the inspector added that this is the only reason why the blonde man is still alive. This surprised the man who was holding his son on his back. The black-haired gentleman continued that a few days ago, someone had seen the man put the child on a leash. The inspector angrily said that he could hardly contain himself because he wanted to break all the bones of this grieving father. And finally, he added that after everything he had done, he would have thrown his body right in front of the police station. The blonde man listened attentively with his head down and eyes wide open. Then the inspector continued to walk towards the house with one hand in his trouser pocket and calmly said that, as he had said earlier, parents are everything to children. Even a child like this will be very scared and hurt. And as a result, the father has no choice but to change and become a good dad. The man continued to carry his sleeping son on his back, listening attentively to his new neighbor. Suddenly, the black-haired man stopped and warned him that this was his last chance. After all, if he heard the child crying at least once, it was a pity, of course, but he would be forced to do what he had long wanted to do. And having taken a few steps forward, he asked the blonde man not to push the situation to the extreme, because the gentleman did not want to get his hands dirty because of such an impudent creature as him. Few minutes later, the inspector stressed that this was his own son. How could he not be careful with him? Why is he abusing a little boy like that, returning home late in the evening? The father put his son to bed on a white bed on the floor, while he sat nearby drinking a beer and looking at something on his smartphone. It turned out that the man was looking at photographs of his son when he was very young. Most of all, these photos were taken before he was one year old, and in one of them, the child was sleeping peacefully. In another, he had already learnt to sit up and was looking at the camera with a sweet look on his face, his mouth wide open, and he was wearing a very nice blue outfit. The next photo was taken in the summer, when the boy had already learnt to stand on his own. That is why in the photo he is confidently standing holding a brightly colored ball with both hands. Next, a photo of a rather grown-up boy appeared on the screen, sleeping peacefully in a white bed, hugging a red toy car. For a few seconds, the father stopped at this photo. He tried to examine everything in detail and understand how he had become such a bad father. Why did his child, who was so calm, receive only punishment and abuse from him? Suddenly, the man heard someone quietly and slowly opening the door and entering the apartment. It turned out to be a woman. The man froze at what he saw. The lady wore large round glasses and had dark brown hair pulled back in a ponytail. 
Putting one hand on her chest, the lady addressed the blonde man and said that she was back. My father squinted his eyes in anger because he did not like it. You could see it in his eyes because he did not try to hide it from his guest. Unable to control his emotions, the blonde man threw a beer bottle at the woman, which flew past and hit the wall, splashing the contents all over the place. The woman began to cover her head with her hands. Then the man quickly got to his feet and made a fist, all out of anger that filled his head. A second later, he repeated the lady's words out loud. You're back? The woman holding her hands to her face began to cry heavily, because she had not expected to be met like this. The gentleman angrily said, Fuck, I said... He wanted to keep her out of his sight. The young lady slowly and cautiously looked up to look into the eyes of her not-so-friendly interlocutor. At that time, the inspector was in his apartment taking a shower. Through the thin walls, he heard a certain dialogue. Namely, a male voice said, Oops, I was wrong. What did you do? What? 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 The next phrase sounded very threatening. Get out of here before I fucking kill you. Hearing this, the black-haired man smiled. Then he reached for the tap handle and turned it to the right to stop the water flow. And he quietly said to himself, This is just horrible. Picking up one of the jars, he poured a little of its contents onto his head and rubbed his hands together to wash his hair. Emphasizing that, in the end, people do not change. In the next apartment, a woman fell to her knees in front of the blonde man and folded her arms as if in prayer, crying and asking for forgiveness. She promised that she would never do it again. The man made a face because he was not pleased to see this lady in front of him. The upset lady continued to sob heavily, asking for forgiveness. Large streams of tears and snot ran down her face, dripping onto her dark green blouse. Suddenly, their argument was interrupted by a boy who woke up from the noise in the apartment and, kneeling down, turned his head to the adults and said in surprise, Mum. Mum. Seeing the young man, the woman quickly got to her feet and started running to the boy, calling his name Minseo. As she ran up to the boy, she hugged him tightly around the neck and said, Min Seung, my son. The boy turned his gaze to his mother and sadly said that his mother had come back very late because he could not wait for her and therefore fell asleep. Smiling, the woman said that she would not be late any longer. These words made the young man very happy and he began to hug his mother because he missed her very much. After taking the drink, the inspector came to the family's door and raised his right hand to knock and then he heard a woman's voice say, Mum's sorry. This made him stop and listen some more. Maybe he would hear something useful for his work. So he began to slowly lower his raised hand down. And behind the door, the phrase, I'm sorry, Mincio, still sounded. The next morning, the building where the family and the black-haired man lived was unusually quiet. The music was not blaring throughout the building, and the boy was not crying because of the bullying. Turned out that the family was just having breakfast. The man and the boy were already sitting on the floor at a small table and tasting what the woman was bringing them. Then she sat down next to them and happily turned to the boy, saying that she had made her son's favorite egg roll. He gladly grabbed a spoon and started to eat. Having eaten the first bite, the young man said with a big smile, It's delicious, it's delicious. He was very happy to have such a morning. The woman looked at her now grown-up son in amazement as he ate everything she had prepared for him for breakfast so quickly. Then the lady turned her gaze to her husband and calmly addressed the young man by name, saying that his dad did not like it when he crumbled the food around him. The blonde man replied that all children eat carelessly, so there was nothing wrong with that. The woman was very surprised by this answer because she had never heard him say that before. The man then reached for a snack and asked the lady if she was going to go to work after she had eaten. The lady replied that it was Sunday. Closing his eyes, the father calmly said that this was great and suggested that after breakfast, he could go out with the boy. A second later, he added that he had bought a remote-controlled car so they could play in a park not far from their home. The woman listened attentively to her interlocutor's proposal. Suddenly a man's voice came from the corridor and he said their father's name. And then he said good morning. Everyone instinctively turned their heads in the direction of the noise. Then the gentleman at the door said that the blonde man had eaten, dressed and gone outside because he had brought him something very good. 
He added that if he didn't come out, he would regret it for the rest of his life. My father cringed at this voice and quietly spoke again. A few hours later, the events unfolded at one of the unfinished buildings in the city. The blonde man was wearing a military uniform. He still did not understand why he was here. At that moment, someone wished him a good day. It was two big, pumped-up guys. One of them loudly announced that my father had become an intern at their company. Special interior. So they greeted him very warmly. Dad asked, frightened. What the hell was going on here? The black-haired commander said that there are certain rules that must be followed. And the first is that if someone has some business, they need to talk about it briefly and concisely. You should use a formal style of speech. After that, the boss asked if the newcomer understood everything. He made a face at first. At the same time, the inspector and his friend were watching the father from the side. And while smoking a cigarette, he asked who the man with yellow hair was. The inspector said, It's a bit idiotic, but how can he refuse the honorable Captain Na Hua Jin? The friend was the president of Special Interior. His name was Li Jin Chong, and he was a lieutenant in the Special Forces Reserve. Then he turned to the black-haired man and said that all their employees were from the Special Forces. And he asked if this gentleman could handle the job. The inspector took another puff and said, smiling, that although he was not from the Special Forces, he was a father. He is a father. Then the blonde man was told that he had to follow them because it was time to work. At this time, on the other side of the city, a red car was moving fast along the brown pavement. It turned out that it was driven by a boy who was very happy with his present and with the fact that this was his day. The mother was walking behind, watching her son carefully. However, she addressed the boy by name and told him that the toy looked quite expensive and asked if it was really bought by his dad. The boy replied that it was not really his dad, but his uncle from the neighboring apartment. The young lady froze in her tracks as she did not understand what was happening to her family. The young man said with a big smile that he really liked this black-haired man. After all, since his father had arrived, he no longer beat him and had even become a little kinder. At the same time, the blonde man was doing the job he was offered, namely carrying bags of cement with another man. The son continued to tell his mother that right now he felt very happy, and he stressed that he wanted it to be like this all the time. The lady approached her son and put her right hand on his shoulder and calmly replied that it was very good, that his dad had become kinder. At the workplace where the blonde man was brought by the inspector, he had to work until late in the evening, and he was told that everything was over for the day. The man sat down with his head down. He was very tired from what he had been doing all day. One of the big men, with his arms folded across his chest, shouted loudly that everyone had done a good job. He told the blonde that he had done much better than expected. He was a great help, and he said they were waiting for him tomorrow morning at eight o'clock. The blonde man was surprised and said, Oh yes, thank you. And the inspector's friend said that all these words were not exaggerated. He added that if you look at his physical strength, he does not stand out. But he quickly understands how and what to do. These words of the black-haired ministry employee were very amusing. So the director suggested that he was sure that the blonde man had at least two to three years of construction experience. The father was paid four ajumoshkas for the day's work. When he saw them, he became very happy and said that he had got here very well. Taking out another cigarette, the inspector smilingly told the blonde man that he had told him he would show him a very good place. The father replied that if they had paid him that much, he would still be working. The black-haired man went on to say that on the way home, his father could buy some chicken meat. He said that when he was a child, he was very happy when his father brought him chicken. The blonde man turned his head to the other man, smiled broadly, and took a cigarette out of the box the inspector had handed him. The neighbor then stressed that Dad was like a fish out of water. So he asked a logical question. Had the gentleman ever worked for an interior design company? The blonde man replied that he had worked for three years at a regular hard job. And when Min Seo came along, he was in the third grade of high school, and his mother was in the second. So the logical question is what he could have been doing then, other than hard physical work. The man closed his eyes and took one puff, and a picture of those times appeared in his mind. After all, 
Miso's mother, that stupid bitch, was going to tell him everything. But she didn't dare and kept her stomach covered with an elastic bandage. As a result, she lost track of time. In this stupid country, having a baby is considered an atrocious crime. So they were expelled from school, and even from their homes. And there was nothing left for them. Then the blonde told his girlfriend that he would take responsibility and everything would be fine. And with a sincere smile, he asked his companion to believe him, because at the time he thought he would look very cool when he said it. And it turned out that during the day he did hard physical work at various construction sites. And in the evening and at night, he delivered deliveries all over the city on his scooter. And today, he realized once again that combining the two jobs back then was just too much. However, one day, while delivering material for construction, his peers noticed him and began to talk among themselves about whether he was really Don Chawl. Laughing loudly, they said that it was definitely him, and a few months ago he was expelled from the school. As he was leaving, he assured them that he would be a good father. And finally, they sarcastically wished him a good future. Then the blonde man said to the inspector that if he could turn back the clock, even if he hadn't studied and couldn't go to university, even if he hadn't made one single mistake, he could have lived his youth like everyone else. Suddenly, after the last sentence, he received a strong blow right on the back of his head. It was so unexpected that his cigarette flew out of his mouth. The inspector stepped forward a few steps and said that a parent should never say the word mistake in front of a child. After all, it will remain in his heart for life. Turning his head back a little, he added that from the parent's point of view, a child can be a mistake. And from the child's point of view, parents are fate. Because no matter how hard life is, you can't blame children for it. Dad looked at his new neighbor from under his breath. And after a second, he said that he knew that in the eyes of the black-haired gentleman, he looked like a freak who treated his son terribly. But he still loves his family very much. He said these words so sincerely. At this time, in the apartment where the blonde man lived, a red car was lying in the garbage can, and someone was thinking, why do I still care about it? The white toy was beaten up, and the phrase, there is a reason for everything, came to mind. After such a heart-to-heart -heart conversation, the men went to a cafe and sat on the summer terrace. The inspector took out a cigarette and said, any reasons? And clarified what he meant. The blonde man started to get nervous and turned his head to the right, hiding his gaze, and said, Oh, yes, nothing. The black-haired man saw this and said that he was doing the right thing by not telling, and after taking another drag, he stressed that in any case it would be some kind of nonsense that was not very important now. Having said that, he watched the reaction of the interlocutor. The father lowered his head a little and looked down at his neighbor, who was so dismissive of his story. This upset him a little, because he didn't know how to tell the story properly. So they went home after dinner. Neither of them said a word all the way home. The inspector went up the stairs first, followed by the blonde man with one hand in his shorts pocket. When they each reached their door, the black-haired gentleman turned his head to his father and asked him not to be late tomorrow, because when the president was in office, he was known as a demon mentor. Suddenly their attention was drawn to the crying of a child coming from the blonde man's apartment. They froze in their seats for a moment in surprise, because they did not yet understand what had happened. A second later, the father quickly opened the door to the apartment and ran inside, frightened, asking what had happened. Why was his son crying so loudly? At the same time, the mother knelt by the boy and tried to calm him down. However, it was not very successful because he continued to scream loudly and wipe away the tears that were running down his cheeks. The blonde man was already very angry that the woman could not tell him what had happened and explain why the child was crying so bitterly. The lady, in turn, was also frightened because she did not know how her husband might react to this. However, she summoned all her willpower and slowly began to tell him that when Minseo was driving the car, it crashed into one of the concrete walls that was in their way. The lady went on to explain that she had tried to calm him down, but it was useless. The boy was very upset and could not stop crying and feeling bad. After listening carefully, the father replied with a serious expression that there was no need to calm him down because it was his own fault for what had happened to his new toy. 
And finally, he added that this is why you need to beat your child. And the inspector was standing in the open front door, hearing his neighbor's conclusion. His eyes were filled with rage because he did not like it at all. However, a minute later, the father began to scratch his head, which he looked down at and calmly said that, to be serious, he called his son by name and asked him to stop crying. And he told him that he was now working, so he could buy him an even better car than he had. Then he showed him a transparent package and told him that he had brought him a chicken and he could sit down and have dinner. Wiping away his tears, the boy looked carefully at what his dad gave him. Then he gently took it in his hands and happily said, Wow, a chicken. This made the child very happy, as he had probably never received such a gift from his father. Watching this, the black-haired gentleman began to smile with satisfaction, because this was exactly the picture he wanted to see in this particular family. And he realized that he had done the right thing, that he had intervened and not left the boy. The woman approached the blonde man and asked him if it was true that he had found a job. The man confirmed and handed the white envelope to the lady and told her to take it. Meanwhile, the boy was enjoying his chicken. When the young lady opened the envelope, she asked him with wide open mouth and eyes whether he had earned this money in just one day. After counting it, it turned out to be 180,001. The man moved to the bedroom and began to take off his dirty clothes and told the lady that tomorrow he had a working day, so the child had to go back to kindergarten. A second later, he added that he hadn't worked like this for a long time, and now his whole body just hurts. The woman standing behind him admired her husband's naked body, and then the blonde man lay down on the bed to rest. He took out his smartphone and started watching the news. The lady stressed that everything was happening like in the good old days. For several minutes, she stood in one place and smiled happily at what was happening in her life at that moment. After all, she did not expect that everything could go so well. The next day, the boy was taken to kindergarten, where he actively played with his peers with a yellow excavator. But he was not suspended, as he had been a few weeks earlier. One of his friends said to him, Why does his digger sound like Skaska? It should be Kwa Kwa. Smiling broadly, the young man said, Really? The teacher who was watching from the outside was pleased that Min Seo had become much more open and could communicate so freely with the other children in the kindergarten. She wondered if it was thanks to that person from the education department. And she began to wonder what kind of method he used, because she needed to learn from him. Suddenly her thoughts were interrupted by a colleague who told her that a delivery of snacks had arrived. She asked if she could help carry it to the dining room. The woman replied that she would certainly help. The lady then started to walk towards the front door, and Min Seo said to his friend that he wanted to play with the police car, so he offered to switch. However, the boy in the green t-shirt said he didn't want to do it. He really liked the police car, so Min should continue playing with it. Seo explained that he had the same car at home and was bored with it, so he asked to play with the car at least once. Suddenly, his peer said that he had heard that his father was working on a construction site and he angrily said that the boy should drive an excavator for the rest of his life. The young man to whom this was addressed did not like it very much. At that moment, a teacher with a sweet smile was carrying a yellow box of sweets that had just been brought to the kindergarten for all the children. And what she saw in front of her surprised her. So she froze in her tracks and opened her mouth wide. One of the boys said, What did you say? It turned out that Min Seo had attacked his friend and having knocked him to the floor, sat on top of him, and began to slap his face angrily, saying, Ha! Here! Take this! The woman quickly threw the box aside and started moving towards the boys, loudly shouting the name of the young man who was sitting on top and hitting his opponent with the excavator. As she approached, she grabbed the angry parka in her arms and shouted that you can't do that. At that moment, the boy did not realize that someone was already pulling him away. And the victim who was wearing a light green t-shirt, was lying on the floor screaming loudly, crying and rubbing his face with his hands, trying to wipe away the tears that were rolling down fast. When the teacher took a closer look, she noticed that the boy who had been beaten had a wound on his forehead and blood was spreading around him. The child continued to scream loudly in pain. Minseo was still unable to control his emotions, 
the anger that filled his head and thoughts and forced him to do what he did. He stayed in the arms of the kindergarten worker for several seconds in this state. Naturally, after this incident, the mother was called to the facility and asked how she was raising her child. All the woman could do was to apologize with her head down. The victim's mother angrily said that this Ming would definitely become a criminal when he grew up and asked how a child could think of hitting with a toy instead of his hands. The teacher tried to calm her down by explaining that it was actually her fault because she hadn't looked closely enough. However, this did not stop the young lady, and she said that now she was angry that the boy's mother was very young. So it is logical to conclude why he was so ill-mannered. The next question followed. Is this child a foster child? The kindergarten worker said that the woman was crossing a line that should not be crossed, especially in front of children. After the argument, the lady returned home with her son when it was quite dark outside. She was holding the boy tightly by the left hand, and with her right hand, she was holding a small black handbag. Suddenly, they were called behind them by a teacher who was catching up to tell them something. However, the woman was already very upset by what had happened and could not get over the words she had heard in her direction. The preschool worker bent down and shouted that she was sincerely sorry. After all, it was precisely because she had failed to look after them properly. For a few minutes, the mother stopped and slowly turned her head to the teacher who was shouting loudly behind them. She couldn't just walk away when a person was addressing her. The teacher went on to say that it might sound very presumptuous and even a little rude. These words had already attracted the boy's attention, so he turned his gaze to the lady as well. And then the lady confidently and calmly said that children who experience domestic violence are much more likely to be aggressive towards their peers. Finally, the teacher asked her not to punish Mincio too much. The mother stood silently in her seat and listened carefully to all the words that the kindergarten worker said to her. Then she smiled sweetly and said that from now on, everything would be fine, because their father was kinder to them and no longer behaved the way he used to. The teacher bowed down again and thanked them for their understanding, and the mother and son continued to walk calmly along the sidewalk on their way home. After walking a few meters, the woman turned to the boy and asked him if it was true that his dad had become very kind lately. The boy listened to what his mother said, but a second later, a confused smile appeared on the lady's face and tears appeared in her eyes, because she had to listen to what he had to say today. The boy opened his eyes and mouth in surprise because he had not expected such a reaction from his mother. Then she asked him if that was why he had started to be capricious. At that time, in the house where the family lived in the neighboring apartment, the black-haired man was packing his belongings in paper boxes and talking on the phone, where someone asked when he was going to return. The gentleman calmly replied that he had one more week of leave left. The caller asked if it was true that he wanted to use two weeks. However, the gentleman decided to reassure him and said that he was actually returning to work tomorrow. The boss then informed him that he refused to extend his leave and that if he did not come to work, it would be considered absenteeism. This angered the inspector a little. He angrily asked what kind of hellish company was this. After all, even a state employee cannot use his own leave for any purpose. After this conversation, the black-haired man sat down by one of the walls of the room and slowly began to take out a cigarette from a red packet. Because such dialogues bring him to certain emotions that knock him out of his rut. And he said that there was no need to say goodbye. So he lifted the cigarette to his mouth along with the lighter and began to light it to calm himself down. And then it occurred to the inspector that if his neighbor realized that he had left, he might become an arsehole again. Suddenly his thoughts were interrupted by the phrase, Hey, bitch, which sounded very loud behind the wall. The next phrase was, I warned you I'd kill you if she did it again. The ministry employee listened very carefully and realized that something was going on. So he sat in his seat for a few minutes because he was shocked by what he had just heard. He wondered what he should do in this case. It turned out that the blonde man was just shouting furiously, That's right! You'll just die! You're going to die! After saying that, he raised his right leg high to kick him. It turns out that the man was shouting at his wife, who was on her knees and trying to cover her head to protect her from the blows of her raging partner. A second later, the father shouted that today their entire family would simply disappear. 
and to do this, they would all take certain pills and fall asleep forever. Hearing these words, the inspector quickly got to his feet and started walking towards his neighbor's apartment. He did not like what was happening there right now. A second later, he burst into the apartment and saw the following scene. A woman and a boy were lying unconscious on the floor, and the blonde man was looking at his neighbor in fright. The ministry employee stood there for several minutes and carefully examined everything around him in the apartment. He could see a large pool of blood near the woman. The boy was lying all wet, and there was quite a lot of water near him, and on his right side was a blue broken bowl. The boy showed no signs of life. The blonde man saw that the black-haired man was very angry and made his hands into fists, so the father asked for two minutes to explain everything properly. However, the inspector quickly approached the boy and asked his father if he had called an ambulance. The man was confused by this question and said, Ah. Then the father turned to his neighbor and asked him excitedly if the child was okay. The black-haired man began to gently check for signs of breathing in Mincio. Then he tilted his head to the boy's chest to make sure. A second later, he told his father that, fortunately for them, he was still breathing. This made the ministry employee very happy because he had already pictured the worst-case scenario in his mind. So he continued to listen to make sure he heard the boy's breathing. A second later, he took out his smartphone and started dialing an ambulance. At this time, the blonde man said that this had happened before and that the boy should soon come to himself. However, the inspector, sitting on the floor, decided to keep calling and told the dispatcher that there was an emergency patient at the address he had given. The blonde man quickly approached him and told him once again that his son would soon regain consciousness. The black-haired man said that the child's mother had been attacked and the young man had been drowned. That is why the two were unconscious. Then he waved away the hands of a neighbor who was standing behind him and asking for something. However, he said calmly that the father of this family posed a threat to their lives. He spoke the last phrase very confidently with a sideways glance and looked at the blonde man, who stood there in shock. After the conversation, the inspector got to his feet and punched the blonde man in the cheek. And it was so hard that he took a few steps back and landed on his bum against the wall. And he angrily said to his neighbor that he could understand that the gentleman was confused and therefore did not call an ambulance. At this point, my dad coughed up saliva because it got into his airways. Finally, he asked why he had prevented the ambulance from being called. The man asked with a very angry expression on his face, his eyes bulging. And he started to criticize my father with the facts that he was afraid that if they were sent to the hospital, the traces of violence would be revealed. He added that he was a father, and he did not know any boundaries. So I asked him how he came up with this idea. The father got to his feet cautiously and angrily shouted that it was the new neighbor who had caused all this. The black-haired man listened attentively to the accusations against him. Suddenly, the blonde man raised his right hand and waved it straight at the ministry employee, saying that he had done his best. He wanted to warn him against it. In the inspector's eyes, you could see a lot of anger, rage, and distrust towards the gentleman, who said that it was all because he had allowed it to happen. However, the blonde man did not manage to strike, as the black-haired gentleman was the first to do so, grabbing him by the face with one hand and quickly pushing him backwards. After a few steps, the gentleman pushed his opponent to the floor so that he was lying on his back with his face looking up. However, for a few minutes he kept holding his father's face to calm him down. After taking his limb away, the inspector stressed that until the very end, the father was looking for excuses where they simply could not be found. At this time, the man was lying motionless as he was laid down. The black-haired gentleman then grabbed his neighbor firmly by the neck with his left hand and made a fist with his right, ready to strike again, saying that he was a father whose father was very difficult to correct. The blonde man quickly raised his hands to his face and began to cover it, and you could see the intense fear in his eyes. Because of this, he shouted for the inspector to wait. And a second later, he said that it was not him who did it, but that girl. This surprised the bureau officer, as he had not expected to hear such an accusation, but he continued to squeeze his opponent by the throat, 
and the latter said that he had not touched the child. It was the young lady who tried to drown their son. The blonde realized that if he didn't tell everything now, it could end very badly for him. So he said that earlier, when the boy's internal organs had been ruptured, she had also been involved. The next fact was that the red radio-controlled car that the black-haired neighbor had given him a few days earlier had also been thrown into the trash by this woman. Then he turned his attention to his wife and finally said that it was all the fault of this bitch, who was lying on the floor a few meters away from him without showing any signs of life. And the father went on to say that his youth had been ruined by the child, but he was not the only one who thought so. One day, when he came home early from work, he saw a picture of his wife beating the boy. He stressed that there were indeed times when he could not contain his anger and took it out on Min Seo. On that occasion, the woman beat the young man, asking him why he didn't listen to his mother. It was then that the gentleman realized that her actions were out of line. She was very angry and emotional, and with that she attacked her own child, demanding some explanation. After the incident, the blonde man decided to talk to his wife seriously, but first he called her a bitch and then told her that Min's son had been diagnosed with a ruptured internal organ. However, the man could not contain his emotions and shouted with his mouth wide open that if she wanted to punish him, she should do it in moderation. And then he asked if she was planning to kill him outright. The lady listened attentively to all these words, leaning against one of the walls of their bedroom. The lady bowed her head down sadly, but cautiously looked up at the other person. After a second, she knelt down and calmly said that everything was really fine, because he would not die from this. This answer surprised her father, so he asked her again, saying, What? And he asked if she understood what she had just said. Suddenly, the lady began to gently place a strand of hair behind her left ear, asking him to look carefully there. He decided to look anyway, to understand what she was trying to tell him, and why it was necessary now, if there were more important things to be done immediately. As it turned out, there were several deep wound scars behind the ear under the hair. Showing them to her husband, the woman said that despite this she was still alive and well. She added that she was much gentler than her father. The blonde man went on to tell the inspector that his lady had told him that she had been abused by her own father as a child, and it was because of him that the two of them were kicked out of the house. After all, when his father-in-law found out about his daughter's pregnancy, he prepared two knives to kill them both on the same day. Then he thought back to the memories of the woman showing her childhood scars. After seeing this, he went to her, sat down on his knees and took her by the shoulders, and said that they could do this. He told her that in the future she should not raise her hand to the child, and if she was not satisfied with something, she should tell him. The woman listened attentively to her husband's proposal, looking him straight in the eye. Finally, the man said that he would punish Min Sung. He said all this with a very serious expression on his face, so that the lady understood that he was not joking. The blonde man told his black-haired neighbor that he simply had no choice. So when the boy ate and left a lot of crumbs around, the man kicked the tray angrily, calling his son a bastard and ordering him not to crumble like that anymore. The blonde man went on to say that there were days when he forced his son to keep his hands up while he played computer games. He said that if the young man lowered his hands before the end of the raid, he would simply die. The father explained that Minseo shouldn't make his mother angry and die at her hands. The boy was very upset and didn't understand why he was being treated like this, especially by his father. Finally, the young man added that this was the reason he was forced to punish his son himself. He thought it was the only right thing to do at the time. However, all these words did not convince the inspector, and he punched his neighbor again right in the nose so that drops of blood flew around, and he said angrily that the reason for beating the boy, he knew that it was some kind of nonsense but not so delusional. The blonde screamed loudly from the pain he was in. Then the black-haired gentleman went down to his father again and looked him intently in the eye, gritted his teeth and angrily asked him who was defending his family like that. 
While he was waiting for an answer, he grabbed his neighbor's white T-shirt with both hands and began to shake him, demanding an answer to his question, because he could no longer listen to this nonsense. When he didn't get it, the inspector leaned closer and said that the child was unconscious. So the logical question was, who the hell is the family? And in addition, he said that if the blonde man really cared about her, he wouldn't have done such a fucking thing, sacrificing his own son, making him go through such suffering. A second later, he added that he actually had an idea why the father had chosen this method. At this time, blood was spreading all over the man's face from his broken nose. The inspector said that the father was just beaten up. However, the man was lying on the floor with his mouth wide open and did not answer any of the questions asked. However, this did not stop the black-haired ministry employee from continuing to say that it was the easiest thing to do. The blonde man began to slowly roll his eyes upwards as if he was fainting. The neighbor stressed that it was certainly better to put pressure on a small and defenseless boy than to deal with a hysterical adult woman who could not control her emotions about her own child. Continuing to sit on top of the blonde man and holding his T-shirt, the black-haired man asked if he had spoken before, had he warned the gentleman. But what could happen? After all, parents raise a child the way they want, not education, but the development of a pet that disobeyed its owner and made a nuisance of itself where it shouldn't have. Then he slowly raised the head of the blonde man, who had already raised his head at the inspector, who told him that they had no right to raise their son in this way. And just at that moment, the ambulance workers burst into the apartment, who were frozen in their seats at the sight of the scene in the apartment. A second later, the men pulled themselves together and asked the inspector where their patient was, who urgently needed help. The ministry employee saw them and froze in a pose where he raised his right hand, which was made into a fist. He did not expect anyone to see him in this way. Of course, after this act, he ended up behind bars where he was sitting on the floor, cross-legged, and with his head bowed, thinking about what had happened today. He was very upset, so to come to his senses he closed his eyes and tried to think of something positive. But the thoughts of the boy did not give him any peace. Suddenly, the door to the cell opened and the minister of the Ministry of Education, where the inspector had been working for several years, slowly entered the cell with his hands behind his back. Seeing his employee behind bars, the older gentleman spoke to him with a serious expression, calling him a pathetic jerk who had put himself in this situation. However, the black-haired gentleman did not care what the boss said to him because he had more important things to do that were bothering him, and this one was just an empty space for him. At this time, the teacher in the hospital visited her pupil and read him a fairy tale she had brought with her. And then Hansel and Gretel came home, and he said, Children, please forgive your daddy. After that the family was reunited, and they lived together happily ever after. Suddenly the young boy asked his teacher when his mum and dad would come. This question made the woman freeze and think about her answer for a few seconds. The boy said with wide eyes that he had already recovered and could go home, but his parents had not yet taken him away. He could not understand why. The woman, having mastered her emotions, smiled sweetly, but her mind was raging with a lot of thoughts, and she could not collect and formulate a normal answer. Therefore, the teacher slowly leaned over to the child, putting her right hand on his head, and looking directly into his eyes, addressed him by his name, namely Minseo, and she carefully informed him that his mom and dad would not be coming anymore. The boy was very surprised by this news, and opened his sweet eyes wide waiting for the rest of the story. At this point, tears began to appear in the lady's eyes and she tried to hold them back and calmly said that they said they were not ready to raise Min Sung yet. On the day Min Seo's family was taken to the emergency room, doctors saw signs of violence on the boy's body and immediately informed the police. The young man's mother simply ignored any questions from investigators who arrived the very next morning and tried to find out everything in detail. However, the father testified, telling everything that happened to his son. During the interrogation, he sat on one of the benches in the corridor, and with his hands on his knees and his head down, he told everything guiltily. Therefore, the parents were arrested and charged with cruelty to their own child, and each of them was imprisoned in a detention center 
where they will await a court decision. The blonde man was, of course, very upset that this happened, because he thought he was doing everything right, and that his son would not suffer. But that's not how it turned out. When the inspector was finally released from custody, he and his boss returned to the Ministry of Education building, where they had a lot of unfinished work to do. They stopped right at the entrance, and the minister handed the black-haired gentleman a pack of cigarettes and called him a jerk, saying he could have one. After taking the first puff, he told his employee that he could consider himself lucky. At this time, the inspector put the cigarette in his mouth and listened attentively. However, the minister continued to say that the victim had agreed to resolve the situation quietly and without any conditions. The black-haired man listened and lit his cigar with a lighter. The men took a few puffs and stood calmly in front of the ministry. However, the minister turned his head to the side and asked whether the black-haired man was going to interfere in everything. He also warned that it looked like a few reporters had sniffed something, so the man should be on the lookout. After all, there are a lot of people who cut their teeth at the Education Bureau. The black-haired man listened attentively, and when the main gentleman finished, he said that it wouldn't be long anyway. The gray-haired gentleman turned his head to the other man with a surprised expression. The inspector turned his head to the right and said seriously that the minister himself had said that the Agency for the Protection of Rights and Education would not last very long. After all, if one case were to be made public, their department would suffer greatly and eventually be liquidated. However, he recalled that the gray-haired gentleman had told them not to worry and to do whatever they wanted. However, the chief interrupted him and said that it was not good to interfere in other people's personal lives and that he had crossed the line. The subordinate listened quite attentively. After a second, he said that in the past, if the offender didn't stop even after being given a chance, the case would still end in punishment. But this time, the offender was everything to the victim. Because when he heard the news, the boy was very upset and began to cry and scream loudly because he did not understand why it had happened. At that time, he was sitting on his bed in the ward, wiping his tears and telling his carer that he did not want to go. He asked where his mom and dad were. The inspector watched and covered his face with his hands because he could not stand it. It was very difficult for him to experience negative emotions together with the young man. He was very upset and cried bitterly for several hours. Two streams of tears ran down his face and quickly dripped onto his T-shirt. To six months later, the trial finally took place with the boy's parents present. And, of course, everyone testified to explain the situation in their family. And at the end of the trial, the defendant, Wan So Yan, was sentenced to one year and four months in prison. The woman listened attentively and did not show any emotion on her face. Defendant Ko Dong Chol was sentenced to six months' imprisonment and one year's probation. The man listened to his sentence with a sad expression. The judge also said that interim measures had been taken against the perpetrators of the child abuse. And after that, a hammer was heard. Quite a long period of time has passed. Winter had already come to the city, and at the orphanage children were playing outside in the snow and making snowmen. It was here that Min Seo was sent to live and study after the hospital. Here he found a few friends with whom he had a lot of fun in his free time. While the children were having fun on the playground, someone in a dark green jacket stood behind the fence and watched them closely, because it was important for him to know that everything was fine. After standing there for a few seconds, the unknown person noticed that the boy was smiling sincerely while building a snowman and was very happy with his current situation, because he had a friend next to him who was entertaining him. It turned out that a man with slightly dark hair was watching him. The gentleman raised his right hand up and gently pulled the black mask down. Suddenly the young man turned his head in the direction where the stranger was standing, and looked at him in surprise. However, there was too much distance between them to see who was standing there. When the man saw this, he quickly turned to his right and started walking away pretending that he had not been watching them. However, the boy continued to look after him. After all, this figure seemed very familiar to him. So he froze in place and tried to remember where he had seen it before with his mouth open. And then, a second later, he realized and ran to the gate, ran through it to the road and started shouting, Dad! after the gentleman. 
The man was quite surprised because he thought his son hadn't noticed him. The young man stood still and stretched his right hand forward and shouted again, Isn't that you, Dad? After that, he waited for at least some reaction from the passerby in the green long jacket. However, the gentleman did not stop and continued to move forward, ignoring all the words of the boy behind him. However, the boy did not give up and decided to run after him and shout, Dad! He really wanted this man to be him, because he had already missed him so much. The next phrase the boy shouted was that the man should not leave. And after he said that, he stepped carelessly on the snow and slipped and began to fall slowly. And he landed directly on the ground. The man, hearing the strange sound carefully and slowly, turned his head and looked back to see what had happened. The child raised his head and began to cry loudly because he had fallen. Because it was very painful. And because he could not catch up with the man he was running after. For a few seconds, the man stood there and thought about what he should do. Perhaps he should approach the young man and help him, or walk away, ignoring him. Nevertheless, the man could not resist and, frightened, quickly turned and went to his son, and helping him up, addressed him by the name of Go Minso, and calmly asked him if this place was better than home. After all, the boy had many friends and no cruel mum and dad around to punish him at any time. The gentleman continued to say that he had been treating his son badly all this time and asked him a clarifying question. Did the boy still want his father to take him home? The boy listened attentively and looked down at the ground. He was thinking carefully about what he had just heard, because it had to be a very balanced decision. Suddenly, tears began to roll down his face and he knelt down in front of the young man and told him that he had been a very bad dad. And now he has no right to even approach Min. The man said that if anyone saw them talking like this, the father would have to go to jail again, and it could be for several years. After saying that, the man raised his right hand and placed it on his head and began to slowly remove the hood of his dark green jacket. He said, So, when he becomes better and is allowed to raise the young man, he promised that he would come back for him to take him home so that they could live together. So they made an agreement with each other that they would see each other very soon, and sealed it by crossing their little fingers. When the boy heard this, he was very happy, and began to smile sincerely, and he was ready to wait as long as it took. The inspector was watching the meeting from the corner of the building, because he could not let go of the situation. It was very important to him that the rescued young man was doing well. The inspector was very satisfied with the picture he saw because he realized that this former blonde man loved his little boy very much, so he would do everything to get him back. The same day in the evening, events are already unfolding in the apartment block at number 101, where a mother knocks on her son's bathroom and says that he has been here for quite a while, so maybe he should get out and go to dinner. Her husband approached the woman and asked if the boy was still taking a bath. It had been an unusually long time, so the father decided it was time to open the door with a lockpick himself. And what they saw when they entered the bathroom was very surprising. It turned out that the son had been sitting in the shower for several minutes without consciousness, and that is why he did not say a word when his parents, who were in the corridor, addressed him. There was a lot of blood around the boy, and the mother decided to call an ambulance immediately. And now let's go back a few weeks to find out the reason for this. So the guy was waiting for his turn in the waiting room, sitting on a chair in front of the TV which was switched off. This long wait made him very nervous, so he started to bang his hands on his knees which he had made into fists trying to calm down. However, he was not very good at it, as beads of sweat began to appear on his face because he could not stop worrying about the bad developments that would happen in a few minutes. Suddenly, a woman entered the office with a yellow folder in her hand and addressed the young man by the name of Lee Sang-wook and told him that he should follow her. After walking a few meters down a long corridor, they stopped, and the lady smilingly pointed to a door on the left side and told him to go through it. The sad-looking young man followed the teacher's instructions, way <laughs> carefully and slowly entered the room he was told to go into for further action. It turned out that it was a committee that was engaged in the distribution of tools to counteract school violence. There were nine people sitting at tables around the perimeter of the room who immediately turned their gazes as soon as the student entered. A few days before this meeting in the classroom where this teenager was studying, 
two children had started a rock, paper, scissors argument. After all, this is the fairest game in the world, and the rules were quite simple. Whoever loses the game gets a punch in the face. And, of course, Lee lost the first round and received a very hard slap from his opponent. Afterwards, he reached out to the victim again and forced him to play another round of rock, paper, scissors. And the victim had no other choice, so he had to play and follow the above rules. As you might have guessed, the dark-haired man lost and again received another hard palm strike on his right cheek. It was so hard that saliva flew out of his mouth. After that, he was forced to continue playing. So he didn't resist too much, but tried to guess what his opponent would do next so that he could finally win. And he lost again. And he looked at his right hand in fright, which he had made the wrong sign to win and not get another blow which he was already afraid of. That's why sweat began to appear on his face, and his opponent, who stood opposite him, emphasized that everyone can lose and win in rock-paper-scissors. And as soon as he finished this phrase, a fist flew into the left cheek of the dark-haired teenager, which struck very hard and caused quite a lot of pain. He was unable to stay on his feet and took a few steps backwards to do some back exercises. A group of his peers were watching, and they were nearby and did not try to help. And then the young man explained that there was no such thing as fair play between him and Hong Sung Hak. So the opponent said with a sly smile that he was in a bad mood, and that his mood had worsened because of the loss. However, this game was not fair not only for him, but also for several other classmates who came across this impudent young man with light pink hair. One day he slowly approached a boy sitting at his desk playing his favorite game on his smartphone. Seeing this, the attacker took him away, not allowing him to reach the end of the level. As he passed by his classmate, the brazen man began to smile broadly, telling the victim that he would return the phone to him in about thirty years. The owner did not like this answer very much. However, seeing this situation, another high school student with a short haircut turned to the attacker named Hong Shong Hak. The latter only turned his head to the right, as he did not expect anyone to call him. The teenager also asked the young man with pink hair why he was not bothering his classmates. The dark-haired boy also looked bulky. When he received no answer, the boy continued to emphasize that they were not in high school. So a logical question arose. Wasn't he tired of humiliating others? This made the dark-haired man very angry, and called the impudent boy over. However, it was a fact that no one could resist this Sun Hawk. That's why his friend was already standing behind the person he was talking to with a chair raised above his head. And of course, a second later, a punch was delivered, forcing the healthy young man to fall to the floor holding his head. A young man with pink hair called him a fool and asked him what he was saying. When he didn't get a single answer, the boss ordered everyone to beat him. So they didn't hesitate and started kicking him hard all over his body. It turns out that Kim Wanzon, Moon Taisu, and Han Sang-gil were strengthening the position of their leader, whose name was Sun Hak. So sometimes they did some work for him. But the others were no better, because the torment he was forced to endure at school continued afterwards. One evening, when the gang and their girlfriends gathered in the gazebo, the victims were used as chairs for the young ladies. And when Sang Hak was resting after school, they had to work very hard. A blonde girl sitting on top of a boy with dark hair said that she was very comfortable and soft. However, after a few minutes she asked if he was a massage chair, and because he started shaking a lot, and the thought flashed through the boy's mind that their abuser always took them with him, especially when he was with girls. So it turns out that these peers were living toys. The young ladies were even allowed to beat the boys, and they did it with great pleasure. Therefore, it can be assumed that he went through all the humiliations that he cannot even talk about. Not even to the anti-violence committee at school because he was very ashamed to talk about it, and it was painful to remember. However, the hardest thing for him was, one day, during a break between classes, the young man was sitting at his desk, and a panda of bullies stood next to him and discussed something. The guy with light pink hair said that he had met Chan yesterday. Hearing this, his friends asked how it happened and started laughing out loud. Suddenly, he told them what they had been doing, and everyone started laughing again. The dark-haired teenager, holding his backpack, just kept quiet so as not to draw attention to himself. 
However, this did not save him, because the offender turned to him and put his right hand on the table where the young man was sitting, smiled sarcastically, and asked if he was telling the truth. And he made the sad teenager repeat everything he had just heard. The boy was a little confused by this task, so he sat silently for a few minutes, not sure if he was supposed to do it. The rebel made a very scary expression on his face, with his eyes wide open and his mouth open very wide, and laughing loudly, he said, Jong Suk, and then it became clear that the name Jong Suk was his mother's name. The victim began to sweat on his face because he was so worried. Now we are back in the room where the meeting on child protection in schools was held, and the head of the meeting, smiling sweetly, addressed the young man who came to them, saying his name. And at that moment the teenager decided to die. He began to think about whether he should tell the school about it. But even if someone is stabbed at school, the administration will try to hide what happened. However, last year the law on the protection of rights in all institutions where children study was revised, and the internal anti-bullying committee was cancelled, and instead, a committee to combat school violence was created, which was supervised by the top and included even lawyers. The black-haired teenager was very happy with this news. And it turns out that all the cases are not being considered in schools, so everything could go quite well. When the young man came here, he was looking through the case report. It said that the instigator, Hong Xiong Hak, had been suspended for five days and the others had to make a written apology and undergo special training. These were the disciplinary standards for the new anti-violence committee. And it turns out that the committee rated Hong Sung Hak's bullying at 10 to 12 points out of a possible 20. While the young man with pink hair stood behind him, his comrades, laughing loudly, approached someone and, holding out their hands, said that they were sorry and that they were sorry. At this time, the boss turned his head back a little and began to smile slyly. After all, he was not at all upset by the punishment he was facing. The young man froze in his tracks because he had not expected to receive such an assessment of his suffering, which he had described in great detail to the people who were considering the case. When he returned home, the teenager lay down on his bed and wondered why Hong Xiong Hak, because it seemed to him that there were a lot of victims like him. Because for adults, it was just a 60-point problem, and he decided to contribute to the management before he died. But as a result, he was left alone with those points. The next morning, the boy was already lying in the hospital on a white bed, and next to him stood his frightened and excited mother, who was holding her son and calling his name. Then she picked him up and held him close to her, crying and asking why he did it. What was the reason? After all, she and his father could not understand what could have prompted him to do such a thing. The woman was crying very bitterly and said through her tears that if he was having a hard time, he could always turn to them and tell them everything, and they would try to help him with everything. However, the teenager looked up at the ceiling with a blank stare and thought that it turned out that the success rate of suicide by cutting the wrist was not very high, so he did not succeed. He then lay back down on the bed, and his mother continued to hug him tightly. However, even at that moment, he could not think of a way to die that he wanted to implement. After a few hours of thinking, the young man sat up and asked his mother where his phone was, because he really needed it now. After handing the smartphone to her son, the woman turned to the door and said that she would go and tell the doctor that the young man had woken up. However, he didn't pay attention to her, because he was already searching for something. It turned out that he had entered the phrase ways to die in the search bar and started looking through the tabs to find one he liked. Suddenly he stopped at one of them. What he had just read surprised him because he opened his round eyes wide. Then he quickly raised his head and turned his gaze to his mother, who had not yet come out and addressed her. The woman heard this and turned her head to her son. She noticed that tears began to appear in his eyes, which quickly flowed down his shirt. The young man sadly said that he would never do that again. Still holding his smartphone in both hands, the teenager added sobbingly that he did not need to die now. What he saw on the internet convinced him not to. It turned out that a photo of a young man with light pink hair was posted in their class chat room, standing next to a red-haired woman from the Ministry of Education. In the photo, the teenager's nose was broken and blood was flowing all over his face. 
and the woman was standing opposite him. The caption under the photo read, The Education Bureau has come to take Hong Xiong Hak's soul. At this time, the lady from the ministry was looking the student straight in the eye and was very angry about what she had heard and what this boy was doing to his peers. It all started in the morning when the boy came to school, where the class teacher told him that his suspension had ended today. He asked him if he had thought about his behavior. He handed the young man a white sheet of paper and told him that this was a guide for the special education class. The man said this with a very angry expression on his face because this teenager had already pissed him off with his actions. So he stressed that if the boy continued in the same way and was called again, he would not get another chance. The boy with pink hair began to read everything carefully. A few minutes later, trying to smile sincerely, he told the class teacher not to worry about it. However, he had completely opposite thoughts in his head, and as soon as he returned to the classroom, he went back to his old routine and attacked his regular victims, forcing them to kneel and put their heads down. However, this was not his direct order, but was carried out instead by his three comrades, who constantly followed his lead and supported all his terrible ideas. Meanwhile, he stood a few meters away and smiled with a big smile, because what he saw in front of him was very pleasing to him. He was also smoking a cigarette without worrying that someone might see him. At the same time, in the apartment where the man lived with his young son, whom he had finally taken from the orphanage, the father was running after his son, swinging an object at him. And the inspector, already in his old apartment, was sitting at his red laptop and opening a bottle of soda talking to his colleague on his smartphone about this particular father. The lady said that she had sent some important questions by email. She went on to apologize for bothering him during his holiday. But the lady explained that she couldn't choose, so he had to help her. It turned out that the caller was a red-haired lady who, having studied each case in detail, could not decide where to go first, because, in her opinion, she needed to visit everyone at once. The woman was in despair because she could not understand what was wrong with this country, because the herd was not standing next to these children. Therefore, the lady began to shout loudly at the whole room. After a few minutes of this outburst of emotion, the lady calmly picked up her smartphone, put it to her ear, and told her colleague that the decision was his. She waited for the gentleman to respond. The man said in a calm tone that officially she was still on leave from military affairs, but, as the official supervisor of the Ministry for the Protection of Rights in Education, she should be able to choose her own case. He then took out a cigarette and lit it with a lighter, adding that he could only give one piece of advice, and saying that their ministry did not just help students and teachers who were being bullied. However, she must remember that no matter how powerful the authorities are, the only watchdogs are the two of them. So rescue is only a small part of the iceberg. After taking one puff, he said that their work goes beyond simply helping victims. The real goal of the Ministry for the Protection of Rights in Education is to inform people about the problem. Finally, the man told her to think about what he had said and finally make her choice. The young lady listened carefully to all the instructions from her colleague. After hanging up the phone, the young lady put her head on the back of her desk chair and, looking at the snow-white ceiling, began to think about everything and go over all the cases she had been considering today. And suddenly she didn't notice how she started to say out loud the question, Do you want to give people an idea of what the problem is? After a few minutes, the lady realized that this was a very difficult job and it was not so good for her. She added, Where did this damn school violence come from, and why does it happen so often? For half a day, the woman was still trying to gather her thoughts to make the right decision. At that time, another fight was already taking place in the school, where one of the teenagers was being held by someone's hand very tightly around the neck, so much so that the victim was blushing because he was also short of breath. It turned out that the same naughty man with pink hair was doing this, and his friends were filming it on their smartphones and tracking how much time had passed. And then, after a few seconds, the victim began to roll her eyes upwards, because there was less and less air, and he couldn't breathe properly. So he started to lose consciousness, 
The attacker asked his friends if this guy could break the barrier again in one minute. To see if he could, he continued to hold his victim by the neck. However, only 51 seconds passed and the young man lost consciousness, so the attacker let him go, and he fell face first to the ground. The bullies standing around him raised their hands in joy. Then the guy with pink hair took out a cigarette and put it in his mouth, and started fixing his hair with his other hand, which had become disheveled during the fight. He told his friends that he hadn't had anything to do for a week, so he was pumped up a bit. Suddenly a lady came out of the corner of her eye, put her hands to her sides, and said to Hong Sung Hak that he hadn't improved at all. The boys froze in their seats because they didn't expect anyone to see them here. Then the blonde raised her right hand up and pointed her index finger at the main one, emphasizing that the asphyxiation games could not go on without her. She called him an arsehole and asked him how he could do that. A few minutes later, the young lady was already sitting on top of the victim and smiling sweetly. She turned to the boss and asked him how he could do this to her precious sofa, because it was so soft. The guy with pink hair called his girlfriend a crazy bitch. While smoking an e-cigarette, the young lady asked if he had someone behind him. She emphasized that Sang Wook had reported the guy, but he had only been suspended for five days. In her opinion... He should have been expelled from the school altogether. The teenager replied by saying that he didn't know what she was talking about because no one was behind him. His father works for a small company. He explained that he had just come to a meeting of a committee that fights violence at school. He took hold of his balls and... And then he began not only to tell, but to demonstrate how he did it. And he went on to say that he admitted his guilt and promised that he would never do it again and would reflect on his behavior. His comrades, who had been watching all the actions of the leader, began to laugh out loud. The teenager took a cigarette out of his mouth and said that as a result of the showdown, the attacker admitted that he had used physical violence at school, which had caused physical and mental harm to the victim. The school's anti-violence committee considered the case to be very serious and handed the bastard a harsh punishment of five days' suspension. After listening carefully, the girl began to laugh out loud and asked a clarifying question. Was it exactly as her friend had just told her? She repeated his words. A serious punishment is a five-day suspension, and started laughing again. The boss asked why she was laughing because it was really serious. The young lady mockingly said again, The student was banned from classes for a week, and a second later said she was going to die of laughter. At this time, the young man she was sitting on top of had tears in his eyes. After school, the high school students gathered in the corridor and happily said that Seung Hak's punishment was over, so they urgently needed to celebrate. A blonde girl with a joyful expression on her face addressed the head teacher by name and asked where they would go, and the other girl asked if they were going to coin Norbin first and then to the club. After listening to everything, the teenager began to smile broadly and said that first they needed to invite a special guest. Everyone froze in their tracks, not knowing who he was referring to. Then the young man raised his head and shouted, Uki, 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 San Uki, to the whole corridor, and explained that when he closed his eyes, he saw him in his dreams. Everyone in the room started laughing out loud at what they had just heard, because it didn't sound like a real story, but more like the boss was just trying to make them laugh. But suddenly their conversation was interrupted by the male voice of the class teacher, who stood a few meters away, and angrily turned to the boy with pink hair, asking if he had read the assignment he had received this morning. He added that the teenager was scheduled for special tuition after school today. The gentleman said that the teacher in charge was waiting for him at the stadium, so he should go immediately, and if he didn't go, he would be fined three million won. After these warnings, the young man had no choice but to go to the stadium, where he was already waiting for the teacher to correct his terrible behavior. Suddenly, one of his friends said that he had already written an explanation that he was sorry and had thought about his behavior. So why was he being sent to another special training session? The teenager did not come to the first lesson alone, but with his male friends who walked behind him. The main one walked very confidently because he did not know what awaited him today. A few meters away, an unknown person said that it was very nice to meet him, 
and the teenager was very surprised that it was a woman's voice because he expected to see a man. Then the red-haired woman turned sharply to face the students and said with a mysterious look that she was responsible for special education. She said her name was Im Han Lim, and she said that the main purpose of this training was to prevent the recurrence of incidents of school violence and to allow them to feel what the victim feels. Bad behavior during the training would prolong the program for them, so they should follow all the orders she would give them. The woman said all this with a serious expression on her face. The head began to smile slyly, because he thought that everything would go smoothly and calmly, and that there was no need to expect any trash. So he even allowed himself to relax for a minute. And having gathered the courage, he began to move towards the woman, hiding his hands in his trouser pockets and addressing her. He said that she must have misunderstood everything. And bending down, he added that he wanted to spend more time with someone like her. He then mockingly emphasized that he had just expressed a bad attitude. The inspector certainly didn't like this and looked at the teenager with a piercing look, wondering what she should do first to put this impudent boy in his place. So she slowly stretched out her right hand, which was closed in a fist towards the young man. The boy opened his eyes wide because he did not understand why she had just done this. Smiling sweetly, the lady said that since it was the first day and the first lesson, they could play a game of rock, scissors, and paper. However, she already had a plan in mind. And the teenager did not understand any bad connotation here. So he looked up at the teacher and began to smile to himself because it was his favorite game ever. A few seconds later, the woman showed him the scissors and the boy the stone, and it turns out that he won. However, the lady did not think twice about hitting the student on the arm with a stick she held in her other hand. The teenager, holding the place of the blow, shouted loudly that he had won. And that's why he should have some kind of prize, and it could be a phone number or its parameters. Hearing this, the lady began to smile slyly, because she would not tell him either. After the first lesson, the inspector called a colleague who was sitting at a table on the floor having dinner. He asked her why she had chosen this particular case. The red-haired woman replied that she had been thinking about it all day, and it was similar to stealing a bicycle. The black-haired man was surprised to hear this because he did not understand what a bicycle had to do with it. So the lady continued to tell him that East Korea is very safe, that no one would steal a bag even if it was left on the street. However, bicycle thefts are very common, or people have a misconception about bike theft, namely the idea that this will not cause many problems. At this, the woman began to smile strangely, and then the inspector emphasized that the same thing happens with school violence. And in my mind's eye, I remember the day she punched an impudent teenager in the face. When her friends saw the main rebel, they froze in their seats from surprise and fear for themselves. No one could just beat their leader like that. The students who were walking through the schoolyard at the time also stopped in surprise, because they had never seen anything like this since they had been studying at the school. From such a strong blow, the boy fell on his bum and tilted his head down and asked what the hell had just happened. The teacher replied, If you lose, you get a slap. If you win you get a fist. And at the end, she asked if she had said it right. Having received no response, she said that this was a special training and that lesson number one was now taking place. So the lady advised the young man to think about his actions, and in his mind, he had a plan to first break the idea that school violence can easily get away with it. Then the inspector approached the student, grabbed him by the neck and began to press harder, asking him if the next step was to play asphyxiation. At this time, the young man's entire face was smeared with blood coming from his nose, and thoughts flashed through his mind. Who is this stupid bitch? And why did she attack him so suddenly? Watching this showdown, students from other classes started filming the main bully of the school on their smartphones. Suddenly, one asked if the lady was from the Department for the Protection of Educational Rights. The other replied that she was, and that her name was Im Han Lim. The classmate said that he always knew that one day they would come for this bastard. The young man with pink hair heard that this young lady was from the Education Rights Protection Unit, and he started to think, since when do women work in this department? 
The woman heard this and emphasized to herself that this student did not follow the news at all. The next phrases that came out of the young man's mouth were school violence. The Ministry of Education Department. That bastard Lee Sa Wook. Did he do it again? After thinking this, the boy raised his right hand up and placed it on the woman's hand and began to squeeze it tightly. The lady looked at the young man's limb in surprise. A second later, she asked him how he got such a strong grip. She waited to hear what the teenager, whom she continued to hold by the neck, would say. And at that moment, the thought flashed through her mind how poor Ook was, how he could endure all the abuse. And then the guy said that he wouldn't have said that if he had been a man with long, dark hair. And finally, he stressed that he was being held down by a very weak bitch. You could see a lot of anger in his eyes, because he was tired of being held back. The young lady continued to hold the student by the neck, not allowing him to get free. And in my head, I had a lot of thoughts about this school freak who was making life difficult for many people in this school. They had been sitting in this position for quite some time, and the young man had enough time to think it over and come to a certain logical conclusion. Namely, that he could have freed himself a long time ago if he wanted to, but he didn't for some reason. The teenager continued to hold his attacker's hands. Then the teenager began to think about why it looked so good. Because he was enjoying it, not being uncomfortable, as the employee of the Ministry of Education thought. A few minutes later, the young man simply fainted. So the red-haired lady put him down on the ground, and she sat down and rubbed her arm because she had to use a lot of her strength. At first she was a little scared and surprised by what she had done, but then she started to feel funny. She saw that the student was fine and had nothing to worry about. The guy continued to lie on the ground, lying on his right side, and had a satisfied smile on his face that scared his friends, who came closer to watch. Leaning low to him, the teenagers took turns shouting loudly at him to get to his feet quickly. It took him a few minutes to open his eyes. However, he was unable to get up on his own. So he was sent to the hospital, where, lying on a snow-white bed, he opened his mouth wide and began to cough loudly for the whole ward. When he saw his friends, he asked them what was wrong with their faces, laughing. One of them replied that while the boss was unconscious, she had to play rock, paper, scissors. They stressed that they thought they would also lose consciousness, because the woman was hitting them very hard. The dark-haired man asked how such a frail woman could have such strong arms. The blonde man said that he won with his fist, and when she hit him, he thought he was going to die. The blonde boy added that it was a shame that it happened at the stadium in front of everyone. Other students took a lot of photos. The dark-haired one said that he heard a rumor that the lady was a special forces officer, and the blonde one asked what they should do now because they were in a complete mess. The guy with the pink hair interrupted the conversation and called his comrades idiots, saying that they just needed to get rid of her, and that would be the end of it. Rubbing his bruised nose, the guy wiped off some blood that had appeared and added some from a spray bottle, or some other bullshit either way. She's just a bitch. After the hospital stay, the teenagers returned home and said that if the boss really liked being strangled, he was just a pervert. The guy with pink hair replied that they should try it too, at least once because it was a thrill they would never forget. He thought that maybe he had opened the door to a new world. At the same time, the blonde fellow was looking at something on his smartphone and asked if the others had seen what those bastards from their school had done. When the headmaster picked up the phone, he saw that a photo of a young man with pink hair was posted in the second grade group chat, and an inspector was standing opposite him and underneath it were several messages that read, Hey, the education department is here to get Hong Sung Hak. I always knew that psycho jerk would end up like this. Justice is coming. The dark-haired man approached the blonde and asked if these bastards knew that they were also in this group. To this, the fellow only replied that he felt like shit right now. The main man read the following messages that appeared, namely, Suk Wook, you're our savior. Suk Wook, well done. That's right, no more suffering. You did a great job. He started smiling, saying that everyone was so happy. And since they were so happy, Sang Wook, who had come across them from the Education Rights Protection Department, must be running around the apartment naked with joy, thinking he had managed to beat them. 
After listening carefully, the friends began to look at each other because they did not understand why this reaction was happening and what they should expect next. The dark-haired one added that, if you think about it, it's kind of fucked up. Then the main one raised his head and looked up and ominously said that he would not get away with it because he couldn't let what they did to him and his friends happen because of this bastard. At that time, a white and green taxi was driving along the city's highway. Inside sat a young man who wanted to commit suicide, and his mother, who asked him if he needed to stay in hospital for a few more days. The teenager smilingly replied that he was feeling very well, and there was no need for that. He added that he had nothing to worry about now. He was very happy about this for several days, because he liked the news he read in the class chat very much. He turned his head and added that he would go to his school tomorrow and was looking forward to it. The mother looked at her son and smiled sweetly because it made her very happy. A few minutes later, they drove into the street where their house was located, and after driving a few meters, the car stopped at the sidewalk right in front of the front door. The mother turned in the other direction and smilingly told her son that she was going shopping so he would go home alone. The young man turned to the door after hearing everything, and entering the entrance, he went to the lift to go up to the floor he needed. He took out his phone to see if there was any more news at school. The chat room, he read several messages. Sang Wook, thank you, and I'm sorry. You gave me courage, but I... The teenager was smiling happily as he read them. Suddenly, he looked up and saw his reflection in the doorway and said that Sung Jun had also been through a lot during this time, so it was over now. He added that from now on, she should go to school with a smile, when the lift doors opened on the right floor. The boy saw that his offenders were waiting for him, and it scared him quite a bit, because he did not expect to see them here after what had happened to them. That's why his eyes got very big, and sweat appeared on his face from excitement. A second later, the young man was grabbed by the neck by the strong arm of one of his classmates, and pushed against the wall. The teenager did not know that this was how it would start, because he thought they would say something first. Then everyone carefully entered the lift, and the blonde boy began to press the button so that the doors closed behind them, and no one saw them, because after that, they might get into trouble again. The young man with pink hair sat down, and with a cigarette in his mouth, sneeringly took the phone from his victim, and started to watch what he had recently watched. He started reading the message aloud. Sung Jun, you've been through a lot too. From now on, we'll go to school with a smile. The guy read it and grimaced. Then he started laughing out loud, telling everyone present to look at this freak. And he asked if he and this pig were preparing to make a happy ending film or what. After that, the guy got to his feet and put his hands in his pockets with a serious expression and a menacing voice saying, Doesn't this young man understand anything yet? And leaning closer, he whispered that the school violence committee, the police or the Ministry of Education, did not care about expulsion or even possible imprisonment. But the toy decided to stab its owner in the back, and he stressed that he could not let it go. He said these words with a very scary expression on his face. Then a signal sounded that they had already arrived on the first floor, and the doors began to open slowly. At that moment, the leader asked the victim what kind of bandage he was wearing on his wrist. And when he didn't get an answer, he asked if it was some kind of new fashion he hadn't heard of yet. The teenager looked frightened at the woman standing behind the offender. It turned out that she was an employee of the Ministry of Education. And what she saw in front of her surprised her, because she did not think that these insolents would come to this boy's house. The guys who turned their heads towards the exit screamed out loud in fright. Ah! After all, they didn't like her as much after they played the game with her. The woman threw away the white sheet with the text victim's address on it and started moving quickly towards the students to deal with them now. She approached the main one from the very beginning and kicked him right in the ribs, and he bent down and let the cigarette out of his mouth and took his hands out of his pockets. Then he started screaming very loudly to the whole staircase because it caused him a lot of pain. He just couldn't stop himself. However, the inspector was not deterred, and looking at him with an evil look, she pressed button 11 and the lift would take them to the top floor. And when the lift started moving, the young lady turned to the teenager with pink hair and said that for some reason she thought he would try to take revenge, so she came here to warn him. 
but she could not even imagine that he would decide to do it on the first day. At this, the ministry employee looked even worse. Finally, she asked him if he had decided to take her by surprise like that. The chief looked at the woman who was addressing him with a sarcastic tone, but then the inspector could not restrain herself and control her emotions, so she attacked the young man. Again, she grabbed him tightly by the neck with both hands and shouted that he was just an idiot. While the woman was beating the guy, he said that the answer was number three, and this made her stop because she did not understand what he was saying. Then the teenager showed his tongue to the woman with a sneering smile, and a second later licked her hand, saying it was just boring. This act threw the lady out of her rut because she was not expecting this, so for a few seconds she froze in place without even blinking. And as soon as she realized what she was going to do next, she began to smile mysteriously and asked, Boring? Receiving no answer, the inspector asked him again what he had just said and whether he was really bored. Then the guy took the lady's hand and asked his own question, which clarified whether she didn't like that answer. And a second later he added that he was really bored, so he answered that way. At the same time, he continued to hold the wrist of the woman standing opposite him. Then turning to her again, he said that if she thought otherwise, she could try to free her hand now. After that, he leaned closer to the inspector and, with an angry expression, called her a bitch and told her to stay out of their business. The lady was very amused by this expression, because she had seen much worse in her life, so she didn't think twice about saying that she often thinks about her work, and no matter how much of a jerk a child is, he is still a child and to what extent he can interfere, so far he can go. Then she looked up at the student and asked him a question that he wouldn't have to think about it, would he? Then the lift signal sounded, but they had arrived on the eleventh floor, and the lady stepped out through the open door and ordered everyone to follow her to the roof. When they all got to the roof, the one with the pink hair said that she told them to follow her. What a brutal punishment. He shouted loudly and asked if she was a gangster or just an officer. The victim, who was standing behind everyone, wondered if he should be there. He suggested that it would be better to wrap it up a little faster because he wanted to go home to watch a basketball video and then go to bed. The red-haired girl opened her legs wide and said seriously that the second lesson of the special training would begin from now on. The others present were surprised to hear that at such a time. The lady continued seriously that during the first lesson, they had experienced only a hundredth of what they had done in this school. Therefore, during the second session, they should focus on the victim and stand in a circle in front of him or her and apologize. Everyone immediately turned their heads back to where the young man was standing. A second later, the inspector added that they had to stand there until Sang Wook forgave them. The injured boy did not like this. As everyone stared at the teenager, the woman said that if he didn't forgive them, they would have to stand there all night. Suddenly, the head turned his head to the lady and said that there was no need for that because they had already made up. The lady asked in surprise, What? When? Then he turned to the victim and began to move slowly, saying that it seems that there was a small misunderstanding because they had come here not for revenge, but to make peace. When he got very close, the classmate put his hand on his shoulder and looked intently into his eyes and asked him if he was right. And with a terrible expression on his face, he added that they had already made up, hadn't they? And he said he forgave them, hadn't he? At that moment, the victim looked at her abuser carefully and thought that even with the arrival of the man from the Ministry of Education, Hong Sung Hak had not changed. And as Seung Hak said, it was because they sent this young lady who, in his opinion, was not doing a good job. The students didn't take her seriously, so he wondered why he had to live and suffer like this for the rest of his life. The red-haired girl did not really believe the words of the main rebel. The boy, who was constantly humiliated by this gang, stood silently, gritting his teeth, because he really didn't like it and was nervous. But he realized that if he continued to do nothing and endure it, nothing would change. And so he shouted loudly that he had never forgiven these insolent people. And then he turned his gaze to his offender and looked him straight in the eye and asked if he would forgive him if he were in his place. This made the young man with pink hair think 
But then he pulled his right hand back, made a fist, and said angrily, Oh yeah, then don't bother, you bastard. Wook began to cover his face with his hands to soften the blow. However, the boss didn't manage to do it, because someone's delicate foot flew right by his right ear. It turned out that it was the foot of an inspector who had approached them very quietly. And when the bully student looked at her, she said that it was time to kneel down, because her patience was running out. The boy turned his head to her smiling slyly, and mysteriously said that he would give in and call her a bitch. And striking directly at the woman's side, he added, Who should kneel to her? It happened very suddenly and unexpectedly. The lady was knocked back a few meters, but still managed to stay on her feet because she knew how to group herself properly, so as not to fall. This one really made her angry, and the place where the teenager's hand touched her started to turn red. The lady squinted her eyes and looked angrily at her attacker. The young man looked at her and said that she was too light to fly away like that. Finally, he asked her if she thought he wasn't going to hit her, but was just teasing her. Then he put his left hand to the button on his shirt and said that he had heard rumors that she was from the special forces. Maybe others would fall for it. And after taking off his top layer of clothing, he threw it on the ground and mockingly said that her physical features were still not like a girl's. This was said on purpose to bring the young lady to certain emotions. Then the teenager put his right hand under his white t-shirt and slowly licked his lips and added that, in fact, sport is a hobby. And he can do a lot of different exercises one after the other. A second later, he added that the lady had probably guessed that he had allowed himself to hit for a reason. And if she needed to, she could hit him. And he said with satisfaction that he could take a fist from a bitch like her all night long. The main thing is that the lady doesn't get tired and can continue. At this time, the black-haired inspector was sitting on the floor in his apartment talking on the phone. When he heard a question in the receiver, when would he finally return to work? Uh, he replied that sometimes he thought he was being chased by a 70-year-old man. He asked if they really needed to call him like this every day. Not receiving an answer to his question, the black-haired man asked if he was not bothered by Im Han Lim at all. It was a very unexpected question so he even moved his smartphone away from his ear. And a second later, he clarified, was he checking on Im? Why did something happen? The minister, looking over the case, said that this time she was working with the boy. The chief went on to say that he had originally brought her to the ministry to deal with cases involving girls, but since the black-haired man was on holiday, she had to take on this case. At the end, he asked her if she got hurt. Would he take responsibility? The inspector was very amused, so he laughed out loud into the phone. The minister called him a jerk who dared to talk to the elders and laugh. Then the ministry employee added that he had forgotten to inform the director of their office that they were in a hand-to-hand -hand fight. Meanwhile, he was sitting quietly and throwing a small green ball up in the air. On the roof, where a young lady was conducting an educational session with teenagers, Everything unfolded in a rather interesting way, namely, a young man with pink hair received a strong blow to the shoulder. Second later, he started screaming loudly, his mouth wide open from the pain that immediately appeared. This did not stop the red-haired girl, and she continued to swing her leg in the face of this impudent teenager, who had already got her with his behavior. Then she stopped and asked him, smiling sweetly, What was wrong? After all, he had said that she could beat him all night long and he would take it. The guy looked at his opponent carefully and rubbed the place where he had been hit and wondered what had just happened. For some reason, he thought that since she was not so big, she probably didn't have much strength. Looking down, the young man noticed that his t-shirt was torn exactly where the inspector had touched him, and it looked like someone had cut him with a knife. This made him very angry, so the teenager took his right hand back, gritted his teeth, and began to run quickly at his offender, calling her a bitch. However, he was unable to strike again because the woman crouched down and grabbed him tightly by the waist. The brawler did not think she would do that. And when the young lady landed on her hands, she again cut the guy with her leg up, but this time from the side. And he froze in place again, raised his head up, closed his eyes, opened his mouth wide, and began to scream loudly from the pain he was feeling right now. 
He then slowly knelt down and held his wound with his left hand, while the red-haired woman stood behind him looking off into the distance. The young man looked at his side and was surprised by what he saw, because he did not understand how she could do that, that his clothes were torn right there. So, when he turned his head back to clarify something for himself, he noticed the young lady's leg raised again, standing a few meters away. And when he finally got a good look at her shoes, he realized what was causing such marks on his clothes and body. It turned out that it was the heel, which was the main element of the woman's shoes. That's why she kicked him again, not to hurt him, but to hurt him right on the leg. The boy could not stand it any longer and began to shout loudly to the whole roof because he was in so much pain. His friends, who were watching from a few meters away, made faces and said that it must have hurt a lot, and they didn't want to go through it. The physical difference between men and women will not be a reason to stop. After all, she skillfully uses important points, weapons, and the environment to help equalize physical development. Even if her opponent is someone big, she won't be able to win in a real fight. The gentleman doesn't know where she learnt her fighting techniques, but in a real fight, it is highly likely that he would lose to her. Approaching the teenager who was lying on the ground, the lady angrily said to him that it would have been better if Seong Bai Na had taken care of them. Most likely, he would have come up with another way to punish a bastard like these middle school thugs. And she said that she knew of no other way but to deal with it by force. After saying that, the lady lifted her right foot up and slowly brought the heel down on the boy's left cheek, who was already squirming because he knew what was coming. The inspector then leaned over to the student and asked him a rather simple question. Would he kneel down, or should the fight between them continue? A few minutes later, all the members of the school's gang of bullies were on their knees, heads down, apologizing to a classmate named Sang Wook. The bullies stressed that they had been wrong all along, so they asked him to forgive them at least once. The student recalled all of this as he was looking at something on his smartphone while lying in bed. He was very pleased that this is how it all worked out, and that he could finally go to school without worrying that someone might punish him. At the same time, the boy with pink hair hid under the white bed at home, because he did not like what had happened to them today. The boy began to pull his hair hard because he was angry that he could not do anything, and that everything had happened exactly like that. The victim of bullying at school was still smiling happily and looking at the photo of his bullies on his smartphone, which he had managed to take on the roof. The next day, when the main bully of the high school was walking to school, all the other students turned their eyes to him, looking at him in surprise. Suddenly, one of them, smiling broadly, addressed the young man by name and asked if he was okay. However, others intervened and added how he could feel fine when he had been beaten by that girl from the ministry. After all, he usually harassed teachers, but this one just cut him down. Or maybe he thought that the lady might not hit him, but he got what he deserved. After walking down a long corridor, the boy reached his classroom, where the door was already open, and he began to enter cautiously. On the first desk, right next to the door, was the same boy he had knelt down to ask for forgiveness yesterday. The victim was a little frightened by this because he did not know how to behave properly, so he looked down to avoid looking at the rebel. On the contrary, the young man with pink hair was looking at his classmate with a serious expression, not even blinking. He then calmly began to walk between the desks to get to his seat, but at the same time continued to stare at his victim. His gaze seemed to scan the teenager, who was not even looking at him, he was leaning his head over the desk and looking at something in his smartphone on top of it. The brazen man walked past and got to his desk carefully and calmly sat down. Suddenly, an inspector came up to him and leaned over with a sweet smile and asked him what he was looking at so intently. When she didn't get an answer, she said that it seemed to her that yesterday he had been on his knees and said that he would never do that again. But the lady noticed a lot of anger in his eyes so she asked him if he wanted to repeat yesterday's lesson. The student replied that he was not allowed to look at it anymore. The lady put her right hand to her chin, and after a few seconds of thinking said that he could not. Then she straightened a strand of hair on her left side and said that how could a criminal look at a victim with such a bad look? Even such a signal is a kind of revenge, 
The teenager listened attentively with a serious expression on his face. Then he turned to the other side and said that he understood everything. He just wouldn't look at it. And that was that. The lady remained standing there and followed the student with her eyes. However, she decided to say that from what she had seen, she did not think that this look was likely to change in the near future. After all, they are in the same class and isolation seems useless. So she suggested that he walk around the school with his head down and look only at the floor. The boy turned his head to the inspector with an angry expression. With a piercing look, the lady added that feeling ashamed and not having the courage to look others in the face. Isn't that perfect for a sinner like him? The guy shouted angrily, asking if she was making fun of him. What was the point of this? The ministry worker didn't think twice about it. She lifted her right leg up and bent it at the knee. As soon as the young man saw this, he immediately put his hands up to his face, covering it, because for some reason he thought that's where she would hit him. The red-haired woman stopped for a second and smiled broadly, saying that this was a wonderful reaction. It was exactly how it should be. The shock, the intense facial expressions. This reaction is perfect for his current situation. After waiting a minute for the young man to relax a bit, the inspector said that she could make a prediction that he would show his true face very soon. After this conversation, the pink-haired student went out into the corridor and slowly walked down it and saw the other children in the school staring at him. And then two of his friends said loudly, laughing, that he was really walking with his head down. They said that yesterday this bastard came home to Sangwook and was caught by a woman from the Ministry of Education. Another added that this young man is real garbage who still doesn't understand what he did before, and now he has decided to take revenge. It is now clear that the decision on the case of violence in the school was correct. If he had just been expelled from school, he would have definitely become a criminal. Then his peers said angrily that he had been like that until his graduation. However, the student with pink hair continued to walk down the corridor with his hands in his pockets. However, someone quickly approached him from behind and raised his leg to the level of his back and kicked him so that the teenager fell to the floor without realizing what had happened. When he turned his head and looked back to see who had dared to do this to him, he noticed two guys laughing loudly and running away. The guy got to his feet and angrily called them bastards and asked where they were running to. He was fed up with what was happening to him today because he was used to feeling powerful in this school and not to be the one who could be humiliated so easily. At this point, everyone in the corridor quickly took out their smartphones to film the whole thing and show it as evidence to the inspector, who was still in their classroom. Suddenly, someone behind him called out to the boy, calling him a prisoner, and then asked him how he dared to raise his head. The red-haired teacher, who had already come out to her student, looked intently at her phone and said that the reports were pouring in. Smiling happily, she added that she was thinking about how she could check the compliance with the rules by this impudent boy, and she emphasized how he had lived all this time, when everyone was just waiting for the boy to fail. The guy shouted angrily that wasn't it too much. After all, he had been hit, and of course he raised his head because of it. After hearing this, the lady did not think twice about grabbing the young man's leg. He grimaced because it caused him a lot of pain. The inspector looked at the boy's expression and asked him if that was the place where she had kicked him yesterday. She added that she knew it was too much, but there was no other choice. And if he didn't, he would go around scaring other children again, wouldn't he? And she wouldn't have had to do this if it wasn't for the school's anti-violence committee simply isolating him from the class. She said that this was his destiny, so he should just accept it. After school, the third special education class was held in the gym, with all the members of the bully gang present. Standing in front of them in a tracksuit, the inspector, with a serious expression on her face, said that today they would have a special guest. Turning to the head, she said that he might strain his neck because he had been looking at the floor all day. The teenager with pink hair slowly raised his head and looked at the young lady standing in front of him and waited for her to speak. Without waiting for her to say anything, he announced the shocking news that he had decided to leave the school, and he stressed that it seemed that she had come here because she was unhappy with the decision of the school's violence committee. 
Because of this, he gave up and was ready to leave if she wanted him to. Even though he paid a fine and was suspended for five days, he was even ready to be expelled. So he asked what else they wanted. He turned around and started walking towards the exit, saying that he was not going to go to college because he would not even pass the qualifying exam. Stopping just before the door, he added that he hoped they would never meet again because he would definitely hit her. When the student opened the door, he saw a group of children whom they had insulted at school. And for some reason, they came here right now. He laughed out loud and asked what was going on. Why are they all here? And he mockingly added that these were the taxpayers he had beaten. A toy trio of Avengers or something? The student stood at the entrance and listened in silence. Then a young man with pink hair approached one of them, and looking at him first called him fat, and then ordered him to step aside. He added that he was leaving, just as this loser wanted. However, the young man was not going to go anywhere. He just looked intently into the eyes of his offender. And then he approached him and began to push him quickly. The guy with pink hair did not expect that he would attack him. The victim pushed his attacker so that he fell to the floor with his back and threw his head back so that he hit his head hard. After a few minutes, he slowly raised his head and asked with an angry expression, what the hell was he doing? And he repeated that he was leaving the school. So now the inspector would not be able to protect them. The rest of the students stood there and looked at the impudent man with a sneering smile. Suddenly something cold touched the main rebel's forehead. It turned out to be a wooden stick that the ministry employee always carried with her. Looking at him, the lady said that he seemed to have misunderstood something. The teenager tried to remove the stick from his face. And the woman said that he was like a drunk driver saying that he would not drive a car again and asked if that was why he did not need to be punished. After all, school violence is also a serious crime. Therefore, the perpetrator must undergo special training. To put it another way, whether he pays a fine or leaves the school, he still cannot escape the responsibility that has fallen on his shoulders. Therefore, until he completes the special training, he will not be able to escape it because it will simply find him wherever he hides.